Well, to quote the Maltese Falcon, it's the stuff that dreams are made of. What's better than hosting the Academy Awards from Los Angeles, as they did back in 2016, as they did back in 2017? Working for the Academy, what could be better? Forget the red carpet. How about the stained carpet? That's right. That's how Metal Ark does it, folks. Verk, much to my chagrin, Samson, and also Ben Lyons, my old running partner. It's going to be great, and it's going to be epic. And my big time thank you to everybody at Metal Ark, from Dan Lebertor to Mike Ryan to Chris Cody to the entire crew. And we're going to have members of the shipping container here, Lucy, Roy, Jess, etc. But first off, my partner in crime, Chris Cody. We're back, baby. Cinephile's done it. We convinced him. Cody, how did we do this? We rented a popcorn machine. <laughs> it's not filled yet, but we're getting there. We have a popcorn machine. Snacks are on the way. We have a stained carpet. This is great stuff. The great Mike Ryan is here as well. Mike, I'm proud of you because you took this seriously. This morning, you were cramming. You could have just gone to the beach, enjoyed yourself, reflect on MMA last night. No, no. Past lives. Zone of interest. Heavy, heavy films to begin your Sunday. Never going to get that three and a half hours and change back. <laughs> Uh, not great. I know they're nominated. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand what zone of interest was going for, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not we were interested in seeing what they were going for. I'm sure that's something that you guys will debate, but right. I think it was a great year for cinema, a great year for the box office, and it's great to see some big summer tentpole uh, features be nominated and get their recognition because we want to get people back to the movie theaters for that magical experience. I love the fact that there are now multiple, uh, what is it, 10, 9? 10, uh, 10 nominees. 10 nominees for Best Picture. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, there's some winners, some losers. Uh, from that nominated group, but I think overall it was a great year in cinema, and I can't wait to hear your guys' take on all yeah. of the year in cinema. Let's start with that, because I really think that's important. People have had this narrative the last few years that TV has never been better, and movies aren't what they once used to be. And there's there's definitely an aspect of that that is accurate. But I would argue a lot of the shows that we love in television have now gone. Succession's gone. Kirby Enthusiasm's ending. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel's gone. Barry's gone. A lot of the Better Call Saul is gone. So, like, this void is now there, which will be filled by some shows. But to Mike's point with movies, Op and I are almost a billion dollars. Who's more popular? Christopher Nolan. Barbie, $1.4 billion. Even Killers of the Flower Moon, how many Scorsese mentions can I get in? My Man Marty takes oh, Apple man. $200 million. I forgot my shot glass. I'm <laughs> supposed to do a shot every time you talk <laughs> about Killers of the Flower well, Moon. We've got time to go get that shot glass. Killers of the Flower Moon is the best picture of the year. It's nominated for 10 Academy Awards. Marty's 81 years old, and still he can take this story, which is three hours and 20 minutes, and it's breathtaking. He can still find new ways to translate cinematic language, and he will do so perhaps with an Oscar win for Lily Gladstone, which would be momentous. If you're a movie fan, you look at history and say this is the first ever Native American actor nominated for an Academy Award, and she may win. Could be Emma Stone. Part of it, too, is for people to say, you know, who cares for the Oscars? Like, why, why do you care so much? Why are you so passionate about this? Well, it's the biggest night of the year, obviously, for cinephiles, and I think that there's always some surprises. Even when you think things are going to go as ordained, and, of course, we're going to have our picks throughout the day. We're going to have all of our selections going on as I uh, hopefully uh, just bash uh, Samson in a submission. But we're going to look at the different ways – in which this night could unfold. So is it a big night for Oppenheimer? Probably. But there'll be a couple you're not expecting. Chris, go ahead. The best television slash YouTube, whatever the hell is we're doing here, the best that we could do tonight is if Killers gets a goose egg. And we just what? see you become be despondent. That, that, what a or horrible if Will thing Smith could slap somebody again, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> but I just think, like, I, we're... Because they could have a bad night, Killers. Uh, it could go 0 for 10. And, and a matter of fact, The Irishman went 0 for 10. Gangs of New York went Rightfully 0 for 10. so. No, no, come on. The Irishman, Irishman was terrible. We're not doing this again. I like Killers of the Flower Moon. It's solid. It is not the best picture Where's of the, the year. Where's the win for it is the question. Maybe Lily, we can Lily get Gladstone. Lily, Lily Gladstone. Although, Lily's the only one. Yeah. I've watched all these films, and I think that that should be, and I know the odds say different, Yeah. but I think that should be considered the tightest of the categories because Sandra Hewler, I hope I pr I'm pronouncing no, that That's that my right. biggest shock of the entire day. In fact, you were all in a Sandra Hewler. I think like from now on, Sandra Hewler, I go, Mike Ryan loves her. Like, I really? I'm like, yeah, that had me a fall. Huge year for her. She was in was The Zone great. of Interest. She was in Anatomy of the Fall, which was my favorite movie of the year. Well... I did like it a lot. It was in my, it was in, might have been 10th. I think it was in my, I think it was 10th. Cody, Cody has my list memorized. How he many maple leaves? I gave it three and a half maple leaves. I love the fact that it was a core. Thank you for putting it in my own. As he does it sarcastically. Um, I like the fact that it had. Buckle up. Going to be plenty of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially How, with the three of you in there. Yeah. How many snide remarks are we going to have the rest of the night? Well, it's going to be a lot of fun because I, listen, this is something new. As I mentioned here, we're doing here on the Levitard show and 
I think there's going to be a mix of the fact that people like me and Samson and Ben Lyons love the Oscars, and then some people couldn't care less and think that we're ridiculous for doing this. But that's why I'm wearing a tux, and that's why I'm taking it as serious as I can. Only six hours and 50 minutes to go. Let's lock in. Yeah. The, the, the good news you is... You mentioned the, other people. Are yeah. they indeed going to be joining you in there, or have you totally hijacked this already? No, no listen, I, I, as much of an egomaniac as I am, I am going to have a few guests. I, I've, you know... Narrowed down the list. I know that I know you call yourself the captain, but yeah. you are really taking this uh, <laughs> method. The stewardship going to a new level. Might as well just call me the skipper at this point. Mario Lopez. The Mario Lopez is going to join us for the red carpet. Okay? You want star power? I got your star power right here. Do you want an Academy Award nominee? We got that too. Misan Harriman. Best live action short. You want more? Josh Horowitz. MTV News. Happy Sack of Views. He's going to join us. And maybe... I mean, El Hassan. All right? That's that's pretty good right there. Tom Cruise will not be, though. Tom Cruise is not going to be. F Tom Cruise. All right? That's, Did you that's... enjoy your time in Clearwater? I imagine <laughs> they welcomed you with open arms. Do you notice my tan? People, I'm, people I'm, notice it. Go, you look good. Like, I appreciate it. What a week in Florida. I'm surprised you got out of there clear. <laughs> Dunedin was much more pleasant. Blue Jays there. They're really happy to see you. All right. Um, we'll talk spring training a little bit later on, perhaps with our next guest. Now, Again, I couldn't be clearer about this. Guest? Is it, would you call this next person a guest? I mean, he's, he's an ingrained member of Metal Arc, but I just, I generally can't stand him. Like, I think we all, and I, I, by the way, I speak, I think I speak for the audience. I, I don't think I'm speaking out of school here. If I took a poll, you know, they say, they say in television, no, this is actually true. In television, in radio, personalities, 80-10-10 rule. So 10% like you, 10% hate you, 80% couldn't care less. Samson's incredible. Can we get even 5% that like him? 80% absolutely hate him. 10% definitely don't care. I don't think we can even get to 5%. Like, I love that guy. He's awesome. Is this your intro? Quite an intro. <laughs> I'm, I'm, he can I'm, hear you. He's, just, I'm, I'm just, I'm he's just, literally <laughs> waiting behind a TV screen for I, I, someone I, I, to I, tell I, him to walk down I, a, I, a fake red I, carpet. I'm just making it clear for our audience. And they're like, I don't understand. Like, why? How wow, did Samson, he's just, he said, how did Samson he said, be, he said okay, enough. He's, he's already I was going to cue music. Listen, I was going to get positive here. But I was going to say, having said all that, Having said all that, David Sampson, nice to see you. I didn't get to the last part. Go ahead. Hi, David. Nice to see you. You had a whole thing. You had to wait for the music. I'm not waiting anymore because I'm sitting out there <laughs> listening to that intro. Not what we discussed prior. Okay. Not. But, 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 but I'll be honest. Do you actually think you're popular? One thing about you is you're self-aware. You know you're not popular. I actually would like to point out to you, <laughs> nothing personal with David Sampson and the numbers it gets. That said... I would like to talk about how happy I am to be with you. I appreciate I'm it. not going to go down into the stained sewer the way you started this show. <laughs> okay. We have seven hours together. Yeah, it's true. So I'd like to get along. Okay. Bury the hatchet. So a seven-hour detente is what you're suggesting. Well, because people say that they're not interested in the Oscars. Yeah. But Metal Arc, not only have they put their production arm behind this, do you know – that we've got about 4,000 people who have filled out their ballots on levitardaf.com. Wow, I believe. We budgeted for 500. There are over 4,000 ballots Eight right now. Eight times the number we have. That's incredible. So you, and, and you of all people, I want more from you. You have such a great podcast called Cinephile. That's it would be deep. nice if you acknowledge the day. Okay. Because the Oscars, they're meaningful. The amount of time that people spend entertaining us and yeah. the work it takes to do a movie. Yes. It's incredible. And this is the biggest night for movies. And we convinced Metal Arc together. It is kind of shocking. So let's not, we can play the enemy card. Yeah. How about if we play the fact that we convinced Metal Arc to allow us and Dan for seven hours mm -hmm. to do a show. We've got brackets. We've got contests. We've got prizes. We have guests. We have candy. Let's get into the candy a little bit. You still can't taste anything. So I can't tell. I can tell you the have difference no idea the between the non-parels. Okay. What I have in here for this is my Oscar mix. It's a special Oscar mix. Mike Cody, and does Ike's, anybody care? I'm just, I'm just asking. Does anybody I, care? I mean, right now the people are loving it because I think it's a pretty strong indicator. You were saying 80 percent of the people can't stand David Sampson, but yeah. that's. I mean, we still got three hours before this uh, contest locks over at lebatardaf.com. But mm -hmm. four thousand when he was the main means of promotion. That's pretty good. But we also have our finger uh, on the pulse. Chris Cody's going to be engaging in the chat room all day long. People right. are loving it. People are feeling the iciness. They don't yeah. know if it's a bit. 
bit? They're like, is this like it's a no bit? I'll tell you right now, it's not a bit. People are into this. The thing is that Dan called prior. Because Dan is concerned that you're in the chair. Yeah, but, but it, the laboratory is coming, right? Because I, I do want to let him know that this is... You do have to call him the captain for the <laughs> remainder of the broadcast. Just I'm so not, not calling that, man. Ju- this is a joke like seven years ago. Mike you are not the captain. That's right. It's a Captain Phillips reference. I, I gather. <laughs> no. That's, thank you very much. <laughs> it actually isn't. It's because Virk and Captain Kirk. So it used to be a... Go ahead. Yeah, I think we should keep going. <laughs> James Tiberius. Let's talk about how this happened and Please. why people are interested Please. and why you can say what you want about me and us. Yeah. But people actually watch movies. The big bounce back And here. they care. And the Oscars finally got it right with two of the best best picture nominees, over a billion dollars. These are these have been seen by people, mm-hmm. everybody. And we're also very excited to see what Jimmy Kimmel does in the monologue. Yeah. People tune in for that. Yep. This is like a World Series game. It's not an NFL regular season Thursday game. Yeah. But it is like a World Series game. Well, <laughs> shot at Amazon. Finals Did game. you get a chemical peel before this? Because the comments are <laughs> noticing you are shiny. Uh, no, we have makeup here. I was I was pretty impressed. We have makeup. So we cooked up. Jesse, we do. Up. I was. Can I admit what I did today? I love it. Not a great I, I, plan. No, but I will give you this. You're honest about yeah, your foibles. I ran a half marathon. What? And uh, I'm training for the London Marathon. Dude, you're unbelievable. And I ran a half, and I'm not used to the Florida heat, and I've been schwitzing. <laughs> I, I stopped. I was done by 1130, but I am now four and a half hours into a deep post-run schwitz. Right. And Cody, and this is something that, of course, we're going to get to, I used the Metal Arc restroom for the first time in a year that I've been here. Fantastic. The first time in a year I Good had Good restroom. To, and I'm extremely dehydrated. He had questions. And there's no way. I had the seat down, but there was no way to flush it. You have no flusher. It, it's a weird one where it's like, there's like it's kind of a sensor sometimes. Sometimes you actually have to push down on the yeah, thing. There's a, there's a flusher on it, but you don't touch any but I of love those the, things. But I love that you pee sitting there. I had to call on somebody to help me, and I went with Cody because I feel like that was my best chance. Mm-hmm. You called me over. You're like, I need you privately for a second. I was like, wow, this is a big moment. And he's like, how do you flush the toilet? This is a long broadcast. Are you going to have to do that every time? <laughs> well, now he taught me the trick. But the answer is, is he knows with no one else in the room, I was very dehydrated. <laughs> Thankfully, Confirmed. thankfully we're not drug testing. David didn't have to pee into a cup or anything like that. But there were like five drops. It's Florida. You forget how quickly. You know, what are people doing now? Sweating Albert Brooks is my yes. worst nightmare. Broadcast news. Broadcast news, what happened to Albert Brooks when he got a chance to finally be on camera. Incredible scene. It's the James L. Brooks. It's one of the great scenes of any movie. Yeah, one of the great exchanges in that movie is when William Hurt says to him, what do you do when your real life eclipses your dreams? Now Brooks- Keep it to yourself. <laughs> I, I I spent seventeen thousand dollars framing that red carpet entrance that David just totally blew past. <laughs> I'm can, happy. Can we to actually go do, it do again this? Execute? You want to actually do a red carpet? No, you want to you want to you want to tap into his ego? He, yeah, exactly no, he right. Mike. It, exactly but right. But there is a third oh, name shiny. on the marquee. Yeah, shiny. Uh, Schwitzing. <laughs> While Samson schwitzes, we're gonna bring in the third member of our crew. What a great part of the team. He's awesome. Ben Lyons, you kill not find a better teammate. This is the man who got me the Academy Awards in 2016. Moonlight won Best Picture. He is a guy who has worked in this business two decades. Worked at E! News. This is his 13th Academy Awards. Give a warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Ben Lyons entering the Lion's Den. Yes! That's how you do it. Captain Burke himself, great to see you. Is that a linen? What are you wearing? Well, is that velvet? <laughs> is that <laughs> velvet? It's Oscar awesome. Sunday, so we're obviously going tuxedo. I've got some cufflinks from my grandfather here from the Stork Club. Leonard Lyons, yes. Friend of Hemingway. A, fam- a storied family. But yes. we're, here in, uh, we're here in Miami, so I had to bring out the linen tux. I know you guys like the linen at the Heat game. Yeah. yeah. You know, is that a rental? Tux, uh, no, is it a rental? Come on, David. You- my name's Ben. I- hey, Ben Lyons. Hey. <laughs> <Dave. laughs> you ever heard of Rent the Runway? <laughs> <laughs> do you, you shake hands, right? Do you want hand sand? T- t- I'm going to get you some sand. No, uh, yeah. have it. Oh, okay. I have everything I need for seven hours. David, when I first saw you tonight, our interaction, I had just walked out of the bathroom and my hands were like wet. Did, was oh. there any thought there? Did you in that moment Jeez. think like, Let me you t- knew that it was, you, it, cl- <laughs> it felt like a clean wet though. You knew that. I actually thought it was sweat from having come in from what? the side I, and I immediately went to wash oh, my hands. Oh, gross. Oh. You just, I just give off that. That's what you think. I'm just sweaty vibes. You see Cody. 
you listen. Uh, Cody you smells good. He's got walk, good hygiene. I walked right in, went right into the bathroom. So, like, he, I was coming in as if I had just walked in. So I get where you went there. but And I understand how it is in Florida. And I have not been here in a while because I understand the sort of how the Metal Arc universe works. It's hot down here. 87 and sunny and humid. We had two weeks where it was like 70 every day. And it was Love just that. like in January, we get two weeks. And then yeah. it gets back to sweatiness. So me thinking you're sweating is not so out of the right. veil. I appreciate that. And me having you in the restroom, that was a classic <laughs> moment. That's a top five moment already of the day. Chris having to beg Chris to help me flush the toilet. I was nervous for a naked gun bathroom moment. Here. Yes. The late great well, the queen. <laughs> Did you put the seat down? <laughs> Everything is as it should be in yeah. the beautiful metal art you'd, bathroom. You'd be yes. surprised how people treat this. Now, we have an entire, you know, seven hours could seem like a long time. Mm -hmm. But we have so many things to go over because there's 23 awards that get given out. Yep. And right now, people are getting ready to go on the red carpet. I can't wait to talk about the fashion. Hey, what are you wearing? Yeah, who I are you wearing? See, who are you wearing? Cody, who are you wearing? Pittsburgh Pirates hat. Uh, I'm wearing Express. Uh, do you think we're going to see any Metal Arc gear, David, tonight on the red carpet? How much would we have to pay Leo to wear a Metal Arc shirt? Well, oh, don't you're think not going to see not Leo. See Leo on the red carpet, not no. nominated, unfortunately. Leo, That's one of the bigger snubs of the night, though. <laughs> Killers of the flower. The after mood. parties, maybe, but Shot. I don't think he'll be at the uh, at the actual Oscars. We have alcohol here, so I was under the impression in our pre-production meeting that you were not a part of, even though you decided to sit in the captain's chair. That Mike Ryan was supposed to take a shot of the alcohol we have every time you mention uh, I, either Scorsese or Killers. I have a running tab going on right now. I need <laughs> fourteen. To get we, don't need, we don't need an inebriated Mike to two hours in. The we, and he shit faced the entire show because I want to talk with America's greatest living director. This one gets the main broadcast. The drinks will start flowing. <laughs> On the side, we do a top five list once a week on the Levitard show, yep, yep. and I get a separate text chain from Dan about this segment always saying, do you think Adnan is going to put Scorsese somewhere in this top five <laughs> when it doesn't even fit? And right. I said, hey. Top yes. five romantic comedies. How can we squeeze in the Age of Innocence? Like, well, There's definitely some good moments in here of comedy. Boy, but how many years between nominations for Scorsese? That is incredible. Well, it's 44 a, years, I think, believe, or 48 years, something like that. Well, what's crazy about it is he's now America's most nominated living director. Like, mm -hmm. 10 nominations for Best Director. We all know how great Spielberg is, his close friend as well. But to still be making these kind of movies at the age of 81, and, you know, all kidding aside, David, Killers of the Flower Moon is a profound cinematic experience, especially watching it in a theater, or if you watch it streaming, you're telling a really important story about the murder of the Osage and doing so in a really passionate manner. It's in danger of getting the donut. I want to be clear. It is in danger. You're all going to tell me. We're going to start unveiling our brackets on levitardaf.com. The three of us have done our brackets, submitted them. Mm -hmm. And if you beat me tonight, anybody, you will enter a raffle to get a piece of my personal memorabilia collection. Plus, the winner outright gets an amazing gift from the Levitard show. So there's a lot at stake tonight. And I made some picks that are a little interesting, and we're going to get to all 23 of our picks. But let's just say that me and you are not totally aligned. Okay, that's good news. And we'll, we'll, surprise, I'm, surprise. Yeah. Two of you guys not on the same page. I know I'm, I'm new around here, but I'm, that's something I've Right, we'll, we'll let the audience know when those moments are going to be. But, Ben, as I mentioned, you're a guy who's covered the Oscars everywhere. We dirked the red carpet together. I mean, it was amazing, that experience that we had together. And you've done it for so many years. This is an event unlike any other. You can speak to that more than anybody else. It's Hollywood's biggest night. It's an opportunity to honor those behind the camera. So much attention, of course, is paid to those who are acting in these roles and the high-profile supporting categories are usually the first awards given out mm -hmm. uh, at the top of the telecast. But this is an opportunity for the cinematographers, the production designers, the costume editors. designers, editors, the people behind the scenes to really get their recognition. Movies is such a team sport, such a collaboration, mm -hmm. and the Oscars celebrates that. Uh, it's an opportunity, too, to provide films like Anatomy of a Fall, and a, a platform to get the word out about them. Mike Ryan's been talking about this French film yeah. for weeks. 72 you, hours. You know, so we'll take it because where else is, are these films getting talked about? We need the Oscars to get to, to have them top of mind. It'll come to me with Anatomy of the Fall if you just want yeah. to fill 20 minutes. A moment or two. I, the dog I, snubbed, by yeah. the way. Uh, yeah. Well, there's like two dogs now. You have uh, Messi, the dog from Anatomy of the Fall, who, which – 
I, I read people complained about attending all these brunches and stuff for nominees because they felt like it gave Anatomy of a Fall an unfair advantage because he's such a good boy, right. which is interesting because meeting Bradley Cooper isn't an advantage to these people, right? They don't, they don't uh, being able to shake Bradley Cooper's hand and maybe take a selfie with him, right. that's totally fine, but a good boy, no, 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 we can't allow that at all. And, of course, there's the Nazi dog. The, the, the Nazi dog yeah. happens to Hard be Hard right turn, but it's accurate. Yeah. 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 It's accurate. That's yeah. her real dog. Yeah. That's her real dog. Yeah. Real That's life. a real dog. Yeah, okay, so don't want to disparage the yes, dog. It's, it's not a Nazi trained. dog. Right. Well, in the movie, it is very much a Nazi yes. dog. It, it, it is the dog of a Nazi. <laughs> that makes it a I'm Nazi dog. Yeah, no, no, don't brand the dog that way, Mike. <laughs> right. That canine is not. No, that canine does not have a swastika on, okay? Like, jeez. Let's be clear about this. I want to go back to what David was mentioning about memorabilia. Can we just show off this bling? As two baseball guys here, this is freaking sweet. The World Series ring well, is I, awesome. I don't wear it in this studio because it's a thing with Billy, and I don't know if Billy's coming today. It's a bit of a trigger. Billy and Chris and Mike, it's a trigger because, you know, Mike has the view that I have a World Series ring from 21 years ago, and I've parlayed that, you know, into this chair. Right. So I don't try to, you know, shove it out in front of him. But it's Oscars. <laughs> this is. <laughs> you brought your you don't star have power. a ring. No, it's true. You bring you bring things that have sentimental value. Yeah. Speeches. Yeah. And any time the tux goes on. Right. Any time. Although I put I wore my tux to my daughter's wedding and I didn't wear the rings. I didn't want the attention so, to be on anyone but my daughter. So that's being a good dad. You don't want the yeah. attention on yourself the entire time. As far as the movies themselves, again tonight, Ben, you know, for somebody who says, listen, Oppheimer's gonna win everything. Why should I watch? What would your response be to that? First of all, it's not going to win everything. I think the days of one film sweeping the Oscars like a Lord of the Rings or a Titanic are gone. The industry realizes that it's good business just to, on Monday morning, have TV ads run that say, from the Oscar-winning film. Mm -hmm. So if you have six or seven or eight of those films, right, all boats rise. So I think the, the, the favorite is Oppenheimer, yes, for Best Picture. It'll be the first time since 2012 where the Best Picture winner and the Best Actor winner are in the same, same film. If Killian Killy Murphy's going to win, he won at the SAG Awards. He's going to win tonight. Are you giving up your pick? He's going to win tonight, Killian oh. Murphy. He'll be the first Irish actor to win the award, and it's to be the first time since 2012 the artist Jean Desjardins nice. winning him. for Best Actor, and then the film is this winning for Best Picture. So, mm -hmm. yes, Oppenheimer will win some of the high-profile awards. Of course, Downey Jr., the favorite in supporting category, although I'm not as confident in that one because of the history of supporting category surprises, surprises over the years. Your dad, but, Jeffrey Lyons, called the ears go Marissa the Tomei, my cousin yep, Vinny. The only one who called Marissa Tomei, uh, Jack Powell. Balance, of course, years past one for supporting. Right. But I, I think that the, the Academy will spread the love, and you'll see a, a lot of different films. Do you know who's the most excited going into an Oscars night? Agents. Yeah. The reason why agents get really excited is that people who win an Oscar— By the way, Chris thought you said Asians, I, yeah. just to be clear. I, I he was like, like past lives? Big night for that? Like, they might win screenplay. Right. I did think you said Asians. We're yeah. live. Let yeah. me do that again. 4 8 69. Do you know who's really excited on the night of the Oscars? Who's that, Agents. David? Agents. <laughs> Although Past Lives is nominated, to your point. Well, so so saying, sure, yeah. I, I, wasn't shocked, I wasn't shocked by it. When David they're said, I'm like, oh, Asians are definitely on this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tanya had a good offseason. Some movies tonight should be good. Do you know what the going rate is? Your rate to be in a movie when you are an Oscar nominee, it's one thing. Yeah, but an Oscar good. winner, and it's all the people. Yeah, Cuba Gooding got paid for Snow Dogs. <laughs> he did get paid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's so important the choice you make after you win an Oscar, and I love watching to see what people do yeah. when they win an Oscar, what their next choice is, whether it's brave or whether it falls flat. But Cuba Gooding, that's a great Oscar, but he his career. Sometimes you get a payday. Sometimes you try to go get that Oscar again, see you again at the awards next year. Yeah, there's a real strategy in art to rolling out a career, and especially now that you have an Oscar party. So agents are very focused. Yeah. Because I mean, I they get to work tomorrow. They don't wait. They get to work tomorrow. Is there a should have been nominated slot there underneath? Like, you win. You're nominated. Are there actors out there who should have been nominated? Their agents are trying to get them more. It's like, no, no, they should have been nominated. Agents do that all the time when they're pitching their clients to do a movie. They'll say, look at this performance. They'll send in the sizzle reel and say, this is a part that should have been nominated. Shout out to UTA.
Yeah, and 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 obviously agents in Hollywood will leverage any opportunity to gain an advantage for their clients. But there's nothing better on a Monday morning than you're call, calling that studio. You've been in negotiations for a week, and you say, "Ah, oh, did you tune into the Oscars last night? My client just won Best Actor." I don't think there's a better example right now than Sandra Hewler for someone who had a year. What a and year! Someone who has a chance to part. Could have been a this. double nominee for actress and supporting actress. It's very rare. Pacino pulled it off in '92. He was up for Best Actor, Sense of a Woman. He was up for Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Supporting Actor. When you're in two big movies like. That, that's pretty impressive. And you guys poo-pooed Zone of Interest, and that is one of our categories. I'd like to just talk about this category quickly. Mm -hmm. Poo-poo a strong word. But well, Mike started. Mike Ryan it, started today pre-production. He walked in and said, I watched Zone of Interest. I'll never get that two hours back. Uh, that's harsh because I know what they're going for. But if I wanted to see Nazis humanize, I'd watch New Mac, uh, Newsmax or that, something wait, like wait. that. Time. That's the movie. You're not supposed to allow him to be humanized. Right. That, well, that was the point of the movie. No, I understand. I, I, I understand what they were going for, and it, it's just a, an ordinary life look at uh, this monster and his family, including the dog, which I think I'm justified in calling it a Nazi dog. Well, I really do. Not. Uh, but it, I, I love how it was shot. Uh, I, I saw a behind the scenes feature on how these were all cameras that were in fixed positions mm -hmm. in this house. But this cool little shot. Jonathan Glazer, yeah. good director, sexy beast. He's, he's I, I, I thought it was a, it incredibly well lit, and then I found out that they didn't actually use any lighting. It was all natural light, and yeah. I think the sound design, even though I think Oppenheimer is going to win for best sound, th the sound is for me, the star of the show with this film. I watch it once, no reason to ever watch it again. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? You want to come <laughs> over and check out the zone of interest? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was nice well, to look at. There will be blood afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fun, nice. fun double feature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, yeah. I drink your milkshake. <laughs> well, I drink it up. Let me ask you guys a question. Uh, Drainage. Drain drive. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, this it is only not, took 26 uh, minutes, guys. Way to go. Very clearly, minutes. it's nominated Zone of Interest, Best Picture, but yeah. also nominated for Best uh, Foreign Film. Yeah, International yeah. Feature Film. All right, so uh, why isn't Anatomy of a Fall nominated? Excellent question. I'll take this one. So the country gives the nominees. So France nominated The Taste of Things with Juliette Pinot, which apparently is a very good movie, but they completely aired. They should have nominated Anatomy of a Fall, and you would have had a great head-to-head -head race for Best International Feature How Film. How French is that? How French. They screwed up their own nomination. Taste of Things doesn't get nominated, so now it's a cakewalk for Zone of Interest to win for Best International The film. best movie is not even our best movie. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's that's too pretty much good. English in it? I don't, I'm trying to... too much English. In Anatomy yeah. of a Fall? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to see... Yeah. I'm, no, I'm trying no, to see the logic. It's a great, no, it's a great yeah. French law and order. Is really what it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, the it's drama. For me, it's a Mount Rushmore courtroom drama. I, I think it's It's incredible. up through the few good men and mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. the verdict I love. It. I, I agree with you. It, it's my favorite film of the year. Well, um, I have it. I have well. it. Uh, yeah, I have it in a couple categories tonight. Some surprises. Um, I know the, the bra brackets are still open on Le Batard AF, but I have it a couple times throughout the night. I think it's, uh, it's a film that would play well on stage. Like, I'd love to go see it as a play. And that's to cool. me, oftentimes, that's the sign of a great movie is can you tell no, that story not always. in other mediums? Because well. Past Lives would have worked as a, as a play, and it, oh, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a great movie. Oh, I, saw I, that I know, Past oh, Lives. I completely on, disagree. I'm sorry, past but lives I will not apologize. Pa oh. Past Lives is terrific. The three of us, right, David? Past Lives is excellent. I love it, and I would like to say the red carpet started, and I, I want to take a moment here because sure. this is a two-screen situation. Okay, yeah. watching us, Please they could be on E! watching the red carpet at 7 o'clock. We're still going to be on the air as the actual Academy Awards are happening. Mm -hmm. And what I really love about the early red carpet is there's love for the categories that aren't as well-known. So who just appeared are people from the live action short film. Amazing. And that's a great category. Ballots are won or lost in these categories. And this is a category that has a very famous director in it, Wes Anderson, who's the favorite with the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. He's been nominated five different ways now. How cool is that as an West artist Anderson, to be nominated writer, as a writer, director, a director short, uh, a couple I'm calling others you out here. now? What I know I got to look it up. All right, let me look it up. But he's been okay, while you look this up, best a picture, no, best picture, a producer, and and uh, original screenplay and adapted screenplay. So yes, yeah, a different that different could writing. be five or six. He's go. a talented man. Picture, original, adapted, short film, now. short film, and then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, first live look at the red carpet because you just mentioned that Vanessa Hudgens. Have a little shot there on the red carpet. So, listen, we're not there. We got the stained carpet, but <laughs> Vanessa Hutchins is bringing it. We should and say. And she's pregnant. She just revealed her pregnancy. We're breaking news. Oh, what? <laughs> Who saw this coming? Moonlight won best picture. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're watching E! News. We're not doing E! News. That's correct. Right. That's yes. correct. We're watching No, you're e right, Ben. Good clarification. <laughs> you know, this show started with I love us Vanessa doing Hutchins. this at the red carpet. 
we started, that's how it started with Metal Arc. Mm -hmm. I call up Dan, I said, Dan, I think we should go to LA and be on the red carpet. Because it's so easy to get a credential to the Academy So Dan didn't respond. (laughs) And then what happened is Mike took over and said, why don't we do something from Metal Arc and do it from the stained carpet? This is all sort of. This is the irreverence of metal, and for about two hundred thousand dollars less, (laughs) way less. Well, well, Ben's fee, that whole thing. Thinking like a real producer (laughs) over there, Mike. Thinking like a real producer. Way less. (laughs) <laughs> whole thing fell apart. Look at the, the egos in this room. Oh, Holy Christmas! But listen, I'm, I'm telling you right now, Mike. There has to be a Make chance. Up. If if we crush this, I don't. I already talked to Lewis because I'm goal oriented, like Sam says. I know Ben is. I said, what's the numbers we're looking at? Is there a chance if we dominate this? If YouTube, if the numbers are up, if the ballots are up. This could be from the red carpet next year. Just That's, tell me there's a chance. Look, we have the branding already. It's plug and play. Live from the stained carpet works for the VMAs. It works for the Golden Globes, the Emmys, and all that. And I'm being told, we just uh, threw to the actual red carpet over there, and we saw Vanessa Hudgens looking beautiful. Yeah. We have our first VIP here at the stained carpet ready to walk. Who's in the house? Who do we got? I'm hoping it's Roy. <laughs> Maybe Billy. Maybe it's too good. Yeah, it's Roy! <laughs> VIP in the house. I got to tell you, I've never had a party that Roy's come over to where he wasn't the first guest. So this is on brand for Roy Bellamy. Roy's the best, man. Roy looking dapper as ever. Let's talk Panthers Roy's hockey. Roy's got a chef. Let's oh, go. Sharp. Bill Lindsay. <laughs> sort of like the Blues Brothers with that. <laughs> no, I, but I love that hat. hat. True or false, Roy? I think you wore this hat at Moss when I last saw you 15 months ago. Yeah, it, it's a great look. Yeah, that, that's true. Giancarlo Esposito styles, Better Call Saul, Breaking <laughs> Bad. I love it. It's awesome. I think we could all dress better during the regular show every day at 9 o'clock live on Levitard Show YouTube channel. Well, let's start with that. Roy, who are you wearing? As if we were on the red carpet, who are you wearing? I am wearing myself at this point. <laughs> I'm wearing myself out at this point, actually. <laughs> it's the Bellamy Collection coming to you. Roy, I don't know how many movies you've seen from this year, but what's your level of excitement right now for the Academy Awards? Uh, I haven't seen any movies. I'm just here for appearances. <laughs> You're 0 for you, 10. You, you saw I'm Oppenheimer. Come on. You saw I, Barbie. I see, no, I did not see Barbie. Or Are you waiting for more people to talk about him? More people to see him? Maestro? Uh, I'm just lazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm just Panthers lazy. hockey, though. He's locked in. Locked in. Yeah, <laughs> locked in this is not the first guest I was Last voyage for. of the uh, demeanor. <laughs> No. You catch that one? Why Did didn't not. they look for Dracula during the day? That's that's that, always... that one always bothered me. <laughs> I mean, he's that, asleep. How, how he's many asleep, maple right? leaves did that get? No, two and a half. No, not even two and a half. <laughs> two maple leaves. I want to. I had to make this point on Anatomy of Fall because I I think it's a good idea that Mike had. You and I believe. I don't want to give it away about yet, but I believe we feel like that's a strong chance original screenplay. If it wins, shouldn't they play the music of Fifty Cent, the instrumental? P I A will. Do you think I, it's going to happen? I think it's how it opens the show. And your host, Jimmy Kimmel, and he walks out on stage and you hear the kettlebells going. He may have a dog drums. with him. <laughs> yeah, right. The Nazi dog <laughs> may be at the Academy Awards tonight. <laughs> well, that's messed up if Messi can't attend. Yeah, <laughs> Messi was amazing. My God, I thought it was CGI, to be honest, or some type of special effects, but they got that performance out of that dog. I, I did want to go- budget for an intro for us. Well, that, and we were denied. We were going to do the Billy Crystal intro. That would have been amazing. We've never seen it. YouTube. <laughs> I asked for an ENG camera, and I said, I'll be. It was Ben's idea, but I said, Cody will be Annette Benning in Nyad. And I, really? I will be Jody Foster as your coach. And we would have had Cody trying to swim in the ocean. <laughs> Couldn't get the budget off. I love nope. Nyad. Nyad's terrific. The fact that sports cinema getting some love at the Oscars. Sports movies often overlooked. Not as an on-the-nose sports movie, but she's an athlete. And, yeah. Uh, I, I love the presence that sports films get to have at do the Oscars. Do you have Nyad as a sports movie? I do not. I have it as a sports film. She's a competitive swimmer. She's out there competing. It's she's out the there. story of her swimming the channel. Yeah, but uh, I, you ran those seven marathons all over the world. So that counts as being as an athletic thing to do. A documentary about it. Yeah. Movie. Well, it's also such an a, a interesting this kind of... Yeah. Are we allowed? To, how long can we play? Yeah, this? you can talk over it. I love it. No, but You're covered. When do we start having to pay for this? Just no, no, as long no. As it's on YouTube. It, yeah. It's already built into the algorithm. Stop asking questions, though. Yeah. Come on, let's just exist. Not the original. I mean, when the horns come in, Roy. Nothing better than when the horns come in. Let's Not go. better than a good horn. <laughs> 
Those are words to live by. I believe that. I hope I'm pronouncing their name right because I, after I watched Anatomy of uh, of a Fall, yeah. I really got into this song and their albums, and they were very wise to drop an album very recently to capitalize on this Macau Rhythm and Steel Band, and they do plenty of other covers. It's really vibey. I like it a lot. It's awesome. We have to give Roy one movie to watch. Oh, I already know what the movie's going to be. It's going to be American Fiction. Yeah, it's Jeffrey Wright. movie. It was awesome. Loved best it. picture, best actor. There is a very solid chance it wins best screenplay. Yeah, Court Jefferson. I adapted the book sit- Erasure. And very, very good possibility that one of the surprises in the acting or supporting acting categories comes from American fiction. Either Jeff like if Sterling K. Brown would win for supporting actor. Uh, that's definitely would a possibility. Be the upset of the night. Because That'd I be think incredible. everyone agrees that Robert Downey Jr. has this locked up. Yep. One of the great success stories, cool. Robert Downey Jr. from basically a street kid mm-hmm. who had a major drug problem, was Oof. done, career done. He Less than zero. Career. He became the face Great of movie. Disney yeah. after that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Iron Man. The Mar- he is Iron Man, and now he's doing a movie where he's getting Oscar consideration. He's never. We see these guys give a lot of speeches because this is the final award show. Yep. You had the Critics' Choice. You had the Golden Globes. You had the SAGs, etc. This speech, and he's always very much thanking his wife who yes. supported him. That's his big thing. Mm-hmm. Big producer in Hollywood, Susan Downey. Yep. yep. A very successful mm-hmm. one. And he always questions, why are you with me? How did you stay with me? Yeah. So people are excited to watch him give this speech and see what it will be like. And that's what I always love about Academy Awards. Big time. Who forgets who when you don't mention your partner? Hillary Swank didn't kids. mention her partner this time. Mm-hmm. Very famous. And, and by the way, didn't. Didn't, didn't last. Didn't I, don't, I, don't think that, I don't think that was the reason why. Uh, we just spoke about American Fiction, and yeah. I thought that film had one of the more inspired casting choices. Adam Brody bursting back onto the scene. Yeah. I thought it was really good in that. Quite the glow up for him, too. Josh Hartnett back on the scene as well, and Oppenheimer, yes. some of our favorite 90s stars, uh, getting a, a, another uh, Sean Rashad Avery career, cameo right? in Oppenheimer. Sean Avery. Yeah. Yeah. There He's trying to get a movie career. Yeah. No longer now American fiction. Now you want to watch Oppenheimer because Sean Avery's Look at the in there. hockey angle. <laughs> the hockey <laughs> angle's got Roy. I don't play Roy. <laughs> so the thing about American fiction that was so interesting to audiences, and when I reviewed it on Nothing Personal, I struggled how to properly describe it mm-hmm. because I did not want to get in trouble. But the concept of the movie is fascinating where Jeffrey Wright plays a very successful author who writes very serious books that – he may think or others may think is in white voice. Right. And then there's Issa Rae. Mm-hmm. Who Issa, writes, Issa, Issa. Issa. Thank yeah. you. Issa Rae who writes in quote unquote black voice and way more popular. Everyone. It's a best selling book. So Jeffrey Wright chooses to write a book in her in this voice that's not his. My pathology. My pathology, <laughs> which is not nice, except it becomes huge. Right. And so as he puts it, I'm going to use all the African-American stereotypes that these publishing world wants. Because he's like, my books don't have this guy overcoming a crack addiction. He doesn't have a single mother. He's not from a broken home. He's like, I'm writing about really, that's what they want. They want that stuff. So he writes it as on a lark. As a and, joke. And unfortunately for him, he gets a $750,000 deal. And he's like, oh my God, now what do I do? So it's, it's ripe for satire, but also a really warm human family drama. And the stuff I thought was, it was impactful seeing the scenes with Tracy Ellis Ross. Greatest Roe versus Wade joke ever. And, you know, her performance in it. And, again, Sterling K. Brown, David, this guy's a scene stealer. I remember seeing him in the OJ series years ago, Ryan Murphy. Of course, This Is Us, he was on. Met him at Celebrity Softball years ago. Great guy. And uh, Where's the, the button? button? Yeah. Look at me. It should have accurate. a side bet for that one today. It is, it is accurate. That Over. Shot. <laughs> but also, i got to mention John Ortiz. Because we had him on Cinephile, and he's an American fiction. He plays the agent who orchestrates the deal with Jeffrey Wright. And Ortiz is an awesome you guy. You guys are best friends now. Dude, he's unbelievable. He said he I wanted mean, to go to a baseball game with you, so you fell in love with him. He's a gigantic baseball game. He might be listening. I'll text him right now. I go, David Sampson's here. He's, his son's name is Clemente, speaking of your oh, Pirates Oh, wow. Hat. Yeah. That's a committed baseball uh, Exactly. Fan. When he said that, I'm like, this a, a gigantic baseball fan. And he said, listen, making American fiction, he was so proud of it. He had a great relationship with Philip Seymour Hoffman, the late great actor. Uh, wonderful in Carlito's way. Plays Pacino's nephew. So I'm really cheering for American fiction. Yeah. No, I, uh, anytime you name your children after the thing you're passionate about, it really lets you into their mindset. Uh, Adnan, is that something that applies to your life? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Mike to get drunk, but my son's middle name is Scorsese. So it's true. That, I did not know that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 
That's you, you did that just so in case you met him one day, you could tell him that. He did meet him. Is, didn't he post pictures from some award show? I think you told him that, though, right? Picture. No, it was De Niro. No, I never De Niro. met Mark De Niro. Yeah, De Niro. Oh, De Niro. De Niro. yeah we're at the yeah. Critics' Choice Awards, and Ben just nudges me. He goes, here's your De Niro moment. And he walks by. I'm like, hey, Bob. He's like, how are you? No, he didn't. He walked he right did. by he you. Did. No, he shook hands yeah, with me. got the photo, shook his hand. <laughs> got the photo. Hey, oh, I saw the photo. Yeah. <laughs> you called him Bob, huh? I did. It's a good to see Bob. Like, yeah. yeah. Good he, for you. You yeah. never met him before. You called him Bob. I've, I've met him before. Well, we had him on Cinephile. Before, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, he's been a guest on Cinephile. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And, I, and as a matter of fact, in that interview, Roy, I started by saying, can I call you Bob? He's like, sure. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Good job. Nobody calls him Robert. You call him Robert. It's way too formal. Now, if I go Mr. De Niro. Mr. De Niro. Now now he feels a little uncomfortable. So we're going Bob. And he's like, sure. I think there's a six-month-old calling him Daddy right now. (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps Robert De Niro's greatest performance. (laughs) Still a father. (laughs) Well, Well, once you're a father, you're a father until you die. Right. Lifetime achievement award. Seventh (laughs) child. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is me and Bob. There it was. Back in the day. It was amazing. It could, it, if he it, wins tonight, supporting a category, it'll be the second time he's won in that category. Obviously, for one of the great two. performances of all time in Godfather 2. Uh, he's, what, 80 years old? And yeah. his first nomination was 44 years ago. So, incredible career. Um, has been nominated a few times in the last few years, too, right. with Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, seventh acting nomination overall. Hasn't been nominated to the Silver Linings Playbook back in 2012. But again, the longevity is amazing. And this is where, David, I think we're going to align on this. We, we agree that Downey's going to win. But De Niro's performance in Killers of the Flower Moon was inc- I know. Did you say it with a straight? Incredible. Like, he was so haunting as Bill Hale. Yeah, I actually had Mark Ruffalo. And I'm not going to say, if we're doing this category, I guess we can do it, is that I had Robert Downey Jr. He's going to win. But for me, the best performance was Mark Ruffalo in Poor Things. Yeah. Why is that? I like him a lot. Uh, He's great. But I thought is, you were going to say De Niro. It is a, first of all, he had to do a sex scene with Emma Stone. Where it was a raunchy. complicated, raunchy sex scene. Cody, I no, told you, it was explicit. It is very explicit. But, but yeah. it makes sense in, in the context <laughs> of the film because you can't, and I, I saw an article where Emma was talking about this, where she's basically saying you can't use society's filter of what's appropriate, what's risque, what's too much right. to then filter through what you're watching because this character is discovering what society is deeming as appropriate or not. I have great sympathy for those who are focused on Emma Stone's performance and being only that she was nude so much yeah there is so much her performance it is yeah. best actress deserving dance scene for the ages one of the, better than the saltburn dancing murder on the dance floor i love the song with him naked but i'm still giving the dancing no. the poor, things. The poor things dance sequence is going to be poor the in the rain. Yeah. that's the scene, scene of the rain the is movie. better are you saying all time or just this year just this year okay, okay. thank you yeah. Great clip. No, singing in the rain all the time. You're right. additive, Roy. There was a dancing in La La Land, right? Oh, incredible. Great the opening dancing. number is unseen, insane. Could you compare it to that? I think that was still better. La La Land. But this is a great dance sequence. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And Emma Stone, back to your point, David, like that's it's an incredibly difficult performance what she's doing. You have the you have the body of an adult, mind of a child, and you're forming it. And, and Yorgos Lanthimos is just a wild director. I mean, we all love the lobster, which is amazing. It's out there. I would tell you that the performance of Emma Stone is so far superior to the other Best Actress performances because not just of what you mentioned, but there's a little second part to this movie that's complicated. She's an Academy Award winning actress. actress. for La La Land, yep. And for La La Land. And she's been nominated a bunch of times. She's, I don't even think she's 35 years old. Nope. And she is making choices that are risque, mm-hmm. that are not safe, and she is owning them and making them her own, she could be, if she wins tonight, I'm throwing this out to you, she is the next Meryl Streep. No, I, I said, don't go in that direction. The road she's a great actress. That's, that's how you do it, David. Meryl Streep. No, that's a reach, Cody. That's insane. She's a great actress. It's a take. And, a, and good friend of Ben Lyons. And I agree with David that she takes a lot of chances. She takes risks, worked with Lanthimos in The Favorites, and I want to make these types of avant-garde films. The next Meryl Streep. Why well, can do can do every style of acting? You want drama, you want period piece, you want future movie, you want super some, bad, contemporary super yeah, comedy, funny. super bad. That's where I first met her. Is on the set of Super Bad, and she has since gone well, no, on to not only hold on, no. Mike, no. Mike, no. I mean, I felt contextually it was covered. No, no, I got the pressure to be one of the first places. I also saw her on the set of House Bunny, which still pays me residuals. So <laughs> what you yeah, yeah, yeah. hold on, how big are your residuals? Yeah, House twenty-eight cents. About as much as I'm making for this show. <laughs> Is that per year? <laughs> wow. 
per day? They're about the same. No, so, but do you get residuals every year? I, I get residuals from the house bunny. Yes, I, I do, David. Um, and is of them. But I, uh, I, back tremendous. to my point about Emma, she started off being in these comedies. The Rocker with uh, yep. Rain Wilson. Mm -hmm. She was in a House Bunny, as I mentioned. But then she took a turn and started to do some dramatic indies. Yeah. And then, obviously, Birdman is a tour de force performance. And imagine having to nail your scene without... without Edits without cuts. There are five minute takes of her walking through that. Birdman's one of the great films and great performances. And yeah. now here she is on the verge she's of potentially a, winning again. She's a huge student of the game, too. Anytime she's interviewed or at these luncheons, she yeah. just goes and finds the people that are making the movies that interest her. And that's why she makes such great choices. I was so I was surprised by your offense to the comp to Meryl Streep. I just think Meryl Streep is on a different level. Like, I, I wouldn't even. The voice of Bart Simpson's girlfriend. <laughs> There's going to be a next Meryl Streep. And in terms of who's living now, who has the chance to be the next Meryl Streep. But they said the same thing about Jennifer actress. Lawrence five years ago. I don't believe I ever said that. J-Law, Civil Lining Spam. Everyone's like, dude, she and, might be the next and Meryl Streep. And then she made no like... hard feelings. And that was the end of that. <laughs> and that was a nude scene that everyone could have what done What about Carrie that. Mulligan in that conversation? She's still young. I think she's young still doing and, it. And Maestro. Always gets critical acclaim. Always makes great decisions. Four I liked her drive. Small, small part in, uh, in Saltburn, which after seeing uh, nine of the ten nominated Best Picture films, I certainly like Saltburn more than a lot of oh. these nominees. I was going to say, thank God Saltburn completely shut out. It's a shame. Zero it's a nominations. Damn shame. You I, loved it. Samson loved it. Zero nominations. I think that Bravo they're, Academy. They're, Excellent <laughs> job at ignoring Saltburn. We've had this debate on the show before. Excellent work. But I do think that there is something for audacity. And Emma Stone got rewarded for going for it. And yeah. I feel like there were actors in that film that went for it. If it was an award for most acting, then it's a different story. But for going best acting, I'm not giving it to Saltburn. Almost, it was also made for me. It's like a coming of age tale in parts. It, there's a lot more going on than just coming of age. <laughs> But Mike Ryan and bathtub scenes. I want more on this. <laughs> people that were in college during that time having the music influence you. I, right. I, I think it was just so artfully done. It looked great. Yeah. Uh, it was at times good to look at and also uncomfortable to look at. But I think movies that leave their mark and, and have moments in it that make you squirm, make you uncomfortable. Uh, Saltburn is a film that stays with you. And um, some of these nominees aren't going to stay with you. But as far as what's gonna happen, but as far as what's gonna happen tonight, do you think that La La Land and Poor Things are gonna run line in line as far as what's gonna happen? Like Emma Stone's gonna probably win her hold, trophy, but will it win Best Picture? Hold that thought, Roy. Get to me in a second. Is right now we get a big gesture. Ben Lines, go ahead. This is one of your celebrity guests. This is all Ben's poll. What do we got? We're here uh, at the stained carpet in Miami, but let's go to the red carpet up, in Ryan? Hollywood. Mario Lopez is joining us yes. from the Oscars red carpet. Mario, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, man. Kind of barely. It's crazy right here. It's 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 more congested and a little wild. Damn, I look fuzzy. This is like a whack ass connection. Are y'all y'all can hear me? No, you look great, Mario. You always look great. Thanks so much for joining us. You said it's a friends you'd seen. Set the stage for us. What's it like being at the Academy Awards again? You know, this is my fifteenth year wow. in a row at the Academy Awards. It's the ninety sixth annual. This one for some reason isn't is ex extra hot. And I mean that in the temperature sense. They have the 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 roof covered with all the, it's like insulated. Everybody's marinating like a swamp rat <laughs> inside got that, here. Got that second shirt on deck, no doubt, Lopez. Uh, you're known for taking shots on these red carpets, too. What are we sipping on tonight on Oscar Sunday? Oh, I got tequila. You all want to see my tequila? Yes, we do. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dixon, uh, Dixon, give me the tequila real quick. The bottle. This is fantastic. You are looking live. <laughs> you, you are looking live at Mario Lopez getting okay. his tequila. Hey, look. It's Cuervo. <laughs> Outstanding <laughs> choice. Well done. Never been so happy that it's fuzzy. <laughs> so you and De Niro taking shots in about an hour, huh? You and Robert well, De Niro taking, taking shots. shots. Who are you taking There's shots no with tonight? Yeah. Hey. Um, lions. What's up? Lion, sorry this shit is so ghetto, but I'm going to get, uh, let me step outside of here for a second. But uh, no, enjoy, good luck with uh, the new gig, Lions. Uh, big fan of his and uh, Levitard and everything you got going on right there. Nice. Um, Thanks, but buddy. I gotta, I better the get tequila back is flowing. Yeah, you got to get back to work. So thank you but for wait, the time. Hey, wait, but before we let you go, Mario, you're a fan of Levitard? Like you, under, you, you like what we're doing here? You're a big boxing guy, Mario. Yeah. Yeah, I like what you guys are doing right there. I'm a big sports fan and I've been following him and. Uh, for a long time, so you know I keep up. 
this entertainment stuff is just a job. It's not what I really watch. <laughs> no, I, I totally got it, man. Do you have any idea what David Sampson is? Last question. Okay. Okay, great. That, 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 that's the answer you're looking for there, Mike. Thanks so much, Thanks, Mario. Thanks, Mario. The best, job. buddy. Appreciate yeah, you. Man, All right, you guys. Unreal. Overlooked yeah, is Greg, Google, Greg Luganis in that TV movie. <laughs> Overlooked, yes, Mario. Yes, Greg Luganis. Overlooked right. for your performance as Greg Luganis, buddy. <laughs> Can I get a but reading it, of what detente means? <laughs> Are you familiar with the definition? Such a joke. So but it would have been humor. incredible. It would have been the ultimate screw you moment to me if you'd gone, David Sampson, love his work. He didn't hear And it. I love that World he Series. Didn't hear the question. <laughs> he said, okay. He said, okay. Yeah, he goes, okay, we're done here. Okay. I like getting that. I like Mario, the fact that he's in on from the red the carpet, carpet yeah. train. I love the fact that he's taking shots of Cuero Tequila. And what makes me even happier <laughs> yeah. is that as the red carpet proceeds, you know, we're about still an hour and a half away from the big arrivals, from Emma Stone going down the red carpet. I thought you were talking about Levitard. Oh, and Levitard. <laughs> Levitard's it, coming at some point, right, Mike? He's not going to pull a Heisman on us. He's not going to. With gonna... his famous popcorn. Okay. Yeah, he was on the phone constantly with me about the popcorn that he's making for our party tonight. He makes gourmet popcorn. I'm not familiar with anything other than he was obsessed with the number of people who were going to be here. <laughs> And How many so, times did he ask him if you were going to be here? Because he texted me about that. Myriad. <laughs> and so I finally went to the producer, Mike Ryan. Yeah. And we just gave him a round number of 25, mm -hmm. which is a lot of popcorn to make. And I asked him, can it be dropped off early because our call time's 2 o'clock? Yeah. No. He so couldn't you brought he your could... own bag of candy. So instead. I had to obviously have to feed myself for the moment. You know, we're on a budget. But, but this, guy ran a, <laughs> this guy ran a half marathon today. I, 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 it's, it's insane. A little dehydrated. That's where the Schmitzig comes with. <laughs> Five drops in the toilet. The um, chat is asking if you're going to finish that off. I'm eating. Not today. Sorry, my mouth sounded full there. Wait, they're, they're, they're asking if you can get through that entire bag and this, like, through tonight. No. No. They, they're challenging. He's, no, he's being no, generous. But I, I don't want to do that. Yeah, he's being generous. He's saying have a little bit of everybody. Sick. Wait, yeah. what's the food status, Cody? Yeah, what is this? There's some good. There's some uh, brie, little baked brie out there. There's some chicken tenders, uh, like a little, like a little, little shakuts. You little know, shakuts. a little setup, a little. Uh, what's this thing called with the bread and the tomatoes? Yeah. Bruschetta. Bruschetta. There you go. Is there a chance that you wore the pirate's hat on purpose because that is the most important prop in the movie Grand Canyon, one of my top five favorite movies? <laughs> what a Grand Canyon! That's exactly pull. why I wrote. That is good pull <laughs> on Grand Canyon. Is there a chance you were thinking that? That's why I did it. Thank you. Because we don't get enough love. I want to get back to Roy. Who's yeah, Roy, what was your question? Yes. Please, the question, please. Go ahead. All right, so do you believe that, as far as winning awards tonight, that La La Land and Poor Things are going to run line in line? Emma Stone's going to win her trophy, but the movie's going to lose Best Picture. Not in the way that it lost uh, La La Land. Not in the way that it lost Classic. that year. But will it end up losing Best Picture? Yeah, listen... <clears throat> What's interesting is people always say, what if there's an upset? Because upsets always do happen. So it's not a fait accompli that Oppenheimer wins. And we all believe it will, but you never know. But Poor Things was nominated for 11 Academy Awards. And Ben, you know this. That's one of those movies the actors love. Like, fellow actors love Poor Things because it's audacious, it's brazen, it's taking chances. We go back to when, and David and I are both huge fans, I'm sure you are too, Broke Back Mountain. I believe it should have won Best Picture, but Crash did. You want to know why? There's a lot of actors in Crash. It's a great actor's movie. Paul Haggis, et cetera, since Disgraced. But it wouldn't be the greatest shock in the world if Poor Things won Best Picture. No, but to that end, so is Oppen Oppenheimer is filled with marquee actors. And talk about great casting. I mean, we mentioned Josh Hartnett earlier, but the list goes on. <laughs> of a lot of people who pop up in that movie. Right. Alden Ehrenreich is a young star who people know his face. They don't know his name. He's tremendous in his scenes opposite Downey. Jason Clark, fantastic. Jason Clark is great. Great as Jerry Goldwyn, West. of course, yeah. the president of the United United States from Scandal. He's wonderful in, in the film as well. Um, in terms of poor things, I think he should have gotten a 12th nomination. Willem Dafoe is probably awesome. the funniest performance of the year in any oh, movie. He's I agree. insane. Well, in you that know what film. happened. He's playing a eunuch. Bobby De Niro took his slot. I know. No, that, I, go ahead, Mike. I, I know that we're going to have Oscar trivia provided by Jeffrey uh, Lyons early uh, later on in this show. Uh, however, you touched on what happened to La La Land, and many people in the Levitard family are tuning into this because they trust your taste. Uh, curators and whatnot, and they may not be familiar with that. And I know we're going to get into Oscar history a little bit later. Do you think the Academy got that wrong? Because for those that don't know, it's a very awkward moment with Warren Beatty where La La Land got announced, and it turned out that the award belonged to Moonlight. Now, I'm on this social media platform called Letterboxd, and they have some statistics out there on La La Land is the most rewatched Best Picture nominee according to that social media platform, which I found interesting. Did they get it wrong and also, did they? You, you mentioned Marissa Tomei winning one time, and your dad being the only person that nailed that. There's a long 
conspiracy theory that what happened to La La Land happened back then. Jack Palance read the wrong name, and Warren Beatty perhaps a bit of a veteran. Perhaps. Um, It's an interesting fact about La La Land being the most watched film after it won Best Picture, because I feel like once it lost in that, in the way it lost, it became kind of cool to hate on La La Land. Like, a lot of people, when you talk about the film now, kind of turn their nose up at I it. I loved it. I loved it. It was loved my favorite it. film of that year. Uh, I do have a soft spot in my heart because of my dad for those kind of 1930s, 40s musicals, and that reminded me of those Singing in the Rain type of movies. It's a tremendous film and, and deserved the best picture that year, I believe. I love Moonlight as well. Um, but I don't understand. If I, your dad there, is the third most famous movie critic in the history of movie critics. Would you agree? People may not know who your dad is. Do you have him as the number three most famous It's Siskel and Ebert. Pauline Kale, Jeffrey Lines. He's on the Mount Rushmore. Oh, the late great Joel Jeffrey Siegel Lines as well, third. who was Joel his friend. Siegel's Joel great was, too. was wonderful. I always had Jeffrey Lines as three behind Siskel and you, on, on your power rankings for movie power critics. Rankings. Gene Shalit. <laughs> Samson, Gene I know. Gene Shalit is a great pull on boy. Gene Shalit is mustache. Put some yeah. respect on that man. Yeah. I know what you're insinuating about Ben. He works hard, all right? I'm talking about his father. Like Nepo, that. baby. No, no, no. Nepo right. babies, what we're going with here. That's poster okay. child for Nepo babies. That's not what I. That is not an insult. Ben. I mean, I'm talking about, about my that. grandfather's cufflinks. Yeah, I was going to say Leonard Lyons, the friend of Hemingway. Come on, yeah. yeah. No, there's Jeffrey Lyons right now. Classic you, shot there. Dude, this for 90 years. Your grandfather was friends with Hemingway. Yeah, Leonard Lyons. Yeah, Hemingway was actually best friends with my grandfather. My grandfather announced to the world of his passing. My father actually released a book recently called Hemingway and Me. I've read it. Was featuring a lot of letters between the two of them. Uh, but yeah, my grandfather knew, knew Ernest very well. I announced my dad went to his, his my, my, da- <laughs> my dad <laughs> went to his <laughs> house in Cuba when he was a boy. Yeah. He spoke at the Cuban, uh, the, the Hemingway Museum in Cuba. So yeah, Hemingway means a lot in our family. Well, I feel like this is a, a perfect on-ramp to have our first trivia question of the broadcast. So you guys put on your thinking hats, uh, maybe slam a drink or two mm-hmm. to get that mind Sounds like a good on. idea. Uh, here Love that, boys. is our uh, first trivia question, courtesy of Jeffrey Lyons. Time for some Oscar trivia. Who was a surprise guest who shared the podium with Sylvester Stallone when Stallone's movie Rocky won for Best Picture? Remember the speech, David, when well, Stallone that's, won hold for... Hold on, that's got to be 1976 Oscars or 77 Oscars? 76 Oscars, good job. Uh, Same year as Taxi Driver, should have won. Sup- you, you didn't watch those Oscars. No. No. Do you know the answer to this? I don't. I've you're no eating a lot in the captain's chair. Can you explain why you're doing that? You can. I step thought. Out. I thought Jeffrey Lyons going to have like a two minute thing. That's why I thought Mike was like, "Hey, Chris is eating. There we have tenders no here." I honestly thought Mike was like, "Hey, uh, this is a good time." It was like a, like a two minute thing. You guys go back and forth yeah. on on the. We BS. just I talked about, about it was like a five lo- minute layout. Okay, we got time. Gotta... We just talked about his love of Hemingway, who famously said, "What advice to writers? Pretend the words are being tattooed on your back, and you'll choose them wisely." So my dad chose his words wisely and gave us our first Oscar trivia question of the night. Who? It wouldn't be Carl Weathers, obviously. So it's someone not related to Rocky. It could be someone who we may have acted with or wrote something with prior to Rocky, I'm going to go with someone I probably wouldn't have recognized at the time. We play? have some conviction on this side of the glass. Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, it's Muhammad Ali. That's the easiest question you're going to get. <laughs> wow. Wow. It was Muhammad Ali. Stallone had no idea he was standing behind him. And he turned around and they went into a boxing match. And Ali kept saying, you stole my story. You stole my story. Oscar trivia. I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's dad. Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey Lyons nailed it. He dismounted like Jeremy Schapp. That was an amazing <laughs> sign off. I don't know what's better. The question, I how well that. Jeffrey delivered I that. that. I mean, Roy Bellamy, one, expert that. zero. That sound That's clip is labeled Muhammad Ali question, so maybe Roy could have cheated. Uh, no, 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 he didn't oh, cheat. No, Roy no, knew. No, 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 no way. No way. A top draft pick when it comes to trivia night. I'm telling you right there, that is his sweet spot. I have several concerns right now that are making me anxious. And okay. I need to just bring it up, please, because we have many hours. To you have a lot of agenda. Okay, what do you, got? you have Dan's chair. Yeah. And what you're doing now is there are food particles from what you're eating right. going onto Dan's microphone. No. I have some level of concern about how that. You think happening. Dan doesn't eat in that chair? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. You think this is an issue? It's the first time somebody's eaten with their mouth full in this chair. <laughs> I wanted to go back to seriously being the son of a film critic, and Jeffrey Lyons, David is right, is a brilliant critic. That's very sweet of you to say. No, it's, you. In all honesty, if anyone doesn't know who Jeffrey I used to Lyons, read it's all, all of them. his, he, all of his yeah. movie. It's a brilliant you, writer. You, the you. first time I met Ben, I said, "Oh my God, your dad!" I said, "29th Street," which is a great, great film. I said, "I remember the blurb." 
Like, that's when you know you're a movie nerd. You remember blurbs from certain critics. And his blurb about 29th Street was, it's like Goodfellas meets It's a Wonderful Life. And I said, not only is that a great blurb, it's a great movie. And I said, please let your dad know. Like, I've, I've memorized passages what he's written. Like, it's that's, great. That's very sweet of you to say. Honestly, some of my fondest memories, and I think a big reason why I fell in love with film, was getting to go to screenings with him and the late, great Joel Siegel and Bill Bergoli and the late, great Gilbert Godfrey, who we used to go to screenings with when I was a kid. Amazing. And uh, I, I just those, those memories of walking up 7th Avenue after you see a film and it's washing over you and you're able to talk about it and articulate your thoughts about it. That's where my love of movies movie started. I don't anymore. I did at a time. I'm covering, you know, I got the Knicks are battling for a six seed. Yeah. You know, we, if we it wasn't for Isaiah we, Hartenstein, yeah, you'd still be watching like the, all time. You know, they traded for OG on an OB, so I, <laughs> I can't necessarily watch a film a day. Uh, but no, s- film has been obviously a huge part of our family's life and, and continues to did be. Did you get food stuck in your teeth, Adnan? It's it's so bad. Okay, I can't Mike, even we're talk fine. about this. I don't want floss. to talk about Adnan <laughs> He was, I can't did, believe. Did, you, did yes. your dad watch a movie every day? Oh, yeah, some days three or four. I mean, he was, you know, running around screening rooms in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, long before links, long before Netflix and streaming, the idea of having to go to the theater. I mean, that man has spent more time, you know, I remember going to see Pluto Nash with him. You remember what? that film? Eddie Murphy? Adventures Eddie of Pluto Murphy. Nash. And Terrible. I, and yeah, he, uh, he, good he, correction. Yeah, yeah. 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 I wanted the full to title of there. Uh, I remember Luis Guzman in that film saved the movie for us. One of those great character actors. You know, everybody He's thinks, like John Ortiz. Yeah, Luis being, a, being a film critic is great. You get to see all these movies early. You get to interview all these actors. Yeah, but when it's two o'clock on a Tuesday in June and you got to go see Pluto Nash, you never appreciate how many crappy movies you have to watch. I, I do the same thing. I, I watch a movie every day. Look at me, Louis. Please, Mike. No, that's, that's, that's why he asked that question. There's no context that's why, to that. That's why There's he no asked context. that question. Uh, yeah. That's why he asked no. that question. He wanted to make it about himself. He was like, "Does your dad? Does your dad watch movie every day?" Because I do. But that's yeah. expertly done, so play on. <laughs> I want to get back to La La Land and what yeah. happened with yeah, Warren please. Beatty yeah. and Faye Dunaway. They obviously are an on-screen <laughs> pair, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. They're, they're Bonnie octogen- and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. They're, they're, awesome. octo- they're octogenarians. Excellent word. Which is use fine. Word. Yeah. They get on stage, and they're in doing best picture, which is the most important word of the night. I don't know who's actually doing best I don't picture either. tonight. So we'll see who that is. Maybe Jack Nicholson comes out of his house. I'd love to see Jack Nicholson. Very unlikely. Haven't seen him at the Laker games this year. It'd be nice to see him do that. Yeah. He's become agoraphobic. Mm. It's not optimal. So they get, they get an envelope from Ernst and Young, and apparently the wrong envelope was given to Warren Beatty, and he had the envelope for Best Actress, which had just been announced. When you open that envelope, it says Emma Stone, who had won, and La La Land. So Warren Beatty opens the envelope. He ignores the name Emma Stone, Stone and just reads La La Land. And it was the wrong category. I, I think he was goaded by Faye Dunray. Uh, yeah, because you said, go ahead. They were both confused. Right. And so everyone from La La Land comes up. They're celebrating. And then all of a sudden, the producers got involved. They bum rush the stage. They take the microphone. They have the real best picture envelope. And they show that it's Moonlight. So in one of the great moments in Oscar history, right. the Moonlight producers come on the stage Jeremy while the Clyder, La La Land, Land guys are still there, and La La Land is giving their thank yous. And then they find out they didn't win. So what they say is, hey, congratulations, Moonlight. Very well deserving. That producer had a moment where it could have gone backwards. Yeah. And he was tremendous. Moonlight comes on, and they win Best Picture. Because I'm not kidding, guys. I'm not kidding. Look at the envelope. Look. And that's the famous shot. And Barry Jenkins is beside himself. And when we did that award show, we did that Oscars that year, you were the first one on our staff and our team to recognize what was going on because yeah. there was so much confusion. There was so much uncertainty. And that's where we get the legendary Moonlight won Best Picture call from Matt Anver. Do we have that audio or no? Is it? Yeah. We'll get it. All right, yeah, stall. By. We'll get to a <laughs> second. In the meantime, though, we have our second look from the red carpet. As David said earlier, it's a big night for Asians. And he's right. Because as you can see here, those are Asian people on the red carpet. So you are absolutely bang on. Being told <laughs> That's <this> four is. <laughs> Asians. Godzilla minus one. That is a massive night. So... Make it five Asians. It's Godzilla minus one with four Asians. Oscar this, nominated Godzilla Oscar nominated. minus right. one. That's right. First time in the long Best history visual of, effects. First time I believe in the long history of Godzilla that Godzilla is nominated. King Kong having received nominations over the years. Yeah. So that, that age old rivalry continues. <laughs> it's a great in point. In this bet. era of clipping, <laughs> I, <like that. laughs> I would like to just say for the record, yeah. Agents. Oh, no, no, come on. It's not what you Just said. so when we clip no, it, Cody's right. I it's thought for very sure. clear. <laughs> Let's give our picks because that's the category. It's going to be Godzilla minus one. Yeah, it's going to win. 
So you Spielberg actually... met those guys and was like, I loved your film. And they're like, they almost fainted. Like, wow, Steven Spielberg loves Godzilla minus one. It's going to win. three of us happen to agree. Yeah, we all have Godzilla We all winning, believe uh, that it's Godzilla. Special, special, well, I'm, pulling for, I'm pulling for Napoleon, quite honestly. Because you want... <laughs> that movie got zero appreciation. I didn't think it was great, but it was better than the critical reception and the drubbing that it got. Did you like Napoleon? Once it, once it was not nominated, I haven't seen it yet. Because yeah. I focus on the Oscars. No, movies. and you and I are very similar so in that respect. Now I need to... I will, of course, watch it because I love Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. But I'm that comes in the category of post... Yeah, but Ridley Scott's got some great. Movies. I mean, that guy's an incredible director. Incredible He's, director, and it's also tough though. It's tough though when you when you have a film that is made for Oscars, right? That's what that's what Napoleon's made for. It's yeah. made for awards consideration. Joaquin, Correct. the film, and it just comes up. Yeah, David, what are you eating? What are you doing? Jeez, man, what are you munching away here. What are you trying to do a show here? You also got to remember to mic yourself after you're done eating, please. <laughs> that was awesome I don't too. Mike had a quick catch. With I saw Mike on. Yeah, no, no. I'm trying just, to be. Uh, this David, is a dangerous trying... game. You're making this so much yeah. more difficult. We're trying to do a show. You know, here, hey, hey, go, go, go ahead. Eating? Go ahead. Eat, eat your goddamn jelly beans. Here's my call when I was at the Oscars. Moonlight won Best Picture. And a true actor's reacts, and that's what he did. The incredible film. He reacted. He listened, and it was really beautiful. Wait, wait. Moonlight's won Best Picture. Moonlight won Best Picture. Whoa, we have a little... Oh, my goodness. Warren Beatty apparently read the wrong name. This is incredible. Oh Moonlight won God. Best Picture. A drama I'm here at the Academy stunned. Awards. Wow. This is like Steve Harvey. Remember that? Whoa. Oh. Still a great night, though, Andrew. Oh. Still a great night. Oh no, no, no. no. This is shocking. Wait, this is, my, wait, this is my... I, I'm so happy right now. And Jimmy God. Kimmel just said, personally, I blame Steve Harvey. That's the first thing <laughs> oh I thought of. This is unbelievable, guys. This Moonlight. What a call by Adnan. No, Still a great night, Adnan. Still a great <laughs> night. Still a great the night. The Steve Harvey moment, Cody. Everyone remembers that. That was the first thought we had. But it was Columbia. It was incredible. Where were you for that? So Literally, ben, where were you? It's all thanks to Ben. Ben, you tell the story of how it was orchestrated. So we are uh, set up right where the actors come for that photo call when they're holding their Academy Award and they're being presented to the photographers for the first time. We were stationed right to the side of that. So as winners would come in and take their photos in front of all the press, we were sitting right there. Uh, and you're live. Backstage, we're live. We're at the, was it the Kodak Theater? Yeah. The Dolby the Theater Kodak. at the time? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and, and what's incredible about that place, it's like a maze of movie stars. I mean, you tell the famous story from when you went on a bathroom break and who you ran into that day. So go to the bathroom break. You time out your bathroom breaks when you're at these things. <laughs> if if totally. you listen to Cinephile, you know this. Absolutely. My man is always watching. <laughs> you, you stand to see if Richard Gere is getting up. No, no. Paul Schrader, years ago, Critics' Choice Awards, I follow him, and he goes to the bathroom, and I'm like, you're okay, I, I, no, I've got to talk to him about Taxi Driver. And Paul Schrader's in there a little longer than I thought about. When he came out, I just said, Paul, i got to tell you, First Reform is an incredible film. It's my favorite movie. He's like, oh, thank you so much. I'm like, yeah. I went, Everything okay with your bathroom? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. I go, okay, that's right. I was just waiting for 10 minutes. That's fine. But anyways, Taxi Driver, I don't know how he didn't win an Oscar for that. You, you, and you accosted Giamatti by the bathroom Giamatti, this year, too, by Critics' the way. Choice yes. Awards as well. Paul Giamatti, but we love Giamatti. It is known. Okay. That's the place to see stars at these things is the bathroom. I try not to be creepy, but I have a creepy Paul Giamatti story. Okay, uh, um, let me just quickly tell this story. I wonder I, who's I, I, creepier. Yeah, let's, no, let's anyways. match creeps. Well, no, but <laughs> I think Adnan's got this in the bag. <laughs> but go ahead. I certainly didn't go follow him to the restaurant. Hide the women and children when these creeps are around. I go to the bathroom, I come back, and it's Kobe Bryant. And I was like, oh, my God. With his like, Oscar. He just yeah. won an Oscar. Dear basketball. Dap it and up. I'm like, yo, let's get a picture. He's like, yeah, it was great. And he was just like, he was... I, mean, I think about it now, obviously, with, with such yeah. uh, poignance, but he was just so excited. Like, he, he was, was such a kid in the candy store. He yeah. was such a kid. He was such youthful enthusiasm and genuine shock to be in that moment. Yeah. And that's what's really cool about the Oscars is that you have these larger than life actors, basketball players, or whoever, the directors, yeah. and they're nervous and they're like, overly excited. And Kobe, in that moment, I just remember you, oh. he was just like a child. Because think about it, he was the elite at his profession and he's the elite at another profession. It's remarkable. Go ahead. I am uh, wearing sunglasses right now, not just because it's a Hollywood day, but because of the glare coming off of David Sampson's skin. I am sending. I am sending Jesse, our makeup artist, Thank in you. there. We need to do something well, I, about. I have this. a better idea. Why don't you just let Sampson go see Jesse, and if he's gone for a little bit, it's not the worst. Can we talk? I mean, about it's the captain's Wayne call. Wayne. We got a ten minute break here. Yeah, you know, David, why don't you just go take a? <laughs> you gave me not put me in the penalty <laughs> box. I appreciate the ego trip you're on, but I'd rather see Jesse. Out here looking like Richard Nixon Wayne. in a president. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't yeah. like it while he oh, yeah. <laughs> I am not a crook. Go ahead. Uh, Jesse, go ahead and just grab Can we that talk side about here. Dwayne Wade being on the red <laughs> yeah, carpet, yes. please? D Wade, D Wade, Oscar nominated producer. Look at look at what what a what a how about that? What a vain charlatan you are. Look at you. Preening, 
posturing. Jesse's going to come in here on a Sunday just to deal with you. This is terrible. This is a new low in metal arc history. I don't think we can get any lower than Jesse this. Jesse no, loves Sam- to get lower. Samson getting powdered up. God, you're so vain. Is Wade going to win? Okay, sorry, Ben. Tell the story. Well, what, what story? Oh, I'll, I'll tell the story. Wade. Wade. story. Is Dwayne Wade nominated? nominated? Yes, yeah, so what happened is the movie The Barber of Little Rock, which is up for documentary short. I've seen all five documentary shorts. It's excellent. It talks about specifically economic inequality in Little Rock, Arkansas. I, 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 a little touch-up? Uh, right. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> learning this okay. for the first time. Is Dwayne Wade Yeah, so Dwayne producer? Wade saw the Roy, you like this. Dwayne Wade saw the movie and said, I'll put my name on it to help the pub a little bit. Executive produced. It's amazing. If Roy knows this, if a white man goes to the bank in Arkansas or in the Deep South, it's different than if a black man goes. So you have a series of black businesses. They can't get off the ground. So it's called The Barber of Little Rock. He literally starts encouraging others around him to not only get into hairstyling, but says he, he adopts a program where you can give money, and he gives out loans. And that's, that's where the so story So where are you on that category? LebertardAF.com ballot. You have till 7 p.m. Eastern, yeah. and then it closes. The contest closes. Documentary short, I went with The Last Repair Shop. Which was my favorite of the five. got to say, the second favorite was Barber of Little Rock. Go for The that? Last Repair Shop, I, I just don't think it's going to win, but I think it's an incredible film. But you, you didn't go for The Barber of Little Rock either. No, I, I'm going to go with the ABCs of book banning because I think book banning is such a hot topic right now. I think it's going to win. But I saw all five. I thought it was the weakest of the five. Nay Nay and Waipo, sweet movie about a couple of Asian grandmothers, which I know you love. So that was definitely one that Samson's in on. Stop. The Last Repair Shop's incredible. Story about literally a mu- music shop in Los Angeles. And it's about the stories not only of the kids, but about the people who repair these instruments, cellos, oboes, etc. Very powerful. Island in Between is about the island in between China and Taiwan and kind of being in the middle of nowhere. Barbara of Little Rock, I mentioned, and ABC is a book banning. I found it to be heavy-handed and pretentious, but book banning is such a big topic right now. I think some of the Academy Awards like to make a statement, so I think ABC is a book banning wins. Will Dwayne Wade, if he wins, no, he's he a, will, does no. he accept executive the award? producer? No, he's like no, he's, he's not executive producer. producer. He just put his name on, on to help. Yeah, He'll but. join the likes of Mike Connolly and Kevin Durant, who won as executive producers two years ago for a live action short directed by Trayvon Free, Two Distant right. Strangers. Can we yeah. teach people what executive producing really means? Getting it done. It means you write the checks. It's getting it yeah. done. That's make it, it happen. Figure it out. But D. Wade, uh, obviously, has figured out his post-playing career and is doing lots of exciting things. And the fact he's at the Oscars, I think, is very cool. He's Once looking again, very sharp. Cinematic sports great. storytelling. I'd love to know exactly what he's wearing because it is a fantastic-looking tuxedo. He's with his wife, Gabrielle Union. We will scrape that look, and you guys can go over in great detail in a moment. It is well, pretty impressive. Well, I, I remember I, we, Ben and I went to the Uncut Gems you got to send that screening in L.A. Oh, and afterwards, yeah. we're talking to the Safdie brothers. And I said, Scorsese executive produced it. What did Marty do? He goes, nothing. He just liked it. He goes, I put my name on it if it helps out. Great. Th- that's-, that's, that's what you dream about is trying to get somebody's name on something. That is what the goal is in business often. Mm-hmm. In New York, do you see all the Trump buildings? No. Oh. Trump didn't build those buildings. Trump was paid. He licensed his name. He didn't pay for those buildings. He didn't pay for the people who built the buildings. He didn't do anything. And so in movies, if you can get someone like Robert De Niro or someone like Martin Scorsese or anyone of that ilk Mm -hmm. to like your project, that is the same as a green light. And that is – that's the – the color you dream of. And it helps, you know, bring trust to the project for potential financiers or people who are investing in the project. If they know yes. someone of that caliber is attached to it, then it's probably a real thing. I'm so glad you mentioned the Uncut Gems screening that we went to. Benny Safdie, of course, another one of the great actors who's in Oppenheimer. But Adnan did something at that screening. D. Wade does look fantastic. He looks amazing. You can see right now. Him and Gabriel, you know, as David was mentioned. Can you share what you, what you did to Benny Safdie after we saw Uncut Gems? David will appreciate this. He'll back me up. Uncut this. Gems? Uncut Gems, Safdie Brothers. Did you ever see it? Adam Sandler gambling movie? I was one of Josh Safdie's muses for Uncut Gems. I didn't know that. You'll have to finish that story. Thing. What okay. does that mean? <laughs> How old are these two? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Anyways. I mean, so- we, we did your Steve Harvey pop culture reference. <laughs> Let me get my dated one. I can't believe you got him on that. that was Cut really Gems. Good. We just passed 45 entries. Oh, yeah, 4,500 4, entries. Yeah, I was about to ask for the latest for update. we got to get to 5,000. We've still got There's an hour, hour and 40, 40 until the show go. begins. Make sure you go on lebitardaf.com, mm-hmm. where, of course, all the merch is available. Yeah. But fill out a ballot and try to beat me. Try to win. I got mine. We can only hope. Did you you fit you did it right having seen by this would be perfect for you to win having not watched one movie. Exactly. 
That's one gun. Brought, brought you back to high school where you're just filling out like a Scantron without knowing anything. Yeah, Aver- everything's Aver- C. Aver- Aver- all the way down. Everything is C. Well, yeah. maybe not everybody's high school experience, but certainly mine and yours. What which is why we're here. I'm taking a uh, big poll. C guy. What <laughs> was the way bank. that you would answer a question on a Scantron when you didn't know what it was? And I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna start off by telling you what mine was. Nobody cares. I would we're look going. at the second hand on the clock. If it were between 0 and 15, I'd put A, 15 to 30, wow. B, 30 to 45, C, 45 to 60, D. And if there's an E. You're insane. Wait, what was your plan? I, I, that, I had a plan. Abacadabra all the way down. I just go, <laughs> only, I go down. only C unless there's an all of, of the above option. Then I click D. Even if What if there's all of the above and none of the above? Oof. Well, then we're screwed. <laughs> then How are your results there? Yeah. yeah. I went to Wisconsin, and I'm here with you guys, and I have a World Series. Oh. No, listen, yeah. yes, the you Wisconsin part is great. Why couldn't World you Series have made. done that for the Cabrera trade? Oh, we <laughs> wait. Is we bring up Cam Maven? What is going on? <laughs> they he looked up at the clock. He's like, "All right, we're giving him Andrew yeah. Miller." Hey, yeah, let's get no, Rebello. How about none of the above? Andrew Miller. <laughs> listen, they're not baseball people. If, they if I said Cam Maven was a top. Absolute yeah, stud, the five tool prospect, Would twenty years of age. Would you say Cameron Maven was the same as Holiday of the Orioles? Yes, today? absolutely. You know, can't and miss you prospect don't know against that is, absolute but stud. Yeah, but he Jackson missed. Holiday right. now the Orioles. So what yeah. about for the Yelich trade? I didn't do that. Okay. Well, then you won't. You, you blame me? For no, the no, no, no. I, I blame you for, for everything that goes wrong there. So I apologize. Who should I bestow that honor to? Mike Hill. <laughs> Jeter. Okay, uh, Ben. Uh, for those that uh, maybe are filling out a bracket for the first time here. I don't find the experience all that rewarding because I naturally want to put what I like the most in there, but we're trying to win and beat Samson here. What is your strategy? Yeah, we're done with the should win, will win, right? This is all will win. It's very hard when your heart is in it. You have a connection to a particular performance or an actor or somebody in the technical categories. Like, I would love to see D-Wade be part of an Oscar-winning film. I think that would be incredible for sports storytelling and for for cinematic. uh, What you're looking at is the website. Yes, the website. All you do is we're, click we're it. live. Uh, are you picking Emma Stone? I'm going to pin you, pin you, you down. Really, there. You, did you pick Emma Stone? Yeah, did you pick her? I, I did not pick Emma. Whoa! Stone. We're not doing Best Actress right now. I did now. not pick Emma. Does she Stone. know? Well, yeah. Uh, I, if, well, she's obviously watching this on the way to the uh, to the awards. From so, her Emma, yeah. I appreciate phone, yeah. you. Thank you for getting hey, me in Emma. the house, funny. But I'm sorry, I didn't pick you for poor things. Love you. Love you and super bad. Ben knows this. Everyone actually. Everyone actually calls her Emily. If someone calls her Emma Stone, she's very. Appropriate. She always says Emily is how people refer to me. Let me tell the Safety Brothers story yes, quickly. Yes, go. Uncut the creepy gems. story? No, no. Uh, we still need your creepy Giamatti story. your creepy story. Which one? You said you had a really no, creepy story. No, you said story. he had a creepy story. You yeah. said it's creepy. Um, this one, this one is just awkward and uncomfortable. When we yeah. saw Uncut Gems, it wasn't the official premiere, but it was like an L.A. special screening. Correct. Sandler, the Softies are there. It's a whole thing. I think Garnett was there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you went up to Benny after the movie. Big, big, big fan of your, and Roy's going to love this. Big fan of your film, loved it. Just one little thing. He's like, yeah, I said, there's a scene where Adam Sandler goes and goes to his daughter's room, comes back, goes, put ESPN back on. It's Kevin Harlan calling the game. Yeah. It's not ESPN. It's, it's a Turner game. Yeah. And but he's like, what I go, I'm just letting you know. He's like, what do you mean? I go, he misidentifies. He says, put ESPN back on, but the game's on TNT. He quickly grabs his phone, looks like he has the movie on his phone, goes for it. So I'm like, yeah. And Ben's like, oh my God, like the, the color is draining from this guy. So he's like, oh, what else am I going to let him know? Let why him know. would you do that? Like, why would you say that to someone who just showed the film? The film's amazing. I Why said it was you? great. I'm just giving you a heads up. Go yes. back into editing and fix it. Exactly. Well, I get agree. This I'm trying to save you. That's that's not you creepy. also that's should have alerted creepy. them that you can't actually parlay who wins the tip off. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's unreal that they chose that. Yeah. I, I okay. am worried that I will win the creepy story. No, but we love now. Giamatti, so it's okay. I'm going to give you a pass. Because that story is not that smart. People want to hear that. Okay, good. I assume. I love Giamatti. What was the Did Giamatti movie it? where. A good, I know when the movie came out. It's no, not no, it's in, it's still in there. Yeah. Um, what's the Giamatti movie where he plays like a falconer? Uh, it, oh, yeah, yeah, a ho- the hawk is dying. Yes, yeah. that's such a good one. <laughs> falconer. Yeah, he plays a, <laughs> look, this picture is great. We gotta get it was Sundance. And, yes, two thousand six. Talking Sundance. about that movie. That's right. The hawk is Sundance, dying. Uh, a long time ago. He uh, he was awesome with he you. He told me in that interview that he considers being an actor like a professional dilettante. Yeah. And that you take on a skill set, you learn it for a little bit, and then you kind of move on to the next thing. And if you're lucky as an actor, you, you've you've taken on so many different interesting roles at the end of your life you're you're kind of an interesting person yourself 
Yeah. Um, you know, his uh, his rise from pig vomit to the Academy Awards. Which I rewatched again. Private at part as well. still holds up. What's shocking is it doesn't show up till an hour ten into the movie. It's an hour forty five minute film, and you got to wait an hour ten for Giamatti, but he's absolutely people fine. love him more for my big fat liar. He said he goes for years. I I got recognized by private parts. Then it was my big fat liar. Then it became a sideways. Is it just big fat liar or my big fat? liar? It's just big fat liar. Oh, my big fat yeah, Greek wedding. Yeah, that I can yeah. too. Yeah. Thank you. All right, creepy GMI story. David Stamps on the floor is yours. Uh, this is a true story. He went to Yale Drama School. Yeah. And Dad, I, of course, famously. And that. I was on a – his father is the former commissioner of baseball, Bart Giamatti, mm-hmm. who is the one who suspended Pete Rose for life. And then Bart Giamatti, upon suspending Pete Rose, dropped dead of a heart attack. Right. And Bud Selig would not reverse that, and that's why Pete Rose is still not eligible because he didn't want to upset – Bart Giamatti and what his decision was. In his memory, we will not unsuspend Pete Rose. That's Correct. exactly right. And I have always wanted to meet Paul Giamatti. He doesn't like being the son of Bart Giamatti. He doesn't talk about baseball, doesn't like yeah. baseball. Right. Wow. But I was on a my I was on a board at Yale. My kids went to Yale. And I got myself into a dinner where Paul Giamatti was going to come. Look at me, Lou. I'll wear that one. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. Ivy League son of a <laughs> they, I am a Wisconsin guy, so I I got myself into a dinner where Paul Giamatti was going to be, and I got myself at the table where Paul Giamatti was going to be, and we all had name tags, and I went, I got my name tag, and he did not come, and I went back to the table, and I took his name tag, oh, and okay. I still have it. <laughs> Yep, it's not went, that creepy. No, uh, it's pretty creepy. No, I don't think it's that bad. It's, and and I, I just It's love, not good. It's not <laughs> ideal, but I, I, I grant you, at least I don't have it on set of Nothing Personal as part of my memorabilia collection. Right. It's in sort of a drawer of other creepy things. And so I want him to win tonight. And I think that this is a perfect opportunity to segue as we approach 5.30. We're an hour and a half away. Mm-hmm. And I want everything to be positive, but there's a major negative around these Oscars tonight. We're going to talk holdovers here? We oh, have to. Man. Yeah. This is big news. The yeah. holdovers nominated for Best Picture. It's nominated for Best Screenplay. Paul Giamatti for Best Actor. Divine Joy Randolph is going to win for Best Supporting Actress. Spoiler alert. Alexander Payne, one of my favorite movie makers. Two-time Academy Award winner for Screenplay. Sideways in The Descendants. Go ahead. One of the best. Awesome. He is being charged. And I don't want to say it's criminal, but there's going to be a lawsuit that he plagiarized, he was a part of plagiarism, that The Holdovers was a script that was not made that he saw and then did The Holdovers. I was shocked when I read this story. You guys sent it to me the other day. It's devastating for not only the filmmakers and and everybody involved with that film, for just the industry at large. You don't want this going into Hollywood's biggest night, especially for a film that a lot of people say is the favorite in that category Mm -hmm. of original screenplay. So definitely not a good look. It's not the last we're going to hear of this story. It's going to be a benchmark case in Hollywood, especially now with AI and all these things happening around writing in in Hollywood. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how it plays out. The the hope for the Academy because all the votes are in mm-hmm. when this voting went, closed a Tuesday ago so it's been like ten days so ago. when this get, this was leaked purposely because it's very good time to leak this because mm-hmm. you're not going to impact the result but you're going to get high visibility and they can change after the fact the credit for the writing of the holdovers they can give the original writer really? money. They can do all sorts of things really? if this lawsuit happens. It's the moment happens. that I'm hoping for, just as a, an agent of chaos, is nice, for this to, to win Best Screenplay, and you have this controversy surrounding it. Do, do we give this Grammy back now? Is it a Millie it's Vanilli moment? an Oscar. I know, that's a Millie Vanilli impression. Did they have they, to give they, back the Grammy? They, yeah, they had a press conference where, I don't, I don't know if it was Millie or Vanilli, but they stood up. And they said, should we give this Grammy back now? And I think Mariah got it. Like the ESPN Emmys? Yep. Should we give this Grammy? I was going for a more dated pop culture reference than Steve Harvey. I think I found it. Mike's raised the bar now. Now, Blame it on the rain. We all agree, the three of us here, we all agree that that moment that Mike wants so badly is not going to happen. The three of us are aligned that in the original screenplay that – the aforementioned Anatomy of a Fall is going to be the winner. Right. Again, lebitardaf.com, you want to beat me. I've given you now three or four of my picks. I, I so like watching could... these broadcasts, though, because of the surprises early, and then I start drawing conclusions. I'm like, whoa, 
is this a this could spell big things for Anatomy of a Fall if it ends up taking screenplay? And to that point, Mike, when Mad Max Fury Road, oh, was I was going, just thinking that when it that was going together, on a run, yes. you go, "Oh my God, this is gonna be incredible!" Every I, technical category, yeah. I'm but, like, "This is it!" And like, this is gonna be a massive, moment, a great, great film, landmark action film. George Miller's gonna have his moment, and then it didn't happen. But it felt like a runaway freight train. You know train that people on. get confused about why that's the case. There are individuals within the Academy who vote in their categories. The only category that everyone gets to vote for is Best Picture. Mm -hmm. You don't get Paul Giamatti voting for visual effects. Right. And so it is very unlikely that you'd have that, Mike, where there's some sort of run yeah. where all of a sudden there's that excitement down, down ballot. Mm -hmm. It's not like people, what we do with our ballot that is not the actual way the Academy Awards are voted for. Right. Which is how it should be, to be honest. The different branches of the Academy are siloed, I believe, for a reason, to truly have the leaders and best people in that industry judging and commenting on voting on these categories. Right. The nominees come out, and almost we've seen everything. And the one for cinematography, I'm like, wait, what? El Conde. Which, again, the cinematographers are voting for that. It's a very small film, which not many people saw. But I'm like, okay, within the cinematographer's branch, they saw that movie, they appreciate it, and they loved it. So we'll see. Coleman Domingo is on the carpet. You're all in on Rustin, movie. by the way. Well, Rustin is an important movie that everyone should see. It's Roy, if you want one movie to see, Rustin. You're just saying that because he's black and it's about no. a civil rights leader. N no. Supporting actor. That's my pick. <laughs> I mean, he did open the door for American fiction earlier on. Yeah, he's like, hey, Roy, American hey, fiction. Got, I got another black movie for the you. Double feature. That's pretty good, too, is Rustin. He did like the, the Woman King. From last year, that was like you saw it twice in Gina the movie Prince theater. Gina Prince with the director. It was it was like the only movie you saw last year. <laughs> Woman King is all in. Viola Davis. In, in fairness to David, though, I'm Rustin late. Coleman Domingo, first ever nominee, 56 years of age. Guy's done theater for a long time. Well respected. Zola actor. versus Zola. Remember yeah. that movie? He's so nuts right. in that. This is one of the two, I believe, this year, openly gay actors nominated in an acting category. Jodie Foster, the other. Yep. Jodie Foster being the other. Mm -hmm. For playing openly gay characters. For playing right. openly gay characters. Bonnie stole Rustin Foster's was. first lesbian acting role at Domingo, first Afro-Latino to earn a lead actor nomination. And he was so good in Rustin. And what I loved most about Rustin, I love learning. I had no idea what was going on behind the scenes in the March on Washington. I assumed it was Martin Luther King. Right. And that was it. That That's was the whole story. And I missed everything about how that march happened. So A, you learn something. B, the performance. You cannot believe Coleman Domingo's performance. Mm -hmm. And I wanted Barry... Uh, Barry Pepper. No, no from, from Saltburn. And I say oh. it wrong. So Barry, say, Keegan. Barry Keegan. Keegan. I wanted Barry Keegan to be nominated. Yeah. And I went on the Levitard show to say he's going to get nominated. How'd that work out for you? Terribly. Yeah. Yeah. But secretly, I was very happy, Coleman Domingo. Yeah. And for him, and this is my least favorite expression... Hey, I'm just happy to be nominated. Yeah, but I, I, I freaking hate that. No, but it's a huge win for the it's, movie and for is. him. It's an arrival. It's an arrival to the next sort of level of Hollywood. He stole Leo's spot, but but you're right. It's <laughs> impactful for him. <laughs> right? How the, how the hell doesn't does work? Leonardo like DiCaprio that. doesn't it get doesn't nominated. Work that go ahead, Ben. You're right. Domingo's been a guy, hardworking actor, long time. It's a popularity contest. It I is. feel like some of the Gosling nominations from years past, like Half Nelson, yeah. it's kind of like the same situation where the award is the nomination, and that's kind of the case with Rustin. He's going to perform tonight. Yeah, that's going to be. Do you the think he's going to do without a shirt? Can. <laughs> Is he going to do without a shirt where they'll air dry the six pack? He air said he dry, said that's he, not the word. I can't think of the word. No, but he said air he's brush, not in his great. Air, yeah, but he said he's not in as great shape as he was when he did the that's movie. That's why I wonder. So I assume said, they're going to put a shirt on him, and, and he's he's that. actually so little known fact here, Normie. I do not believe there's lip syncing at the Oscars. No, he he'll perform. He tonight. will be yes, singing he will belt it out live. Tonight. Yes, yeah, after this after, is after party Gosling. at his Moroccan restaurant, Tajin on Robertson, I'm sure. <laughs> um, he that will be the performance of the night. Second nomination for Mark Ronson in the last five years. Shout out Collegiate. Yeah, I think that Ryan's performance will be the thing everybody remembers this Oscars for. Everyone's going to be talking about on Monday. I don't think, however, he's going to win in that category. The three of us, all in original song, think that Billie Eilish. What was I made for? That's also Second another Oscar heavyweight. Oscar for her and her brother, right? Yeah. So that's From a pretty James powerful. James Bond film a couple years ago. Pretty big duet there as well. Love the fact that Wajé Wajé got nominated, Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, it never went away from American Symphony and also The Fire Inside. Talk about, you know, uh, perennial nominees. Diane Warren for Flamin' Hot. Oh God, at this point. She gets nominated every year. It's, it's unbelievable. It's Susan Lucci of the Academy Awards. Right. It's Diane Can I tell you Warren. how things are going for me? I just got a text from my mother. Oh, yeah. How did she think of the show? She said, you're a little too shiny, but nothing like Nixon. <laughs> Cost him the election. It would be That's like, an excellent reference by it your would mom. Be like Greg, 
I can't even. <laughs> we, top, we top the Millie Vanilli reference. That is now the new <laughs> low water mark when it comes to pop culture <laughs> no, no, references. I think it's the high water mark. That's great. The fact <laughs> that it cost him the election because Nixon was so sweaty. I think that's fantastic. I, I'm that's not, a win for mom. I, I would like to say I'm not Aaron Brooks in it. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not. But that's uh, Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks in it. Yeah. James oh, the quarterback? Aaron, Aaron Brooks, I think, was a <laughs> swing man for in? the Rockets. You yeah, walked yeah. back in for the Aaron Brooks joke? <laughs> wow. <I did. laughs> it reminds me of – I know your mom is awesome, but it does remind me of – You my, don't know my mom. But I know she's awesome. <laughs> because Just she did, let, she, let wait, him wait, be a polished host. Yeah, How Hollywood is this guy? I know your mom is her. awesome, <laughs> but because, – Because she had to deal with you. <laughs> there we right, go. There we go, yeah. yeah. For being honest, but this is my favorite show of his story. Paul Guilfoyle, veteran theater actor for years, late 80s. He's going to be the understudy in this play. It's like a Neil Simon play. And Richard Gere is supposed to be the star. Funny that Mike mentioned Richard Gere earlier. Gere drops out a week before the play begins. So the producer and the director go to Guilfo and go, hey, Gere's out. He's like, okay. He's like, are you ready? Like, you're, like this is your moment to shine. He's like, yeah. Because you know the whole script. He's like, yeah, this is Neil Simon Broadway, as big as it gets. He's like, yeah, we're good. He goes, here's what's going to happen. We have an offer to Kevin Klein. If Kevin Klein says yes, we're going to push it back a month to let him get ready in the lines. If he doesn't, it's you. He goes, great. He calls his mom. He tells her the exact story. And his mom goes, so hang on a second. You're going to be the star of Kevin Klein? Says, no. She goes, I just love Kevin Klein. I hope he says yes. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> That's a mean thing to say to your son. My that mom show is business way more moms. supportive than that. <laughs> <laughs> way more supportive than that. But this is the business that we have chosen. Uh, I also wanted to discuss... Well, getting back to the holdovers quickly. Yeah, yeah. Does that change your thoughts and feelings in the movie? Because I know that was your favorite film of the year. Well, Killers of the Flower Moon favorite, but holdovers are two. Right. You're right. It's the second favorite film of the year, but favorite performance. You yes. appreciated 100%. Uh, Giamatti more than Leo in yeah. some ways. Uh, do, does it change your opinion of the movie if this turns out to be true and, in fact, Alexander Payne did commit plagiarism? It does tarnish me a bit on Payne because I love him. I mean, it's, it's not just... It's crushing. Listen, the Descendants is great. I love Cy. was one of my all-time favorites, but I love uh, About Schmidt. I love uh, Election, obviously. It's upsetting. And if you read the article in depth, as the three of us did, it's 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 damning. Tough to, it's damning. Undi- exactly. Almost undeniable. It's the yeah. writer from Luca who's saying my story is about a teacher and a pupil, and this is also about a teacher and a pupil. And there's literally passages of dialogue that are specific, plot points, etc. Like you, David, you wouldn't go to this extent unless you had real evidence here. Well, no, I would. I like, I mean, you're going to go public, you're going to throw something against the wall and try to make it stick, but there's a lot. This is not how the hearing goes. What he, what we read in the article, in order to win a claim like that, you yeah. need more than what's in the article, mm. but it certainly is quite a foundation. So we have to see, I believe there will be a lawsuit filed. I believe there will be a grievance filed within the Writers Guild, and he started with the Writers Guild. And it's just unfortunate because it's hurting a movie that I loved. So now we're talking about the holdovers. Instead of talking about Paul Giamatti or Dominic Sessor, talking about Divine Joy Randolph, we're talking yeah. about Plagiarism. Giamatti, come on. <laughs> it's, it's very bothersome Let's to go me. go find your meatballs yeah. there. First, uh, first Christmas movie to be nominated for Best Picture since uh, two years in a row, 1947 and 48. It's a Wonderful <laughs> Life and Miracle on 34th Street. Awesome. And I have a Christmas level. film as a Best Picture I did not have the holdovers as a Christmas film. It is no, a Christmas no, film. No, it's a Christmas it takes film. Place. Yeah, just like Die Hard. Well, you have Die house. Hard as a Christmas movie? The Lighthouse is also Absolutely. a Christmas movie. And so, sure, yeah, if he says that, yeah, sure. So I know that's your bit, but obviously that's not a Christmas it movie. Is a, it is a Christmas movie. Rewatch it, as I implore everyone in our audience to rewatch it. I have it on one TV that's dedicated, just a loop. <laughs> just die so hard I know all day. this is just a thing you're doing, and that's fine. It's Chris- like Saltburn, but a period piece. I have, <laughs> is Love the Coopers a Christmas movie? I guess Saltburn is also a period piece at this point. Yeah. <laughs> But back to the point, the holdovers. You don't think it's a Christmas movie? No, I do not. Oh, it's a Christmas movie. It takes place. Christmas is like the whole premise. What's the premise of the movie? Christmas break. But the point of that's just the. So to me, when Christmas is the vehicle, that's not a Christmas movie. It's the time of year. It could have been spring break. It could have been. Summer break. It but it's about any... not being with your family around yeah. the holidays. Love, it's reconciliation, big, family Christmas forgiveness. Eve, yeah. Christmas Day is a, is a huge part of that film. Like, what? I view Christmas... <laughs> what? You sound like my child. <laughs> uh, what? I'm so confused yeah, by you. a young <laughs> comment to say. So, what? what are we doing here? <laughs> when, when anyone disagrees, like, with my son, he's like, what? <laughs> like, you disagree with me? It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, I, I view Christmas movies differently. I always have. I view them as you more... You a Santa cameo? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. People, I need Santa Claus in there. There needs to be more than Christmas in the movie for it to be a Christmas movie, guys. Thank well, you, what, Chris. Don't you Wait, understand? Cody, you're back up Santa. No, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. Okay, thank God. He's like, oh. yeah, yeah. You're like, we you're still like, have yeah, there's, there's Christmas in it, but it's not a Christmas movie. Like, what? 
It's cri- if there's Christmas involved with it, it's a Christmas movie. Most importantly is this. We all love Paul Giamatti. I mean, if you don't love Paul Giamatti, you're a communist. And <laughs> and, and, and yeah. Ben Lines on the poll. And Ben we Lines was the fan fr- half our audience, please. <laughs> ben Lines was the first guy who said the Critics' Choice Awards. He goes, Your boy's gonna win. And I was like, What? He's like, Yeah, this is prior to the night. And everyone been saying Killian Murphy's the heavy favorite. All right, Daniel Day Lewis style, immersive performance, playing a real life character. Now I know you've moved off it now, Ben, but that thought process of beloved character actor getting his due, very J.K. Simmons esque for Giamatti, a moment like that, he wins Critics Choice. Uh, unfortunately, he lost the SAG, but you could see a, a scenario which the three of us would be jubilant seeing Paul Giamatti win. Oh, absolutely. You know, the critics, to their credit, have done a good job of actually getting it right the last couple of years. The Golden Globes are all over the place. They are not a prognosticator yeah. of Oscar. For me, it changed when Killian Murphy won at the SAGs. When yeah. you win at the SAG Awards for playing a real life character, think Forrest Whitaker, Idi Amin, Charlize in Monster, Jamie Foxx, Ray, Sean Penn as Harvey Milk, like Sandra Bullock in the, in the Blind Side. Yeah. Like, you go on to win at the the Academy Awards. Oh. They have the largest voting body. The actors. Uh, Killian's been a, a, a character actor of his own. Yeah, in many ways. Right. Six Christopher Nolan films. He's been in. The guy's been very powerful. You're right. It checks the boxes. The Murphy performance. Also, if you're going to give Best Picture to Oppenheimer, and how is it not the guy who's going to give the Oscar to the guy who played Oppenheimer? He's in virtually every scene of the movie. It's I really can't performance. believe we let the that blind side thing happen the way that it did. Brutal. I mean, it's just not a good film. Couldn't have highest grossing sports film of all time. <sighs> Uh, you mentioned holiday movies, and I uh, Lee and Tui. I, I mentioned that my favorite holiday movie is Lighthouse. I actually on Letterbox. I, f- I feel like I'm getting paid by that. I love the Letterbox shout yeah, up, by I, the way. Do you have a, a profile there? I would love to follow you. <laughs> I would love to, but uh, over there I have a list of my top ten favorite holiday movies. Okay. And if you don't consider the Lighthouse a holiday movie, you're probably going to take exception. For with those, some that, of these. those that don't know, Robert Eggers, Black and White, Stark, Pattinson, Defoe, losing their minds. It had a huge buzz at Cannes. I, I'm with you, Mike. I thought it was... All right. It wasn't as demented as I hoped, I'll be honest, but I, I did enjoy it. It was no, a great movie. My number 10 overall holiday film, Batman Returns. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing score by Danny Elfman, the gothic look production design, Tim you Burton at his him, best. Let two him get vill- through the list, please. Two villains with... <laughs> two, two don't, villains. We don't need DeVito and Michelle minutes. Pfeiffer. All right, go ahead. Uh, on every one of his I mean, we're on 10. for a while, yeah. so if you guys want to lay out, that's totally great. Well, actually, before you do number nine, we have an announcement to make. Okay, 5,000 entries? We're going to do an extra little contest here. We're so close to 5,000 entries right now on <laughs> levitardaf.com. <laughs> no, I almost feel like I should put up a stop sign. Don't have, do it. You only have 78 minutes left for the 5,000th person, and we'll know because we're keeping track. You get Paul Giamatti's name tag. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to get a free piece of merch from levitardaf.com. What? The 5,000 entry entrant wins automatically. A piece of merch. That's pretty so awesome. So go to Levitard F. You won't know if you're 5,000. Yeah. We'll know, and we'll let you know once you win. Number nine, please, Mike Ryan. Number, like- number nine is a movie that had probably polarizing. Certainly a filmmaker that is now polarizing and effectively canceled. But I also read that all of his films are actually holiday films. The Nice Guys. <laughs> And, uh, and Russell Crowe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't I, really remember much else yeah, about that incredible, movie. I, 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 incredible on screen yeah, chemistry. Did you say The Holiday? No. No, no, he said The Nice Guys. I said The Nice Guys. I'm sorry. I was I'm distracted by I'm surprised you liked people it that entering much. our poll. 5,000 people. Yeah. I, I liked it. I wasn't crazy about it. I, I love the chemistry, and I wish that they would work together more because I thought Gosling and Crowe were fantastic yeah, I'm with together. That. I, I uh, love The Holiday. Number it's eight, fun. About a Boy. You, Graham. Giamatti sighting on the red carpet. Yeah, let's go. What's PG he wearing? In the house. Is that Who Josh Hartnett live now on the red carpet? I just saw Giamatti in his in his. Uh, There's Hartnett. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. You're yeah. a little There's ahead, Hartnett. David, on yours. Am I a little ahead? Josh Hartnett. So everybody in Oppenheimer gets a ticket to the Oscars. How does that work? How <laughs> Even you just Sean have Avery? to be in it? If you're Sean one of the, the 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 main actors, I wonder what the cutoff. You think Josh line Hartnett is was a main actor in Oppenheimer? Yes, yes, he was absolutely. He was a very pivotal role in that in that film. I, I believe so. Yes, he he didn't just show up for a scene. I like this game though of who's the actor at home tonight. That's just like missed. I was in right. the movie. Like why am I not there? Like does yeah. Crumholtz get invited tonight? I think so. He shouldn't David uh, Benny Softy get invited tonight? Probably. Number seven, Mike. In Bruges. Oh, great. Fantastic. Film. Great film. Film. Unanimous movie. Brendan Gleeson. Opening Pearl. night, Sunday. You like your, you like your chemistry among male leads so far, but it's yeah. a good choice. I mean, these are all holiday movies. Very Certifiable. Telling. Certifiable. It's yeah. not a holiday movie. Traditional holiday movie coming your way here with number six, A Christmas Story. I believe the, the young boy in that film is now John Favreau's producing partner. Yeah. 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 And shows up in many of uh, those films. 
Yeah. And uh, spawned a sequel, Wonder which I haven't gotten around to there's ever talks of a best picture when that film came out that year? Really? Oh, I wasn't alive. I don't alive. know. I neither was I. So <laughs> Before David, we do his top five, yeah. I'd like to do one more category to give the audience an opportunity to maybe see what we've chosen okay. for a category. Okay. We don't want to give away too many categories before 7 o'clock, but then we'll have our full ballot released at 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. But one more category that is a what people assume is an absolute fait accompli, and that's the editing category. And for those of you who have not seen Oppenheimer, Mm -hmm. uh, that movie was Chris Nolan. We expect to win. We don't know. We'll talk about directing later. But what I love about editing, and a shout-out to— What a boring sentence. What I love about editing. editing. Yeah. What edit- no, no I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just saying. Like, this is, this is something to talk about. Huge breaking news. The Bucks have retained Baker Mayfield. Ugh. And also, there was a benches clearing brawl in the SEC championship. I think the the women in that game closed the game out with five on five because both benches got ejected. It's a crazy brawl. You haven't seen a crazy brawl at the Oscars. Never seen that before. Yes, no. When? Is it two oh, years yeah, sorry, ago? Oh, yeah, sorry. One of the go. greatest brawls of I, all time is correct. at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> there is, that's a top five brawl. Oh, that's a brawl. Well, well, a brawl Will is Smith more than yeah, slapping yeah. Chris yeah. Rock. That's an isolated incident. It's not a now, brawl. Now, don't think the people in the Academy aren't looking for something like that tonight. Because you you've got a big. Oh, they love it. No, no, that's not true. He's no. the, he would know. Okay. No, what are you talking? He knows more than you will. What? <laughs> Do you not think that anything that draws new eyeballs no, to the Oscars? What happened with Bait, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway? What happened with Will Cook. Smith? These that brought eyeballs. No, that brought it's, attention. It's, it's, it brings shame too. There's no shame in that slap. It was Th- there's terrible. just no Man, shame in I, you. I, that's I, not to say for everybody else. I don't. I'm not capable of looking at Will Smith the same way. Ever since he's shown on screen since that slap, I, I'm, yeah. my mind goes there and how weird that was. I think it's like history altering. Yeah. Can, can we go to the so red never carpet? never genuinely contrite. Go ahead. You have Josh Allen's girlfriend on the red carpet. That's a relationship that has some sticking. Uh, he is dating Hallie oh, so Steinfeld, Steinfeld yeah. Yeah. who I don't know why she's on the red carpet getting this attention. I don't know what movie she was in, because I can't think of it at the moment. She We're might live. be a presenter tonight, if I had she to guess. She could be a star, presenter. obviously, in True Grit, which was a Best Picture nomination. Cole Brothers. Why is Josh Allen not with her? Is he not, is he not an Oscar-worthy date? Maybe he, maybe he is, he and got, he's not walking the red carpet. He got tipped off with the Baker Mayfield news. Want to support the quarterback. Stay at home. What was yeah. the Baker Mayfield news? <laughs> quarterback. Retained the by the Bucs. Bucs. Yeah. Yeah. going to run it back with Baker. Yeah. yeah. They made the playoffs. They're going to run it back with Baker. Number five, Elf. Tremendous film. That's a Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, originally, Gene Wilder had been considered for the James Conn yeah. role. And to your point, uh, the lead from A Christmas Story is in Elf. That's I'm right. not so sure that's Christmas. Elf? Hmm. <laughs> Number four, Love Actually. One of my top ten. Uh, in my top movies. 100. It's probably one of your favorite movies. It is one of my all-time favorite the movies. Way too maudlin for my taste. Uh, I love maudlin. Number three, Home Alone. Right. Number one at the box office for 12 weeks in a row when it came out. Grab the country by storm. Yeah, my dad was forced to contribute to that because I demanded to see it in the movies like three times. For fans of old cinema, The Third Man, one of my all-time favorite movies, The Third Man, Harry Lime is Orson Welles' character. Joe Pesci's character's name is (laughs) Harry Lime, which is fantastic. Chris Columbus, John Hughes, big fans of that movie. Go ahead. Number two, Die Hard. It is a Christmas. Damn right. What? The whole plot is based around getting back for Christmas. It's a Christmas tree in the movie. If you are he says interviewing, ho, 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 be a note. Before exactly. you do number one, Mike, if you are interviewing Paul Giamatti the way he's being interviewed now on the red carpet, are you asking him about what's going on with the holdovers? I think you have to talk about it. It's hard to <laughs> yeah, ignore. I, I don't think uh, it's. The, I mean, it's he doesn't really have anything to do with he, that. Exactly. But it's the I, I story of his movie. So what's it's he going to say? I, he's going to give you a benign answer, guy. I don't know what that's about. I, I love Alexander Payne. We made a great film. Happy to be. I'm here. doing my second mother call out, Mike, before you do number one because this is well, about you. Well, num- number one's a lighthouse. <laughs> really? really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then this is perfect. Here's the tweet or the text to me. Reference to Nixon sweating has to do with his infamous debate with Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. The march on D.C. was very complicated in the black and political communities. Did I just hear people being called communists if they don't appreciate Paul Giamatti? And Lighthouse is not a holiday movie. Wow. It's the best one. (laughs) It's a real text. Wait, your mom watched The Lighthouse? Oh, she's a movie aficionado. But more importantly, she's watching this show in support. 
of what we're doing. I would love to just have a reaction cam on your mom watching the lighthouse. Hi, Mrs. Sampson. It's wrong name. Oh, she got oh divorce. <laughs> yeah, divorce. Oh, you're, a few, you're a few behind. Mother's maiden name. A I few just, behind. No, listen, it's just one. Sorry, Mrs. Whatever your name is now. I'm listening to the interview. Yeah, I'm listening happening, to Paul, they're, Cody. They're not, thing. No, she not asked him. No, by the way, she just no said, mention at "What's all. it like to make a great holiday movie?" That was what she asked him, and he started answering. Oh, it's a great holiday film. Blah blah. <laughs> Talks about Dominic Sessa babysitting him. He's giving some love to Payne. They're for, not ask for the thousands watching, the whole intention behind live from the stained carpet is we want to be a, a true second screen experience. We understand you got the sound on on the Oscars. We're here to kind of commentate as we go along. The fellas in the studio have the ability to listen to the live broadcast, same as you. Now, that won't be going over our main feed here because then that's too much. But they can do what Adnan's doing right now and give you a live reaction. And if you're a soccer fan, yeah. you're familiar with Sky Sports and their reaction shows because there's exclusive TV windows. And sometimes entire shows mm -hmm. are built around live reaction. That's what we're doing right now with Adnan. Good sell, Mike. Appreciate that. And by the way, we have lots more coming up. We talked about some of the star play we've had so far. Mario Lopez, Tequila, all the rest of it. As David said, we'll continue to give more of our picks. Cuervo. Once again, once again the 5,000th entrant, getting some merch. But Ben Lyons hooked us up because you wanted to say this is not an Academy Award show without an Academy Award nominee. So Misan Harriman, who is a nominee for co-directing a film, which is nominated for an Academy Award tonight, best live action short film. It is called The After. I had the pleasure of talking to Misan Harriman again last week. Uh, listen, this is a phenomenal backstory. Ben, this guy is a noted photographer, and he gets the chance to do this film, and Netflix gave him this opportunity. And, again, you can hear the whole interview on Cinephile. Here's a snippet of it. Misan Harriman, Academy Award nominee, live from the stained carpet right now. Where did the uh, idea come from? It's a powerful story. Where did it come from? It came from the, the understanding that a lot of us are going through serious mental health challenges post-2020, whether it be the COVID of it all, or whether like many people of color and otherwise, we were deeply moved and called to action after the murder of George Floyd. Um, it's clear to me that my own mental health struggles were not in isolation. So I wanted to make a film that could be the bedfellow, if you like, of us trying to make ourselves heal um, with, with open wounds we didn't even realize we had. It's a powerful statement that you're able to make with the film. How hard is it to get a budget for a short film? Well, I think that question in general is bloody hard. Um, <laughs> you know, for, for, for the majority of people, I've been very lucky um, to have found a great producer in Nikki Bentham, who had just finished making The Duke with Helen Mirren and Jim Broadbent. She made uh, Moon with Sam Rockwell, really, really well-respected uh, producer. I obviously got David. Um, and I think the combination of having, you know, those two heavyweights uh, gave, you know, and also the, the visibility I would say I have as an image maker and civil rights person gave Netflix the 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 option to to take a risk, which they did. On uh, I think it's a it was their first the first UK original short by Netflix, and um, you know to. Really see what what this format could do, um, and and they they decided to go on the journey with us. So I, I owe Netflix so much because, you know, it's a platform of two hundred and thirty million people, and now putting a film like this, which wouldn't get a theatrical run because it's a wrong format, to so many people has been incredible. Without question, how does that work, Misan? Once you have the film and you're looking for distribution, are you purposely seeking Netflix? Is there a wide net that you're casting? How does that work? No, no, no. I mean, I didn't have that. We, we, I started the process with Netflix, so right. you know, we we didn't make it. We, you know, bef um, and then go to Netflix. The, the whole creative journey was with Netflix in the beginning, which is mm -hmm. an, an incredible and and very lucky thing for me to to experience. Last topic, what's up next for you? You have an Academy Award nominated short film. What's next? Well, Deadline just got the exclusive this morning, your time, I would say, that I, I've just started shooting my next project with Paramount, which is a, a project called Protest and a feature length doc called Protest and Progress, which is on, you know, over half the world has elections this year. So I'm going to be um, traveling around the world and and, you know, turning the mirror on ourselves and asking us how, we got here and what we can do about today to learn about the mistakes of our past so we can have some kind of bright future for our future. 
I look forward to it. It's a heavy topic, but certainly a timely one. And I encourage everyone to watch The Actor. Once again, it's available on Netflix. 18 minutes. It's passionate. It's poignant. It's powerful. And me, Son Harriman, you were a terrific guest. Hey, good luck at the Academy Awards. We'll be pulling for you. Thank Thanks so much. much. Cheers. Adnan, you I'm can't here. just walk in at the count. I'm like, I got it. What do you mean? You, David, you're working. I'm working. You, I heard it. You Three, keep the door two, one. Me, Son Harriman, once again, The Actor. Excellent Where's movie. the door? You can left you the door open. It? I can't reach Oh, come on, man. I got you. Can you please close the door? Thank you. The real issue right now is all the chicken tenders are gone. <laughs> and then not for? happy about that. I why did for, I just I get a nail, hair clipper? I asked for a nail clipper. Are you clipping your nose hairs? <laughs> what, why I did na- I just get clipper. handed nail clippers? I said I wanted to cut my nails. Please do not clip your nails while you're eating. Oh, you got a hangnail? No, and not hangnails. You know when your nails are a little no, long, it's uncomfortable. You're not clipping. really doing this oh, now. I won't do it now. I was going to do it privately. I will leave the show if you start clipping your nails over your chips. Just give me nail Absolutely not. I won't do it, I promise. Just give me the nail clipper. Her. Just this one time. Do you have an ingrown hair somewhere? No, it's fine. Can I get you a piece of dental floss? <laughs> no, that dude. may be more fucking have, helpful. Let's talk about Mison Harriman. <laughs> You're eating candy. <laughs> let's do it. The film is available I'm now. My on, teeth. The film's available now on Netflix. Netflix, the most nominated studio with 18 nominations. Uh, David Oyelowo, I think, gives a ter- tremendous performance. It's very difficult watch at times. He's a man who's lost his family under some traumatic circumstances, trying to pick up the pieces of his life. A lot done in a short amount of time. It's worthy of an Oscar nomination. I'm happy you had the opportunity to speak with him. And honestly, a guy who never thought he'd be in this situation. You know, He said, as a photographer, he was able to work with Netflix and get this opportunity. How about the fact how you get David Oyelowo? You go on Instagram, you message him, and thankfully, he knew who he was and was able to make it happen. Is that delicious? Not bad. A couple of nachos. We're getting how do I go too. live with Verk? He's eating? He has crumbs. Let me just get. Lips. Chris, how do you do this? Last All the one. chicken Last tenders one. are gone, though. Well, He's complaining why. out I there. Saw, I saw you and Mike eat the tenders ago. It was a perfect time a couple of tenders I ago. I mean, I no had a tender. What did we order? A six piece? <laughs> Budget. I, I would say there were probably 30 or 40 when I first got out there. So, I mean, there's, like I said, there are a lot of people here. Big production we got here. We blew if, the budget on the popcorn if machine. If you had helped me handle the negotiation with Ben, we would have had more chicken tenders. <laughs> That's all I was asking is get me involved in some way because I'm getting hungry here. And all I have is I'll my put that in the rider bag. moving hangry, forward. Actually. More chicken tenders I am a wherever hungry. I show up. Yeah. I know we're not, know we're not gonna have an in-depth conversation, but Keep your mics on. I had to chew, Roy. I gave you know, pro here. Live action short. Because you and I have talked about this. It's some ways, David, it's harder to do than people realize, right? It's like famously it wasn't Hemingway. It was Twain who said, I'm sorry I wrote you such a long letter. I didn't have the time to edit it. You know, it's to make an 18-minute movie, you've got to cut to the chase right away, trim the fat. And Most people do it because of budget. Right. And the fact is it's one of the hardest things to do to get an act one, act two, act three, or a beginning, middle, end. Right. Famous, all within 18 minutes. Whiplash, which we love, one of the great Sundance stories ever. Damien Chazelle can't get a budget. He goes, okay, I'll make it a short film. A short film is incredible. Now I get a budget. I make one of the great movies of the last 20 years. Wins J.K. Simmons an Oscar. Makes Miles Teller a star. Short films. I think you and I appreciate the fact how hard this challenge is. I spent an afternoon, one of my afternoons, watching Wes Anderson released, and I don't know where. Was it on Netflix? He released Netflix, five yeah. different shorts. Roll Doll adaptations. Yeah. They were all adaptations. <laughs> Uh, is, is Henry Sugar also that? It is. And so they only nominated that one, and it wasn't my favorite of the bunch. And it's also 40 minutes, which I guess is short. It's shorter than in most films, but, no, but you're right. It feels a bit like 40 a minutes feels What's like What's the a, rule, Ben? I Can we? That's ha- a good yeah, trivia question. Figure that what out. is the rule to be considered a, a short, short film. film versus a long film? Normally it feels like, to Ben's point, 15 to 20 minutes. If I see a 28-minute short film, I go, eh. And this is 40 minutes, I was like, okay, because it's West, they're getting it done. But in the past, you'd say to yourself as a director, if I make a short film, I'll get nominated. Pedro Almodovar, a very famous filmmaker, he works this time with Ethan Hawk and Pedro Pascal made a short film, wasn't nominated. Uh, Emma Thompson, Academy Award winner, was not nominated. So, like, this is a really tough category to break through sometimes. The fact that Wes Anderson got nominated might finally win, it'd be pretty impressive. Because I got to tell you, I'm not as huge a fan as Wes Anderson. Recently, I think there's been some repetitiveness. But if you ask me about Rushmore, Royal Tenenbaums, this guy is a real singular voice in cinema. Bed. And again, getting nominated now for the in a fifth different way is right. just a testament to what a cinephile he is yes. and what a talented filmmaker he is, a writer, director, whose films all have such a unique look and feel, whether you like them or not. Correct. You can instantly identify it as a Wes Anderson project. Normally, singular ballots voice. are won or lost in these categories, but that. The ballot I have with my children and their significant others and my cousin Josh and our ballot, the three of us, we are nine for nine unanimous going to Wes Anderson. I don't recall another year 
where live action short would be unanimous. Could this be an upset? It's going to be an interesting category because Wes Anderson will come on stage and accept this. It's his movie, and I would love to hear from him. But I can't imagine that nine of us get this wrong. You're right, though. Most years, it's kind of all over the place. Again, I bring up Trayvon Free and, and uh, Two Distant Strangers, which seemed like uh, that kind of unanimous support from the industry. You had lots of high-profile people as producers on that film, which really got it out there. How great is it now that we can actually see these short films? I mean, the fact Big that this, this film, The After, is available on Netflix. Yeah. You didn't have that 20 years ago. You had to fight and try and find weird ways to see them. But yeah. The, the, we have a winner Gentlemen, oh, can you believe it? For number 5,000? We're past 5,000. No way! <laughs> yeah. With one hour to go, yeah. we did it! Yeah. Everybody keep going to Levitard AF because I think I may do yet another one if we get to 6,000. We're not going to get to 6,000. That's crazy never, talk. There's In more hour, people watching than you think. Sam L. from Columbus, Ohio, you are our 5,000th entrant to this pool. LevitardAF.com. Good for people from Columbus, Ohio to win something these days. Because it's been <laughs> Michigan fan, Michigan fan. days, I believe. Let's since go they over it. Yeah. You oh will God. definitely hear from us. Because Jim Harbaugh. Who's got you, it better than us? We will oh get your my. address and we will send you something. And that send them the, send them the Adnan's uh, nail clipper. Adnan, Did, you want to sign the nail clipper and send it to I that kid this, in Ohio? I can do this artfully. There Chris, is we're getting no lots chance of com- toilet pants that you are getting this nail clipper. <laughs> we're getting lots of comments, Chris. I want to know what people are saying right now on YouTube. People are saying a lot of things. They're asking about, they want a preview of Jimmy Kimmel's monologue, so we got to talk about that in the next hour. we got to like predict what we think he's going to do. I don't think he's going to make an Aaron Rodgers joke, but go ahead. You think, not, not even a reference. No, no reference to Aaron Rodgers. Different audience. It's been a while now. Another question here is, the Razzies were yesterday. What would you say was your least favorite film of the year? I'd have to go back through my list right so, now. So, but- do you keep a list? I keep yeah, a list yeah, of every of movie mine. I watch. I'm going to yeah. go through, least and I'm going to tell you film. my least favorite. While I talk about Jimmy Kimmel's monologue, multitasking with Mike Ryan in my ear and no food in front of me, I will tell you, you that. You got candy. I do have candy. I mean, I, I, I wasn't a big fan candy. of No Hard Feelings. I wouldn't put it as the worst movie of the year, but I was talking about it with Chris on Cinephile. I said, you know, Jennifer Lawrence is a great actress. I know it's supposed to be a comedy. It's different. I, it was kind of a callback to those raunchy comedies from the 90s, but I, I was disappointed by it. It wouldn't be the worst film, but it was definitely disappointing in relation to my expectations, especially because I miss those comedies we used to have in the summer. There's something about Mary, et cetera, and I, I didn't think it was particularly you. funny. Go ahead. Priscilla. Wow. I wanted Priscilla to be so much better. And that's and shocking because you're a big Sophie. Lost in Translation guy. Yeah. Sophia is one of my top filmmakers. Wow. So when you say what's my worst movie of the year, I'm talking about from what I wanted versus what the reality was. And Priscilla was not recognized anywhere tonight. No. You will not hear it. Jacob Alordi playing Elvis. Do you know, so he will not go back and do Euphoria now because he refuses to do a high school. He refuses to play a high schooler. Hmm. So I think if they're going to do it, they're going to have to move ahead and somehow have them all together. So you were out of Priscilla. Big breaking news. We have live footage of Nicolas Cage on the red carpet. Oh, oh right. shit. Oh, right. welcome right. to the electric factory. He looks interesting. No, that's a dream scenario. It was an underrated movie from this Fantastic. year. I loved it. I mean, the I like nice. Butcher's Crossing, too. Yeah. I mean, a real nod to the Charlie Kaufman uh, era of movies adaptation, of course, famously. Oy, Nick. I-, I thought he was fantastic. Nick, 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 so funny Nick. playing a Is he what? presenting? You think? Yeah, yeah I would imagine. He's a well, presenter. what don't you like about his look? Just the hair color or the? It's. A I thought it was. A, I thought it was a filter at first. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that <laughs> different hair. But we also have footage of Jesse Plemons, I believe. So I oh, want to see. Oh yeah, what, you want to talk about someone? Killers of the Flower Moon. He's Kirsten fantastic Dunst, in that movie. I hope. Yeah, they and met on the set of Fargo, I believe. Yeah. And they good pull. You are not ready for this glow up, everybody. Oh my, he's Whoa, lost he so lost much that. weight. Look Holy at that! Smoke. I mean, no, that, that, that man is that's fit. alarming. Oh, that's oh, epic. Bro, he's is lost he okay? like sixty pounds. Exactly. Like that's yeah. concerning. That's not. That's a, the first time I'm seeing him that's look that not way. A healthy Doing it for a role, loss. no doubt. Right? You got to say that in Hollywood. They are co-stars in the upcoming film Civil War, which I'm sure the reaction around is going to be totally normal. I will tell you today, I, I want to tell you the movie I watched because I did it for Mike. Yeah, what, um, you Mike ran a half marathon both, and watched a movie today. Yes, yeah, uh-huh. there's plenty of time when you don't sleep a lot. I watched The Family Man. Oh, it's a Nicholas Cage. Yeah, Nicholas yeah. Cage. Arguably his and best And I movie. hope that's in your top five Nicholas Cage movies, Mike. It should be. I should put a list like that on Letterboxd. Great trailer. Yeah. Iggy Pop, The Passenger, I remember. It's, it's fantastic. And it's, uh, you know, T. Leone and yeah. Jeremy Piven. It, it is not a top it, though. You no, got, you got face off and you got caught in air. Leaving Las Vegas yeah. and The Rock. Pig is up there too. You Pig that? was great. Uh, was an incredible performance, but I rate these on movies. The whole thing. Yeah. in Arizona. Face off is a Raising five star. That, that movie you've seen. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, adaptation, incredible. Adaptation. It's Valley Girl. He's playing Charlie. Cinema. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess. It's, it's, it's got to be adaptation. Of cinema. Well, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think they say it in that snarling, sneering tone. But that's yeah, also no, a five star like banger. Nick Cage makes movies and he makes films. He's able to do both. Emma Stone looks like a winner, folks. Emma Stone looks mm-hmm. like a winner. Nicholas Cage may have the best IMDb. You mean of any on the on actor. the red carpet? Yes, on the yeah. red carpet. Thank okay. you. She but it, is but making it's, an but appearance it's appropriate on the red in life carpet. as well. Yeah, go ahead. I'm I believe Nick Nicolas Cage. Cage may have the best IMDb of any living actor. Because he touched, well, in terms of what? what makes Just the, best. the range of it. Both range, volume. Steve Martin would be in my top five for also. range. Steve Martin also. Mm. Robin yes. Williams was in my top Sam five. Sam Jackson yeah. on that list? No, because I don't have him so as a many lean movies. man. The snake's in a plane. You're not. Adam Sandler. Caveman's Valentine is a leading man in that. Caveman's Valentine, yes. I'm about to like review Space Man, That's good Chris. Pull, <laughs> Next week's nothing personal <laughs> review. I was supposed to do it on the Levitard show last week. Space Man. I, uh, I, Did you watch it? I got some feedback from some friends that listen to Nothing Personal, uh, and they say that your reviews are have too many spoilers in them. Oh, no. I struggle with that. I struggle. I, I like that he I wears struggle it, with spoilers. I want you to think about my friend Jose. Every time that you, you're going to give a review oh, for a movie. Adnan, what's so, your rule for yeah, that? Yeah, Ty Burr, the great film critic, longtime Boston Globe, now is his own uh, film critic, wrote for Entertainment Weekly for a long time. He said the first act of the movie, you can easily divulge. The second act is borderline with certain details. The third act, you can't say a word about it. That's the general rule of most film critics. Until knows. when? Ever, like in your review. That's Wait, it. Well, what's the statute of limitations? What if it's Sunset Boulevard? Right. And hey, you, don't don't like, want to give you the... Don't, all right, don't Mr. Give away the all right Mr. The, DeMille, I'm ready for my close But there's like right. a dead body floating in the pool. You can't give that away. Don't want to give we away had the conversation the today man, at okay, the pool five years. about the crying game. I love it. Can you not game. mention the penis in the, about the crying game? No, that's it's in the middle of the movie. Penis no is pee-pee. canon. I love that Yeah, Past Lives starts with like the end, kind of. I feel as though I, I do wish struggle. it just went straight to the end. Thank you for your fam for your friends who listen to nothing personal, but yeah. I struggle with spoilers because but I want to review the, the movie. Like if American fiction, you wouldn't see what happens at the end. No. I, I don't generally want to give away the ending, but I get accused of spoilers for, for Act 1 stuff. No. Then and now I'm hearing Act 1 stuff is on the table. But even we were talking tonight about we're assuming that everyone at home has seen most of these movies or many of them, but right. probably not. So there's the fact that we might be talking about a film that even though it's been out for nine months. Oppenheimer made a bomb, man. That's it. Like, there's <laughs> are we really not going to say that? The movie wasn't a bomb. No, no. No, no. no. Well, what's the your movie- statute, Ben? Six months? How long would you wait before you tell somebody what Poor Things is about? What happened? I think you got you got to know your audience just in the game of life, and I think you got to feel that out a little bit. But you genuinely, gen, generally, you don't need to give away the whole movie to talk about the film. We How talk do you about talk about these... Crying Game without talking about the reveal? How Man, do you do it? Don't I catch myself in too many situations where the Crying Game is coming up nowadays. <laughs> right, yeah. You and I hang out at different for, places. For, <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, fantastic. <laughs> it comes up almost every day where I am. <laughs> Hey, how hot was Jay Davidson in that movie? That's happening once a week in your conversation. I will never forget I could the Stephen first Ray's time face I saw the movie. Yeah, because you're like, she's I, hot. I thought she was a beautiful actress. <laughs> now, I wanted to look this up, and I didn't because I ran out of time because we were rehearsing. See? There's something for shock value in cinema. Was Jay Davidson nominated Saul for Byrne? Supporting Actor Supporting Actress? Actor, and that was a really big controversial thing. Because everyone goes, now you gave it away. So yeah. how do you – but you can't nominate Jay Davidson as Supporting Actress. The success no. of that film, too, I think is married to the time and when it was released. You didn't have social media. You didn't have people tweeting out stuff. The fact that there was this secrecy around the film, and in order to know about it, you actually had to go and see it. All-time great movie. Then. 1992, yeah. Neil Jordan made his career. He won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. Did That's people spoil Rocky? Script. No. Can you, so you, when, you, when you talk about Rocky, do you don't talk about the tie? You don't talk about the winning I think if you, if you haven't watched Rocky by now. That's on you. Yeah. I feel he, he the doesn't win the, the first game. time. There, I said it. What? <laughs> he doesn't win. <laughs> We also have um, our own power rankings as well. Roy, dealer's choice. Do you want us to do Christopher Nolan power rankings or Martin Scorsese power rankings? The three of us, Samson, Lines, Verk, giving our top five films. You, you pick. Uh, Scorsese, but first, uh, you mentioned uh, Jay Davidson getting nominated for Best Actor at Actors. Yeah. What about Linda Hunt? Because she played a man in... Oh, in Terminator T2, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, no, Linda Hunt. Oh, Not Linda, excuse Linda, me. Linda, Linda Hamilton. 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 Yes. Yes. I apologize. No. Different, <laughs> different, different, different Linda. Would be a much different movie. <laughs> Uh, Hillary Swank. I mean, there's a bunch of times yeah. that people have been nominated, but I think the Jay Davidson situation in Crying Game d- is different than the Linda Hunt situation or any other situation because Jay Davidson was a woman the entire movie, and then 
And then she wasn't. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she wasn't. <laughs> Quite famously. It's it's one of the top five. If you do a top five reveals, reveals I'm with you on this. Crying Game is Absolutely. on everybody's list. Yeah. Along and it blew the people sense, away. Maybe is maybe as another reveal or a twist that has everybody. Yeah, that would be on the list. Mm-hmm. Do we have to? And I got this from uh, Ben earning his producing money. He said, hey, what let's money? do this segment. <laughs> let's do a top five Scorsese. And I didn't want to do it. It's too hard. talent. It's I wasn't allowed to say no. But I didn't want to give Adnan this opportunity to do a four minute segment at six ten an hour before the Oscars. Yeah, but I lost out. It's so the only love to Marty's going to get from the Oscars. Oh, this tonight. is like this getting is a, a two guard that you want to get in rhythm. Their technical foul. Let's uh, go send D Wade over there. We want yeah. him to get into a rhythm. Exactly. So that's what we're doing with the captain. I love it. Okay, so um, Mike, you on the list as well, though? Do you? No. Okay. Do we have any? Uh, do we have an open curse? Like. Uh, we're just going to do it. Just, All right. Just do, yeah, it. just do it. We got yeah. a graphic for you. Okay, let's go graphic. Yeah. Oh, look at that in a second. This is an eight ben kick us off. $3,000 graphic. So you better toss to it. Uh, I, I found the Scorsese power rankings to be incredibly <laughs> difficult to put together. Starting out at, uh, at number five, I believe I had Taxi Driver. Uh, interesting now that De Niro and Jodie Foster are both nominated years later, obviously. Uh, Taxi Driver, one of my all-time favorites, especially being a New Yorker. Mm-hmm. Raging Bull, arguably the greatest sports movie ever made for some. Um, any debate there, Samson, if that's a sports movie? That, no, that is a sports <laughs> okay, movie. Wow. Eddie put that Eddie, out there. Something there. Uh, Eddie, ben. The, the Departed, number three, the first Oscars I covered. He won for Best Director the year before John Stewart. Or th- the year before John Stewart had the great lines that three, three six, six mafia, mafia one. Martin Scorsese zero. They deserved it. Uh, they did deserve it for original <laughs> song uh, that year. But The Departed with that cast uh, is just incredible and I, still holds up. I really can't believe that uh, you have Wolf of Wall Street ahead of Why? The Departed. Wolf of Wall Street is fantastic. One it's of great. It's got movies. one of the best uh, examples of physical comedy ever shown on the screen. The Quaalude scene. Yeah, I, I the just the dancing. Scene. Spoiler alert. I just recently rewatched it and it, was, it wasn't as good as I remember. Maybe because it, it, it struck at the right time. Maybe v- Vera Formiga might be the, the reason why she wasn't. She's good in The Departed. She's not great. I don't think she was nominated. No. Margot Robbie delivers a star-turning performance in that film. I like it. Uh, and number one, Goodfellas, is obviously the best Scorsese film, and everybody in this room agrees. It was number one on my list. Our lists were, I thought you cheated off my list because I sent my top five to you first, and then you submitted it. It's not the holdovers Real over quick, here, though, buddy. I got my own ideas. Real quick, guys. <laughs> Emma Stone is talking right now, and she just shouted out this broadcast in Ben. Yes! Hey, yeah, she's like, hey, I was watching show. it on the way over. And... I don't believe you. Hey. hey house, bu- uh, can, house bunnies for life. Can, right? we, get vi- can we get audio of that? Because that would be the most impressive thing. No, that would cost us $17,000, and yeah. we <laughs> use that on the popcorn machine. We definitely yeah. have the audio. We just can't. Yeah, we can't. Shout that. out to super publicist Marathon Sullivan. And holding it down the back. Alex Crotton as well. I'm watching the publicist game that's happening. Look at me. That wasn't no light. That yes. was light. It was look at me. It was look at oh, me. Oh, Random right. name generator. Shouting out uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. publicists on the carpet. Yeah. Look at me. Look no one can really <laughs> check you on that. Martha McGillicuddy. <laughs> Let's go. go to my top five. Yeah, what do you got? What do you got? Let's yeah, put yeah, up the graphic. We'll put up the graphic. Why don't you just get us underway? Give us time. He's this trying to I'd like to give you the number five, but I can't remember. <laughs> oh, that's why you're wondering. Oh, no, no, no. Look, look at your wow. Shutter right. Island. Oh, Shutter oh, Island. Oh, what a wow. Shutter I Island. I can't believe that, you put that on worst film. Have you lost your mind? I liked it. I got a good Shutter Island story for you when you get a sec. But continue. Yeah, yeah. We I have nothing but time. Were you on set? No. Are you getting residuals? <laughs> one of, I, did you? <laughs> Do you know one of the publicists behind it? <laughs> no. I, one of the wolves came up to me, right? And he said, he said I put 100 grand on Leo winning the Oscar. Do you think it's going to hit? I said, no, it's not going to hit. One of Leo's guys put 100 grand on Leo to win the Oscar for Wolf uh, for Shutter Island. <laughs> he goes, thus, Ben, you're the Draft movie. Kings you're is the, the best what? sponsor you're the, He goes, you're the movie guy. Is Leo going to win for Shutter Island, I said, I don't no. think so. He goes, I put a hundred grand on it. And, oh, good luck with that, buddy. Oh, that movie's not good. Before no. David gets to say, it's the only Scorsese movie in the last 20 years that wasn't nominated for any Academy Awards. The general consensus to Mike made a lot of money, fun movie, but not great. Why do you love it, David? I loved the reveal. I loved the pacing. I loved the surprise. I loved the f- remember, I get anxious. And I don't watch horror movies. This was right on the edge of what I won't watch. Was suspenseful. And so it was very uh, 
disconcerting to watch. It was jarring for me to watch. And the payoff was so good mm. that it made the entire movie. That's why it made my Listen, list. One thing about Marty is he loves his B movies, he's film noirs. Val Luton, one of his favorite filmmakers. So I did like the fact he was going in a territory many may not expect him to be, not a prestigious film. My brother loves it too. My wife loves it too. They're both big shutter It's a tough fans. watch, though. An, it's a very tough watch. Yeah. An O for a number four, Gangs of New York. Uh, Daniel Day Lewis, that's a top five performance by Daniel Day Lewis. The movie that. is simply unreal. It could have been edited down by maybe 15 to 26 minutes. Cameron Diaz stuff. I not loved great. it. Yeah. But it is a movie that is it's so important to watch because I think that shows more than Goodfellas, more than any of Martin's movies, how to make a movie. And he's so good at that. And that's what I fell in love with with the Games of New York. Amsterdam. <laughs> I'm New York. Go ahead. What's that's, your number three? That's pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Number three. Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> and now it gets similar to Ben, Departed, Wolf of Wall Street, and Goodfellas. So our same top three. Mm -hmm. I would point out that I was a Margot Robbie fan from about time. Wow. Except I didn't know he was just a name, an actress yeah. doing a part in About Time, one of my favorite movies. And then when I saw her in Wolf of Wall Street, I said, ooh, she's going to be a star. Oh, you said ooh? A lot of people <laughs> said ooh. Ooh. I said a little more than new. <laughs> Did you add a la after? I, I yeah. pause, <laughs> rewind, play, la -la. forward. Uh, occasionally, I'll, I'll throw out a hubba hubba just to keep people on their toes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you do? I was staying at a place with a balcony uh, this weekend, and I saw two people having sex on the balcony. <laughs> oh, congratulations. You just stared at them, huh? I did, and I was told not to look. How do you By not who? look? By the person I was with. Oh. Said, you're going to get caught looking. It's like a train wreck. How do you not look? Just having sex on a balcony. It's, just, it's UFC weekend here. You know, I get it. <laughs> She's melting this guy. I apologize for that. Yeah. <laughs> it was on mic. <laughs> Chris, where are you on this? Uh, I got to make sure everyone's okay. I don't want anyone to get hurt. Exactly. Safety. Oh, you're I might monitor safety. it just to make safety. sure everyone's safe. But uh, Don't flip over yeah, the Yeah, if rail. someone falls off, you're right there. Yeah. What are you going to do if someone falls off the balcony? Call 911? Yeah. yeah. I saw this couple having sex, and all of a sudden things took a turn. I just think that it's it's one of those things that I'd never seen. I've stayed in a lot of hotels in my life, and I'd never <laughs> seen that before. Hmm. And the way this hotel is, the balcony was 10 feet away. Right. Oh. It was. Oh, it part was, of the story. That you so a hearing know. distance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was full hearing distance. <laughs> you, were, you were looking it was at the that same like balcony. Oppenheimer molecules. And I must say yeah. that the only thing that made me happy... And the only thing is that it gave me more fuel to say, listen, 60 seconds ain't so bad. <laughs> oh, really? You can do the whole pomp and circumstance of it. Well, balcony, there's incentive to get it, get the show on oh, the road. Because it's balcony sex. Yeah. You have to go fast. I oh, I, I see. Yeah, that's the excuse. What, that's what I was yeah. doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, clear the lane. Adnan's got a Scorsese power ranking graphic. My man, Marty. Yeah. Here we go. Um, Ben, how you doing? All of them. I was going to say, yeah. yeah like, all of them except for Shutter Island. Yeah, exactly. We still didn't actually say anything bad about. I still thought it had its moments, but it would not be on my list. Number five is Gangs of New York. To David's point, it's not only Daniel Lee Lewis's performance, although that is the banger of all bangers, the headliner, but the fact that Scorsese got to shoot at the Cinecita Studios in Rome, you know, he adores Federico Fellini. They built all those sets, as you know, Ben. Like, it's amazing. And when we're watching the DVD special features, he's walking around with George Lucas, and Lucas is laughing, going, hey, I could have just done this for you. And he's like, no, no, I, I want to have the real lived-in experience. Uh, very troubled shoot. Harvey Weinstein was the producer. Him and Marty clashed, specifically the Cameron Diaz stuff. Scorsese said at the time, listen, Weinstein's a pain to deal with, but he did get the film marketed. It got 10 Academy Award nominations. It was bruised and bloodied. I think it's flawed, but I also think it's a great film, and it has wonderful moments, and I know David shares my passion for it. Number four is Mean Streets. I mean, that announced his arrival as a major filmmaker. It was not his first movie. It was his, actually his third film after he made Boxcar Bertha with Roger Corman, and he had made his debut previously with Who's That Knocking at My Door? But really, Mean Streets is the film that people know who Martin Scorsese is. That experience of him and De Niro for the first time together, Harvey Keitel basically playing Marty's proxy. We have time here, Ed, and slow down just okay, a good, tiny good. Yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. We, we, this is not a segment on Levitar. I feel like nobody cares. That's no. what I'm just trying to go I mean, fast. I'm listening. Yeah. Roy's the only one. Listening. Chris, Mike, Amelia looked down. I'm like, no, Roy's locked in. There's thousands. I hear so, this every week. Exactly. Chris gets tired of it. <laughs> Chris is like, Mean Streets, again? Um, but this really is kind of a staple of independent filmmaking, what Mean Streets was. You know, he was so inspired by Cassavetes, who told him after Boxcar Bertha, you've got to make something that comes from the heart. And what is more coming from the heart than a story about... Wow, I am surprised you are on number four I, still. The, the amount you've been talking, no, I thought we were at least I the two. Sure. All right, number three no, is... talking about John Cassavetes over here. Cassavetes, this is what we're locked in on. And Nick. Uh, amazing opening as well to the Ronettes. 
Be my bill of baby. All right, okay. I give up. You can have the nail clipper. Okay, good. Thank God. Okay. So number three, I'm going to go with Taxi Driver. I love the fact Ben had it on his list, as you said, especially as a New Yorker. Listen, it, it, it has one of the great movie posters ever, as a matter of fact. On every corner in every city, there's a lonely man who dreams of, there's a nobody who dreams of being a somebody. And that's what the movie's about. There'll be no better film about loneliness and urban alienation than Travis Bickle and obviously great performances across the board, including Albert Brooks, a rare comedic role by him playing in a serious movie. Obviously, uh, Sybil Shepard's great, so is Jodie Foster. Overlooked years later for a serious role in Drive. Yes. Oh, that was, he was great. He was movie. awesome in that. Yeah. Remember the scene when he wants to shake Ryan Gosling's hands? He goes, oh, my hands are dirty. He goes, one of the best so movies mine. of oh, the no, year. It was Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. I got another one oh, for Cranston. you, Roy. Yeah. Another movie to watch. There's a documentary about Albert Brooks's life. I saw that. Amazing. Saw Defending it. your life. You it, was, it was on HBO, right? Yes. Yeah. Defending, that was really good. Defending My Life. Yeah, because Defending With Your Rob Life. With Rob Reiner. Good. Defending Your Life is a movie that he did, which was fantastic. Hilarious. Just I, trying to break up your top five because it's I, been, a, it's I, been I, a little much. I wish that had been longer, by the way, because it's such a great conversation. Those guys get along great. Ben Manquist did a great sit-down with them. Number two is Goodfellas, uh, the most rewatchable movie ever, and Raging Bull, arguably the greatest film of all time. I mean, it's literally a different Is that your number one in your top 100? Do you have a top 100? Yeah, I, I was inspired by you to start to put it together, but it's th hard. That's what I'm saying. I mean, my favorite you, films are Legion. You think Raging Bull is the greatest film of all time? Yeah. So it's your number one in a top 100. So you're not even debating your number one movie for your top 100. It's Raging Bull. Yeah, I just think the combination of what that film did, its influence, its longevity, I, I can't think of a better movie. Rodrigo Prieto, who's Scorsese's cinematographer, said when he met him, he goes, Raging Bull is my favorite movie. Mark Maron's favorite movie is Raging Bull. Like, it's one of those movies that's just transcended. And De Niro changed screen acting with that performance. I think my the... least favorite question, what's your favorite movie? I mean, it's too yeah, I agree with that. I have a list. Tough. I yeah, love the Lighthouse. Is clear. The Lighthouse. Yeah, 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 have yeah, you, yeah. Has anyone else done a top 10 or a top 20, top 100? Am, oh, I, am I literally the only one? I mean, 100 movies is a lot. Man, I really should get an endorsement deal from Letterbox, but that's in part why, because I know that your list lives on there and a lot of other great lists live on there, and I wanted a way to catalog these because the answers change when you're going off the top of the dome. So that's why I opened up an account. I better get something out of this, folks. I, sound, I feel like that's the early days of Netflix was making that list, making that queue of all the films that you we wanted to We were all supposed see. to dress up today, and we're in tuxes. Yeah. When we came and saw, I saw Mike Ryan, I thought he was in costume, I'm not sure what he was wearing. I did love that you were blunt right away. Go, what, what are we doing here? I yeah. said, and Mike I, said, I said what is this? I mean, and what he, am I doing? And he said, you look great, Roy. Oh, thank yeah. you. And, and, well, and awesome. obviously, Chris has the pirate well, I like hat. The, the, the pirate really hat's becoming up. Papa Gold yeah. over there. No, I didn't yeah. dress up. I was just like, I was Could you stand at, up and show the audience earlier your and I'm just like, I'm not doing I'm this. I'm wearing. Shout out to Clemente. I'm wearing. Who are you wearing? Instagram. What? I got Men at work. I just all Instagram ads. Men at work. Yeah. Duke the Dumpster Drozzy is what I'm wearing right now. You know, it's a little Mike Myers influence. How, how do Mike you Myers go pee pee in that? <laughs> you zip it down. The zipper goes down. All the way to the wiener. Oh, congratulations. I found it to be an interesting Oscars outfit. He's got, I thought he was I, playing I, a part. I don't I, think you were alone in that thought. I, you know, wanted to be a little fashionable, but. I feel like it's uh, Oscars 2036. Like, yeah, we're not to... there yet, but. Fashion will no, lead us I, there. I, I am at, look, I know you guys are giving me guff right now. When, guff. when you have the balls to wear something like this, you, you, you understand that the criticism is going to come. I just wanted to have something that was, oh. uh, you know, light, hip, able-bodied. Uh, I look like an engineer because I am your engineer in service of you guys. Breathable we, as well. We need help here. On Oscar Sunday. By the way, wait. Oh, we, go ahead, go we ahead. need we help. Say, we weren't sure who was on the red carpet. There's so someone on the red carpet named Becky G who's performing tonight, and I don't know who that is. And I feel terribly. Does anyone you know who should, Becky G is? Yeah, she's a huge recording artist. And what is she? Is she nominated I mean, in you, Best you, Song? You don't listen to a lot of Spanish language music, I imagine. That's where she's a monster. I imagine if you knew her Instagram follower account, you'd be really mortified that you don't know her. Is it over 100 million? She's going to perform The Fire Inside, the Diane Warren from Flaming oh, Hot. Oh, she is? Yeah. The Eva I like Flaming film. Hot. Did you, you watch did? it? I didn't see it. I, I found it fascinating. I didn't know the story. Becky G has 37 and a half million followers on Instagram. Oh, well, some guy is behind the rock. Dwayne Johnson. The Rock, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the Rock waits for her. He's waiting because she's got the mic, right? I'm fascinated by that. Sometimes we yeah, talk Becky about people G with Instagram. Screen. That is Becky G right yeah. now we're looking at. Becky G's also appeared in some movies. Uh, Eva Longoria directed Flaming Hot, mm -hmm. and that's her debut as director from Desperate Housewives, the actress. Former was she the former wife of Tony Parker? Yeah, did I make yeah. that up? The nope. player Becky the G appeared in Power Rangers, the 2017 version. Uh, shout out to Ivan Ooze, and uh, most recently in Blue Beetle. 
Oh, big uh, big Marvel. Movie. I like Blue Beetle. Right? Listen, superhero DC, movies. Sorry, to, yeah. ah boy. No, but to Ben's point, superhero movies took a little bit of a hit this year, and people look at you know the reaction to Miss Marvel and uh, not the. Sorry. We gotta reset it. We gotta start over with all the superhero. Movies. Exactly. Too many now. Just yeah, clear the too hit many. reset. Superhero and fatigue. I, I know we're looking at the the year that just went, but uh, a lot of people's hopes and expectations are that Deadpool and Wolverine kind of reset the MCU because from what we've seen, it, it seems as though the plot line to Deadpool three. Deadpool and Wolverine is that they set out to save the MCU. That's a great idea because it definitely needs saving. That is for sure. Ryan Go Gosling, if you had the bet, if there was a line on DraftKings or anywhere, would he finally bring, would he walk the red carpet? Would he bring his wife, Eva Mendes? He's now on the red carpet with people. Now, Rock Johnson is more famous than Ryan Gosling? Yeah. But Rock Johnson. Is that... What's his Is name? that what you're calling? Yeah. You're calling Rock, Rock Johnson? Johnson. Okay. Dwayne like, Rock what, Hudson. His his dad was Rocky Johnson. Uh -huh. Yeah. So The Rock is being interviewed right now in the red carpet. Much they better. cut away to show Ryan Gosling doing photos not with Eva Mendez. He's nominated Ryan Gosling in the supporting actor category. We have not talked about the supporting actor category. Yeah. And we've all chosen. I think it's time. We only have 35 minutes left until the ballots close on lebetchartaf.com. It's time to give our picks, Let and they were it. all... Give, give a quick thought on the nominees. Sterling K. Brown, in some ways, a surprise nominee until he got the SAG nomination. He's terrific. De Niro, as mentioned, incredibly villainous as Bill Hale. Robert Downey Jr. has been amazing for a long time. Gosling took a role that he's playing a Ken doll, for God's sakes, and made it his own. And Mark Ruffalo, you and I both love, as does Ben, lifelong actor. Listen, he's a guy, five-time nominee right now for supporting actor. I would love to see Ruffalo get recognized, but ultimately, you believe it's going to be? It's another 9-0. It's... Robert Downey Jr., and it's a great moment, but that's who we all voted for. If you want to put your ballot in, you can choose someone different and try to beat me if you don't think it's going to be Robert Downey Jr., but I don't. I think we're all in agreement. It will be a shocker if he doesn't well, win. Well, that's the thing. Everyone talking about, oh, it's a shock if Downey doesn't win. He's the lock. His speeches have been great. He's this, what a, cr a tremendous career. Very little talk about the actual performance. It was not memorable. It's important in the movie. It's, it's, it's uh, a driving force in the film. But it's he's like a narrator a he, bit. Yeah, it, it's kind of a steady presence throughout the film. And I always often look for that one scene where you go, OK, this is that Oscar scene. This is the scene they're going to show yep. in the theater of the night. I didn't find that from him in that movie. Do we think that this is a Lifetime Achievement Award for Robert Downey Jr.? The way Leo's Oscar for The Revenant, to yeah. me, not close to Leo's best performance. And if Giamatti were to win, that would be that. The man's eating bullets in the first five minutes. And like, of The Revenant? Yes, that, that performance The fight is with the bear is amazing. The, the fight the bear with the bear. Wasn't the a bear. bear was awesome. The man I mean, it wasn't much of a, a fight. Horse. Yeah, the movie was wasn't great, but the performance oh, deserved it. He's tremendous in that. That it's scene a, with Hardy when he's like, don't blink, don't blink, I'll kill you. Oh, my God. That's one of the great I don't believe it's Leonardo DiCaprio's best performance. Do you think it's his top five? I do not. Wow. I do I not, but blood. I also but happen you're to love the beach. No, but you're, you're a big blood diamond guy. He's terrific. Very in, big blood diamond And guy. terrific in celebrity uh, along with yeah. Anthony Mason. Catch me if you can. Jody Lee Foster is getting an interview right now. She looks amazing. I, I like the fact yeah, she does look fantastic. You're right about that. And, of course, she's nominated for Nyad. Listen, I'm so happy to bring in one of our favorites, Josh Horwitz. This guy does an unbelievable job on his podcast, Happy Sack Confused, <laughs> a dear friend of Ben Lyons, and by extension myself, MTV News. Josh, you got to follow him on Instagram, on Twitter. He does an amazing job. He has a great relationship with all these people. And I want to start in this direction, Josh, because I love what you are wearing, which is the same sweatshirt that me and Ben got as members of the Critics' <laughs> Choice Award. It's Barton's sweatshirt, which is what the boarding school is in the whole of and he's got the holdovers right there to go. Listen, I am so jealous of you because Chris Cody and I tried so hard, and we emailed the publicist, couldn't do it, but you got to talk to Paul Giamatti, and you know I've listened to every interview he's done, hour and a half with Howard Stern. He's talking to all these different people, but you were great because you got him talking in different directions. Spider-Man 2, you know, still that people wouldn't ex expect of Giamatti. I, I love the fact he gave some love to Chinwag. Tell me that experience of what you gleaned from talking to Paul Giamatti. First of all, I just want to commend you guys on the courage to do a seven-hour live stream devoted to Paul Giamatti's career. Uh, a lot of people don't have that kind of knowledge and insanity, but you gentlemen are the ones. Um, yeah, he's a legend, and thank God he's getting his due. Way long overdue. Um, uh, you know, I've interviewed him a bunch over the years. I know Ben has too. He's, you know, he's not one of these polished like 
movie stars. What you see is what you get, and that's part of the charm. And he's a character actor and a leading man and all at once. And what a treat to like go down. Yeah, my podcast is like a 45 minute deep dive. So we got a chance to, you know, hit on like if you look at his career, I don't know if you guys have talked about it, but like in the 90s, there was like a five year stretch where it was like Saving Private Ryan, um, uh, 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 my best friend's wedding. Yeah. Um, like every major director knew, like saw Giamatti could be a plug and play. He would work in anything. And it's just in the last, thanks to Alexander Payne, frankly, 20 years ago, sideways that we realized he could also be a leading man. So um, he's probably not going to win tonight, but I'm happy he's finally getting his due. I mean, everybody loves Giamatti. What's not to love? And he's got such cool interests as well. I love the fact that at the end of your pod, you always ask specific questions. You said, what's an actor when you see him on screen makes you feel comfortable? His answer was Robert Duvall, which is amazing. And they said, what's an ending that makes you sad? He said, the third man. Second reference to the third man today. Great answers. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he's got he's deep film knowledge, loves a conspiracy theater, uh, conspiracy theory and a great actor. This is the triumvirate. What more can you, and he likes in and out. All, yeah. Also All a voracious good. reader. Apparently he has like 6,000 books in this place. Go Along ahead. with Cat Williams. Uh, Josh, you, uh, you and I kind of think that the, uh, the lock of the night is Christopher Nolan, obviously for director, but when it comes to the acting categories, we know who the favorites are. Are you going outside the box? Are you picking anybody who might be a surprise nope. in your ballot this year? <laughs> I don't That's think so. really I, great I, no. in no, I mean, <laughs> I'm curious. I want to know. No, no, know. it's a good He's, question. It is a good question. That. You should have known the answer before. It's not, I was going to say nobody. That's not I didn't. I didn't well, how should I know the answer before? Prepo. No bad questions. Only bad answers. <laughs> I I can tell we're I can tell we're at the end of the live stream because you guys are starting to kill each other. No, we, no, that's, no, good. no that's, oh, that's how we actually opened the show. <laughs> Like it's Karen Carpenter, baby. We've only just Carpenter. begun. Josh, oftentimes it doesn't go chalk. Are you thinking this year it's going to be all favorites? I do think it's all favorites this year. I think it's tempting. It's really tempting to, to kind of like overthink it, frankly, and like, oh, so Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone are going to split the vote and Sandra Hewer is going to come in the middle there. Or, um, you know, Ryan Gosling, there's so much love for Barbie and they want to give it something. The smart bet is to look at the SAG awards, to look at the precursors, and they're all pointing in one direction. I mean, yeah, I, I would say, I mean, actress is really 60-40 to me. It's leaning towards Lily Gladstone, but I would not be shocked if Emma Stone uh, wins. Uh, we all thought it was kind of Giamatti versus Killian up until recently in SAG. So, yeah, I mean, it, I would be I would be kind of shocked if any of the four acting categories go any way than we think. Go ahead, David. So, uh, thanks for being here, but we need a pick. No, yeah. That uh, is very nice. Okay. 60 40. Who is your yeah. pick in Best Actress? Are you going with Emma Stone oh. or with Lily Gladstone? Lily Gladstone. Yeah, Lily Gladstone edging out Emma. Um, yeah, Killian, Devine, and Downey. Those are the ones. If somebody said Emma Stone. No one, no one director, obviously Oppenheimer picture. If yeah. somebody said Emma Stone is the next Meryl Streep, how would you react? Um, I mean, there's only one Meryl Streep, so that might be premature. But if you look at the body of work at the age, I mean, she is on the right trajectory if she keeps up at this pace and the breadth of her work. I mean, you, again, you, then you and I kind of like went on the journey with Emma, seeing her from like rom-com, uh, a girl from Superbad and House Bunny, and to see then like what she can do from a major musical like La La Land um, <laughs> to like demented, crazy poor things um it's it is showing she can has the range of potentially a Merrill, but it's like yeah i mean how do you how do you compare that at this point but yeah and especially look if she does pull off a second oscar win in seven years then you know she's among the greats already josh thank you because that is important to note when i said that comment i said if emma wins her second oscar tonight she then is in the category of being the next meryl streep that was it was dependent on her winning, not just being nominated. Yeah, but even still, I mean, Mer it took a long time for Meryl to get her third. She'd been nominated so many times. It almost became laughable, the fact that they were continuing to give out Oscars to other people than Meryl Streep. So Emma will win again at some point in her life. It might not be tonight, but uh, she's definitely well on her way. Listen, Josh is about as connected well, also, as it gets. Go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's also like, right, how they evolve in their career. What what does her career look like in her 40s, 50s, and 60s? And Meryl is one of these people that like went from, like, if you look at her early roles, like Sophie's Choice, et cetera, Deer Hunter, she's like this ingenue and can play that. And then like in the last 25 years, can do Devil Wears Prada, can do Iron Lady, can do like the Grand Dom roles. So it's like how you transition into different periods in your life. And that obviously is a big unknown for Emma. 
I was about to say, Josh is as locked in as anybody, and it's going to be a great night for Oppenheimer. It could win seven, eight Oscars, who knows? And you had the privilege at the Critics' Choice Awards at sitting at the same table as Christopher Nolan, and he told you a good little nugget about Fast and the Furious. What was that like? He is a, uh, you know, who would have thunk it? Christopher Nolan, Tokyo Drifthead. <laughs> loves, all the, all, loves all the Fast and Furious movies. Big Fast and Furious fan, and he literally has said to me, uh, we discussed it on a couple of occasions because my mind is always blown when I think about this. Uh, Tokyo Drift fan. And also just like likes comedy, has a dry wit. I think actually that's been part of the fun of this campaign this year is I think because he's been such a front runner, he's relaxed a little bit. Did the bit on Colbert, has actually smiled and enjoyed it a little bit, even if his predisposition is to be so kind of serious, self-serious. Uh, and everybody I know that knows him says he has a legit great sense of humor and sensibility. It's just... What he presents is very, very much not So bad. we're within 25 minutes of Jimmy Kimmel's monologue. So before we let you go, what is the surprise? What can we look for? Because you said that the six categories, it's going to be normal. It's what everyone's predicting. Yeah. Lead our audience, please, into where there could be a surprise tonight. I mean, specific category I would say to look for is it wouldn't – Shock me if Miyazaki in the animated nice. feature. Yeah. Boy, oh, Be Betty's going a little boy in the here on. I there like it. Go. I like it. Yeah. I mean, look, Miyazaki's a legend. Uh, the only thing stopping, that I feel like, if this had been like the definitive last film, then they would have given it to him. But he keeps saying, "Oh, one more, one more, one more." Um, so That's that one. The best I mean, we're again, doing is animated. We're a yeah, live show I mean, right now, Josh. We got gonna, a lot I'm of people make... watching. We're going to need something better than the boy in the Huron. And this is your I mean, last you did shot. Elicit a hell we... of a dorky reaction from you guys. Before we Man. Cut the he knows feed. He, he knows his audience. This is a big Miyazaki and audience. Ben and Adnan high five. Yeah, you're, you're, hey, if you brought a plus so we... one, they're gone. <laughs> Let, let me understand. You want me to pick something that I know is not going to win for the sake of entertaining That's right. you yes. guys. You're Welcome to the, the show. <laughs> Thank you so much oh. for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, not going to lose my credibility for your live stream. Sorry, buddy. Um, oh, that's too bad. Uh, Mario might have. <laughs> yeah, I think Lopez, yeah, he, he, yeah, Mario Lopez did that he already. already. Did. <laughs> Josh Horowitz does Josh, a phenomenal job. You. MTV Thank you News, so much. happy sack confused. <laughs> Thanks so much, buddy. It's a big night for you. It's a big night for all of us. Really appreciate it always, man. We'll Enjoy a rare Oscars night at home, my friend. Have fun. Love I'm, I'm heading to the carpet, obviously. What are you yeah, talking clearly. about? I'm running out. I'm pretty sweatshirt. sure that he just Both said top of that. that he's not going to risk his credibility for our live stream. <laughs> Is that what <laughs> yeah, just yeah, happened? That's absolutely right. He's okay, I want to make sure I heard that right. <laughs> right. He's... Smart Josh is an important that. guy. Yeah, have you seen his podcast? He's got a lot of big stories. I'm being told from the production truck that one of our esteemed VIPs is ready to walk the stained I, carpet. I, I, I'm so glad, Mike, because I was wondering. I'm like, Lucy coming? Jeff look at that live look, look at the Metalog party. Okay, this is going to be awesome. So far, it is hopping in here, man. 23 minutes away, and look at that stained carpet. I spy Coca. <laughs> you think Coca's here? <laughs> Coca? Oh, it's, it's Willow. Willow. Hey. All right. Hey. And Lehman. The stars are out in full force. Is that how we got the carpet stained? Uh, Will just took a shit. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. You, you know, the paparazzi have photographed Willow with Messi. Hey, hey. <laughs> Messi oh, for a... best dog. Oh, incredible stuff. Such a good girl. Uh, that it, dog it, has a bow tie on. If you, if you guys wanted, while you guys were talking to Josh, and we thank him for his time, there was a moment here between Roy, Chris Cody, and myself where Ryan Gosling walked the red carpet and Bradley Cooper walked right behind him, and you had Roy, Chris Cody, and myself all, like, knocking their appearance. Like, oh, they don't look, <laughs> they don't look good. <laughs> Gosling looked a little disheveled. Yeah, yeah. Gosling used a shave, man. Too much makeup. After, looks, after party look for the too red carpet. Too much makeup, and then Bradley, Bradley Cooper walks out, and we're all judging, man, that forehead's not moving. Too much and eyeshadow. It's just, too much sun. I'm wearing a... Uh, mechanic suit just out here saying that two of the most devastatingly handsome leading men are just you know okay i would have loved if those guys had said oh who are you wearing and they said instagram. products i found on yeah, instagram. instagram yeah exactly oh you get that's burned. what dangerous you meant <laughs> that you bought game. that from instagram oh yeah well, i, I didn't know it. what you what were did talking you think about that he meant by that okay we so are I, now within Timu. go ahead david we're you go 21 ahead. minutes away yeah 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 so this is one of your final moments to go on levitardaf.com yeah we have a we have approached 
Now we're approaching 6,000. Yep. Which you said, no, no, we're not going to get to that. Who said if, that? I didn't say that. Somebody, maybe that was Roy. I, I if told someone you gets to 6,000, there'll be another giveaway. I can't wait for this. So, levitardaf.com, fill out your ballot. My ballot, which will be made public right at 7 o'clock when it closes, my full ballot. There are opportunities to beat me because I'm not aligned with you guys. We have the ballot right here for Adnan and Ben and myself. Did Adnan and I really have the exact same it's, ballot? It's, it's damn close. Oh, wow. Hey, man. It's, it's Great minds really think alike. Close. It's my Oscar's brother right there. There are go? certain Forever. places. Um, guess what? Animated feature, you are alone. <laughs> Really? So if it's Miyazaki, but I'll okay. be happy to be wrong there. As Chris knows, sure. I'll be high five, and I'm like, that's great. Sure. I, I want to mention this because this is kind of shocking. We have not done this yet. Two hours and forty minutes into this, one of the biggest movies of the year we haven't discussed, and that's Barbie. And I think that's because probably the three of us collectively don't think it's going to be a big winner. But David Sampson, this is shocking. What Greta Gerwig did this year. If you had told me Barbie is going to make one point four billion dollars, be nominated for Best Picture and a bevy of other awards, and there'd be a controversy, arguably the biggest takeaway was how is she not nominated for Best Director? I'd say you're nuts. And I'll be honest, I liked the film. I didn't love it as much as you did, but I walked out of it and said this will feel like a production design nominee. I could see Greta getting some love for a screenplay, maybe Margot Robbie Best Actress. This was an enormous year for Barbie, and it may not be a big winner tonight. Maybe you and me and Ben may argue about production design. Uh, there's a costume design potentially. But Barbie, you're a big fan of Barbie, David. Wave the flag for Barbie. The reason I'm a big fan for Barbie is I went into the movie expecting it to be horrible. And I should know better because Greta is such a brilliant filmmaker. I didn't realize the message it would have. I didn't realize the import it would have. I didn't find it too overwhelming. The biggest complaint people had with Barbie yeah. is that it clubbed you over the head with its message. This is my th I thought. It was a little didactic, not especially the second half. I'm like, no, I got it. My it's Barbie. Yeah. Hold on. Then guess what? Margot's overlooked. Greta's overlooked. I think the message yeah. kind of rings how true. Is, like, how is Margot overlooked? I, I know what the best picture. Guys, right, I know what didactic means, but the audience is asking what that means. Yeah. Intended to instruct. It's a little bit too heavy-handed, yeah. But it's Barbie. What do you expect? <laughs> Wait, I, did you realize it would be such a pro-women movie? Yes! Of course. So, it's Barbie. <laughs> so I did not. I didn't even occur to me. What is the matter with no, you? Well, David's point, he might think it's like a silly movie. It's I thought it was a movie. silly yeah. movie. I didn't think it it's would be a like message a, movie. It's not like a female empowerment You haven't film. even seen Barbie. Right? I don't <laughs> have to see it to know that it's going to be no. women empowerment. What's the matter with you? Stand down. But That's I, a hell of a bar. I think that the fact that the acting... That there's two nominations for the acting is a little weird. Only one nominee for acting. Oh, no, sorry, two. You're right, you're right, you're right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's why I forgot. Yeah, I think, I just Thank think, America. like you yeah. said, the production, Greta, yeah. Yeah. like these Costume things design. are what I walked out of there saying. Yeah. I didn't walk out of there being like, man, Goslin was great. Really? Like, I just, yeah, it's I like, did. he was great. I mean, what about I the did. song? I love the song. I did. The songs, yeah. The song, the dance numbers in Barbie. Look for those. Yeah. They're fantastic. It's like an old 1930s or 40s musical it's in a lot of ways. Like La La Land. Yeah, only yes. like Matchbox 20 was in it. Look, I covered the junket for GI Joe. I don't remember anybody talking. Wait, Rise Oscars, of the Cobra. Okay, yes. I, the the, uh, no, the, the yeah. Marlon right? Wayans. So huh? like these are that, that wasn't Ooh. like American Sniper. It could have been right. It could have been a right. serious movie. It could have been something much bigger than taking an action figure and making a film out of it. The fact that she's able, along with Noah Baumbach, to adapt this original IP into the most important film of the year uh, is an incredible achievement. Barbie's the most important movie? Absolutely. More than Killers of the Flower Moon, which yeah. which actually brought attention yes. to something that happened in real life. Barbie's, Barbie's bringing attention to something realized. that's happening right now. What are you talking about? Oh, like, bar. Yeah. Well, Get his ass, Ben. The, Barbie <laughs> was a vehicle to try to go through women empowerment. I'll give you that, and it worked. I love Barbie, and I did I had the like privilege of seeing Moon. Barbie with my mother. We went and saw that together, and that was one of my favorite experiences. Did you cry? I did, and I think partly because I maybe saw it with her, and we were able to share, love but that. she saw it twice in the theater. She saw it before I did. She is on it, and honestly, to see her react to it that way um, really meant a lot to me, and that's why that final scene in the movie hit so hard for so many people, right? Um, you've been texting your mom throughout the whole show. What did she think of Barbie? Uh, I've never asked her actually, so I don't. I don't How about know. you text her? Yeah. But I could text her right now and ask her what she thought of Barbie. But as we are now only about sixteen minutes away, I want to know: Do you Astros, think Barbie wins an Academy Award tonight? Yeah, it will definitely win original song. Yeah, original song and, and should and win. Production I believe it could design. win. Got, yeah, production I have that as production all three of us have this production as well.
Costume design? I'm not sure. I picked poor things. So did I. But so I think Barbie's I. got a chance. We're here. giving <laughs> away categories <laughs> left, right, and center. It could be three Academy Awards going to Barbie, which is a remarkable achievement. And Greta Gerwig, Ben, you remember, she was an actress. All of a sudden, now she's become a formidable filmmaker. Great Every actress. movie she makes gets nominated for Best Picture. Greenberg, the remake of Arthur. She popped up on a lot of stuff over the years. Yeah. And now three for three as a director with her films being nominated for Best I Picture. I want to move to Jimmy Kimmel before we start the show, and I want to sure. explain to the audience what we're going to do at 7 o'clock. It's okay. going to be a true watch-along. Yep. We are going to be watching the Academy Awards as they're happening. Mm -hmm. We're going to be commenting on what's happening, and we're going to be reacting to it. So it's a multi-screen situation. Don't leave this show. Yep. We are live. We're going to do a post game. Right now, someone walked into Kimmel's dressing room and said 15 minutes. Oh. So that's how close we are. Kimmel's getting ready. It's serious now. And this is it's very serious when it's 15 minutes. Makeup done. He's every the rehearsing's done. He's looking through the monologue one more time, just getting familiar with it. And it, it will be the most commented on part of the night. Monologue is Jim right. monologue. heavily scrutinized, especially after heavily. Joe Coy at uh, the Globes was not strong. Right. And that's the thing about the Oscars. It's not a roast. It's not a room full of everybody having drinks. The Golden Globes is a much smaller room. That theater on Hollywood Boulevard is 5,000 people or something like yep. that. So it's a big room. And, you you know, there's a different energy playing to the folks in the room than to playing to the people at, at and home. And there's no alcohol. Right. There's no one sitting oh, that's at too bad. I'm out. There is only alcohol if you leave uh, in, the, in, the, in the lobby. So I would say that Jimmy Kimmel and his monologue – one thing he has to mention, he'll have to mention Barbie and Oppenheimer yep. as these two huge commercial movies. Get the big movies up, absolutely. There's going to be some sort of comment about Zone of Interest and Anatomy of a Fall, two international films as part of the top ten best pictures. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be something. Here is my super secret prediction about the Jimmy Kimmel monologue. Something about poor things, the holdovers. And so there's going to be some mention of Emma Stone and the amount of nudity. I think That's he's going to have to go that way because prediction. people are talking about it nonstop, and it's, it's no one could tell that you coughed. <laughs> no, that was that was seamless. If you're going to use a cough button or like yeah. give it a muted cough, not loud enough for the uh, other microphones to pick it yeah, up. Yeah, let somebody else talk while you're doing that in that I, situation. Listen, pros pro. He has a Thank cough you. button. He wanted to use it. Go ahead. Pros pro. So the nudity is going to. I think that will make an appearance, so I'd like to hear from you two. I'm going to say no, have... no Aaron Rodgers joke. That was the main thing I was going to tell okay. you. Do you think there's a joke? Or different, oh, <laughs> different please. audience, right? Please. I don't believe audience. there will be an Aaron Rodgers mention either. Right. I don't think he wants to give him any oxygen. I don't think it'll be by name, but I think it might be in inferred. It might make it, yeah. okay. Jeff, so, go to back. You mean an Aaron Rodgers inference? <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it, he won't mention him by name, but he will make oh, some I type of that. joke. I love that. That's a great that, prediction. Yes, I think, I think that's, my, that's my prediction. The second the thing that we are going to focus on, because this is what we do, yeah. is the in memoriam section yeah. and who got left out and the number of times that it happens. <laughs> Carl Rudd is going to be there. That yeah. you say, oh, my God, that guy died? How many times does that happen it's during true. that where mm -hmm. you forget that someone died? Right. I think... Now, Matthew Perry won't be there. These are the Oscars, but he's been in movies. Yeah, so he's not the final. I'm predicting right now that the final face you see in that— I love Andre Brower, but go ahead. Great, yeah. but not the final final. Okay. I believe it'll be Harry Belafonte. Yes. yes. That's, that's, a, that's a great one. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. Personally, Richard Lewis for me. Richard Lewis, I adore. He, he'll be there, but not the— Fantastic and Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> So let's give Samson okay. a second right now. Great let's, get, let's get Samson a boku. Great in the uh, indie movie smoke. drunks. I want to give some I more love. I got up talking about Richard Lewis, too, so I understand. Richard Lewis yeah. is the best. I want to give some more love to Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's oh, father, thanks, ben. outstanding film critic. He knows movies, as you can tell. Ben's been dropping great nuggets all night. In case you're just joining us, Jeffrey Lyons put together some film trivia for us. Mike, go ahead. Time for an Oscar trivia question. In 1973, the host of the Oscar telecast had a flat tire on the highway heading to the auditorium, and he was late for the first part of the show. Who was the actor who suffered that uh, catastrophe, and who stood in for him? I don't know if you guys know this. Golly. I, I, someone was hosting the Academy Awards, and they were late. So what do you do? We're going live. we got to throw somebody out there. Was I, it Bob Hope? I believe, I want to say Charlton Heston came out and just winged it for 10 minutes. Wow. But I, I, I'm what not sure. What a spot to be in. We who was the host time. who didn't I don't know. show up? From 1974, who was the host? He didn't show up. He said stuck 73. In 73, stuck in traffic. It feels like a Bob Hope type era. Johnny Carson, someone along those lines. Oh, Carson could be. What Let, do we got? I'm going to say Carson. Charlton Heston arrived late, and Clint Eastwood oh. that night, not noted for being an off-the-cuff speaker, <laughs> somehow was pulled from the audience and asked to read from the prompter. 
he recalled portraying Moses and Ben-Hur until Heston arrived. He walked past Eastwood without even looking at him and read from the top of the palm term. <laughs> Clint Eastwood was furious, vowing he would never return to the Oscars. He did. He certainly did. Oscar trivia. I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's dad. Did uh, Clint Eastwood <laughs> talk to an job. empty chair in that situation? Oh, my God. That's what a memory so that good. was. <laughs> That's a great trivia That's question. That's a great yeah, trivia yeah, question. I, I Charlton liked, Heston was in there somewhere. Yeah. I, I didn't see this in any of the pre-production meetings. Yeah. I was hoping for some trivia question later than the 70s. Oh. Right. So he, he, Something hang on, maybe Mike, I know we're getting close to the 2010s. Get into just, it. Can we, can we it, get it one more trivia question? note. It was a producer's <laughs> note that <laughs> was shared I, with the I want to just do one more Jeffrey Lyons trivia just to see if it's non-70s. To, 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 to David's point, is there anything post-1975, post-Cuckoo's Nest? That's a line of demarcation, <laughs> I'm going to say with our audience. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. If Love it's you, after, man. After, oh, after Cuckoo's Nest, then I'm okay with it. Time for some Oscar trivia. George C. Scott won the Best Actor <laughs> Oscar. 1970, Pat. One Patton. of the great performances Stamp ever it. recorded. Back in 1971 is when he won the award. <laughs> but he was the third it's choice for the role. Who turned down that role? Don't know. No clue. <laughs> It's Get terrible. the answer, Mike. We have no idea. We're 10 Ernest minutes Borgman and Ralph Steiger. Who gives a thank crap? What? No thanks to the role of Patrick, one of the great parts ever written. I want the, the sign off. Oscar trivia. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, oh, Jeffrey. Oh, what a pro. What a pro. Oh, Jeffrey Lyons. Thanks, man. Bringing a little history into the 96th Annual Academy Award. I do want to say thank contest. you to Jeffrey Lyons Absolutely. for recording that. Absolutely. However, yeah. for next time, <laughs> let's note from the 2000s. that we wouldn't mind a little more recent trivia. From the 80s. The 80s would be great. Wouldn't complain about the 80s, but yeah. something past the decade of I'm the 70s. Not, I want to be <laughs> like Peter O'Toole, Kirk Douglas Jeez, never won an Oscar. Like O'Toole, Douglas too was we got to balance it out a little Oscar bit. His career. What are the two roles he rejected, which would win Oscars for other actors? It's a great question. Didn't hear it. <laughs> I was laughing. The roles were Stalag 17, which went to William Holden. He was. Was. William Holden. And Cat Ballou in a weak year, winning Lee Marvin, Catherine the best actor. Come on. Cat Ballou. That's about Oscar the history trivia. of Hollywood I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Here, Ben's dad. Can't just now, be honestly, Mike, that's good. Because you mentioned Sunset Boulevard. William Holden, that was good. I like that. No I more. Like that we got that in there. We're within eight minutes <laughs> now. I'm No more trivia So questions. can people still get their ballots in? This yeah, is we... it. They close at 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay. What are we at now? Can we get an update? You have seven minutes. Time for some Oscar trivia. No, no I don't have Edward G. Some... Robinson what was one of the great Edward, movie stars. By the way, by the way this, is, this is my father. I say Jack. more than 100 screen credits going into the 1970s. How many Oscar nominations did he have? Two. <laughs> you never said this to us. Edward, I know. I didn't. Listen, you never said and this. And fairness your dad, Edward G. Robinson is incredible in Double Indemnity. Edward G. Robinson was never so much as nominated for an Academy Award, Correct. even though he starred question. in more than 100 movies. Exactly. 100 movies, L never nominated. Little Double Caesars with Barbara Stanwyck. Stanwyck. Well, I'm One I'm of doing the this seminal for. films Fred of McMurray. film noir history. I had to cut yeah. out the, uh, the sign-off there because he was like, I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Den's bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just got a little mixed up. Is that like Den after 8 p.m.? Hey, he's, uh, the fact I asked him for a few questions, and I think he sent us 15. Exactly. Oh, did? Yeah. From the big guy. Are you going to tell None him? None of them before 1980. Has he been texting you during this? No, he's So he's not watching? He's definitely watching. Time for an Oscar trivia question. Here are the real names of Oscar winners of the past. Can you name their more famous monikers? Isser Danielovich, Marion Morrison, Reginald Truscott Jones, nominee Betty Persky, and nominee Doris Kappelhoff. Who's Doris Kappelhoff? Doris Day. Got to be Doris Day. In order, they are Kirk Douglas, John Wayne, Ray Milan, Lauren Bacall, and Doris Day. Hey, yeah. Adnan. Yeah, Oscar sure Trivia. Right. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Ben's, Ben's dad. dad. There you go. Love, Thanks, Ra Jeffrey. Love Ray Milan in the last go. weekend. Al Pacino's favorite movie growing up. Uh, you, someone you just said that you look like Army Hammer. No! Have what you a gotten compliment that before? prior to the... Well, forget the, not the cannibal part, <laughs> yeah. but oh, the yeah. good-looking yeah. part. Yeah, the good -looking. Have uh, you ever back, gotten that? Back in the social network days, uh, that would happen every once in a while. If you I, gotta, I didn't, yeah, he's it didn't jacked. occur to me. Winkle Boss? No, you're tall. Yeah. That's I've a compliment. That a That's a That's great someone compliment. right here. Yeah, sure. That's, Time for an Oscar trivia. Well, clearly my dad. <laughs> like Pe my dad's on the Jesus YouTube comments, I guess. Yeah, there you go. No, this like Peter O'Toole, text. Kirk Douglas never won an Oscar. <laughs> like O'Toole, Douglas Kirk Douglas was never won awarded Oscar. a special it's Oscar for his career. Mike, what are the two roles Mike, he stop. rejected which would win Oscars for other actors? I don't know. Spartacus? This is fantastic. Sp yeah, Spartacus is one of them. Spartacus has got to be. 17, yeah. which went to William That's Holden, the second best actor. 17 and Cat Ballou in a weak year, no, winning Lee Marvin, the best actor. 
Listen, That's great. Oscar trivia. I'm Listen. Jeffrey Lyons. Big, Ben's dad. Where's big news here. Yeah. Jess has made an appearance. Thank God. Someone from the shipping container. Yeah, other than right, these yeah. three dudes here. Yeah. Jess, it's great to see you. Awesome. Thank you Welcome. so much for Get coming. Get the we headphones on. We, she doesn't hear you yet. No, no, it's okay. She's, she no, can she figure it out. She cannot hear you. Look at Army Hammer and Ben, by the way. I mean, <laughs> separated at birth. That's been done for minus oh. the cannibalism. That's actually what do you think? way closer than you'd want it to be, given what's going on with Army Hammer. <laughs> kind of looks like Robin Williams a little bit. No, Army. Good, good call, Robin Williams. <laughs> Hey, it Jess, it's awesome to see you. Thanks for coming. How are you? Oh, it was, I'm so happy I came here just in time to listen to five guys talk about Barbie <laughs> and feminism. I Just in time. It's Barbie! <laughs> it's the most important movie of the year. We had Dude. Lucy in the makeup chair over an hour and a half ago. I thought she was going to come on. We were in, in fairness to us, we were waiting for her to make an appearance to do Barbie. And then your dog, you've been here for 22 minutes. So I don't know if you were eating tenders, but we did want to talk to you. We want to hear your favorite movies. We were staging Willow's entrance, yeah. and she's not quite at the level of Messi yet, who was able to play such a phenomenal role in Anatomy of a Fall. She's not quite there yet, but we're working on it. We trained her to come in on the stained carpet for her entrance, but as far as the rest of uh, Willow's acting talents goes, not quite there yet. My sister thinks your dog is adorable, by the way. It's, the only, text, it's the only text she sent me in the last three hours is, whose dog's so cute? And look at this, ad man. Amazing. We got Lucy. We have Lucy here as well, which Give is fantastic. No, just in case, Roy, we got to talk to Mike. So, Lucy, it's great to see you. I understand a big win today. So, already a big day Thank for you. Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. I was so close to not coming. Halftime, I was like, oh, I yeah. will not be going to the Oscars party. But we're here. Yeah. Overtime, I didn't realize you guys were waiting for me because I've been out there for about an hour and a half. That's, that's what Samson said. It's been an hour and a half. Like, where, Lucy's around? The Caitlin re- Clark should be nominated for an Oscar. There you go. Best actress. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh, but man. Don't get jump back sincere. there. Chris. Did you not see that? I'm going to uh, give you stork. one second to walk that back. Why would she be nominated? Is I'm just she saying, acting like a basketball player. She, no, because she's won the year in college basketball. I was just tying in Iowa basketball. He was going to make Oscars a flop joke. Well. Yeah, she did a fair amount of acting when that uh, court oh, was stormed. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate Lucy, it. I'm so no, glad Lucy, I came. No, 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 Lucy, no, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy stay, 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 stay. Lucy, we lost Lucy. No. Hey, no, she'll uh, be back. Okay, the show is almost started. I do want to get this in here. Oppenheimer. Time for an Oscar trivia question. Which actress? Jesus! Peter O'Toole been nominated Come eight on, times Dad. for an Oscar Come on, Dad. without ever winning. Although in her case, some were for supporting roles. <laughs> Play it again, actually. I didn't want to hear the question properly. <laughs> Time yeah. for an Oscar trivia question. Which actress has, like Peter O'Toole, been Glenn nominated close. eight times for an Oscar? Glenn, oh, Glenn Close. Yeah, it's yeah. Glenn Close. Yeah. It's Glenn Close. So why nominated for Best Actress for The Wife, Albert Knobs, Dangerous Liaisons, Hillbilly Elegy and yeah. Fatal Attraction and Fatal Best Supporting attraction. Actress in The Big Chill and The World According to Garb and The Natural. I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's dad. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Fatal Attraction is another spoiler. I've mentioned Boiling Bunnies all the time. And that's something. Yeah. Are you aware of the Boiling Bunny? Anyone? Yes. Then, oh, so that's, that's something you can talk about with Fatal Attraction? The show is yeah, minutes away from starting. Mark Ruffalo right now on the red carpet, who I adore. But I want to get these Oppenheimer power rankings in. Christopher Nolan, obviously, I'm talking about. So, Ben, you first. Christopher Nolan, power rankings. Oppenheimer, big night. Go ahead. We'll get the graphic ready. Take it away. All right. Christopher Nolan has not missed as a filmmaker, in my eyes. Every time out is an oh. event. He- uh, tenet, Tenet, Tenet. No, Tenet was a miss. Tenet, two maple not a miss. You yeah. just didn't understand. Or maybe a foul tip. It. That's an indictment on you guys. That's not mm. an indictment on him. Ambitious filmmaking. Tenet didn't make the list, of course. Right. The Prestige, uh, a tremendous film with Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. Interstellar, a uh, very emotional final sequence with Matthew McConaughey. Hey, reconnecting with his daughter. That one always gets me. Uh, Memento yeah. is, is, I don't even know how, how you even pitch that movie, write that movie. That movie is insane. It put him on the map. The Dark Knight, of course, a perfect uh, popcorn film and should have been nominated for Best Picture and is the reason why we now have 10 films nominated for Best Picture. And uh, Inception was the one he did that that really, I think, changed the game for me and just took it to a whole nother level. What about level. the Dark Knight Rises? Thank God we got Bane in. Just as Bane made the appearance. But but Jess just pointed out to me, no Oppenheimer on the list. This is a top. You're not putting Oppenheimer as one of Christopher Nolan's best movies. Not for me. It, no, it's not. It's uh, it's an important film. Uh, it's actually well paced, considering not that much happens in the yeah, movie. Yeah. Um, but I no, mean, it's, it's essential. It's why made a bomb. It's Casino <laughs> didn't make the list of a Scorsese films either. Right, exactly. Well, it's nominated for movies. best editing, and I think if you watch it through the prism of this is a 
kind of like a three hour and change montage because they get through so much. The pacing on it is unbelievable. Yeah, it is a very well paced. Wait, movie. did you just say nothing happens in Oppenheimer? No, I'm saying the guys he yeah. a bomb. narrative He's, thrust. He made a not, bomb. Yeah, he made it's a the bomb. The biggest thing ever. <laughs> yes, it's the most. Like Matt Damon says, it's the most important thing that's ever happened in the world. We'll get yeah. to we'll get to David's power rankings in just a second. Trivia but first. Being, but I'm being told that we have a huge VIP to our okay. stained carpet. Just in time, one minute away from the Academy Awards about to begin, and here we go. Big time guest coming. It's not Caitlin Clark. I'm leaving. Hey! hey. hey. So much worse than Caitlin Clark. Yes. Yeah. The Hefe and Valerie. Let's what's go. What's the point of me wearing this suit? I mean, what is going on here? That is big news. Rather than being fashionably late, right on time, Dan Levitard and his beautiful bride, Valerie. So we want star power. You got star power here, okay? We got Jess, we got Lucy, and then we got Levitard. And How we, does, we got a main broadcast starting in moments. How does this work? Are we just all going to sit and listen to Jimmy? So the talent, in part, kind of has to so they can follow along. And this is indeed a, a second screen experience. So it's an opportunity for us to get synchronized with our audience and make sure that they're watching at the same time we are. My wife is watching at home. She's got us on the iPad and the main broadcast on the Appreciate main you. screen. She that is how off. you do this, folks. And there's always a concession from the audience that you got to lay out a little bit, let moments breathe, and for Four huge categories. We're also going to be able to pot up the broadcast as well, so you can hear it on the main feed. If you awesome. need Lucy and I to vamp about the ACC Women's Championship or the Big Ten Women's Championship games, we got you for at least 25 minutes. If Oppenheimer just wins every category and it gets really boring, yeah. then we're going to go to that. But if there's some sort of brawl that happens during the Oscars or some sort of crazy yeah. thing. That already and happened at LSU, South Carolina, so I don't know. It was bench yeah. clearing. Yeah. That was big. Quite literally, because there was nobody left on the bench. There was there was actually one South Carolina player who didn't clear the bench area, and I was like, that would have been me if I were there, because I would have been too scared to break the rules. I would have just sat there and watched everything. How about the guy jumping over the scorer's table? Uh, Twitter that's- said that that was Flaugier's brother. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but my first thought was my brother would never do that for me. <laughs> Love you, Jack, but I know for a fact. He'd be like, you got this one, Lucy. He I would. believe in you. Do you believe he couldn't do it or wouldn't do it? Absolutely look at, look at how wouldn't hard that is. do it. He would not do it. Wait, that the policeman is the brother? No, my brother would not jump over to support me. We've got an I, overrun I, at the red Ready, carpet. the guy in gray okay. is going to jump out. I Let's wa- wait for it. Oh, right that. Ooh, that wasn't all that smooth. David, I do want your power rankings for Christopher Nolan, because I'm curious if Oppenheimer misses the list for you. All right, I'll give it to you right now. Yeah, let's do and it. I want what? Samson's. Oppenheimer's not on the list. Yeah, exactly. Wow! <laughs> Oppenheimer's not a not top five Christopher Nolan yeah. movie. Wow. I will go right now with my number five movie as soon as I see it. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm so... You did like Oppenheimer, it's just not in your top five. I thought it was fine. The Prestige, I happen to like The Illusionist better than The Prestige. Which Giamatti always says, people tell him, hey, you're in The Prestige. He goes, no, I'm in the other one, The Illusionist. And the other one and was Norton. fantastic. It's Rufus great. Sewell and uh, Justin Timberlake's wife. Jessica, Jessica Biel, yeah, yeah. Jessica Biel. Yeah. Number four, Interstellar. That movie makes me cry. It makes me want to time travel. It makes me want to have a moment. It's the exact yeah. same thing. Three, Memento. Wait, do we have it's the like same list? list? It's like Memento. We're doing it backwards. Wait, do we have yeah. the exact so same can, list? Can we put this in black and white? I'm so I'm so confused. <laughs> I think that my list may be the same, which is why we're going to go to Jimmy Kimmel. I'm not hearing Jimmy Kimmel's monologue in well, my head. Well, there is an overrun. Still right now. There yeah. is an overrun right the now. The red carpet's still going. Carpet. So there's still red carpet. So Jimmy Here we go. They just cut out. to it. Okay. We are starting... Gentlemen, so this pregame did we get to six thousand or no? It did fly. We could have done this for ten hours. You guys are awesome. The ballots are now closed. Okay. So now we can say all of our categories. Okay, great. And we can post it. And we've got a piece of paper here that we're going to show, and we're going to have it. I don't know if we have a board outside, but we have every one of my picks, and every one of Adnan's picks, and every one of Ben's picks. Right. But the the the, contest is if you can beat David. The contest is you have to beat me. And the question is, will anybody? And if you do, you're in a raffle, and you will get a really good prize. Do we have any confirmation how many we got to? Do we get to 6,000? I will get the confirmation. I don't have the final number. That's fine. Hopefully Coco will uh, chime in or whoever's. 
letting you know. But this is the moment of truth. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel's monologue, the Academy Awards, nothing more crazy, nothing more passionate for cinephiles like us. And, Ben, it should be an amazing night. I'll tell you this. People say the Oscars may not matter like they used to. There are big-time films nominated this year, and I think the numbers are going to be great for ABC, for Jimmy Kimmel, and it should be a fun night. I want to thank Metal Arc. Oh and I want to thank Dan yes. Levitard. Absolutely. And I want to thank all the crew. They're working on a Sunday. They have a live show coming up tomorrow at 9 a.m. <laughs> yes, And thank we have you guys. so many people here. And it's a schlep for yeah. the overwhelming majority of the people who I know. came. Jason's directing. I saw Danny earlier, one of our engineers. They're doing a phenomenal job. Love all you guys. Yeah, shout out to Louis. Louis he took yeah, all our here. <laughs> and everyone from the container, we're just very appreciative. And no, we're happy so. to announce that there's going to be some in-office awards handed out today. We've spent the entire week answering surveys and providing nominees, and there's going to be some awards given out for those that love our show. Was Messy there for campaigning best for the awards like there is in Hollywood? Were certain people campaigning to receive acknowledgement? I think uh, Mike Fuentes has always got something going on. He's always got an angle going. And Tony, I, I, I think he's actually genuinely like that in real life, but who knows? I can't wait for the Levitard popcorn. This is going to be unbelievable. Uh, I am Dan struggling right now is, understanding Dan and why Valerie right now giving away the show popcorn. hasn't started. I guess I think what Mike was saying, there was just a red carpet overflow, so they're trying to get everybody in there. Okay, everyone gets in the show. They it's actually th lock down the carpet, and they pre-tape some interviews, so they want to roll it right up until... Yeah. This is like a Levitard live stream. It starts five minutes late. Yeah, I oh, can't believe it. Dan's famous you. popcorn. Dan Levitard, folks, thank giving you. out popcorn. Could you have dental floss for Adnan, please? <laughs> it tastes kind of weird. <laughs> really, Lucy? He, he was hyping this up. It was yeah, a good it, value, make really it, good popcorn. It tastes odd. First bite, I was like, oh, this is weird. He made it himself. And well, he's been totally stressed about yeah, this. He was asking how many people are going to be here. It's him and Valerie doing this popcorn together. It's a big deal. It's kind of chef smoky. Made it. It, but it, it just tastes a little weird. It's got a little oh. lime There's a light in it. seasoning I enjoy. It's not too strong. I'm with Lucy. It gets better with every bite. Not oh, bad, yeah. not, not, but just weird. Coconut, it's yeah, a little I, tangy. Is that coconut oil? It's better than the Isaiah Thomas yeah. popcorn. Uh, I want to go out and see that. who's in the room because I saw Coca, the producer. Yeah, guys, of yeah, go see Coca. You can go up and can I go say, say some hello? people. Uh, right. Yeah, see some Bad people. Bad drink with for twenty years this year. Can you me a drink? It's a live Bally's watch along. Here. People understand the concession is you look, guys are right also there. watching it too. Now look, Coca. Tell Hi, Coca Cara. come in here. Loves when I call her out. Just oh, your girlfriend's around. here. Yes, thank you. Shout Adnan. out to Kara. She's awesome. Kara. Kara, that's what I said, no? Kara's my daughter. No, I said Kara. You said Kara. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Mike Time now for Oscar trivia. Yeah. Like Joe Angel. Jeffrey Lyons. Oh, no. <laughs> he was the star of the show. I got Come on. He was Come awesome. On. The great sound off. That's I'm good. not getting, I'm very surprised. I, I said this to Chris Delay here. Yeah. So is there something more that, is anyone on Twitter following? Yeah, we've got resident young people checking. Can you please Jess is check on why I'm seeing a commercial at 706? And on every feed. Well, this is a brand new start time for the Oscars. I've never started at seven, and <laughs> that record ma has it, been maintained. Continue to maintain. <laughs> that changes everything. There'll be some of a little bit of an overflow on the red carpet, or a reason but they why. But David's right. People bet on like when no. the Oscars is going to end. Like this is bizarre. Like the Charlton show starts Heston got a flat. It's a little Charlton surprising. Heston show. Right. Jessica, can you please? Are you yeah. texting someone or trying to find it? I'm searching the interwebs. And Hollywood zero? Reporter has nothing on Twitter. Oh, variety. this may be the intro that I'm watching on ABC. Yeah, there's it's, always some big number at the top. It doesn't just start. Yeah, we are officially the underway yeah, on go. ABC. The Oscar started. There it is. 707 start time. That's the most sports thing they've ever done. <laughs> it's like a Braves game. It's a Levitard thing. <laughs> a Blue Jays game. <laughs> when are yeah, we 707 sing the first pitch. I like it. Really. We started this show at 406. Yeah. And I was despondent was out livid. there. He was livid. I was with Ben he wondering, what out. are we doing here? Right on time, then. It was 4 o'clock. I got to tell you, Lucy, the popcorn gets better the more you have it. That's I, what I'm saying, I, though. I, it was, it was weird. I didn't, first say, up, Mike. I didn't say it was bad. I mean, it's it was just weird, but I'm you, It's better as you do it. I'm with you, Mike. It's pretty good now. You have to be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. All Thank right, I was help. on the wrong channel. I was on ABC News Channel. That's oh. very funny. Instead of on the actual Asking ABC. Jessica to Google no wonder you weren't concerned Twitter. if like, something bigger doing? was happening. Yes. Okay, I've got Jeffrey Wright. Right. This is the first time I've not. I don't go to Oscar parties because I like hearing everything. First Oscar party I've ever been to, I'll tell you that much. That's how I feel about the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I like actually want to hear what they're saying, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel opening next to Barbie. So I get the feed in, in my headphones because you get it in yours? Is that what's happening? Correct. Cool. Yeah. Uh, for, again, if you're just joining us right now and you want to be synced up, we have uh, 
Jimmy Kimmel and Barbie sitting on a park bench together. Forrest uh, Gump the, style. The fellas uh, can listen to the broadcast just like you can at home. We are a true second screen experience. You can have us both up uh, when there's an opportunity. When Jimmy Kimmel, comes Jimmy. as he walks out on the stage, that's where we are at right now. If you want to synchronize, the fellas are listening there. Don't worry. If you just have us, we'll give you a plenty breakdown of what's going on, and we will pot up the broadcast for four major awards. Bobby De Niro did not stand up for Jimmy Kimmel. Maybe because he can't. Everyone else stood up. Unnecessary cheap shot. These are the observations you can get on the watch along. He had to do it. Yeah. How's everybody's volume? Good? Can Good? A little, a little more juice. A little juice. More juice. Yeah, I'm a little worried a little because uh, like it's bleeding over sometimes on the microphone, so just keep that in mind. Don't Fair try enough. to put your headphones right next to the microphone. I got a little bit more juice for you. Is that good? Great. Thank you. I still don't have Jimmy in my ear. We'll work on that. A time joke this he, early? He, exactly. He just said we're already five minutes late he, right away. He looks shiny. He was schwitzing. He ran a half marathon today. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired by Samson. A good shot at Madam Webb. I like it. An early shot? Mm -hmm. That's Dakota Johnson. Yeah, you're right. That's disappointing. Because you love Dakota Johnson. I do. <laughs> Barbie, here we go. Barbie leads off as it should. Mm -hmm. As you said, biggest movie of the year. Whole show. Know, we gotta, it's amazing. Gotta get some snacks in here. Like Brad Pitt, so, Notions Eleven. So, yeah. <laughs> I am, but it doesn't stay pressed. I have been at work. Early shot the snub. Okay, that's good. The seating at the Oscars is a big deal. I'm always imp always amazed at who's in the front row. They're kind of like the the person. They've right? got to be in Jack front of Margot for years. Robbie. Margot, oh, who's just the center seat? It used to be Clooney for many years. Jack would always have that. Jack seat. always had a great seat. Yeah. Here, here. Needs a shave though. Yeah, Roy, Roy doesn't like that look. I'm, gosh, a little disheveled for you. Coronating Oppenheimer already in the monologue. Mm -hmm. It's over-under on Oppenheimer wins tonight. Four and a half? It's got to be higher than that. Six. Higher than that? Six yeah. and a half? Six and a half. Look at the ballots. Kind of a lame kill. He's in the winner's show, seat. Yeah, down he's right there, yeah. You can swallow. Chew and swallow before you talk in the microphone, please. And get some water, too. Oh! <laughs> Bam! We didn't have that on the bingo card. What? I can't hear. <laughs> Tell me what he's saying. <laughs> Is he being funny? <laughs> I mean, there are some people that are only watching us. So I, I, well, I said lay out occasionally. Yeah, lay out occasionally. Yeah. Ma made fun of Robert Tilly Jr. for being a drug addict. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I mean, that's canon. Yeah. Willow's eating Dan's popcorn. Mm. But he's kept the ingredients secret. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're, that's... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're good. I'm going to take it from her. She's not eating it, so I don't think she's. There's the it. dog. 
messy. We've got yes. the dog. We've got a messy sighting. Josh brought in the sign. Messy for best dog. Yeah. Show it. Yes. Messi messy had a seat. There was talks that Messi wouldn't be there. By this the, is big. By the score, Messi did not show up against uh, Montreal either. By the way, Adnan, the Minnesota Wild pulled their goalie in overtime to get a four-on-three advantage and won the game. Yeah, they That's needed shocking. that. That's shocking. Eight points that. out of a wild card spot right now, so they definitely you know their need seat that fillers. That's the a Oscars. base. Of course, yeah. Yeah. when the dog leaves, someone's gonna have to sit there. <laughs> Another dog. Revolutionary. That's gross. Do you think we're gonna That's, see this more in the NHL? Tough. I can't imagine. That's pretty crazy. Although it was successful. <laughs> Yorgos Lanthimos name joke. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> GQ, our engineer. Thank you so much. Uh, nominated for best sound editing. Yeah. You can just walk in here and yeah. get Ben right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ben wants to hear the show. Yeah, that's a that's a fair thing. <laughs> ah, thumbs up. <laughs> best and, sound. And mixer. the Oscar goes too. I mean, come on. Were you not well clicked in? Yeah, the whole time. Yeah, I didn't hear. That's it. really no. The issue. I was no. I was clicked in. They had to change it out and fix it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this monologue has been boring. I'm very disappointed so oh, far. I'm playing it a little oh, safe, man. huh? Too safe. The only drug joke was aggressive, though. We're at so, 7.15. We haven't had an award yet. Because First time. I need to go get some powder. Go ahead. I'm Seven minutes into like. the broadcast. Is that also sounds a drug joke? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Speaking of powder. Robert Downey joke. I need something. It's been three hours. Yeah. Some uppers. Bring Coca back. What do you think the first award is Support, going to be Supporting out? Supporting yeah, New Orleans. Supporting. And how long do you think that speech will last? Over under 44 and a half seconds. Just out of curiosity. <laughs> so Downey, supporting actor is the first one? That speech goes over, absolutely. I think they both go over. Yeah, Downey's not getting cheated. He'll give a great speech. There's Bob. A little love to De Niro. And Jody Foster. A little taxi driver call back. Last. What a great film, huh? The best. Is it? We're, we're getting reports that Willow has found catering. <laughs> and Samson has alerted the proper authorities. Cody, De Niro, always a good sport. Yeah. Lame joke about, you know, daughter or whatever, girlfriend. Dan, Bob just laughs. All good. What are your thoughts on De Niro as a, a Saturday Night Live host? Because he's probably one of the worst ever. That's not his forte, let's be honest. Yeah, not exactly built for that medium. Mm -hmm. Then why do they keep asking him back? <laughs> I don't, I, I'm, I'm not an SNL guy. I can't speak to that. I stopped watching when the Phil Hartman left. R.I.P. Rest in power. No. Norm, too. I hear Rest people say that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Norm is awesome, too. It's like the new, this generation so soft is, you know, SNL used to be better back in my day. Right. Whoa, uh, woke? This no, no. It's, well, no, it's just generally bad. The, it always takes a while to establish a cast. Mm. Yeah. I'm amplifying your microphone right now, Adnan, so people can hear you chew, so something's going on. Because while the audience is conceding that this is a second screen experience... I'm just not programmed that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> little ASMR for you. Jimmy right now making uh, Auschwitz references here to Zone of Interest. So David was right. He said Zone of Interest would get mentioned at some point in the monologue. He's right. Uh, making a note of the fact there's so many international films. Mm -hmm. The yeah, casting award. Right. What did yeah. I say to David when the show started? They should. Yes. Yeah. Who would have won that this year? Oppenheimer. Hmm. Think so. Quick answer. Yeah. 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 Uh, maybe poor I say things. poor things poor because things Willem Dafoe good. in that movie. Yeah. I've never related more to a character than when he's sitting at dinner and burps and then he burp comes <laughs> the out. Bubble comes the bubble comes out. It's awesome. I was like, man, that is me AF. <laughs> So 
Spielberg cutaway. <laughs> Spielberg there just to support. All right, the color purple, right? There you go. Wasn't a film that got a lot of Oscar buzz, you know, released late in the year? I mean, you get Daniel Brooks nominated. I believe she for won the actors. Tony Award for that same perf- same character, which right. is ra- rather unusual. Mm-hmm. You would think he would get like a lifetime exemption, like this is the uh, Masters or something like that. Just yeah, show yeah, up. Yeah. Right, Anytime green jacket. Well, for a speech that I can faintly hear in my headsets, it's yeah. not going that well. No, nah, it's been pretty lame so far, yeah. Cody. Well, and he's, not, he's right about the directors, though. Mm. Classic AI joke. Well, yeah. Inside baseball, talking about the actor strike this year, mm-hmm. writer strike, big deals in We're Hollywood. still in the monologue. Yeah. Yep. No Aaron Rodgers. No. No Emma Stone naked. It's not no wrong with going inside baseball. He though. hasn't brought up exactly. Iowa or Notre Dame winning one time. <laughs> Our show's winning. Court storm at some point. Also, I'm I'm, a little, I'm choking on this popcorn a little bit. This yeah. is not a good snack for when you have to talk. Yep. Excellent point. That's why I haven't touched oh. mine. Adnan pounded the whole thing. It's a good snack, just yeah. not yeah. right now. I just invited Willow to come join us in the studio, and Willow would not join us. Well, she knows she's really not. I'm trying. You're not an ally. You know? I didn't love that Willow was eating the buffet before. That's oh, prosciutto. How can you say I love no? how you came in here acting like you were okay with it while your face gave off. I'm not happy that this is happening. I mean, the, I don't eat while I'm on the air, so I'm fine, but Willow was licking, like, chips and stuff. Tattled on Willow. In the bowl? Yes. Her okay. agent is here, and Cody, he's just to been be in Napa, Napa, baby. Cody. doesn't happen. You work hard. I'm, I'm telling you, the Minnesota Wild just revolutionized overtime. I, I can't believe they pulled the goalie yeah. four on three. That's crazy. You got to watch this. It's electric. How much time was left in OT? Like two minutes? Were you aware it'd be a twenty minute monologue? No, but it started six minutes late. Oh, four, we're at fourteen minutes. Yeah. We ended up at over fifty five hundred. Okay, ballots. still awesome. That's phenomenal. Thank Which you, everybody. Is, That's thank awesome you for everybody. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. Our thank ballots. You. What's the prize again? We have the first award. Who are all these people? Oh, did he bring out the crew? Behind the scenes, Oscars people, he's, I believe. He's honoring the behind the scenes. Good. That's a nice moment. And then, as you know from covering that event, how many people are behind the scenes? Oh. Hundreds and hundreds. It's, it's Remarkable. endless, it seems like. I yeah. just, I just got told in my headset stage. that we should learn a thing or two from that. Oh, oh we'd love to. On, we Lewis. give our crew so much love. Yeah. We... Have you ever watched the show? Yes. I wouldn't say that that's the case. Well, I mean, I'm not talking about Dan. I'm talking about everybody but Dan. I'm right. hearing Legal that's also fair. approved another first oh, prize. You get to fuck the popcorn bucket from Dune. Oh, so geez. Geez. oh God. Yeah. We Can we get the legal. microphone going? I want to take the microphone out into the room. I wanted to get Dan. Yeah, I well, the, I mean, yeah. we're still in the, the meat of the show. There's a commercial break. Why don't we fill that commercial break with a, a Big Kahuna interview with Dan? I would like to do that. First award here is going to be an supporting award. Actress. Supporting here actress. Oh, yeah, here we go. We're going to start with the Randall. holdovers. Yep. Our picks in this, all of us have Divine Joy Randolph. All right, what do you make of how they're actually introducing the nominees? We're oh, all, wait, are they all there? All there, all of them oh, hitting a I love that. Again. Everyone gets some love. Oh, no. No, these are previous winners. Oh, previous No, winners. that is not current nominees. Thank you for clarifying. That's Mary Steenburgen. That's Lupita Nyong'o. And I saw Cheetah Rivera, though I thought she just passed away. Did I get that wrong? That well, Rene that would Moreno. be incredible. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Say that again, David. Go ahead. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. You thought she just passed away? No, Cheetah Rivera. Oh. The one from West Side Story oh, yeah, just yeah, died. Yeah. No, no, no. I'll, here's... I'll double check. Metal Arc Media's movie experts, ladies and gentlemen. Could you, well, instead of that, Cheetah you Rivera died. I have Jan- no idea. Yeah, you're right, right. J- Cheetah Rivera died January 30th. So she's going to be in the memoriam for sure, but not the final. Not, not the, the final. final one. The Harry Belafonte call. We lost the whole monologue. Every surprise in the monologue, he didn't do. Yeah, it's surprising. He didn't. He had, the Emma Stone nudity was a good pick by you. Did not touch it. We're going to need people on the interweb to see whether or not that is being no Aaron Rodgers reviewed either. well. Yep. Is his just monologue no, being reviewed man. well, or is it very vanilla? Good question. Cody's on Chris it. Chris Cody. I'm Ted looking. Danson's wife. I'm keeping a tenant to Great actress in her own right. Mary Steenburgen. Yes. Parenthood. Mm-hmm. Back to the Future. And stepbrothers. <laughs> Clifford. <laughs> the big red dog. <laughs> I love Mary. <laughs> she looks with Martin Emily Short. Blunt does used to work at Hemmerker Schlemmer. So Emily every... Blunt's dress reminds me a little bit of Edge of Tomorrow. 
Yeah, so, yeah that it's looks... in a fixed position. Yes. Uh, I would say, all right, so right now, these previous winners, each of them is being assigned a contemporary nominee, and they profile them. So you have a previous winner wax poetic about your performance. Yeah, five and they got, presenters. They got Mary Steenburgen. This could take forever. Really time. That's my first this thought is, was this is long. This like, that's, is. Like, even nice idea, but Hollywood that's standards. This bloated. is a bit much. I this don't is, this is why they're starting an this. hour early. It's just still going to end at the same time. They won't do this in the non-acting categories. They're not going to have no, five editors. No, of course not. God, could you imagine? The, Makeup the and hairstyling. Let's talk about right. Golda. That's not going to happen. They have Mary Steenburgen looking like Lisa Kudrow over here now. Right. Lupita Nyong'o? 12 Years a Slave. Winner. Yeah. That's a movie you only watch once. Yeah, 12 Years a Slave was it. Oh, Divine looks divine. It's actually pronounced Davine. Davine? Yeah, you're right. It looks like Divine, but it's okay. She looks Davine. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Davine looks Davine. She's going to be on stage Divine shortly. from Pink Flamingos? That's, now, that's another example like Crime Game, isn't it? John Waters. <laughs> Talented man. Yeah. I love John Waters. <laughs> yes. She's crying oh, already. She's yeah, crying already. Of course. <laughs> Emotional moment. That's an early cry for a winner. This could be the biggest upset of the night if she doesn't win. Oh, my God. It'd be shocking. I love Rita Moreno. Are you kidding? Rita Moreno, it doesn't get better than Rita Moreno. How about Moreno. America be nominated for the one speech? Well, listen, I got a problem. Quality speech, It's though. a great speech, but it shouldn't have been nominated. Julianne Moore, May, December. She was way better. Come, not even close. May, December continues a streak of films being nominated for one thing, and that's the writing category only. Yeah. The rest of... Right? I thought yeah. Melton had a chance in supporting actor. Yeah, exactly. He was in the mix, did not get nominated. Nothing no. for Todd Haynes. Natalie Portman's divorce got finalized yesterday. It was Oof. a nugget. <laughs> it's interesting. I, <laughs> is this the <laughs> slowest award have, in the history of the Oscars? It's taken forever. Yeah, I, I for can't rehearsals, can they still... have an independent arbiter just sit there and roll their eyes? And if it hits three eye rolls, you just bin the idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's well, a lot of that. They used to bring out, la- it was usually last year's winner exactly. presented the category. 100%. Well, this considering how this slow. is going, they may go back to that. Yeah. We're at, has this been a four-minute award presentation? Uh, guys, I'm out on this. I was planning on being here the whole night, but if this is what I signed no, up Mike, for. No, Mike, we can't no, lose you. Come on, just hang in 10. there. It's only for the actors. Just four right. times we'll do this. Let me grab a drink, though. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead. Regina King, I love. I let, me know how long, talk. let me know how long this speech goes. <laughs> I just watched her in The Leftovers. She was phenomenal. Oh, you yeah, finally yeah, got yeah. to the leftovers, show. huh? I, I watched the entire series. I binged the whole thing. Two seasons? And I loved it. Three I watched episodes. Lost and the Leftovers back-to-back. Yeah. And it started on January 19th. I finished on February 12th, Lost, and then started the Leftovers like on February 16th and ended it like February 28th. Wow. Uh, speaking of Leftovers, apparently Willow was just eating one of her treats and also an ice cube, according to her agent, who was out there in the kitchen with her. So you, David, are a liar, and you are slandering his client. Oh, defamation suit's coming your way, buddy. And we have a winner. Here we go. Dave Vine, Joy Randolph, as expected, for Best Supporting Actor. So, so, oh, she, Emotional. Oh, she's Listen, not going to make it to the stage. Giamatti's going to help her. Right? She, she didn't even there, hug she is crying Paul Giamatti. Don't even, but he's helping her. She oh, wants yeah, him there yeah, with her. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. Now Good everyone has to PG. clap that they didn't win, which, oh, Paul's walking her to the stage. That's what I'm saying. I PG, he's like, I'm here. Gentlemen, we are 1-0. Not for nothing, we're one and no. Okay, I like it. I'm on one. <laughs> wait, 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 what did you pick? Who did you have? I went with America. <laughs> you are not going to get a piece of my Roy, memorabilia. Did you, did you, like, look up any of the favorites before you? I didn't watch any movies. Yeah, so Je- not, Jess, Roy didn't see a single movie I think movie she was the longest year. shot. Not on one the board. nominee. This is the last speech of the year for her. Yeah. She's been great, very emotional, understandably. She's not going to mention plagiarism. <laughs> I just want to say, Alexander Payne, I know your heart was in the right place. She's going to thank him? Yeah, that's the thing. I'm kidding. She's you changed have her to life. thank Alexander Payne. Changed her life. Even though he basically plagiarized the <laughs> no, entire we don't script. Search. We don't, we don't over search. He gave some ideas to Hemmingson. I hope she talks about reading the script for the first time. <laughs> I really do. Back in 2003. 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one award every 30 minutes. Good pace here, bro. No, I promise uh, you it's going to get better. It has gonna to get better. She thinks the cast I crew need of Frisco, it to get better. Be, yeah. So all my kids, we all got this one right. Everybody Everyone's got, got one. Right. Everyone in the, every a, last one of your children. 
a major award this year that she did not win. So there is a leaderboard on lebitardaf.com. And I'm not on it. In addition to a merch store. And you Roy, are Roy, again, why did you not just Google? I didn't know. How would I know? I didn't see any movies, so I'm sorry. You don't There's have a, to see they them. They make odd right. previews. You could have looked at DraftKings. You could have looked at, Draft Draft Kings. Kings. Could have looked at the lines. I didn't know it was you on Draft Kings. You could have taken a shot of Cuervo. I, I, I just did sports. I did take a shot of Cuervo. <laughs> then you should have taken two. I'll be back. I'll get another one. Go get another one. We have Cuervo for everyone at the party. I hope that we're doing that. Yeah, we got Cuervo mm, out there. Wash down this popcorn with some Cuervo. Mm. I thought we were taking shots. Do you know every that time Mike Adnan Ryan promised that he would do a shot yeah. every time Adnan mentioned Killers of the Flower Moon and Marty Scorsese? Yeah. And he, are you okay? Uh oh. I'm joking on this. <laughs> it's the popcorn. Jess is right. It's, it's so dry. <laughs> I think, I think Why Mike, aren't they playing around the stage? Mike hit the over on the That's it. Oh, Paul's crying. 44 yeah, seconds. Yeah, PG's all over. He loves it. Giamatti great. crying. Great moment. Great for the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, look. Someone just... Why are people clapping in our room? We're going to have a commercial. The speech ended. Ah, the stars. Yeah, we're just thrilled that it's over. That was a lot. I think we got to go talk to Dan. Where is Dan? How do we get him? Do we have a microphone? I'm going to go see if we do. And we're going to do a wireless mic. Sam's I think we should it. find yeah. Dan. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. Hello. Did I hit the over? Did oh, I yeah. It? Did I hit it? Way oh, over. Definitely Crushed hit the over it. on that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, it's, uh, I'm under the impression that we're going to interview Big Kahuna now. Awesome. Yeah. All right. All right, Dan. Hello. How you doing? Hello. I'm in. Uh, I'm in the big Kahuna. The big Kahuna room. Dan, thanks for the popcorn. Seriously, you and Valerie went all out. Uh, I think Lucy was right. We spoke for all of us and said a little weird at first, but gained steam. So that is uh, a secret concoction you put together. We are very appreciative. Lucy got a bad batch. She got a bad batch that didn't have enough of the sprinkles on it. She's got to go to the popcorn machine, and uh, I, I saw what happened to her. She didn't get as good a batch as the rest of you. Okay. It's well, a nice light seasoning here. I what ate all of it, but it was weird. Okay. Uh, Lucy, so are you. Thank you. Oh, no, oh, come on. Don't get offended over the popcorn, Dan. I'm not offended. What, what did I say that wasn't totally factual? You called it weird. Dan, where's the shirt from? Is that just for tonight, or was that in your closet? Um, this is, well, yes, is the answer to your question. Both. It's just it's, for tonight. It's and just it's for, in for your tonight, closet. and it's what was in my closet. That's correct. I am. You look I divine, by the way. There it is. He liked that. Uh, I knew Dan was watching. I was not only was I watching. I had to take all sorts of public relations calls because of what those bad things you guys said about Asians. Thank you for paying attention to that. I'm I sorry for that. Again. Sam said, Listen, Dan. <laughs> 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 Dan, you know I love you. The fact you put me and Samson in here, this is like... It's we, we, actually we, offensive we, what you did to me. It's the worst thing. You said than, it, David. Uh, no, I said Asians. I don't you know. It, it sounds again. it again. Wow. He said yeah, Scott Boris tone. was a bad Asian. Yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> How is Jordan Montgomery not signed yet? You went in this whole Dan, studio? you should be far more concerned with what Adnan's doing in your chair, what he's doing to your microphone. Oh, no. Well, this is another thing. This this was wonderful. To see bits of sandwich all over <laughs> where it is that I sit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll clean it up, Danny. No problem. To, to, I'll but, take care but of it. But to see him thinking that the break he had was two minutes and then them coming back to his face with mayo on it nine seconds later. We thought there'd be built-in breaks. It was You're a clear. professional broadcaster. Yeah, that would never happen to you on the MLB Network. No, MLB Network, I'd be escorted out immediately. Here at Metal Arc, new rules. We'll get it in. It's all good. More importantly, the Oscars in general, Dan, what's your... Listen, you know we're cinephiles. We love it. We're unnaturally excited about it. What's your level of excitement about the Academy Awards? It's a bloated uh, <laughs> and <laughs> a bloated tribute to self-involvement and narcissism. Just Jerry. like five days a week at 9 a.m. <laughs> 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 
That's what, the, that's what it should say on my tombstone. <laughs> exactly. Except you have to get a double to fit, fit all that. Right. You guys didn't hear the uh, you didn't hear the Kimmel uh, monologue. I was trying to hear it in here, and it uh, was well, didn't it, land it, a lot. It seemed a lot of like a lot of uh, bored, forced laughter. Yes. Uh, that's a tough gig. He's been doing it for a long time, man. He's been how many how many of these has he done? It's got to be four or five. He yeah. did it back when we were there for Shape of Water. Remember yes, that 2016. One? And, yeah, I love The Shape of times. Water. Yeah, great yeah. film. I was one of the few um, people who loved that. But you're right, Dan. You're playing to the people in the room, none of whom want to be made fun of, and then you want to entertain everybody at but home. I want some edge. Lose. I needed more edge bite. out of Kimmel. A little bite. I was not happy. Now they're going to go through a Best Picture nominee, so we're not even going to get award number two. But we're going through the holdovers. They're explaining the movie. I love this movie. I'm still oh, so let's, angry, Let's Dan. talk about this for a second, because uh, David, I don't know how Adnan and Ben feel about this, but David spent a lot of time telling me how this was the movie of the year, uh, that he loved this movie. And you know how David is, the things that reach him that go through all the sandpaper and the barbed wire and get near that uh, lump of coal that used to be a heart when he was a child. Uh, uh, Dan, it's a Sunday night. Come on. The uh, the stuff that get, reaches him is, I don't know why, the, I haven't seen this yet, David. I don't know why this reached you. Because it, it would be a, it's a connection movie, you know that. And I just love connections and the connection that Paul Giamatti has with his students and the role that Dave, Dave, Vine. Dave Vine Joy plays, Academy Award winner now. Yeah, so the relationship is his students hate him. They think he's No, a, but they don't know him. But he's a curmudgeon. And he's, I love He's a salty bastard. Like, I've got some a... best friends who are curmudgeons. I love Dan. I mean, who's a bigger curmudgeon that's who, but that's than who you Dan? Relate to, you relate to people. This is a guy who refers to him as a snarling Visigoth. He calls him a hormonal vulgarian. Well, this he is what you exactly. Do. That's from 20 years ago, a different script. <laughs> he plagiarized <laughs> all of it. All those words that Giamatti said were written by somebody else. You're thinking of, the, you're thinking of Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> But where did it touch you, David? Like where It touched me in the relationship with Paul yeah. Giamatti and the student. Right. I always wanted that sort of relationship with a teacher, with a, a friend, a parent, anybody. Well, the reason I'm asking you the question is because I'm assuming when, when you're raving about a movie, it's not just because the movie has a good story that is emotional to you. My guess is, usually with you, it touches you in an emotional place that connects to blank. And so you're saying you wish you had a teacher that you cared about like that? Yeah, I, d I never did. I had some great teachers, and the, my favorite teacher ended up being a pedophile. So, oh, uh, that took come a turn. On, come on. Come on. I blame Dan for this. No, I didn't, that's yeah, not my it's your fault. Wait, well, they, it's literally where he touched him. 735 like, Eastern in Pedophilia. Come on. I don't even want to talk about it. Oh, wow. The orchestra is Wait, are we down. doing animated? Yeah. Is this it? <laughs> this is a huge category, Dan. Best animated. Oh, this yeah, is where there could be, be an talking. upset. Come on. <laughs> the orchestra has played Dan off. And I'm being told that we have someone in position, another VIP, wow. for a grand entrance on our stained carpet. So many luminaries out. We all were excited about Willow's entrance and Dan Levitard. Bless us with his popcorn. I'm being told that we have a VVIP ready to hit the stained carpet. And I also needed an excuse to play Dan off with the orchestra. Thanks, Mike. Excellent work, Mike. Taking us behind the scenes here and getting it done. So best more animated. live coca. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Live from the stained carpet. Once again, appreciate everybody watching us right now on the YouTube page. The guests are coming in. What category is this? This is uh, animated. Animated. Yeah. I'm surprised. Animated, animated short. short. Film. So me and Samson this both have letter a to a moment. pig. And let's be honest. Holocaust. Ben has war is over. Right. And you can't go wrong with the Holocaust in this category. Holocaust <laughs> movies always do well at the Academy Awards. Oh, wow. Live well, nailed it. Lost. Yes. And the boy, Benny. Do they just do War is Over? Some yes. of us do this for a living. I also oh, had War is Over. Stop. Good job, Jess. It was the I, favorite when I Googled. I'm over, yeah. too. It was, it was head to head. Listen, <laughs> Lennon, Roy. the music of the Come Beatles. On, you got the Beatles. Yeah. You got a war film. Come on. It's all, it's all happening yeah. for, uh, for We the just all have to hope ever. Roy doesn't get one right wow. all night. That would be funny. Yeah, if, if Roy goes go over 23, this is what we're cheering for? I can go to the leaderboard now. Roy like Caitlin Clark in the first half of the Big Ten Women's Championship I had I had Wars. I had Wars over. But you did. Switch to letter, letter, letter to, to a, a pig. pig. Me and David. I'm had being to... told for real now that our VVIP is ready to walk the sand yeah. carpet. Yeah. It's a mean, isn't it? Is it mean really here? He's not going to come for this. It's not so gods. Who's coming to me? I see someone. Carpet. I don't know. Oh, but... Juju got it. Hey, oh. Juju. Yeah. Let's go. Looking good. Looking good. 
Juju always makes a great entrance. Thank Silent. God. Yeah, hey, Juju, in the house. Helping us out with a little social media course. Does a phenomenal job here. A dog making an appearance. Just want to say hello. Willow, get Samson. Get him. Sick him. Willow, Sick get him. Girl. Sick him, girl. Get him, Willow. Sick him, girl. Get him, Willow. The social media head of Metal Arc just cool. walked in. Juju, welcome. Got some heat on your feet. You got the tuxedo Nikes. Um, Juju. Yes, the tuxedo oh, good kicks. Nikes. You are officially Eddie the Eagle. Do you know that reference? No, sir. That no, means you're Eddie over your skis. <laughs> yeah. You're plus one. Dude, is... you got to turn Thank this you, down. This is so loud. I'm on your level. Oh, you mean like I'll kick this level. coverage? What that was like a, that no, was like right. a, yes. That was like okay. a combo platter of uh, cliches that we'll all have to Google. War is over. That's going to hurt my chances of winning. As you and I have said, oftentimes the short categories, that's what can determine winners and losers. Inspired and the by the music of John and you know, Yoko. That yeah, was it was going to be one or the other. So uh, Ben guessed that one and right. now they're doing best animated feature. Ooh, okay, so, this is so, ben, ben, so David and I can bounce back quickly I could here. level out here because I really tried to go for the, uh, the Miyazaki film. You are the only one who did yeah. the boy in the Huron except for Will. Don't feel great about it Will right Trues, though, way to lie. go, true. Yeah David, and I both, yeah, David and I both going with... Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Do your kids like the Spider-Man movies? Love them. They love, love them, them, right? It's Did they movie. watch this Spider-Man? Yeah. It's we not saw... Tobey Maguire. No, but they love all the Spider-Mans. They love the Cross the Spider-Verse. love Into the Spider-Verse. we got the DVDs. So wait, it's... what do you guys each have? I'm confused. Uh, we, Dave and I have Spider-Man. Ben has The Boy and the Hero, which was the first one. That's what I have also. Here we go. You have The Boy and the Hero? Yes. Spider-Man. Did The Boy and the Hero oh, just win? Wow! Oh my God. God. Ben Lyons on a heater out of the gate. We are Samson, we're struggling. Rocked. We're one for three out of the oh, gate. We're gonna four kill. Four three. Are you guys what tied, you guys tied with Roy? Come on. Un wow. But very believable. <laughs> we're, we're tied with Roy. Uh, Will is the only one who got that. Oh, Roy. I, I'm listen, that's out great. Of nine. I love it. Wow. Miyazaki, I'm glad it was. Cody, I said I'll be, glad, I'll be glad to be wrong. I love Miyazaki. That's an awesome moment. Me Wait, did nobody? Like he didn't show up. The second half of the Big Ten Women's Championship game. There you go. Yeah, Lucy no speech there. No speech. Well, Miyazaki, not. Thank you. That's why they could go for twenty-five minutes on supporting actress. Right. They, they already knew know. They were like, yeah, yeah, get yeah. a speech for animated feature. Do they know in advance? That's big time. This is no, a conspiracy no, theory I have. No, because after the La La Land Moonlight moment, there's right. been all this stuff in the Academy now, so that can never happen again. And now I think it's just two people know who wins. But how do they time it out when someone – on behalf of the Academy, we'd like to – they say thank you very much for the award. All of a sudden, you've got fewer minutes of acceptance speeches. I mean, there's a giant clock that's counting down that when they get on stage, they look out into that crowd. And it's Are they like actually looking because we're late? They probably adjust count. on the fly. I get what you're saying. I, I'm, I'm you curious. Feel it out I feel like they know. I feel like they know in advance – the presenters, like Chris Hemsworth, he was pretty smooth there. And what's the name of who he just presented uh, with from Queen's Anya Gambit? Anya Taylor-Joy, I think. Anya yes. Taylor-Joy. Outstanding actress. So I think they know. I think they have it in front of them who was going to win and the fact She's that they're not She's always in the there. New York Times crossword. From well, Queen's Gambit? That's an interesting name. Riddle me that. It's a triple name. Yeah. It's the, it's the Anya. A lot of vowels, wise crossword likes that. Too many wise. Can we get a live look at the leaderboard? Uh, LebitardAF.com. Again, I'm not on that. Over three. How many people are beating me out of the 5,600 people? I would assume. Rough start for me and Samson. 4,500 for people. Three. Yeah, I'm one Jess, for three. Just three for three, as is Ben. Did you submit? I oh, did I submit? <laughs> if I win, I, I get your salary. Woo! That's bad, bad news for the Dune popcorn bucket. I'll tell I you. I get that a free right T-shirt with my name on it. No, you get a piece of memorabilia. Uh, that popcorn Lucy bucket is mine. Gets my gets numbers. That that was quite something, Lucy. What? Free merch. Remember, you asked for numbers. For. Oh, I did, and I never got them. Well, you so. did it way too publicly. <laughs> you were giving out a lot of personal information that I didn't ask. I merely said war shower. You gave out your mother's maiden name, your first pet's name. I didn't ask for that. Mike Ryan. You asked for the bank account number. Yeah, and you didn't give it to me. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> I'll get it for you if I win. <laughs> David, I am just a girl. A popcorn bucket. I'm just spot. a girl here in front of a boy. All right, yeah, we're not going to we're I'm not going to put it up on the main I'm screen. I'm quoting Gwen Stefani. I'm sorry. We're not going to put it up on the main screen. Oh, I'm among the leaders. How about that? 
Mike Ryan Ruiz. That's the only name that we're uh, comfortable saying. But uh, yeah, there's a uh, real names there. How about Bimmel? Bimmel's. <laughs> All right, it's not it's not updated yet. But I got you. Uh, there's uh, several in studio. Julia. Coca. Wait, uh, Cody, did you? Where's Cody? Thomas. Tom, way to go. Lewis is 0 for 2. Not a surprise. There. Are you not willing to <laughs> show the Metal Arc leaderboard for people who are part of Metal Arc? Yeah, yeah, we can show this one. You can take this one. Right. Yeah, you can take this one. Throw that one in uh, main programming one. Yeah. It's not really done in order because there's like, Lewis is at zero. Why is he in third place? Very confusing. I, I'm just a man. <laughs> it doesn't oh, work. I'm just it doesn't hit the same. I'm just can <laughs> like we can, we can't edit it. The data it, department's like. on it, David. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. But also, we I'm not. We can't edit list. the document. Only Russ. Can I still edit. can't. <laughs> That's the entire. I still show. can't believe you're pulling. I'm when I'm. Quoting some of Giamatti's most memorable lines, and you're saying that's from a script 20 years ago. <laughs> it's not funny. It's terrible. It's awful. It's terrible. This is the story of the night. It I is. think the story of the night right now is at 7:43. We've had three awards, it's and I'm one for three. 20 to go. Yeah. Absolutely despondent. If you had to guess, I mean, originally we thought we start at seven o'clock Eastern. End time, I would say 10:30. Normally around three and a half hours. I think it will end at this at 11. We have a. I think Kimmel, it'll lead right into your local news. We have a Kimmel monologue update, courtesy of Jess. Okay, please, Jess. What do you have on the monologue? Um, well, I'm I'm still reading the article, so I, I wasn't ready yet to read this on air. But, uh, yeah, still not done reading it, Mike. Back okay. to you. <laughs> all right. Thank you for the update, Jess. We'll get back yeah. to you shortly. Oh, okay. said, no oh, problem at all. Sure. The <laughs> headline kind of implies that he may have mentioned Aaron, but she's I still figuring it out. Yeah. Still there is, uh, right now, they're promoting Poor Things, the second Best Picture nominee, one of my favorite movies of the year. That the way I'm going is not going to win anything. Poor but. Things, 11 nominations, of course. A movie that actors love. Yorgos Lanthimos, the wonderful director, obviously did The Lobster and The Favorite. The Favorite, big upset. We, Jeffrey Lyons earlier mentioned Glenn Close not winning for The Wife. That was when Olivia Coleman won for The Favorite, which is a big upset. The big issue with that movie for me was, other than what's implied and, and given about the characters and some of their births and whatnot, um, no real reason to care. In for, poor things, you didn't care it, about the characters. I didn't really get invested in the. I, I thought the performances were great, and if if the writing suggested that they draw you in, these are very capable actors. But I didn't really find myself caring. You yeah. weren't emotionally connected to the lead, or didn't find a real reason to root for her to Co engage in the like, world and yeah. figure out life. Like I, I, the one storyline that I did hook up on was uh, like her yearning to find out where she was before, but then that goes a certain way yeah. that is very unsatisfying. I want the Defoe prequel. I want on his life as yeah. a child, as its own movie. <laughs> that seemed to be the most that, fascinating storyline. Those, those monologues he has talking about what happened to him, his boy, is the he, funniest thing in film this year. He's a eunuch. I mean, that whole show, when Rami Yusuf asked him if he slept with him. It would take this more is power Mike's than moment. in all of North London yeah. for him to ejaculate. Um, right. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm a eunuch, man. He's just so upset. I right. believe it's original screenplay where Anatomy of a Fall... Chris She's was holding the original. She's, oh, they're McCarthy's doing both of them here. They're doing both. Oh, Come on, Anatomy. All right, so you got to go adapted first. We all so went Barbie's with Anatomy upper, of a Fall. Okay. So we all agree on oh, these, yeah. In adapted, we all went American fiction. Right, so this doesn't matter Is Barbie up for adapted? It is. It is. Yeah. That yes. was the controversy there. Judd Apatow was furious. Why? He said this should be up for it original. It should be original. Always should mad. It? No, Apatow said, none of them have the idea Apatow. for the characters. None of them. It's, how it's do you have doll. an original screenplay and you didn't come up with the characters? Barbie has nothing to do with the doll. I, I, do, I thought it was an original screenplay. What do you mean? They made an entire movie from... A non-character. It's not based on a book. But they made it right. adapted. What? Hamilton adapted. What did right. they make if it? Barbie's a... not. They made it from the sky. Greta and Noah came up with it out of nowhere. They, Barbie and Ken, are a couple. They came up with that, or did they get that from something else that existed in the intellectual property That's not what adapted universe? screenplay means. Yes, ben. it does. No, it does not. It does. It was adapted I disagree. From no. Wait, was your dad involved in this? <laughs> <laughs> you're defending it very, very vociferously. No, I'm actually just really passionate about it because no. I, think I feel it's like really you're cool. shiny. <laughs> I and I, I am very <laughs> upset about this. I'm sorry. Did what? I touch a nerve? What? Yeah, because I think adapted means it from any idea. Why There's already Barbie Oscar lore. That's what you're saying. When presenter David yeah. Niven was announcing the I don't know about David Niven. Oscar, <laughs> what? Mike, that's enough. I do not want his dad involved here. <laughs> Sandra Hula had quite a... Incredible. Oh, here it is. The holdover is written by David Hemmingson. David Hemmingson. No, he was, he was now being sued. <laughs> Imagine the energy in the room there right They're now. They're despondent. Right. So, so the what theater. we're rooting for here is for the holdovers Correct. to win this. Yes. We all yeah. are. Not only with the holdovers win this, 
It's yeah. it'll be the biggest moment of the. Will Oscars. there be booze if the holdover? No, wins? none. You can't. You have to be respectful. Exactly. Of it. What do you guys have here? We all we have all have anatomy. And I'm fault. But I'm hoping for the holdovers, not just because the controversy, but I'm, I'm hoping for the controversy. Okay, I, we, I, had, we had Hemmingson on Cinephile. He's a great guy. And, uh, and in fairness, the scandal is more. Pain. He may have written a good movie, just not the holdovers. <laughs> Roy may get his first win if we have. What does Roy have? Yeah, is oh, Roy? this is great Anatomy for Roy. Let's we go, Roy. Do. I think you. I feel. I like your chances. Pass. And past past the Oscars. Everybody. Past lives you liked, right, Jess? Oh, so did awesome. I. I had a number five. You I didn't like it. And Mike didn't like it at all. What do you like? I think we have a winner. Yeah. Anatomy yeah. of Fall. Right, I got one. Everybody. I got yeah. one. I got Was one. It? No controversy. Anatomy of Fall. Way to go, Roy. Back. Mike Roy. Mike's number one movie of the year. My favorite Big. film of the year. If I'm on the leaderboard, seen, everybody. If you have not seen Anatomy of a Fall, all excellent of film. All because of Messi. Courtroom drama. Did she or didn't she? How culpable is she in her husband's death? Blind Kid, 50 Cent Instrumental. Powerful film, Ben. From My France. favorite film of the year as well would be incredible on stage. Like I said, the best episode of French Law and Order you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. uh, I just love the performances, the premise, and how it takes twists and turns that you don't see coming. What's the trivia? This is a couple. This is one of four couples. Oh, yeah. There are four couples who are nominated tonight. The folks from Anatomy of a Fall. And I believe we have confirmation that they play PIMP as winners from this film go up. They did? Yeah. Cool. From what I caught. Okay. The steel drum version, though? Yeah, exactly. The one that Mike go ahead and play it, yeah. Chris Nolan and his partner Emma Thomas, they're both uh, nominated as that producers. That song playing over and over would drive me to kill. I was about to say, it was a little excessive that after a while. Be so fucking annoying. <laughs> So Justine is the one who's talked throughout the entire award circuit. But she's the director. Justine Shriye has been amazing. Yeah. But this is for screenplay. And they wrote right. They, they, wrote, they, wrote they co wrote it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. curious why they're. She's, it's always been her. Maybe more comfortable. She, there he is. First time. She directed the film as well. Yeah. It's well, an unbelievable I like suit. His suit. That's a killer suit. Je by suis the way. très heureux. It's kind of dope when you wear as a man, like not tuxedo. Speak French? We? Oui. Okay, that's great. I didn't know that. I'm um, you. driving my wife crazy by how much I'm licking this tahine. You could have just said yes. <laughs> I'm just a fiend for tahine, man. What can I say? If I got a margarita the entire time. I tell you, anatomy, awesome. anatomy of a fall, the, the scene that's unbelievable is the flashback. For those who haven't seen it, there's a flashback scene involving the husband and the wife. And in that scene, She's both complicit and exonerated. Should we have given a spoiler alert. No, I think people. And I'd be a fall if somebody dies. How many marks? Yeah. I mean, it's it's in the title. It was Correct. A sound from <laughs> the Thursday guy. show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. got, yeah. yeah, that's a tough one. Before for him. you got here, we talked about spoiler alerts, and what was agreed to is you can spoil Act One of every movie immediately. You can't spoil Act Two, and you can't even talk about Act Three. Yeah, mm. confirmed. They They're play playing the it again. Yeah, no, there it is. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. We have confirmation. That's awesome. All right, adapted now. Okay. Uh, we all have American fiction. Court Jefferson. Everyone but Will. He right. has Barbie, but everybody else. It's 8 1 for American We're fiction. We're cooking now. That's yeah. a huge no, I like win. it. We, we got the nonsense away. You're right, Cody. We got the whole bloated introduction. Now it's like, let's get these awards going. Uh, for those who haven't seen American fiction, terrific movie, warm family drama. It's also very satirical. Jeffrey Wright, an incredible actor. Chilling K. Brown. I, I think this is the one award American fiction wins. It was nominated for five Academy Awards, including Best Picture. I think it's an elite dark comedy, and the leads do such a great job of navigating the trauma that you're not exactly sure if it's a dark comedy by the end of it, but it is. What excites me about American fiction is, A, he was on Pablo Torre Finds Out, another metal arc, another yep, great absolutely. show. Great job by Pablo. Not on Cinephile, though, or Nothing Personal. No, that's... I mean, so, there was no, one... No, you're right. We, didn't, we couldn't get... No, that was, that was another yeoman's yeah. job by the bookers. <laughs> right to Pablo. I think he has his own bookers anyway. He must have his own bookers. Well, he, has 14, he has 14 metal arc employees who work just on his show. <laughs> that's, that's not accurate. What oh, are we no. rooting for in Adapted? American fiction. Everybody has American fiction. Okay. Now I'm rooting for Barbie Including just to Roy. shove it in Samson's face. <laughs> Barbie will never win Adapted. Hey, listen, well, I don't... Ben, you know that. You actually guessed. American fiction, he did. You but went imagine. with American fiction. I know, Ben, they, listen, we like to see upsets. Well, like we said, to... there's... The yeah, I was happy for me should win and the yeah. ones that will win. Correct. I'm it's always should be Barbie here. I'm, I'm rooting for Maybe Barbie. because Greta Gerwig wasn't nominated for Best Director, they say, fine, we'll give you a screenplay. It's not inconceivable. But it's different it's different voting branches. Still, it was such a big story when the nominations came out. Correct. Maybe they should for director. Correct. So they go, you know what? This is great. I think Gerwig. American fiction will you take You know what's this. wild is when I open up Disney Plus now, there's an ad for poor things because they have the Hulu integration. That's got to 
lead to some awkward conversation. Wait. American Fiction. American Fiction. American. We nailed it. Core like, Jefferson. Oh, I, way to go. Hey, Core Jefferson. Go. He's coming Roy out. Back back. To back with me. Roy, you got to watch this movie. You're going to love it. Oh, uh, yes, Roy, I that's a bit. Did you just get that, Roy? Yes, I did. That's a big win. It's a big win. I'm going to believe Jess is five for five then? I am, yeah. As is Ben Lyons. Two for five gotcha. over here. I'm in. Oh, Samson and I three for five. It's okay. early. Great <laughs> score. <laughs> early. <laughs> it's early. It's all right. Cord Jefferson. Again, What's this it? guy's worked on Succession. He's had a terrific career working in television, now working in cinema. Nice big kiss there to Jeffrey Wright, his leading uh, man, and big hug with Sterling K. Brown. No kiss for Sterling K., though. I would have liked maybe that. A little closer with the Jeffrey Wright, maybe. He's really great. great performance Je- from Sterling K. Brown. He yeah. still might upset in the supporting actor category. It's a really showy uh, role. He comes out of nowhere. He's very funny. American Fiction, you, know, you talk about how movies get a bump at the box office. This film did not. It only made about $15 million at the box office. Normally, Poor Things, $100 million worldwide, Killers of Flower Moon. Like You used to have, Ben, the Oscar bump. That didn't happen, unfortunately, with American Fiction. It, it might happen now that it's won for adapted screenplay. Um, not a might, big enough award. You yeah. Jeffrey Wright's got to win Best Actor. Or Sterling K. Brown yeah. you know, r- winning for supporting. But you're right. It was also released, I feel like, early on in the season? No, it was early it was, December. It was early. Oh, no, stand corrected. Yeah, because we had John Ortiz in the pod in November. Because I just well, seen it already. Screeners. Release in December, but maybe hit the festivals too soon. I don't yeah, know. yeah, you're it's right. It's tough to gain well, momentum. That's, no, it's a good point. You're right. It hit because it won the People's Audience Award at Toronto, the Toronto Film yeah, Festival. Exactly. Can we thank our audience? We're four hours in. There yeah. have been so many people thank with us audience. for all four hours. Awesome. You guys are the best. Thank, thank you, you so yeah, the much. The audience has been building hour after hour. We actually have more people watching now that the telecast has started than we did beforehand. So everyone, tell a friend. Guys. Let's keep growing this. Yeah, let's keep growing it. I appreciate this. Is, this has a chance for greatness. Yeah, let's live be from the stained carpet. Exactly. A metal arc production with zero. Budget mm-hmm. all sucked up by lines and his dad. And the, no, what are you and the now, popcorn machine that doesn't what are you have popcorn. Well, Levitar made the popcorn on his own that yeah. I can't eat because we're on I the really air. I really like the popcorn. You guys are hating on the popcorn. Yeah, exactly. It's a nice subtle flavor. flavor. It's not just plain. There's something else going on. Wait, wait, wait. I liked it. Time for an popcorn. Oscar trivia question. Where were the first <laughs> Oscar ceremonies <laughs> held? Oh, I know that. That's the Hollywood Roosevelt. No, yes. that's easy. Boy, they were held at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel yeah, on the mountain, boy, May 15th, 1929. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Back then, there was no Ben's secrecy dad. about the winners. There certainly is now. Yeah. Oscar trivia. I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's dad. <laughs> Such a oh, Marty. 50 years Marty, there. Good, good reaction Marty shot. Marty looks Bar- like Bernie. No, he doesn't. That's a horrible thing to say. Marty looks crazy. 81 and years old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's 81 a, years old. Does someone have to take a shot like. for this, by yeah. the way? You're talking about Marty? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, no, my, my, right, my, Mike won't do it. Yeah, yeah. Do it at the end. Oh, we're, Billy we're, this is it. What I think will win best song. But this is performed right. by Billie yeah, Eilish. Right, right, she won the Grammy for this song, didn't she? I yeah. think she's won the them all. Yeah. This will yeah. be her second Oscar if she wins. Which correct. is unreal. What's her first Oscar? Double uh, uh, James Bond movie. Mm. She had a song. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't right. me like acknowledging you. That was popcorn stuck in my mouth. <laughs> I heard of this. Right. Mm, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably me licking the tahini. It's a great song, I'm, but I, uh, just, I can't get enough of it. Yeah. Not I'm only gonna, a great song, but when the song plays in the movie, yeah, yeah, I think that's a big it. reason why. It's time for a bathroom so break. Loved. Yeah, go for it. Can't go. All three of you? I mean, it's a little rude to her, but I'm going to pot up the uh, performance. Just, we can't play just these. Just sitting um, here by myself watching Billy Eilish sing can, the Barbie I'm song. with you, Ben. I really wish I could pot up the sound to this, but uh, no, we can't for the performances. Here. But this is uh, an opportunity for our talent and for you to lay out and enjoy a beautiful song. David, do you ever get a little cynical with this type of stuff? Like, do you think artists are like looking to do songs in movies? You know what I mean? It's like I want to win an Oscar, so I'm I'll do this song because it it's just I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, this is a look at me, Louis. But I once had the conversation with someone close to Bruce Springsteen, and it's a real big feather in your cap. It's a big thing because those guys and gals have a real opportunity for the egot. Lady Gaga. Someone just got an EGOT. EGOT Someone literally just got an EGOT. And was it John this Legend? Grammys. Was it John Jennifer Legend? Hudson? No, it was a woman. Jennifer Hudson. Is she an EGOT? Yes. Is she just got a Grammy? She, uh, she came out the gates with the Academy Award. Yeah. First movie. Somebody, we can check this. Somebody online can check. There've Somebody been a few just. People. Viola no. Davis. That's who it was. Yeah, 2023. She, she just got it. What did she get the Grammy for? 
Probably spoken word, right? Maybe she read a book. Michelle That's Williams. a little less Britney of a Spears. Grammy, isn't it? Yeah. It's still a Grammy. Yeah, she actually dropped a house album. She got that's she, she got did the a Grammy last with Ronnie Cycli. Yeah, she touring, just uh, got the Grammy. Grease this summer. Electric. Her her Grammy is for best audiobook. Yeah, there you, there you Could go. Could you work with your sibling the way Billie Eilish does this closely? When he's that good? For sure. I'd work for my younger sister, but I could never work with her. If she's the boss, then I would be okay. Has you ever been in that position? No, she works in restaurants. Like I would last two seconds. So she, uh, she's amazing. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. What's her name? What's your sister? Anna Lyons. Yeah. What do you think uh, the, split the palindrome? Is? Uh, yeah. Like out uh, of the bear. My daughter is Hannah. <laughs> oh really? I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Hannah's dad. <laughs> what do we think the split is for Billy and her brother? I love where your head's at. I always assumed it was fifty-fifty. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Ben's dad. <laughs> That's what I would guess too, honestly. That's a standing ovation. That was a beautiful performance. Was it was. Yeah, that was really uh, good. She just went crying. I did not give it the proper respect. Kate I mean, McKinnon got a seat at the Oscars. Absolutely. She, she was in Barbie. Barbie. She was weird Barbie. Three minutes. Oh, please. No. She was in Ghostbusters. Don't do that. Incredible. Dude, the Every dog girl had got a, weird a seat. Barbie. The dog got a seat. Yeah, the dog got a seat. You know who's not invited to the Oscars? The Nazi dog. Oh, I mean, Michael Keaton. David Sampson was in a movie. He's Nazi not dog didn't make it. I've never been invited to the Oscars. Adnan's going to be so upset. He I missed, know. He Adnan missed Keaton. Keaton. That's Michael Keaton. Is that Catherine O'Hara? Yep. That's yes, Moira. That's Catherine O'Hara. I, I actually oh, have, some Oscar, I have some Oscar Who? trivia. David, David Allen, Allen Greer. Greer. Do you know yeah. what Michael Keaton's, uh, Michael Keaton's real name is? Ooh, Adnan would Michael know that. Keaton. Does it end with like... It's a totally different name. Was it in Jeffrey Lyons question? Remember when he had all the different names for Oscar winners? You're, you're looking at me like I have an answer. I was genuinely curious. I believe it's Michael Douglas. I have the answer. I believe it's Michael yep, Douglas. It's Michael John Douglas. Yeah, which would be confusing in Hollywood, yep. which is why he went Michael Keaton. He can't even go Mike Douglas in that situation. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Ben's dad. We just heard from our people that Jess did not use her Metalark email, but we have found her entry, so she will now be part of the leaderboard Smart, within yes. Metalark. That's great. Smart. Do you have a mother's maiden name? Warshower. <laughs> <laughs> that really is. Yeah. You gotta stop sharing that information. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Warshower. Nothing associated. There, unfortunately, are no more Warshowers. Yeah, it's more of the security oh, question aspect sure of it. Warshower. Yes. Driving here, I passed by the new big Royal Caribbean cruise ship, and I'd seen the commercial for it. I was not aware of how big Ocean of the Sea is for Royal Caribbean. Do you guys drive by that ever? Do you see it? Not Bigger anymore, and thank God. It's you mean Icon? Breaking the icon, news. Right? The big one? You said no, Ocean is, of the Seas. What's well, it we called? The news. new one is the Icon of the Seas. We've got big breaking news. What do you Patty got? Mills is a bucket. <laughs> Sorry, that's happening across the street. Oh, yeah, that's right. Go Heat. And Nan's back. Adnan, what's Michael Keaton's real name? Oh, damn. Uh, no, Michael Keaton Douglas. Okay. Michael Keaton Douglas. No, it's Michael John Douglas. Ah, oh, damn. I'm oh, Jeffrey Michael. Lyons. Say Ben's Michael, dad. Say Michael Keaton Douglas? Michael Keaton Douglas, I thought it was. Yeah. I knew Douglas was his last name. Understandable thing. why he has a stage name. We're an hour in, and there have been how many? Five? Yeah, five categories so far. Jess five and Ben go five for five. Me and Samson five, five an hour. We got twenty three. So we got do the to math. That's the four and three here. quarters so hours. Comfortable, everybody. I know you might go for thirds in the uh, cafeteria there. Yeah, go take a break right now. Go get a bathroom break in. I don't need to go to the bathroom, Mom. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the, the pipes are clean, but I will say something. I'm wearing a jumpsuit for really like the first time since I was in elementary. Yeah, you don't want to fart because you know it just wafts up. Oh, jeez. So I haven't, but we need the tums. I'm a Gaviscon guy. Gaviscon? I will Gaviscon over Tums. Hit me up I mean, on the we, side. we have no sponsors. No, I mean, Tums did sponsor uh, some of the Vegas stuff. So. Oh, I love Tums. Right after a Cuervo shot. <laughs> well, you want a pre Tums. And a post Tums. And my Kitty Caravan, which, by the way, thank you so much, Huge Roy success. and Ro Chris Cody, for coming out to the Kitty Caravan yep. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Off the Schneid. Finally, a winning performance. Yeah, it's about time, Thank dude. Thank you so I was much, worried. Vladimir Tarasenko. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Adnan. These kitty cats, they're winning the Stanley Cup. Yeah, let's talk a little hockey, shall yeah, we? I so, said that already. You no, know, listen, Roy, you know I'm a huge Flyers fan. I checked yeah. the schedule. I go, Flyers, Panthers, that's taking place Thursday. I said, I'm in Tampa Thursday. At Saturday, I'll be in Miami. No, Flyers, Lightning. I get screwed. Flyers beat your Panthers. Like We all could have hung Scheduled out together. Scheduled loss. Yeah, scheduled Sam loss. Sam Harrison played great. 
And then we got blown out against the Lightning. But bottom line is this. Torts lost his mind. <laughs> he also got suspended. Mind. He's suspended two games now. Torts is passionate. There's no question about it. we got to get the third spot in the Metro. Yeah. But back to my point, the Flyers. Bill Lindsay, of course, you guys know and love. Uh, yep. I get to work on the NHL Network. Whenever I mention the Levitard show, the family, he's like, Roy Bellamy. He's at every game. <laughs> I am. Yeah. He didn't serve for he's, he's like, no. He goes, man, that guy's locked in. I said, but is he actually working? Like, is he grabbing sound and stuff? He's like, well, I don't know, but I always see him because Roy's definitely. You would, uh, I'm in the locker room as well. You okay. want the everybody wants every NHL market to matter, but I will say this is not a great way to do it. But attendance for the Kitty Caravan year over year, we got over 30 people out Yo, for it's this getting tailgate. Bigger. It's yeah. getting bigger. That got a lot of weird looks from people walking by. It's like people never heard Bad Bunny at a tailgate at hockey <laughs> before. Yeah, but uh, it was incredible. We had an amazing time, and awesome. we love our hockey team. This is becoming a hockey market slowly. Yeah. But surely, and all it took was good management, and that concludes Hockey Talk. No, front runner. I just want to say front Roy. Runner. No, Roy's Not been a diehard right. forever. Cro- Cody no, no. and Mike have been this. And say Mike as well. No, you, don't know, you don't know about my story. Stop. He worked for the organization. I worked for that. Like that I had a Pavel Bure jersey. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I, I, I grew said up, this I, becoming a Yo, Johan Garpenloff. Dude. Johan Garpenloff. Gord, 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 Gord Murphy. Gord Murphy. Gord Murphy. Gord Robert Jason Woolley, who then went to the Stanley Cup with the Buffalo Sabres. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Straight out of high school, I, I interned for the Florida Panthers. That was my that's pretty cool. Uh, that was my intro into sports, and I've parlayed that to if where I'm at right now. Favorite Stu teams, Mike. Tree, by Panthers. Uh, Stu Barnes. Chris Wells in return. Oh, as you want to argue my bona fides, where else do you hear Chris Wells' name? But mm-hmm. Cody, Cody also a season ticket holder, by the way. So he knows his three Panthers. seasons. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I like it. Good hockey market right now. Yes. And yep. it's great. And it's I, I, really, I really hope that the the Panthers play the the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the in Gotta the go through the beast, right? Yeah, yeah. Sox, no, or no, that's a, the boogeyman. Revenge this game. Franchise. Yeah. This is Michael Keaton and Catherine O'Hara. I love Michael. Yeah, Keaton. a little Beetlejuice <laughs> action here. Michael Douglas, as we learned, they're making yeah. another Beetlejuice. Yes, yes they are. and uh, Michael Keaton said that he would not be involved in the project if they had a lot of CGI in. So the early read is almost entirely practical effects. For Beetlejuice too, wow. which I think is called Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, <laughs> which makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And we know Monica Bellucci is going to be in it because she's dating Tim Burton, the director. So mm-hmm. uh, you know what? Well done by Tim. You know what this means? There's going to be a third movie because you got to say his name three times. You can't, say it out. you can't say it out loud. What's the category here? That's a good question. Makeup, I believe. That's a big yeah, category. Call, yeah. I think this is Maestro's one chance tonight. I'm with you as well. I think Maestro, listen, uh, strong. You and Adnan there. both Despite have Maestro. Controversy yeah. when and the I have poor things. Released, right? Right. Very controversial right. uh, category because yeah. of I everything that's I was not offended. The expression that was being used was Juno's. People were offended by the way Bradley Cooper's makeup look. Cooper said, I'm trying to portray Leonard Bernstein, but Kazuhiro, massive name in the makeup world. Yeah. You hear Kazuhiro and you go, he's winning it. That's why, that's why I picked Co-starring it, my nominee for the next Meryl Streep. This is a big category for people trying to beat me right now. Well, no, to, to your point, Jess, I'm like, if you watch that movie, you get four hours in the makeup chair for Defoe. I think Willem Defoe should be the next member. Four in, two out. I love Willem Defoe. Six hours in the chair. I got a group. Right, 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 right. Who won? <laughs> wow, Samson! Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Samson back. That upset is alert. big He's for that's me. That's three in a row for Roy Bellamy, everybody. Three in a row for Roy. Bradley, Bradley Cooper for, Roy, thought he was going to win everything. Yeah. He's like, can I just get makeup and hairstyling? I mean, I suffered for this. Look at what I've done for Leonard Bernstein. Wow, I had that's that one. Big that's a no, big you, win. Just not just enough I had it. You win better. Six for no, six right now. No, he didn't get that. Excuse me. He did shirt. not get that. No, right, perfect right, right, right now. We just made one up. Wow, I made one up. You did not. I got one back. So Ben right now is five of six. Samson's at four. I'm at three. Jess, Jess is six for six in a heater. Talent. And by Wait, the way, Jess, Roy. Jess, poor things for makeup, too? It's a comeback for me, yo. Yeah, I'd like to point out with Roy, Roy hasn't seen a single one of these movies. Started at 0 for 3. It's now 3 for 6. Thank you. So, you know what? Roy's back in this thing. I'm back. Poor if things. you haven't seen Poor Things, the hairstyle, for Emma Stone's hairstyle alone yeah. was enough for an Oscar. Now, that was not CGI. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's an incredible uh, performance when you're talking about the makeup. But I really did think that was the one for my show tonight. Do you guys think Cooper goes back and takes like another five years for his next movie? <laughs> are we going to see Don't him? hate on Bradley Cooper. No, no, I'm just but saying. He, he should make a good passionate. movie next time. Don't are we hate going on to see Bradley him be in another T-Mobile T-Mobile commercial. Or? Yeah. We did agree pre-show he came with his mom. Yeah. His date again. Nominated if, 12 times. If you're going to do everything in a movie, it needs to be like the best thing I've ever seen. There's just something about I wrote it, I directed, I starred yeah. in it. It just... 
you're setting yourself up for me Maestro to want to criticize it. Maestro got nominated for Best Picture. No, yeah, I'm, it was it was a I success. Mean, this is not, that measure, I mean, yeah. Can we not? Bradley Cooper's a twelve-time Academy Award nominee. He's one of the greatest living actors in terms of nominations. He's yeah. fifth 12. on the list, yeah, without that, having won. And he's and how old is he? He's forty. He's great in Wedding Crashers. Well, that's what I'm saying. Who would ever thought the guy from Wedding Crashers or Phil from The Hangover this is where would I'm be a twelve-time gonna... Academy Award nominee? This is a big moment. Production design. This is a massive. Adnan moment. Ben and I all have all Barbie. Have Barbie. But Jessica, watch you're out. undefeated. Who watch do you have? out for poor things. I have Barbie also, but poor things. Watch out for poor yeah, things. I'm very I, concerned I about the back to back wins for poor things. Roy, what do you have? Poor things. I think it's going to lose. Okay. Because <laughs> now you're over your blasting Barbie. Like, you know what? I should win with Barbie. We all Production Barbie design, when you watch Barbie, one of the things that stands Come out. On, that's one of the I characters in the movie. It's got to win. The production's one of the characters, you're saying. Yeah. It was just good production. It's good no, set. No, but the set pieces feel like almost a character to themselves in the movie. Oh, oh, oh no! Wow. No! Oh, no. Four in a row! Let's Holy go! Holy cow. I can't okay. believe Roy got this. It's starting to feel some momentum Neither for poor things. Um, yeah, poor things. Is it going to affect Emma? Is it going to affect this Best Picture? Is this is the time of the night. You start looking at the things. awards. Poor Barbie things. Barbie is wow. going to win Best Song and that's it? Might be costume design. Maybe. I, I, I can't believe what just happened. That's a pretty big upset. I, uh, I, can't, I, four can't, for seven. I can't believe how quickly Roy drank that margarita. <laughs> <laughs> Good of Dan to join I us right now. Just finished it. Roy sucked it back. He was ready to rock. He's on our heater. If Poor Things upsets Oppenheimer for Best Picture, it will go down as the biggest upset in Oscar history. And I think Poor Things was a better movie, but I think it would be the bigger upset than Moonlight, Shakespeare La La in Love, than yeah. Moonlight at La La Land for Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, bigger than all of them. Hurt Locker, uh, Avatar? Yeah, that was a huge upset. This is bigger. Avatar was just a big commercial movie, but Hurt, Hurt Locker, Locker was, an upset? James Cameron is a beast in the business, no? All right. I, I'd I like still to... think Shakespeare in Love over Saving Private Ryan is yeah. the biggest upset. Like, that was... I love Shakespeare in Love. I know you Hurt did. Hurt Locker won over did. Avatar? That's what Ben was saying, because that's Whoa. one of the biggest upsets ever. Yeah. I mean, and also, Catherine Bigelow beating James Cameron. Yeah. Exactly. Huge upset. That was well, grudge one of match the biggest here. upsets of all time. Yeah. Grudge match. Shakespeare in Love. Yep. I watch that movie all the time, and I separate art from artists because I can't stand Harvey Weinstein. Of course. I think we have our first playoff of the night. Music starting, mid-speech. Right. It's at that point, right? You got production design. Well, we don't really know what to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. get on with it. Like it's still Depends giving the out best supporting person. actress, I feel like. I right. got played off when I was talking about David's pedophilia teeth. Uh, yep. uh, why are you bringing it up? That was where he touched me, was the line that right. immediately... That's Dan's Season line. end of... Dan- yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta, oh, yeah. Now you gotta get out of the studio. <laughs> Wait, he's playing him out of the studio? Yeah, get out of here. Well, that's unbelievable. You can't have Dan back there. That's not his chair. And he says Can you give me another drink, Dan? Yes. So he's we've got several back. things at play here. We need to protect Dan the boss Dan's judgment from with an open bar. Is... <laughs> it's a fair point by Mike. I really hurt his feelings with the popcorn because he just John's, brought me more. We're about to have like, it's a, it's a better match. Now. Comedy it's not bit. hurting feelings. Just getting his comedy bit coming up. we got a John comedy Cena. bit. Cena. This is a big Cena. moment. Where is he, is he naked? Is he no, no, nothing, fun, nothing funny know, about I, an in shape man. I, I, <laughs> is he gonna I, do the salt burn thing? I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, yeah, there you go. Jess is right, it's a salt burn thing for sure. He's gonna do murder on the dance floor. Barbie 2 straight to video starring John Cena as Ken. Why is Jimmy Kimmel just talking to a piece of the set? Yeah, Adnan not getting that joke is why he's not on Monday Night Raw anymore. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you know, John Cena, John Cena was on SmackDown. Jesus, though. I, yeah, exactly. Good point, Roy. Good save. Backing me up. I believe they should have cut this. I'm just going to say it they right They need now. a comedy bit, though. This is they exactly. haven't had one yet. You gotta, you oh, he's doing costume design. He's introducing the presenter for costume. Here he's going to come out without a shirt and just a thing on his pee-pee. Go so he's presenting this Whoa. with George. Oh, no. Wait a minute. He may be naked. He's buck naked. Benson, Hold no on. Chance. He's naked. Margaret Robbie's like, yeah. An envelope is just he floating. He he's got to be a wearing a sock. He's got to be wearing he's, a sock. I mean. Is he wearing Birkenstocks? We have our viral moment, folks. <laughs> Birkenstocks? <laughs> How's he, he going like to lift the envelope? A fish show. Wait, is that a real chest? This or is, is that? magic. Yeah, he's so CGI. jacked. It's incredible. No, but look at the ridge underneath his hips. I thought you looked better naked if you were jacked. Oh, Don't body. How's he going to open the envelope? 
With He's got to have a sock on, right? Just in case. Is he on steroids? Just in case, yeah. I'm with you, Chris. Costume design. Let's tell everyone where we are, just so they know. Absolutely. So costume design, again, feels like potentially Barbie, but... uh, Where are we? Ben and I went poor things. Where is costume design? On the sheet. Oh, it's on Uh, far left. There it is, far left. So you I have Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. Me and Ben went poor things. Do you think this is an automatic yes from John Cena when he gets this ask? Yeah, absolutely. Uh Like, it's the Oscars. There's got to be like... naked at the Oscars. There's got to be an email back and forth of like, yeah, totally naked, though. They told me to be a presenter until this morning. And this I comes down to Barbie or four things. things. I'm alone. Oh, who won? Who do we got? Yeah, you were talking over the thing. No, no. It sounded like poor things. You don't recognize the designer? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were an expert. I'm not an expert in this category, but I did have Barbie, and we don't know who won. I'm trying to tell by the score. Me and ben, if you would just shut things. up for a second. Exactly. They put up poor things on poor the things. screen. Okay, good. Me and Ben, that's a win for that's us. That's our team, though. That's, that's right. bad Damn, news for Samson. Uh, it's, it's... That's okay. I got the one back that I had missed you, so now we're... You're giving out memorabilia to everyone who beats you? No, everyone's <laughs> in a raffle. Everyone who beats me. The story tonight is about poor things. Yeah. Yeah. But again, reminds me of the Mad Max year. Correct. Goes a little bit earlier. Technical categories. You start yep. to question. Wait a minute. And yeah. now. Well, like last year with 1917, just won everything. That was a good movie. I like that movie. Yeah, wow. Sam really? Mendes, amazing. Yeah, one yes. shot. Does Poor Things have three Oscars already? Yeah. Imagine being told as a little kid, you're going to have this moment, but behind you will be a naked 16-time WWE <laughs> champion. <laughs> it's what dreams uh, are made of. Not naked anymore. It looks like he's in a like almost a toga. Yeah, I can't see him. But you can't see him. Jimmy though. dressed him. Keep hitting if she, that. If she drops the mic by hitting him with the "you can't see me," come on. Yeah, poor thing so far. Winner for makeup and hairstyling, production design, and costume design. All well regarded, worthy wins, but a couple surprises. I would have thought Barbie would have got one of those. I, the, the production design, I'm yeah, really shocked by. Like Barbie could just win the one for song, Billie Eilish. Let's see. Gosling think, wins. I'm leaving. I think you're going to be looking at Emma Stone winning Best Actress. <laughs> no. So? Although the way my ballot's going, I'm going okay. To let, let's update right now, Ben. What's uh, how do you got? I, I've missed two. Um, you have six out of eight, so I got six of eight now. Roy, what are you at now? Uh, I think either three or four. Okay, four to eight. Jess is I think six out of eight. No, she's seven out of seven eight. Eight. six. Six. She's six. She's six. Samson, what do you got? I am oh, four out of eight. I'm also I four to eight. Out. Me and Samson both. I mean, this is. I'm not gonna, for guys that care as much as we do. I'm, it's kind of shocking. You and I are both four right of eight. Exactly. <laughs> like I'm not. I'm not being funny. That's shocking that you and I are four of eight so far. It's Can 20, you believe that uh, there are two former pro wrestlers at the Oscars right now? Look, there's Rock well, they Johnson. Need the ratings. This is what's uh, become, man. They got that moment. The two of them ba- backstage. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I, I shouldn't say former because The Rock is actually back. Now. He already is back. But uh, yeah, they're both really back. Yeah. There's Lucy's been very little politics at this year's Oscars. There was no politics right at the during the monologue. There was a frosty exchange between Thanks Lucy and Dan. Just. Your point, though, David, you're right. No, no politics. And there should be. This is How is politics. Dan doing? That's why Did I he just come into the room? Is he okay? He we played him out again. Me. We played him out again. You did. He really cares he deeply about how people feel about his popcorn. Man, oh, is I he am. trying to get Jessica to like it? I am like 80% Tahin right now. I'm going to go see if there's food out there to be had. Go get some sliders. I've had a lot of candy. We have candy. Yeah, exactly. Willow's we eating a lot of candy. candy. Yeah, you're right. Well, this looks like a serious Chris. commercial. How's hey. this going? I think yeah, it's going really well. What uh, What's the chat saying? We're still cooking. We're gaining viewership. Any questions? Anything people want to know? Anything Let me see here. AMA. Any, any probing thoughts? Yeah, AMA. Exactly. Thank you, Roy. Ask me anything. Whatever they're you asked, got. Uh, like overall, they're asking of all the major movies, who's had the most disappointing award season as a whole? 
Go ahead, Ben. It's got to go Maestro, I would say, despite Netflix having 18 noms. And, yeah, Best Picture nom, but he's never a serious contender in the acting categories. Is this what it's all about for someone like Bradley Cooper? Like, will he, yeah. as successful as he thought the movie was, if they don't have any of these big awards, is it, like, a disappointment? It just makes it tougher when you're selling the next biopic on somebody who might not necessarily be a household name to everybody, right? If you can point back to saying, oh, Maestro cleaned up and won four or five Yeah, Oscars, beginning to uh, doubt that kid's future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The fact that he said for an Oscar trivia question. What? When no, presenter no. David Niven was announcing the nominees for an Oscar, what the went on behind came him? The streaker. And what did Niven just then the say streaker, to the streaker. I mean, well, let... you've got no time for this. Yeah, yeah streaker. I mean, let's go. I'm trying to listen to the question here. Yeah. It was a streaker Thank running new, which Nevin. was a fan at the time. Good job, Jeff. The streaker was photographer Robert Opel. There he ran across the stage nude in 1974. <laughs> presenter David Niven then realized what was happening, and he said to the audience. That man is unafraid to show off his shortcomings. <laughs> Opal later ran for president using the slogan, I have nothing to hide. And he was murdered by two men in San Francisco oh, in 1979. Oscar trivia. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Ben's dad. Oh, it's coming off a homicide. What an emotional roller coaster. That was a, that was a wow. lot in that one Jeez, question. Huh? Like that. Oh, American oh. political history. We go we Oscar's history. We may need to history. replay Adnan's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. listening to that. What did I just walk into? Range. Yeah, I'm hey, extreme. Tony's, Tony's hey, here. Hey, guys. Hey, what did I just Tony, walk you? into? You're really dressed up. The Oscar What party? do you mean? I'm, yeah, they told me dress up. I didn't wear shorts. Listen, That's what happened. Massive weekend for MMA, Tony. I mean, it was on. nuts, dude. I'm at the Elser, obviously, where we all are. I, I mean, the crowds were insane. Your reaction, please. The fights were even better. Um, this was the, I want to say, fifth highest gate ever in UFC history for this, uh, for this event. Wow. Which was crazy. The fights were great. Um, the main event was uh, really good. Really, no, because I'm listening to brain and spine surgeries in my ears, by the way. So uh, I'm trying to not was, hear that. My bad. There we go. I thought, program it, was, I thought, it, was, I thought it was a pregnant pause. Was like yeah, the no, gates were really no, I just heard phenomenal brain and spine surgery in my headphones. And I was like, who's who's feeding me that? Anyways, all good, all good. Um, no, it was a master class. MMA match. Yeah, right. Tony's confused. He thought tonight was the Tony Awards. Okay. Yeah, the Tonys. We're going to do our own Tony show <laughs> for the Tonys. All you guys are invited. That will be dressed Fun down, please. Yeah. The Tony sure. Awards are taken. Best, uh, yeah. best fighting nah. movie that's not the a Anthony's. boxing movie is The Warrior. Warrior's good. Um, Red Belt, David Mamet. That's not a boxing movie? Best fighting Oof. movie. Yeah, Red Belt, MMA movie. The one with Ro Kev the Kevin James. Roadhouse. Never Roadhouse. Back Roadhouse. Remake Roadhouse. coming. Never not back not down. the Gyllenhaal edition. We're waiting for that. No, so. no. The, the original. The Undisputed. Original. Oh, yeah, Undisputed. Undisputed's good, too. Is that the one where Bing Rames and Wesley yep. Snipes fight in prison? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> File. <laughs> yes. one. Yes. Yes. Go one. By the way, the chat is chiming in here. They're a little skeptical that David can't taste. He, with all the candy he's eating and the food break he's taking it's, right now. It's one of the first things I said to him. When I saw him earlier, I'm like, hey, can you still not smell? He's like, very little. Like, sometimes a fart will sneak through, and that's it. I'm like, yeah, but well, you can still what be a terrible hungry, thing though. to sneak through every once in a while. Yeah, I go, so perfume, you can't smell your he's like, Popcorn no. never sneaks through, but a fart does every yeah. once in a while. And then I said, food wise, he goes, no. He goes, maybe with some candies I can tell the difference, but not much. So like, a good yeah. smell, no. A bad smell, yes. Yeah. Um, and taste, he's like, no. Is this the egg for Killers of the Flower Moon we all feared? Yeah, it's, it's not going to go well. But hopefully Lily comes through. If Lily wins, impactful, momentous, historic. But it's looking like one for ten. I'm still sitting pretty as a big fan of um, Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, I, I like that we took screenplay. I think that's a good omen. This is a great song, though. Waje Waje. So this is up for best original song, Killers that, of the Flower Moon. That's my pick. Yeah. It, no, honestly, Roy, it's, it's phenomenal. And what happened was... You know, they've been asked before the Osage community to show off their rituals, and then eventually they realized the severity of the subject matter, and that Scorsese was genuine and sincere about it. So they said, okay, the last shot of the movie, which they're somewhat replicating there, is a drone camera, and it's that last shot of the Osage tribe and doing this chant and singing. So it's, listen, the late Robbie Robertson, Canadian, Mohawk mother, he passed away. He did the score. He's up for best original score, Ben. But this song is a very powerful song and a nice reminder of the Native community. Go ahead, The David. band. Yeah, of course. That's Robbie Robertson, right? That's Scorsese, That's a huge what he's fan. Way more famous for, isn't he? Right, but I'm saying he's well, Scorsese, longtime collaborator. They obviously did the score for The Irishman and many films prior to that. But uh, Wajé Wajé, again, this is a nice moment here for the Native community and for the Osage people. Best drug dealer in movie history. Nino Brown by the chat Johnny, right now. Johnny Depp and Blow. No, it's Nino Brown. Blow. Pacino and Scarface. Yeah. Nah, it wasn't believable. Dan. Okay, whatever. If what are you doing? So. Come on. <laughs> New Jack City. Dave Franco and 21 Drum Street remake. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. Do you think Robbie Robertson is the most famous former band leader 
to be to go into original score, or would it be Danny, Danny Elfman? Elfman? Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Yeah, great call. Yeah. But, but Boingo, Boingo, Danny a Elfman. great band, an '80s band, I guess. Did we ever get the rest of your holiday movies, Mike? I feel like we stopped at three, but yeah, we did. We had we the Lighthouse. Lighthouse. Lighthouse is number, number one. one. Yeah, yeah, number one. Yeah, I just love the about yeah. Die Hard. I Die Hard was a different. Were you two, eating? Right? You didn't hear his top ten? I just lost interest. <laughs> but I love that. <laughs> Come he on now. T- I'll be honest, but I I love that Batman Returns at ten. That was awesome. Why is your tie undone? It's getting a little. It's getting ready for the after party. You know, yeah. Four hours mark. now. Levitar's a little sauced. I mean, we can start undo the time a little went, bit. Mike <laughs> went with the lighthouse as the best holiday movie of all time. It's right. <laughs> Christmas <laughs> movies. The shirt's going to get untucked. <laughs> and he went lighthouse yeah. number one. I mean, wait and a minute. Not like getting the family together and popping in the lighthouse for everybody, huh? Yeah. It's the age old tradition. Twazy, twazy. He had my mom texting the that weather. the lighthouse <laughs> is not a Christmas movie. It is. It was embarrassing. The holdovers has to be on that list now. This right? is what we That's said. Thank you for the backup, Jess. Movie. Appreciate that. There was some de- there was some debate in this room if the holdovers is in fact a Christmas of movie. It is. Take one guess who didn't think it was. Who are the three of us well, you so think? So many pro wrestlers <laughs> at this show. Bad Bunny. Oh, is you got third pro wrestler. With, uh, go. Happy birthday to Bad Bunny today. And he's there? It was that time, Mike, that I was with Raw. I could see Bad Buddy. Unbelievable. Are they about to do they, they talk about his, 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 international his commitment? There's oh. a lesson. They go, honestly, of a non-wrestler, Bad Bunny, off the charts. Yeah. No, Drew McIntyre's only because this guy's unbelievable. No, he's incredible. Yeah. How many of the international features international did features you film. watch? So I didn't see Io Capitano, but I love Vim Vendors, of course, Wings of Desire. I'm I did like Perfect Days a lot. Because of the French... Oh yeah, what we I'll, talked I'll, about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vin Vendors, and so, I saw three of the five: Society of the Snow, which is available on Netflix, which is basically the movie Alive from 1993. Oh, I the Teachers' Lounge is outstanding. You saw it? Okay. Yes, Where I've did, seen everyone but Io Capitano. Where was the Teachers' Lounge? You it see just it? came out. I bought it on Apple. Okay, that's good to know. Actually. And it's really, really good. I want to watch it. This is a big one. It has to be Zone of Interest. Yeah, I mean, across the board, it, has, it just has to be. Yeah. I could read the lips there. Well, yo, the zone I got of interest that one. Wins. That boy, That's mine. That, that was sure that was a huge, category that was a huge favorite. Night. Huge favorite. Oh, okay. But uh, easiest I don't know. of the night. <laughs> I'm just happy I'm Everybody right had now. zone of interest. No yeah. blood. No blood in that category. So all of us went that. Okay. So five for me. Well, five for me too, Roy. We're hanging together. <laughs> I love that. Yes, we are. <laughs> So one guy watched all the movies, one guy watched zero of the movies, and yet here we are together, uh, five and nine. Yes. Yep, I have two. a fundamental disagreement. Has anyone in the room seen Zone of Interest? Saw it this morning. Yeah, well, Mike no, and we I have not talked about it. this, and yeah. I think you missed the point of the movie because you. I, I think no, I got that, the point. No, how about this? Can I just say this on behalf of Mike? I need and I got it right. In showcasing the banality of evil, the film felt a little banal. There wasn't a strong narrative yeah. thrust to it. Didactic. Super banal. Yeah, I got what what I didn't like about the movie was essentially the point of the movie. Right. It's meant to show how evil can be so... Banali. Pretty much. <laughs> Banali. Mundane, yeah, mundane yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, which I, which I thought was it's a... It's not always banali. monstrous. I yeah. thought that's why you would have liked the movie. Because I, of that's how why subtle I didn't, that That's why I didn't totally crap right. on the movie, because I, I understand I get what, what they're, they're going, going for, for, and the ambition is, you know, daunting. Yeah, the reason why I didn't like it was the whole basis for the movie, I guess. But no, it's it's you watch fu- it for how it's framed. The cinematography I thought was nice, even though it didn't get nominated for that. All natural lighting, fixed cameras, good performances, just not much to it, which is kind of the point. Whether it wins sound over Oppenheimer, we have not heard. Have we heard Oppenheimer yet? No. Not yet. It's now, things we are it. now eight twenty five. You kinda our conversation before the show made me think that Zone of Interest, if it wins anything else other than this. It could possibly be sound. The because the sound, sound normal, yeah. the sound is the star of the film. And it's not the way that Oppenheimer did it, which is very in your face. Mm-hmm. It's the subtleties in how they use the sound, which is truly horrifying when you know what's going on. But, David, you did. You were with some 25 inter- listeners right now. Only 25 have nine for nine. Only 25 or nine for Out nine. Out of 55, oh, what do you do? That is quite Boy. impressive. <laughs> Yeah. Roy, why are it's you like... aggressively whoop de doing <laughs> people? What's your deal? Well, David's trying to give love to the I'm people out there. Yeah. It's yeah. like filling out a perfect movie bracket. Experience. It's yeah. very difficult. It's mm. weird. Like his whole thing is like saying yada yada yada, but like in a really strong voice. Like yeah. fits his thing. Yeah. That's me. And then I don't think you got enough credit earlier for your Daniel Day Lewis impersonation in There Will Be Blood. It's really good. I drink your milkshake. I drink <laughs> it up. <laughs> Drainage. Drain dry. <laughs> wow. 
hate yeah. this. <laughs> it's not bad. If you listen to Cinephile, he's got a lot it's of good. impersonations it's a good in his one. bag. Can you do Dan Le- Daniel Day-Lewis and Phantom Thread? I don't think I do Phantom Thread. I don't know Rage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that Rage. Exactly, Jess. Although I love that he looks like Ray Fiennes in Phantom Thread. That was his final movie. Why don't it look like Ray Fiennes? John Skipper's not terrible. Well, uh, I must you tell have you, a John Skipper imitation? I must tell you guys, I think you're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, I thought, this is John's favorite adjective. I Dan like can, Chris's Dan, better, though. No, no, Dan can back me up. His favorite uh, adjective declare. is the following. I thought the entire show was spectacular. I thought it was nothing <laughs> short of... He uses spectacular, like I say Scorsese. Like, it's I do believe that's a good impression. <laughs> I do believe it is fantastic. I have been to Charleston, and I am a... North Carolina man, but I do prefer <laughs> Charleston. It is spectacular. Didn't you bring up Charleston to him just because you knew it would be a yeah. hit? Yeah, I was like, I know it's not uh, where you're from, John, but yeah, it's close enough, huh? <laughs> the Charleston fact that I'm not hearing what Ryan and Emily are doing, this has to be a good bit, and <laughs> we missed the Levitard. whole thing. <laughs> we missed the entire thing. But this is the point of the Watchcast. We want to yeah. just be it's like a real Oscar party. You don't actually get to so watch the Oscars. So you're not doing Oscars. this next Thank you, right. yeah, if, if you actually want to watch the Oscars, David, this is not right. good like, for you. I'm sorry. Watch it by yourself. I may oh, resign. Yeah. <laughs> there was a whole no, bit just, here that we just missed. Shut up, David. Do Michael Caine. <laughs> I can't imitate anybody. Do you have a Michael Caine? If you want to talk like Michael Caine, <laughs> you must only say a few words at a time. <laughs> That's you way better than John Skipper. That's good. He's still alive. Michael Caine. Is he still alive? Is that what you just asked? He's in his 90s. Both of them are. Yes, he's still alive. <laughs> There's a lot I think I read that Oppenheimer was the first Nolan film that he wasn't in. I don't know if that's true or not, but it, it feels right. Inception, Prestige. Was he an interstellar? He wasn't in, he wasn't, he wasn't in Memento. Not in Insomnia. Are you sure. Michael Caine is not I'm in kidding. Memento. Pro- it was probably like first movie <laughs> since whatever. Yeah, yeah, now you're saying. <laughs> He's been in like half of his films. He's been in yeah. almost all of them. God, yeah. I love Taheen. Nolan plays the hits. If you're one of his friends, you'll have a job for life. That's true. Killing Dan, Murphy. is that your special popcorn? You gotta put. Um, I refuse to admit it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were just talking to me, Tony. I I was talking to you, Dan. No, I was. I was. Uh, (laughs) That is my famous popcorn, but it's never been. It's never been. The ingredients have never been shared. I'm gonna go get some. I'm getting some coconut oil. Tony, mine is untouched. Missing out. I mean, just have one kernel. No, no. I don't want to get it stuck in my teeth. Oh, crying out loud. Meatloaf. What award do we have going on right now? Oh, never mind. A musical performance. Thank you for coming. So, David, you're disappointed that you haven't actually been able to watch the Oscars. <laughs> yes. He agreed to an Oscar watch. I, I asked. I, I forgot a second IFB, yeah. and I expected to be able to hear the show, and it's coming in both feeds in my ear, and I keep putting it louder, but the way Metal Arcs built its studio, when I put my thing louder, well, it's our fault. Ben's gets louder. Yeah. So David I've and I also lo- listen to it at much different volumes, as you can imagine. I'm old. So I can't hear well, <laughs> and now I can't hear anything. And it's this is, I'm not sure that I will do this again. One of your least favorite yeah. Oscar experiences ever. <laughs> it's right up there. What's more upsetting, the fact you're not actually watching the Oscars, or, or the that fact you're that you're getting f- everything wrong? Correct, you're five for nine right now. And <laughs> I'm right there with you. But I'm saying, what's more upsetting, not being able to watch it, or know that we're not doing well in our prognostications? Not being able to watch it. Because you're, you're, there are things I miss. That's true. Of you're, course, I'm right. not going to go 23 David loves right. movies, though, but not as much as he loves being right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love movies more than I love being right, actually. Still sees a movie a day. Every day. But you only sleep four hours a night? Fewer. I was just, <laughs> I was just, lear- I, well, I was just learning something I, from sources out there that uh, when it comes to watching with a partner, he will watch all night and leave his partner in the dust and watch four episodes of something and will not. Uh, will but not make any, so the lady says, listen, let's pick this up let's tomorrow. Wait, yes, and, and, she's, and, and he's I'm watched. Right, he's on let's right watch through. the leftovers right, together. And right. he watches it in nine days right. every day from two to five a.m. He sure did. She <laughs> sleeps nine hours a night. That's I'm not. What am I going to sit around for seven hours? and do nothing <laughs> so three hours a night you sleep i do that every Sometimes. sunday <laughs> there are other things that can be watched other than the things that she wants to watch yeah. with you can't you fire up a fish called wanda i love Ooh. that movie love the, wow where did you michael palin that? great for fierce creatures the sequel kevin klein not as great kevin klein won an oscar i think i'm on the right rare. side it's an unofficial sequel right 
Yeah, unofficial suit because they had the cash. John Cleese, unbelievable. Do you have to wait with your partner if you're binging something together? Yes, because then you That's yeah. a rule? Yes, because you're binging it together. It is you a marriage. Unofficial, what do you mean? Do that, do that without your wife. You're lucky See she's in a conversation right now. Otherwise, she'd so leave. That's why I don't have a wife. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, exactly. That's not true. That's not true. That's, no, that's, <laughs> is that what you're saying, Roy? <laughs> Generally speaking, selfishness in relationships, a bit of a virus. <laughs> Late start time tomorrow, right, guys? Yeah, hopefully. Is there more tahini? No. <laughs> There's food out there. That's Nothing not identified will be live. as one of the ingredients yeah, in the popcorn. You're not 8 a.m. There's for sure coconut oil, though, Dan, for sure. 100% coconut oil and tahini. Yeah. But to David's point, how long does he have There's to wait else. for said partner to catch up on the binging? So to his point, partner wants to go to bed. Okay, the next day can we watch? Actually, I've got some other things to do. He's going to wait 48 hours, 72 hours. He's locked in. He's watching The Sopranos, the greatest show of all time. And she's saying, oh, can you give me a couple days? How long does he have to wait? Indefinitely? We're agreeing on this? Consensus? Yes. No, he's so just got to rewatch what he already saw so she can catch up on it. That's waste what I of do. time. Don't want to do <laughs> I know, it. I think give her 48 hours. 48 hours. Reasonable amount okay. of time. If you're going to watch the show together, you should probably watch it together. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's just good marital advice right there. It's just good advice. Solid. Are you married? Yes. No. <laughs> so what? Oh, no. Are you divorced? Oh, so no. What? Oh. oh, no. I got two divorced guys here. Give me advice. Let me give you some marital advice. <laughs> Let me give you some we didn't watch advice. the shows together. Yeah, exactly. Don't do it. I feel like those are the people I want to take marital advice <laughs> Actually, it's a good point. Where did things go wrong? How can you help me avoid this in the future? I think it all started with me being in baseball. <laughs> that was pretty much <laughs> no. the end of that. It takes two to tango, David. Don't forget that. Not Time for an Oscar dancing. trivia question. Where was <laughs> the first <laughs> Oscar <laughs> ceremony? <laughs> we already got that one from the big guy. I know. Yeah. Just, Are we running out of them? As a comedic, no, no, yeah, a we, we officially purged them. Yeah. We officially refused them all. We just but I love the comedic device. <laughs> <laughs> Have you texted with your dad so far? And uh, thanked him yeah, and told point. him what a central I, character he's been. I have thanked it's, it's, him. It's, I'm not you have or have not? Watching. I have thanked him for doing this. But, but he's not you said he's like, a central he's figure He's watching tonight. the show. He can figure that out for himself. <laughs> he he's a film text. critic. He's watched 10,000 movies. I think he can watch our show and realize that he's a character who keeps popping up. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Yeah. Ben's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel's making time jokes Time jokes, jokes again. yeah. They thought this show started at five local. boring. Oh, we're going to start the show over. Yeah, that's said. always fun, right? Making jokes about the show so long and boring rather than just moving things on. Yeah, just what happened with the article the show? Yeah. Oh, on the monologue. Oh, yeah. the I don't know boring. Aaron Rodgers mention. Aaron Rodgers mention. Okay. If that was a prop you had at home. Okay. Here we go. Supporting actor. This is going to be another six minute award. Let's see who the five supporting actors Ooh, will. will. Jack Palance be here? Or is yeah. he dead? Jack Palance would be great to see. Jack Palance is dead. Uh, Mark Rylance. Yeah, yeah. You know that still, already. You get that. would have been great. Oh, wow. Whoa. Ray Tango. Like he's all bones by now. <laughs> <laughs> Mahershala. Would you rather watch clips Sam Rockwell. Two time winner, Mahershala. Stuff? I'm with you, Jess. One of my favorite What's parts is you see the oh, clip. Oh, that's that Oscar scene. That's that great moment. It's like in Wayne's World where they do the Oscar speech thing at the bottom. Every movie I watch, I'm like, where is it going to be? Yeah, where's the Oscar scene? Does Sam Rockwell make a bad movie? Movie? No, I love Sam Rockwell. Anytime what choices? Jack Although his most recent film apparently wasn't very good, Argyle. Anytime Jack Palance is mentioned, I have to I remind the audience that he bad. once played Fidel Castro in a movie. <laughs> Who did? Jack Palance. Is what? he alive? No. 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 Okay. Not for a while. Very super dead. Yeah. Body, the, body's the not warm you on that, that one. No, but you like he's been dead for a decade. Yes. Wow. He's dead, dead. But his well, twin brother may still be alive. That happens like in a second. Yeah, like Jose Canseco. That's. Thank you. City Slickers 2, The Legend of Curly's Gold. Yeah. <laughs> That's the plot line there. Yep. I was trying to get a more dated pop culture reference in. <laughs> one arm push ups. There is zero question in this category. Yeah, exactly. Zero question. Yep. Robert Downey Jr. is about to win an Oscar. If Robert Downey Jr. doesn't, it's one of the bigger upsets in the category. Oh, my God. In all of history. This Maybe rivals ever. Marissa Tomei, depending on who wins it. Who if did Marissa Tomei beat, who was favored to win that year? Not sure. 1992? If there's an upset in this category. Ruffalo's been nominated four times, and Poor Thing is doing be, well tonight. That would be the upset. I would like it to he be. Was I like where your head's at. Yeah. Phenomenal, He Jess. was hilarious. And people said they never seen Did Ruffalo Did you vote like Ruffalo? That. No, I have Robert Downey Jr. I would give up a win to have to Ruffalo win an Oscar. She beat so, Judy Davis, Joan Plowright. Joan Plowright. Uh, Miranda Richardson and Vanessa Redgrave. Redgrave. So, so that was your Enchanted was April. 
I want Robert Downey Jr. to win for the speech. That's Which one. we won't be able to hear. No, no, no. That's one that I pot up for me. Okay, good. Personally. I mean, you, you're, you're screwed. But The speech. Isn't that a Colin Firth film? That one best picture, The King's Speech. <laughs> that was a very good movie, The King's Speech. Loved it. That one in Best Actor for Colin so, Firth. Some people were Max. It beat Social Network, which is a good film as well. But I, The daughter just died. Queen Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. oh she was the God. little girl in that movie. Jesus yeah. Christ. The King's Speech is her dad. Just back to, uh, <laughs> Jess, back to Ruffalo. You know, Jorgos Look Lantos. at De Niro. Look at him. He's so grumpy. No, he's not. He's just, he's just listening. Just when he's <laughs> that is Queen great. Elizabeth. These shoes. Yeah. Wow, Tim Robbins, huh? You know... That's a look. That's Tim Robbins? Yeah, that's yeah. Tim Robbins. Holy shit. I mean, Mystic people get River. old. Look, he's not, dude, he's not dying. People get hair. old, though, man. Yeah, Come on. Man. Damn. Allow, allow someone to age with grace. Like Robert De Niro. He just doesn't look happy, Adnan. It's no, just, he's just, sitting in a tuxedo at 5 in the afternoon <laughs> on a Sunday for something he's not going to win. Yeah. He like, looks like, like a, a retired smile. baseball yeah. player. Do you remember when you had a six-month-old? <laughs> so I, like yeah. I, was, I was pretty moody myself, yeah. <laughs> not getting sleep. He looks like he needs it. De Niro has a six-month-old David. Do, do you think he has an odd pair? I'm just guessing. Gives us a reminder of the heart of darkness. That well kid, written by Tim Robbins. That kid kicked his ass when Daylight Savings kicked in this morning. <laughs> I'm surprised a lot of folks. Did anyone forward. not know about Daylight Savings? Did anyone wake up this no morning with their, no with their phone changed? I'm thinking about, do I really go with the boy and heron for animated film? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about when I'm waking up. Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. Tomorrow's Gloria. gonna be an all-time bad different. wake up for us. It's gonna be dark out. I don't think Ugh. he's we're up all night doing this. I don't think Gosling's wearing eyeshadow. We thought he was. He wearing is. Eyeshadow. He's for Gotta sure be. shaving his chest though. What's the Gosling Waltz ah. connection? Yeah, you you're right. Christoph Waltz and Ryan Gosling. It's like, hey, I've never met you, but I'm a huge fan of your work. Yeah, there's yeah, not much connection there. Supporting. Inglorious Bastards. Uh, that first scene, as good as it gets, Christoph Waltz. That was actually Jack Nicholson. Looks like him. He's <laughs> evil personified in that movie. Inglorious Bastards. That's one of my favorite characters in movie yeah, history. Kristoff in that movie. <laughs> well, uh, he's he's he played that character ten more times. Exactly. He hasn't shown a lot and of And won range. an Oscar for it again. <laughs> for a guy who's a two-time Academy Award winner. That's Not a lot of range. Movie. No. All right. Back to Ruff. Let's just see him now, Jess. So Yorgos Lanthimos, the director, said that Ruff is very be in jail, probably. He said Ruffalo is very insecure, very hard on himself. But then he would just thrust himself in the role and do these dance sequences and go crazy. And then immediately once the take was over, he would have no confidence and was very hard on himself. So he said Ruffalo was more shocked than anybody that he was able to do the role. He's like, I don't think I can do this. He's like, you can do it. He's like, I don't think I can do this. Action. And he can do it. The, the guy's major amazing. sex scene. Well, that, he was felt very self-conscious. Major. Had to get to know Emily a little Mark bit Mark Ruffalo better. did a major sex scene with Emma Stone. Intimacy coordinator on set, which is now standard. Weird very movie. important. Yeah, you liked it though, Jess. I liked it. I feel like he should be in jail, the director. I feel like I'd also donate to his bail fund. <laughs> <laughs> Second most important to the armorer on a set. Oh, oh come on, David. <laughs> quite the lapel pin for Mark Ruffalo, too. Yeah. And the Oscar goes to. No shock. All right, All right there you go. Get ready yeah. for a great speech. It's going to be a great speech, no question about it. Should have been De Niro, but it's Downey. How would you feel if he thanked Mel Gibson, David? Ooh. Because, no, no, because he owes. He's been very public, like yeah. uh, while other people have. I'll left. bet you a dollar he does not. You thank don't Mel think Gibson. so? He's been. He has not cared. I'll take that bet. He owes like he. He's been on record. I love the fist bump to Sam Rockwell. Yeah. He loves Mel Gibson. He's not thanking Mel Gibson. God, I think this guy has seen everything you could possibly see in, in terms of a Hollywood career: mm -hmm. ups, downs, twists and turns. It's been incredible. Producer. Is this his first Oscar? First Oscar. First Oscar. Wow. Yes. He's always really very like endearing, it. too. He'll give a great love letter to his wife. We know that's coming. Is he the biggest American movie star? In Iron Gross, Man? He went right to Susan Downey, which we knew he would. Yeah. He always she found does me. that. He's got to be up there in terms of our yep, total biggest gross. Look at the movie I assume star. Tom Cruise. Wesley would be Morris was on a great interview with Pablo Torre on Pablo Finds Out and yeah. talked about we have no American movie stars. There are no movie stars anymore. Not even American, just no movie stars. Right. Now I feel like David. I can't hear. I, Can you guys? Well, we can, I, 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 feel, <laughs> I, I feel like Downey is, is a movie star. No, I agree. What he's done with collective box office is insane. Thanking Killian. That is not how a bolo tie is supposed to work. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Joy. We're, We're 10 in. Great publicists in the business. 10 so out of 23. 
thanking his stylist. We're about halfway through. Are they going to play him off? Wow, look at those heels. No way. They're not playing him off, Roy. Oh, I dare seems to, to be a trend off. this yeah. year in men's fashion to have some type of yes, pin, I noticed some type that. Of large, what is that? Yeah. Kind of snake or sperm. something. It's like going a brooch. On. A sperm. Brooch. It's like a sperm. Boot yeah. like a sperm. Jeez, a little swimmer. <laughs> That's what the inside of the Dune popcorn bucket looks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is that a bolo tie with no collar? Yeah, that's what Mike was saying, because that's not the way a bolo Anyways, tie is Anyways, I'm out. It's been real, guys. Wait, Jess is out? That's oh, here, Jess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dog's clapping. <laughs> there are yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's back. Clapping. Jess is back. She's what is that? Oh, right. She's back. But I'm out. Are I'll those fake dog paws tomorrow. they had, like, under the shot? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't know. That's pretty what awesome. Just ha- has that dog always been there? On levitardaf.com, we should just point out, go to the website. Yeah. There are still 24 perfect ballots. Wow. Out of 5,600 ballots. That is insane. There's 24. Could you not be so cynical, Roy? I appreciate the fact that you've been here so long, so I Listen, love you for that. Nobody yeah. at that level of cynicism, it's only 840. We've yeah. got a long way to go. Yeah, you're right. Nobody's doing now, a better we, job than David as far as getting this contest, getting the word out. So I, can we see if perfect the, ballots? If yeah. those uh, 24 perfect ballots, do they have the same remaining picks? There's no way to see that. We can't tell that yet. Okay. Yeah. We'll but can you to... imagine if someone wins our ballot contest with a perfect ballot? Yeah, go yeah I got to kick in something for that. Huh? I got to throw mean, for my my I'd personal like memorabilia. Carmelo Anthony, some sort of Nick scarf. I did steal a water bottle from when he was playing with the Lakers. There you go. We have the, I'm not uh, giving that up. The Giamatti no. name tag, uh, Carmelo Anthony. No, you know, I do have, I, if somebody does have a perfect ballot, I remember they, um, when Kimmel hosted the year Shape of Water yeah. one, and everybody had like the little lunch boxes for the different movies. Oh yeah, that was awesome. I still have the Shape of Water lunch box. I have that. my Phantom Thread one. If yeah. somebody has a perfect ballot, that means they're a huge movie fan, and they might actually enjoy this thing. What's and my in lady the will be happy. A handwritten note from Jimmy Kimmel with a little something to eat for the show that day. Remember he was giving out snacks. Yes, because the show right, went so, so let's long. Let's give that. A, I have got to get stuff out of the house. I noticed I Adnan, small apartment isn't, in Brooklyn, Adnan right? isn't offering up his. Yeah, like yeah. do we do we need to have three gifts here? Like you know, I think Ben and Dan got a couple. Huge covered. gift. I'd yeah. like to win that. Yeah. Okay. Well, if somebody gets yeah. a perfect ballot, what I'll was send the them food? A... Oh, I don't. What was the? Maybe give me a... sandwiches or pizza or something like that. Remember sandwiches. Sandwiches. I pizza think. was quick. But it was cool. It was every. Yeah, every film had a different little lunchbox, and I had the shape of water one. If someone goes perfect, they can get it out of my house for me. That That's be awesome. Nice. I couldn't imagine. Does anyone like ever do a perfect ballot? No, no one's going to go twenty three. What's 23. the best you've ever done? Twenty. Uh, I've gotten twenty. Twenty. It used to I be twenty four. Remember, yeah, they combined yeah, yeah, yeah. two categories. That's why I, I asked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it used yeah, yeah. to be 24. The sound I got, editing. Sound I got 21, 22. I did, I did, I've yeah. never done 24. Yeah, 20, 20, yeah, 21 and 24 is my best. Yeah. You? Tw- I did 20 the year I, did, I went up against Stephen A. Smith for the Oscars, who finished with 12. A little short on that. Yeah, Stephen A. was cool. Parasite. They were inside the house. They were outside the house. That's what you saw. <laughs> that didn't sound like him at all. <laughs> no, come on. Not come even on, a little. Not, let me ask Roy. Roy, what did you think of that? Why are you asking Roy? Why, Why are you asking me? Because we want you to get an arbiter here. Nah. I gotta Everybody be else left the room. I got to be honest. Just I think Quentin Tarantino was robbed. And you got yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. You got to win the best actor. Nah. It, Mike, I, come it, on. It's giving Jimmy Durante. No. Yes. <laughs> Can we say thank that you, was Mike That was a very surreal experience doing the Oscars yeah, with Stephen A. Mike Ryan's been here. I know. No, listen, I appreciate you. Yeah. Was that late? Yeah, it was Contextually covered, but I, you know, wanted to get it in there for the play at, the players we, at home. Okay, Mike doesn't you, get enough credit. No, he's no I, longer an EP. Yeah, he no, doesn't right. need to sit in that chair. Yep. And he's been in the chair since yep. minute one, and we're now approaching five hours in the chair. Good stuff, Mike. We appreciate it. And he it. hasn't moved. Android, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. He would have to thank get some tahini much, for his margarita. Yeah. Keep saying tahini. I don't know what that is. It's that salt <laughs> rim that's around a drink now. It's like a flavored salt rim. I thought it's the sauce you put on falafel. It's the seasoning that Dan put in the popcorn that you did not eat. Tahini, we, tahini, I believe, two different things. Is it things. a soft, Jay? Even while playing the Look at Me, Louie, can we just at least hear the story of Ben working with... No, there's no other story than that. It was just like yeah. a very surreal experience right. when we were talking Stephen A. and the Oscars. Right. Samson might go in the aisle here. What happened? He's <laughs> just stretching it out. I'm, I'm stiffening up a little. Like, I got you. No worries. So we did it. I went right from the run, right to get a quick bite, right to the shower, right to the... And then you, and you also right watched the, the movie shower. today. You yeah, exactly. You want something like uh, with electrolytes? You Pedialyte? cramping up? No, I'm gonna be totally fine. So what happens is when I do shows, because I can't sit back, because I feel like I'm too short. So I sit at attention. You, you feel that way? Yes. But you, do you are. notice how I sit on chairs every time I do nothing personal? Never. Every time I do your show? Never. I'm always at the end, sitting up because I feel like it makes me look taller. Do you need a phone book? Do I have to hear? No, because then I have to sit back. 
um, or else it would flip up on my back. I've tried it. We so, can get you two phone books. Why all the candy? It's a textural thing at, for, at this point for you? It's the only thing I'll eat. Ev- what do you mean, ever? Not you ever, just candy? here, currently. Oh, okay. Because Willow didn't eat that? I, this has been within my right, but chain of custody candy's at all has got a very sweet taste to it, generally, and you like, have lost your taste. So, yeah, I'm so asking it's, I like the texture. It. Right. Dan's back. I'm Thank you, Dan. I'm Get those Falcon. headphones on. Yeah. It is strange that uh, you continue without taste to eat things that uh, aren't broccoli and asparagus Correct. and healthy things. That you continue to eat unhealthy things even though you cannot taste them. Yeah, because you still need your nutrients, David. I get plenty of nutrients, just not on a day like this. I mean, oh. I had a very nutritious lunch. A place called uh, LT at the Betsy Ross. Is it just the chewiness? Is it? It's just the. Cons- I love it. I love the, uh, the spice drops in here, the Mike and Ikes, and the jelly beans with the good and plenty, and the hot tamales. How do you know they're hot? I don't. Swartz making the veto, everybody. Wow. Is yeah, that David and Arnold Schwarzenegger are out oh. right now? Is that the State Farm commercial? Is that why they're together? Or twins? Twins. Oh. Great twins. movie. Yeah. Twins. And Junior. On the Oscar telecast. Yeah. Dan, did you, you know Junior? that the Minnesota Wild pulled their wow. goalie in overtime? To get a four on three advantage and it won them the game. Kindergarten cop? <laughs> no, ju- revolutionized playoff. Oh well, overtime hockey. We may see yeah. this more. They Junior was, needed that. Junior it was seems the movie risky. Junior was the movie where Schwarzenegger was pregnant, and they needed DeVito. Was God, I would love to be there the for the pitch meeting of that, huh? Yeah, sitting yeah. on the line. Ivan Reitman. Rest Ivan power. Reitman, Canadian legend. Jason's dad. Yep. Yeah. Up in the air, class. What category do you think that they're doing that Michael Keaton's not smiling? Yeah, they're, they're, it's some sort of bit, obviously. I they're can't making a stand joke. That and, I can't hear it. I know, I, it's I, upset, can't. I know it's upsetting you. Dan, look what you've done here. I'm telling you, my God. I am. It's, it's, it's your a... idea. This whole thing is your idea. <laughs> this is your idea? It was. I can hear it. You yeah. can't hear it? No. Well, because you, you only have one headphone in? Yes. Well, but visual visual effects. Put it in the other visual ear. Effects. Put it in the other it's ear. It's a molded like, IFB. Put it in the other ear still. You can still squeeze it in there. That's how you can hear it. No, no, molded IFB. You can't. Uh, fellas, this is visual effects. Okay, visual so we're getting effects. Godzilla's so first win, potentially, in Correct. the uh, All storied history of, of the Godzilla franchise has never won an Oscar. Good point, Ben. That's King crazy. Kong nominated a few times over the years. Mm-hmm. This is a big one for Godzilla to actually win. Correct. The and three all... of us are on it in agreement. Correct. So all Which means it's going to lose. That's how tonight's been. <laughs> Which means it's going to be the creator. Yeah, potentially the creator. And the winner enough, for so. fakest movie is? Yeah. Mike Mission loves Impossible this. Mike thinks good. this is the greatest action movie ever made. No, I think Fallout is. I actually think that uh, the most recent is the weakest in the franchise. Wow. Well, while still good, uh, they, they made a, Not made a lot of bad two? decisions. Part well, I mean, it, it essentially just redoes a lot of Mission Impossible 1. Bad casting decisions, bad plot decisions. Uh, I think they kind of got away with a lemon. Hopefully they correct it, which is why the the sequel to part Godzilla, one. Godzilla, here we go. We Godzilla, go. that's one for me again. Well God done. Back. Roy, you're going to see it now. You're going to get a soft spot for these movies. And you know what? I'm going to catch up on all these now. Yep. Again, Godzilla minus one at one of the Oscar luncheons. Steven Spielberg made a beeline for all of them and say, I loved your movie. And they go, we can now die in peace. Steven Spielberg loved our film. Godzilla minus one. Everyone but Will and Caleb. That's a good win for Godzilla. They came with little Godzillas on the red carpet. Yes. Uh, it should be noted that Godzilla Minus One just won Best Visual Effects with a budget of $15 million. That's right? why you have Spielberg showing it so much love and all people loving the movie because he think, made it for no think money. Think about all the huge tentpole superhero movies that we've seen with just terrible CGI. Yep. Godzilla Minus One has shown you that in the modern age, you can do something that <laughs> garners an Academy Award on a $15 million budget. That seems amazing possible it does in today's day and age to have these kind of films and to knock out napoleon which had a massive budget mission impossible guardians of the galaxy volume three and this film wins that's a nice moment i wish david could hear it <laughs> i think i'm gonna get some popcorn fair enough just hold up the other IFB to your other ear. Just hold it up. Just it no, he's right here. Take it out. You just take it out. You just no, it's a molded IFB. It doesn't IFB. matter it's... what ear it's in, Mike. Mm. Yeah. Well, clearly it does right now because you're not getting sound. Oh, yeah. No, that's right. No. Sorry. Apparently, no. apparently Schwarzenegger and DeVito uh, were doing a Batman bit, and that's why they were getting the reaction shots of Michael King. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah.
And before that, there was some sort of stunt situation. Yeah. Which people thought could have been its own category, but hey, it wasn't. Samson. S- stunt. Big night for agents. Exactly. <laughs> Very big night. <laughs> Nobody has Stunts should be its own category as well, I think. Stunts and casting. Yeah, casting up the the Tony Academy Award yeah. in a couple of years. And producing. Should be the best producer. I guess it's best picture, but still. That's best picture. It's, but it's but it's remember, Wag the Dog, Dustin Hoffman was so upset. Why is there no Oscar for producing? You want me to produce your war? It's like a pageant. Okay. He's 87. Dustin Hoffman is? Wow. I've been going through a thing recently where I'm looking up ages of people, and I got Jack Palance wrong. I thought he was not dead. That's okay. Gene Hackman's 92. And and I think over. Wow. And Clint Eastwood as well. Living over. in Santa Fe right now, Gene Hackman. Just lives the good life, retired from acting, enjoys the sunsets, painting. Lou Diamond Phillips. Look at that guy. He loved Godzilla minus one. They go, we got to cut away him. They just showed a cut this up. This is Lou editing. This is it right oh, here. Okay. It's unanimous for Oppenheimer's first Academy Award right now. Boom. Everyone has Oppenheimer in editing. Uh, yep. Killers of the Flower Moon might be a surprise here. Thelma Schoemaker. Yeah. Legendary editor. I know, you're, I know you're a right. huge fan, obviously. Phenomenal and work dating back to you Raging Bull, Thelma? of course. Yeah. Oh, no, just the fact that she's yeah. been Marty's editor since Raging Bull. Yeah, since 1980. I mean, she's been the editor. She does an incredible job. Editing David, may be uh, done by AI going forward. David, our sound editor is going to come in that studio right now and fix some things so you can hear and stop complaining. <laughs> How did Lou Diamond Phillips secure an invite? I love the Schwarzenegger doc this year. That's yeah, yeah. My favorites. Mm-hmm. Oppenheimer. 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 Oh, that's Oppenheimer. Oh, that's what th- Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he chop Oppenheimer? There was, there was, Oppenheimer. There was, there was one year. The holdovers. He was presenting one year when. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. I think Arnold was presenting Best Picture the year that Babel and uh, Bobby tell were him nominated, Daddy. and I couldn't tell what he was saying. He's Thank like, you. ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Bobby, who's and the winner? Like, tell he, him, Danny. Did he say Babel or Bobby? Ba- ladies and gentlemen, Bobby. 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 Le- ladies and gentlemen, Bobby. Arr. Oppenheimer off the schneid. Oppenheimer yes, has go. his first it, it took till 8.53 for Oppenheimer to win they an could, Academy Award. They could finish strong, but this is that was a good win, everybody. What was the category? Unanimous. Editing. 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 We all Here's had your editing. award. A little heavy-handed at the end there. Uh. <laughs> oh, man, what Thank a bad you, name that is. No, no, listen, Jennifer Lame? Anything but. Anything but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the fact she said to Emma Thomas, you're a badass producer. Absolutely. How rare is that, Ben? You see a guy like Christopher Nolan as a director, and his wife is his producing partner, and they make these incredible films. Yeah, and to also for, for people in the technical categories, shouting out their producers like that. People put the whole thing together. You don't hear that often. It's often my agent, my publicist, my family. It's producers yeah. overrated. Agents. Yeah. Producers <laughs> overrated. God <laughs> damn it. Dan, you're the producer of like 20 movies now. What are you talking about? <laughs> Overrated. I've got. I, I know exactly what I speak of. I've got uncommon expertise here. All you have to do is write checks. That's what they do. I want. I want details on this dog thing. <laughs> I love that you thought the dog no. was actually clapping. No, I. I no, no, no. Was it, no yeah, I, I think it could Chris. be a human taking the dog's legs and making them. Clap. No, that's Correct. not how they bend, dude. They, they, I'm just saying. On. You don't know it. I, I don't know. <laughs> come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm was a so quick sure. shot to Chris's defense. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Who doesn't love Danny DeVito, Samson? By the way, just he comes on screen. Who doesn't love American Symphony? Did you watch it? I didn't see actually John Batiste, the oh documentary. Oh, my God, what a movie. Yeah. Unbelievable What movie. a movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't know any of that, of his backstory. Shockingly not nominated for Best Documentary. It should have been. It's that and the Michael J. Fox documentary yeah, both that shocked crushed me. me. I couldn't crushed believe it was nominated. Me. Wow, interesting little subplot to the Minnesota Wild pulling their goalie. No, no, we've already know? discussed this. No, 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 no. I can't it, it, crap that much. No, you, we, regular we, season hockey. Oh, go, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Hockey. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. Let me get to this nugget. Go ahead, Mike. All right, so we all say really ballsy. Did you know that if you pull your goalie in overtime, you run the risk of forfeiting the the extra point? 
that they, if the goalie's done. not on when the clock runs out, if you pull the goalie in overtime and you lose, you get zero points, well, not you know the what? one for overtime. I take it loss. back. That's pretty fast. What? I didn't know. That. What? That's, that's, that's pretty risky. Whoa. Why would that, why would that be the rule? Wow. That that's doesn't insane. Even make sense. Because if you're going to be crazy. that aggressive and that cocky, that? shame on you. You lose your point. I would think that you don't get your goalie for the shootout. Like you don't. But then you're definitely rule, lose, look it up. So. Rule eighty four dash two. How long in the overtime was it when they pulled the mic? Yeah, I saw 120 on the clock. Minnesota must be really minutes. bad. Oh, they at, stink this year. I yeah. was going to say, for them to try that, they must be like owing something. Eight, in overtime eight points out of the final playoff spot prior yeah. to, they needed that one. Right. They're getting a lot of love. If you're live from the stained carpet, you did not expect the Minnesota Wild Dog coming in. But Well, no one expected some I'm changing I'm, 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 I'm going to go ahead and say that nowhere with your <laughs> Oscar coverage are you going to get these particular <laughs> updates. Only here. <laughs> Stay tuned uh, with us throughout this broadcast. We're going to go on for at least 30 minutes after the uh, the end of this Oscar telecast. And if you uh, stick with us along the way and uh, and watch us after the uh, the final award is presented, you will watch the Metal Arc Awards being handed out. That's nice. right, the Larkies. So Metal Arc is coming up after the Academy Awards as part after of that. After the Academy okay. Awards, right. we've got uh, More. I believe six More awards. More content after. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Can we Love do it, it during a commercial break? No. That's a great call by Lucy. Let's <laughs> just get all, this We're out. all learning for the first time that we're spending a half hour after this show here. Yeah, no, Dan well, saw right, it on my face. Like, is it really 30 minutes? I thought it was like, fair like enough. three minutes. <laughs> if only there was an eager uh, shipping container adjacent person that would love to get a microphone in front of their face. Yeah. Rose, 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 Rose. I've actually just been handed We need the, help uh, in the back row. If you have a phone that's handy. I made a statement. And I'm being told here. I that already I was told wrong. you that you lose the point if you pull your goalie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But we're talking about how political these Oscars have been. Apparently, there's pins that are being worn by the celebrities. Is that the red uh, lapel pin? Have you seen them? I've not seen I've any. I've seen them on two people because I, when I noticed Mark Ruffalo's yeah, lapel Ruffalo pin. Ha- Ruffalo and Robert Downey Jr. both had like something yeah. that seemed like uh, but there was something a red... ornate on them. So when Mahershala Ali was talking about Ruffalo, he had this red lapel pin with a black dot in the middle, and Ruffalo had one above his very audacious lapel pin. So I didn't want to make a comment, understanding that that was probably signifying something. What I have the info. Okay. The pin symbolizes collective support for an immediate cease and fire. permanent ceasefire, the release of all the hostages, and for the urgent delivery of humanitarian aid to civilians in Gaza. And there are a bunch of people wearing that. So Russell so, and Downey among those that were... Among those, and I was under the impression there were no politics, and as it turns out... We got a little politics. We have plenty of politics, mm-hmm. which we're not going to lose half our audience over, but I will tell you... Mm. I'd like the Oscars to just be the Oscars. Dan's ears just perked up. Stick to sports. <laughs> Stick to statues. Wait, 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 yeah. You're the one going to be telling us right now what to do on this talk. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. I, Ben's dad. <laughs> yeah. I think that this is actually a very pertinent time to play that. Let's what get... people don't realize is there was a ceasefire until October 7th. Right. And right. somehow that gets lost in everyone wanting a ceasefire now. So well, it but there has been a lot of Palestinian lives lost. And a lot of Since Israeli lives. Correct. But... but there was a full ceasefire right. in action, in right. practice. Correct. Appreciate the setup for the first ever Metal Arc Awards. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza commercial right Ooh. now. She's really having a moment. Having yeah. a moment. All right. Uh, not going to do Office Jester Award now coming off of that discussion. We're going to go Best Costume 2023. Okay. Uh, the it's nominees gotta be are Lucy. As Bobby Petrino. I brought my Bobby bag today. Tony as Matrix. He dressed up like Sean Marion? (laughs) Number three, Sue Gotts as Larry Bird. That's a good one. Uh, you know he's not good. winning. He's not that here. Correct. Good. If you don't show up, you don't get to win. All yeah. costumes Dan has worn lumped into one nominee. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. bullshit. Well, well, that's fair. bullshit. Now, Willy Wonka Roy is pretty great. Yeah. Willy Wonka. Uh, uh, Anchorman, uh, shipping that's container, late. dressing up as Anchorman, <laughs> and Jeremy as the town crier. Uh, Suspense is killing me. All right. And the winner is... Wow. Lucy. Lucy as yeah. Bobby Petrino. Yeah. I mean, yeah. don't give it away. Don't give it away, Dan. I mean, you're right behind us. Dan, you have to act happy. Be nominated is good enough. Yay. Exactly. No one else stood a chance. Thank you. I'd like to dedicate this to the University of Arkansas Athletic Department, to Bobby Petrino, and to the motorcycle. 
We'll give and his mistress. We'll give uh, w- one more away before we get back into uh, some actual awards. Most likely to become executive producer. Ooh. <laughs> All right, the nominees are Chris Cody, Billy Gill, me again. Leader in the clubhouse. <laughs> me again. God, I hope I don't win this one. Jeremy Taché and Willow. The dog. Are you got you gotta be kidding me? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> a dog? Jeremy? Over me? At the 18 years? And the Y'all win- can kiss my ass. Man. Winner <laughs> is Roy's angry. And a drink. Mike Ryan again. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Congratulations. I voted for Willow. Uh, most likely to become the next executive producer. Mike Ryan. I'm right here. I really can't fight this one, honestly. <laughs> you should on me, my behalf. You should. I endorse Willow. Not fair. Now we're getting. They're our drinking Cuervo Jimmy's, at the Oscars. Jimmy brought out his guy from his show. He's doing that move. Guillermo. That is Cuervo. Cuervo. Cuervo, love Cuervo. Can I have some more? Mm-hmm. That's Guillermo. Not... Hey, hey. Our guy Ben. We met Guillermo, of course. Get a little after party. Hit it. Hit what? Look at me, Louis. That's how to use the button. <laughs> is Stu Gatz coming tonight or no? No, he's no. in Chicago. David, that's no, one of the dumbest questions. He, locked in. he actually wanted I've to watch the show. He knew yeah. he wouldn't be able to hear it here, so he wanted to lock right. in and watch it. I text show. him. He's in Chicago. There's zero chance he's coming. Although I think he's on the show tomorrow. <laughs> he's we on the schedule to be here tomorrow. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. He was supposed to be on vacation all last week. All of right? last week. He was just showed up on Monday. Sounds about right. That's bad news for whoever's the next EP of the show. Best documentary short. Yeah, time for the this doc- is Bol- Bol- This could be a, a Dwayne this Wade Oscar really moment. A, Dwayne Absolutely. Wade Executive may producer. win an Oscar right now. Again, I saw all five nominees. I love that David is picking the last repair shop, which I found to be so poignant, impactful. The Barber of Little Rock is excellent. Ben and I both picking the ABCs of book banning. I uh, the way my night's going, it's going to be the ABCs of book banning. <laughs> if I did, could you change see all my five ballot, nominees? I did not. Okay. David, you usually do well at this, do you not? I I find the year. Yeah. some years better than others. Yeah, there have been some upsets tonight, and I want people to win my memorabilia. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> he does. He's generous. As uh, yeah, as that we was a, one earlier. of the first things you offered up when we were talking yeah, about doing this. Yeah, of course I do, Roy. Yeah. First place gets to fuck the Dune popcorn bucket. Uh, yeah. yeah. Somebody put a mark in there. The wheezing. Kate McKinnon is a presenter. That's why she's there. Not because she she's Barbie. in Barbie. But she's she presenting with role another role Barbie. Which should have been an original screenplay. This is actually the funniest thing that's Not, happened so far in y'all. Oh, look, Spielberg is great. The fact that he's getting a cutaway. How do you come up with an original screenplay if you didn't come up with the lead characters? Cody, what do you think? It's, it's adapted. It's adapted Barbie from existed. the popular toy line. It's an IP. Some people adapt from Where books, is this on our page? Oh, here we go. Middle column, second down. Mm-hmm. The prediction before the show was ABC's a book banning. Correct. That's what me and Ben have predicted. David's going with the last repair shop. I've seen all five. I think my prediction to win is the weakest of the five. I hope David is right and the last repair shop wins. Beautiful film. If not, we'll love to see the Barbara Little Rock again. Dwayne Wade, executive producing. will be very good. He won't get an Oscar, but it would be nice to see. The last repair shop is terrific stage. in a great L.A. movie. He'll be hugged. Yeah. And the winner is... Samson, that's Nass, a Samson strong. win. He's back, so you're back. That's a big win for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank that's you. Good work. You, that's good work. You on that? That's good work. No. <laughs> I mean, if Roy picked to be amazing. Like, no one wow. said anything I, before I that. You said thank you. Yeah, yeah. The last repair shop won. If you're David following Caleb along Hannah with just us, Josh. correct. We still have a perfect ballot out there. Or we had 24 oh, perfect ballots. We had nine oh, perfect ballots. You're right. That's. We had nine perfect ballots. Uh, like you were saying, Ben, a great L.A. movie, too. I mean, it's... it's yeah, great L.A. movie. Uh, obviously, a large portion of the voting base of the That's Academy great. based in Los Angeles. That mm-hmm. is a crazy leaderboard right now. Ben is running away with us. Yeah. Oh, all right. We're hanging tough. That's good. I'm at nine. Just fell off, huh? Are they showing me at nine? I don't think they're showing you. I know it's not best documentary short, but can you oh, guys yeah, no, explain? No, no. Like the, the right column says, are you beating David's score? So presently only one person oh. is beating David's score, and that is Ben Lyons. So, Dan, you're making fun of me 
and I'm beating everybody. No, I wasn't making fun of you. I was just, you were lamenting that you hadn't gotten very many, and I was asking you I'm if you're usually very good at this. And I've been very distracted tonight. Uh, I Seven wanted, hours. But I know that this isn't documentary. Predicted them days ago. You're saying like, you're acting like you pre- you predicted them days ago. Like, what is, yeah. what is you having you're a long night tired. have to do with it your predictions? It doesn't have anything to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not documentary short, but you guys mentioned the Michael J. Fox documentary. I'm yeah. surprised that, like, I'm surprised that that didn't do anything. I agree, Dan. I mean, it's, it's a big it's, snub. He's a beloved actor. It's a wonderful story. Davis Guggenheim, who's the documentarian, won for an Inconvenient Truth, the Al Gore documentary. So he's well respected. They were politicking together. Michael J. Fox went to a couple of yeah. screenings in New York with voters. So sometimes the documentary branch will do that because the film is so popular. They'll say, you know what, that documentary is getting enough love. Let's recognize documentaries that aren't being recognized. Sometimes that happens. Well, sometimes dumb. that happens. And two, the the Academy continuing to diversify its voting branch. Uh, you have five films that are international films in the documentary category. People right. were looking for stuff outside the box. This might have uh, there's nothing wrong with that movie. It's perfect. It's a it's a beautiful documentary. It's yeah. tough to watch too, especially as somebody you know. You grow up watching Michael J. Fox. I think, yeah, I think it might have just been sixth or seventh this year. I'd like to talk about the documentary features and again encourage people out there to watch these movies. Yeah, Bobby the Wine, the people's memory, president, Bobby is on Wine. Disney Plus, which is a really inspiring. Four daughters, story. one of my favorite movies of the year. Yeah, I remember you texted me the you way they made this. that. Yeah. I just haven't seen To Kill a Tiger yet, and it's it's I think streaming it just soon. Came out. Yeah, yeah, hang on. Someone texted me about it and told me where to find it. Thank you for. Did you say me. Tequila Tiger? Oh, I'm in. Jose That's Cuervo a hell of a cocktail. Cuervo Tiger. This is a big moment. We are all three of us on 20 days, and Mari Paul and that will win. Which number award is this? I'm uh, not sure, but we all had 20 days in Maripol. It was the favorite. We all had it. Yep. Yep. It's a good, it was a really, really good movie. Yeah, it's only fun when you're spectacularly wrong. Yeah. Less, <laughs> le, vastly less fun when you all get it right. Everybody but Will yep. again. Not bringing any fun to the show. Who He's won? getting them right. Yeah. Did that Maripol one win? It did. 20 right, Days yeah. in Maripol, which cool. is the favorite. Just, yep. Just looking out for the, uh, the people. It's um, not to kill a giant tiger. Yeah. Here, huh? About the Whoa. bombing in Ukraine, and um, it, it's amazing. It's got that cinema verite approach, boots on the ground, exactly what's happening. Yeah, for the people that don't know what cinema verite means, which is definitely not me, what does that mean? Uh, the, the appearance of being real, like that kind of you know grittiness, the handheld. <laughs> it's got that feel. Go ahead, Ben. No, no I was going to say for cinema verite, you feel like you're living the experience with right. the characters on screen. It's on not screen, stage shots. It's not set up. Right. It's really immersing yourself in the story time. Story time. Yeah. Sam, so what are you laughing about? I want to know. There's a decent chance that someone from the company is listening to this show. And there's a decent chance that it was just discovered that Stu may not be here for tomorrow's show. And so a text was just sent to me. Hey, Dave, are you around to do tomorrow's show? Oh, no. (laughs) Who sent it to you? Carl. (laughs) (laughs) Is Sounds there, about right. Is there a chance that Stugatz Stu? just sent a note? You asked if he's coming in here. He's still in Chicago. Oh, I might have to come in tomorrow. You've been amazing. Thank you for being exactly. here the whole I'd time. Right. Thank you. Thank What's you. your Thank total you. number now? Do you know? Uh, you I have, I believe, seven. It's not terrible. Man. Most you would likely, be in last place of my family pool. Most likely to set the ulcer on fire is our next Larky. And that's numb. not the proper name of the award. Well, I don't want to give it away. Well, the Larky is that's a good gonna, name, though. You, uh, there's you a typo to use on the that. Full name the, full of the full name of the category is the John Reed Setting the Elser Award on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> the the Elser on Fire Award. Did you change Adnan Verk? It's Verk, V I R K. Well, how was it misspelled? There was a T at the end of your name, Vert. Mm. Good catch. Thank so you, sir. someone so call you on the hardwood. Uh, <laughs> the nominees you. are John Reed, Rose, the aforementioned Stu Gotts. Who's this? Whis? Whiz? Whiz? I have W-I-S. an update for all of you. Of all the people who filled out do, ballots, do, do, the 5,500 people, yeah. Mike, oh. guess who has a perfect bracket? Who? Three people. Ooh. Wow. Wow. We're down um, to three people out of 5,600. What is the piece of memorabilia? I have not decided yet. I hope Whis wins. I got a Shape of Water <laughs> lunchbox from 2019. <laughs> yeah. I have a collection. Why would somebody write Why would someone put a name that I don't know? And I'm like, all right. I did not produce this segment. Oh, Lewis? Oh, it's Lewis. That's Lewis? All right, look at that. That is Whis. Come on, man. Like, no, no, no. Lewis writing his name is Whis. That is not his fault. That is Whis. 
Come on, no one can blame me for that. <laughs> All right. And uh, Greg Cody. And the uh, and the winner is uh, John Reed, not surprisingly. Yeah, right. How's this going? <laughs> David, go ahead. Tell us more about uh, Four Daughters. I just want to tell you more about Stu being on the list to be here tomorrow. Why would he be on the list to be here and be in Chicago? John How Reed can here? you be in two places he at once? He is not here. He left? He left a while ago. He's wildly <laughs> irresponsible. All right, the winner... <laughs> Stugatsu, yeah. uh, John Reed is not here to accept this award, so I'm going to accept it for On Wiss. His behalf? Oh, Wiss, nice. yeah. Maybe he's traveling. He'll get home in late tonight and then. I don't think I would have gotten the call to do the show with Dan if <laughs> Stu were doing his job. And it's just a little late notice at 9 11 p.m. Eastern. It's not like you ran a half marathon today and did five, seven hours of live programming. You ran and a half a movie. marathon? He watches a movie he's every a single day. So, <laughs> machine. And I haven't done the rundown for Live Nothing personal yet, which is making me so anxious. I have an 8 a.m. show tomorrow. That's what you're thinking about right now? Well, normally I send the rundown to the producer, Coca. Coca. Before this. Coca's Matthew here. Coca, he's here. He's here okay, okay. Waiting for me to do the rundown for tomorrow's show. So he knows what's going on now. He's here. He's meeting. He's here for the first time meeting all of you. Hi, Coca. Hi, Coca. Coca, come in here. Come on. You can say hello. Coca, will you come yeah. in here? Hey, get yeah. in here, Coca. Yeah. Come on, Coca. Coca. Coca, he won't Coca, do it. Coca, 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 MVP of Metal Art, get in here. Coca. Here he comes. So here comes. Whis. He's really gonna. He won't Whis. come in this room. Coca. Hey, there he is. Coca. <laughs> That's Coca. I thought it was somebody else. I thought. Are you on the Tony diet? What's going on? <laughs> Coca, put on headsets. Coca. Yes, Coca. You got me. I have you. Coca, can you work on the nothing personal rundown for me? Like right now? Like right now? Yeah, you got a phone. Right now. I'm anxious. Uh... Tell me about the party out there. What are people doing? Are they enjoying? Because we're not able to participate. Yeah, I think everybody's just locked in. They're locked into wow. everything you're saying right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Nobody's even watching the Oscars. They're just <laughs> they, watching they find you. that they're just Samson specifically. Or anybody else in this on either side of the no, class. it's this whole just thing. Watching like they're you. they're so excited to to hear about this yeah. this. Uh, I don't even know what award is up right now. Yeah. Shows, how, lock, shows how locked in I am. Yeah. To, okay, you're to in this. luck. The award that is up right now is the Kelly Kapoor Fashionista Award. Ooh. And the nominees are Whist. Mike Ryan. <laughs> what? Juju. Uh, some more terrible handwriting. All right, who's, <laughs> who's Jers? <laughs> Jeremy? Jess. Okay. Oh, Jess. Jess. Jers. Kirsten. Dan and Mike Fuentes. I mean, why did I even wear this suit? Mike Fuentes is going for Roy it. Roy, are you nominated kidding. for nothing, Roy? I'm, I'm not. I haven't been nominated yet. So. Kirsten! Yeah, yeah. Kirsten. Oh, Bullshit. So well deserved. If you're watching our live stream right now, you're seeing so many of the important people behind the scenes at Metal Arc. This is my first time down here, and I am absolutely blown away. This it's place an is an amazing production team. Great crew, great staff, great snacks. And this is about half of us. Yeah. Unbelievable. Coming in on a Sunday to do a seven hour show, which is pretty good. All right, where are we at here? We're Zendaya, Zendaya doing Zendaya. another category. Star of Dune 2. Did okay at the box office. Not great. It's hard to judge. She's showing in some days. terrible tennis movie coming out. Yeah. yeah. Her dress is phenomenal, Stunning. though. Stunning. A vision. Oh, this is cinematography. I yep. didn't even notice Adnan left. Oh, he's not there? Uh, this is we all, unanimous. We all Oppenheimer here. Oppenheimer we're winning its second to, Oscar. We're going to start to... Pile really, up for really, Oppie now. Yeah, see the, see the Oppenheimer win start to pile up. We haven't done a best dress list, but it's in... Dia looks yeah, Dea. She's right there. Kirsten one. Looks beautiful. Issa Rae. What category is this? Cinematography. Cinematography. Ooh. It's going to be a straight blowout for Oppie. Now, if poor, what if Poor Things wins this? Then you got to really then start to look at the best picture. picture. Yeah. It's won the few if, technical it categories be. it was nominated for early in the night. Oppenheimer. St stupid question. What have. exactly is cinematography? That's the, not stupid. The way I was everything gonna ask looks. Them to, I was going to ask them to explain that because I have no idea what that is. How means. does that look? Just like what how I'm does looking it, how at. How does it look in the frame? So not production design. 
Somebody it's, else is building the set. There's but production how does it design look? within cinematography, like a subset. You just missed Adnan. No, no, no. I'm, Adnan I'm Vert. I heard you guys out there. I was watching. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer one, yeah, cinematography. Which we all had, so you didn't catch me. I know. I, I'm in trouble. You're not in trouble. I haven't looked at the other categories, but. <laughs> oh, David, you're in front of Adnan now? Yeah, I've, I've been for a long time, wow. but you're yep. going to get an actress. The whole night's going to come down to actress. Well, that's where it's going to be You guys, you guys we, split on actress? I'm Emma Stone. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Lily Gladstone. Yep. All right, so Oppenheimer climbing back into it. Absolutely. Not, not the, uh, not the my, night that many envisioned for Oppenheimer. And the cinematography was incredible. You know, Say what you will about the film. Hoyt van Hoytema, amazing visuals. I mean, this is uh, a real visual feast. I'm yeah. in shock right now. Really? There were three people with perf- oh. perfect brackets. It's down to two. Somebody did not have – someone had a perfect bracket until this Until category. cinematography. That's and insane. And didn't go you Oppenheimer. You can really outthink yourself in these things. This was one of the locks of the evening, I believe. We are down to two perfect brackets. There's going to be no perfect brackets. You're going to save your lunch pail. Uh, I, th- I want your lunch pail. <laughs> <laughs> because the rest of the categories uh, don't feel like there any poten- there's not a potential for a big surprise. Actress. Actress is not, not a, a done big deal. surprise. D- directing's a lock. Yep. Absolutely. We don't have a lot of awards left. Song could be a lock. Well, this is why, to Ben's point, that's where I used to get worried. If you've got to make a move here, if we're agreeing on everything, where's that... The great differentiator. Like you said, actress is where there's a difference between the three of us. This could be live action. How many short more do we film. have? We have. Uh, we do sound sound done yet. Seven no. more awards to hand out. There's only eight awards left. That's All it. Right, the scoreboard is uh, now on your screens. Mm-hmm. Only Ben Lyons in this uh, Metal Art contest has a better score than David Sam. So Ben's got 12, Samson's got 11, I've got 10. It is like in our world, you do see. I mean, you three are the top three in Thanks, our Cody. entire. Like, it's, I was just going to say, Cody, like, we love you, Cody. most of us are just like, you know, doing a Christmas tree thing here. But yeah. But in yeah. fairness, Roy hasn't seen any movie and he's still on the list. Yeah. Live yeah. action <laughs> short film. Roy's still in the top 10. I think actually Roy's seventh on this list. Wes yes. Anderson, yeah. Love Rami Youssef. We've, uh, outside of the hosts of this show, we've got three tied there it is. with Great. Nailed it. Yep. Thrilled for Wes Anderson. You're about cool. to see Wes Anderson take the stage. Make sure you listen to this acceptance. Yeah. No, oh, he's not can't there. Be here tonight. Too hip. Too God cool. damn it. Oh, no. He just won an Oscar and was not Great there. joke by Rami Youssef. He said, we know yeah. he can make him long, but way to make it short. Congrats, Wes. Way That's to go. That's devastating. I bummer. wanted to hear Maybe that. Maybe he's on set filming there. something somewhere. Fly in. Absolutely. Get, get yourself yeah. a jet and fly You're in. the favorite to win. You've never won an Oscar. You've been a great auteur. Like Ben says, his, film, you know, his films aren't traditionally that high, well-financed. No. He's making a smaller film. So the idea of a director leaving for a week or something, I don't know if he's shooting it's or not. What's Oscar the name of the person, Mike, who Becky, we're watching? Becky G. Becky G with 30-plus oh. million Instagram followers. Right. The Fire Inside from Flamin' Hot, Diane Ward, of course, perennial nominee. Gives us an opportunity to hand out another Larky. Please. Yes. The please. Negative Nancy Award. <laughs> the nominees are Mike Fuentes, <laughs> Danny B, <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Matthew Kugler, Mike Ryan, and David Sampson. Roy, I think you got snubbed here, bud. Uh, and the winner is Those Mike Fuentes. What was this award? A negative Nancy award. Notice I did not see it. That was a little bit about everything, folks. You probably had to walk in. You had to walk into the studio to get your award. All right, and finally, let's give this last one out so some people can leave. Yeah. (laughs) It has dawned on me that this was very important to some folks. All right, here we go. Office Jester Award. The nominees are Wiss, <laughs> Billy, Kirsten, Chris Cody. I'm going to say, look, man, this, uh, I mean, that's spelled way. Yeah, that, that's fun. Number, number five is just straight up spelled way. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? That's just, that Rose, says. Rose, Rose, that's Rose. That's, Lucy, Lucy. Lucy. All right, all right, Lucy. Gosh. You got a, you got a penmanship like a doctor. Bullshit. Where am I? 
And Rose, here we go. Office Jester Award. I know who I want to win. Who do you want to win, Mike, for the uninitiated? I want Rose to win. Okay. Uh, because Rose has a special quality about her. Um, she just puts smiles on faces. Okay. And the winner of this Larky is... Rose. There hey. it is. A sentimental choice. You wanted Rose to win, and Rose came through. Who, who did the voting? Rose. Not me, apparently. What were the rules? She sent out ballots to everyone to, so everyone could like, yeah, she, fill out. I did not get a ballot. This, yeah. Oh, she said everyone but David. That's right. Another example. Did you get a ballot, Adnan? Did you get a ballot for the uh, Larkies? Take one guess if you had to. Yes. <laughs> it's outrageous. That really pisses me off, actually. I know. I did, I did Seven goddamn off. hours. Listen, man, this. five hours and, out here. We've been great so far. It's, uh, the people are loving it. How would you not send me a ballot? I wasn't sending him out. I I was sent it and we didn't vote. Did Stu get a ballot? A ballot? I, 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 I was busy yeah. doing stuff. It was in his inbox. Every question you have for Stu, we're gonna just go with the answers. No. No, he got all these things. He just didn't participate. Yeah, you know, which happens. Well, uh, we're now man, getting I, to the heart of the night. Now, yeah, this yeah. show could end in 40 minutes. We're still show. gaining viewers, yeah. folks. If yeah, I may. Can we get an update, Cody? What are we time. looking at? 5,500 viewers? What we, do we got? Adnan, we've been over 5,000 since we went live. Yeah. Wow. Well, no, we were at like, when the show started, we got to about five. Okay. With the pre-show, we were at like three and four. Okay. But let's keep it going. We're, we're still climbing. We're That's not. Great, why would we stop? When I showed up, it jumped up to 10. It yeah, jumped yeah. up to well, 10. Coca! 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 He's a hero. He'd never been here before. He's been part of Metal Arc for a year and had never been down here before. It took the oh, Oscars welcome. to get Coca to come to Metal Arc. That's unbelievable. That's what the Academy Awards can do for all of us. Saw a nice dinner at Prime 112 the other films, night. Gets Coca to Metal Arc. Yes, we yeah. did. That looked good. The first time I was on Nothing Personal, I said, listen. I'm glad about the pod, but this guy Coke is a keeper. You remember? I that said was that. the only time he'd been on Nothing Personal. <laughs> I've been Not on, the first. Coke, I've been on twice. No, you're right. He's right. He's only been one. No, Because Samson said to me, you were great. We don't do repeat guests. <laughs> what makes a perfect Nothing Personal guest? Uh, personality, mm -hmm. uh, love, and knowledge. There it is. And Adnan made the cut. One and a half for three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was and I'll let you choose. Okay, okay, okay. Give the me the list again. Personality, personality love, love, and knowledge. And knowledge. It's definitely not love. <laughs> personality is a half. Knowledge. Yeah, knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. knowledge. One and a half. That's, I love <laughs> that you nailed that. Have to be self. You're one and a half. Yeah, mm -hmm. strong one and a half. Mm -hmm. Do you need some floss? No, I'm good. I, I, um, are we moving on to dessert? No, no I'm good. I, yeah. Dan yeah. asked me how much you've been eating. I just wanted a snack early on. Now you I'm started fine. eating at four oh seven. <laughs> we were seven minutes into a seven hour well, show once and they you started said, eating. Once they said, "If you guys want to nibble, whatever you want." Once Mike opened the door, I said, "Well, just you know." Mike said, "In Mike's words, he goes, don't ever feel shy." I'm like, "Great, we're fine." Did Tony do a twenty four hour show alone? Yeah. Well, no, it was like an overnight. It was an overnight. Yeah, show. I don't know if it was twenty four hours. Twenty four hours it was overnight. I still don't know how you guys did Freedom. I think I watched 21 hours of Freedom. I think I did. Lewis, you yeah. did? And how many hours was it? Thank you, by the way. Yeah. Are you kidding? It was amazing. I wish you guys would do that every That's year. That's amazing. Honest. No. I pitched yeah. only doing like, that once no. a month. And then like we do that once a month, but that's all we work. Once a month you want to yeah. do Freedom? Yeah. But that's all we have to do. <laughs> I think that a 24-hour show or any show like this should come with a day tomorrow. You normally would get a day off. It's like work, like as a nurse when you're working th four, ten. It's the most well, popular mine. you've been back there. <laughs> Definitely got mine. My day off is tomorrow. I'm saying that we should just have Dan and Stu do tomorrow's show. By themselves. By themselves. No producers. No producers, no video, no audio. Nobody to turn the Let mic Let them on. try to figure this shit out. <laughs> I mean, I think they'd do all right. Maybe. Mike, they can't tie their shoes without you. What are you talking about? <laughs> no comment. This movie, Might American Fiction, that they're talking about now on the Oscars. Fantastic movie, right? I had a hard time reviewing it. It's hard to describe it with, I don't want to come off as being disrespectful mm -hmm. or in any way, there's no racist bone in, in my body. But yes. this is about racism. Uh, where's right. Jeffrey when you need him? <laughs> 
But it, it yet again continues the importance of the Toronto International Film Festival. If you win the Audience Award there, Ben, you at least get a nomination for Best Picture. Yeah. That happened with American Fiction. It's happened with King's Speech. It definitely helped the film in terms of awards recognition and establishing Jeffrey Wright early in the contention for Best Actor. But in terms of box office, it might not have you know fully translated, but potentially some more attention from the Oscars tonight will get people to actually go out and see it, because it is really one of the year's best movies. Alpha Just so you know, this is the moment of the Oscars where people will either beat me or not. Well, as Chris this pointed out, sounds. outfit change for Kimmel, by the way, but this sound, this is big. This and by the way, let, let's set the stage here. If John you get Mulaney, this right, it's over. <laughs> if I get this you one get this right, right, you're getting this yeah. table doing 100 push-ups. You're like, I, I did it. I and don't if, think I will, but if I do... It's a gutsy pick here. It I is gutsy. I, at the very least, I, I credit your audacity. It's easy to go chalk, but you're taking a risk. You're taking a chance. It's this not going to go your way. Number one it's, category it's, that I've been thinking about the entire. If night. this happens, you just post this clip of you just screaming like a banshee when you're right. It's not going to happen. But if it does, you're going to see. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Oppenheimer's going to win for sure. But I have. You're going to see David interest. Sampson as happy as it gets. Like you're going to lose your mind. Right now, he's doing sound humor. Ugh. You know, for years, oh, movies didn't have sound. Right, and they start talking in mime and. <laughs> I'm John Mulaney Fire. doing that, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, Mulaney. Yeah, Cody, he's funny, right? You've seen his stand. I like John Mulaney. Yeah. yeah. I watched his too show much, and it was all about enough. his rehab. You've seen that too much. Right, too he was enough. very honest with the fact yeah. he's over the brought him to rehab. He has a lot of. He did a lot of look at me, Louis, in terms of who brought him to rehab. In his rehab, it was a lot of <laughs> famous whole, guys. Like his whole last special was just like. That's what I'm talking about. He yeah. just shouted out people that helped him. It he was giving shit because a people couple big know. names. They were all famous. A couple yeah. big names only made it on Zoom. He's like, oh, so you could be here. Some people made it in person. Exactly some people right. were on Zoom. He's like, you're so big that you only Zoomed into my intervention. You couldn't make the flight. How much do you care about someone if you can <laughs> Zoom into their intervention? <laughs> he's like old-timey show ben business Stan. Hollywood to me. Mulaney, in a way. Yeah, he's got right? that charm to I'm him. I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. no, dude, I, honestly. I, this is all you. No, but if you get this, you're going to lose your mind. I know what it's like to make a gutsy pick. Everyone goes, why would you do that? You go, because i got to take a chance. I'm, I can I go chalk, but I have to take a chance on this, okay? And this is what could deter. Look at the, the abuse of sound in the zone, which is just sort of snippet you of it. You catch me here. This is you catching me if Oppenheimer wins. But, the, I, the but I appreciate the percentage of people out there who are nervous about the sound category it has to be very small. Outside of that room <laughs> in LA. It feels like the people who are nervous about this are in the, in the theater out yeah. in Hollywood. And David Sampson. This is Oppenheimer's sound was so good. This is what I'm saying it's yeah. they built a bomb. You gotta have the bomb sound though if you're gonna win this <laughs> Big category. Sound. And That's Nolan true. had the advantage of most people seeing that film in those theaters where the sound is the best. Right. I'm not sure Here if you saw the zone of interest the in moment the theater of or the screener or how they were able to watch it. Whoa! Are you kidding? There is no way. David, David Sampson with an unbelievable pick. That is incredible. This is a moment you're never going to see ever again in Oscar history. You made the gutsiest pick of the night and went zone of interest in sound, and you won. You were vindicated. I David, I'm in shock right now. Wow. That's a big win That's for impressive. me. That's impressive. That great. is a massive That's win. Gonna, uh, Look at Coca. <laughs> thumbs up. He couldn't be prouder of you. That's going to lower the number of people who beat me. I'll tell There's you that. There's no way I'm going to beat you now. It's over. The race is over. And now you and Ben are neck and neck. Oh, it comes I mean, down to best closer, actress man. now. Boy, I might as well That's just leave. That's incredible. You know, David, I think I'm done around here. David, that is the up. pick it's of the over. night. That is the pick of the night. Mike, Mike, can I leave or Mike you've <laughs> been talking about how the zone of interest, the sound is so important. Yeah, David David swayed me on that, and I, I understand why, because yeah. he had it as a big upset. But the sound in that movie is the star, and it's not through the most conventional ways, the way that Oppenheimer literally blew you away with sound. The zone of interest takes a totally different approach. It's the horrors that are subdued and yeah. muted that are in the background but omnipresent that I really drive that home. I can't believe you got that right. I'm in shock. Do we still have perfect ballots? Is anybody else out there taking the no. zone of interest? Or are you the I only can't one? I imagine. I assume that's a great zero poll. Perfect ballots. I gotta so. say, is great I, poll. I, this is an upset, but the Academy got this right, and you convinced me of it. I think the sound is essential. I can't even imagine. Updated leaderboard on the screen right now. So David and Ben tied at thirteen. I'm right behind with eleven. Jess is at ten. Mike Ryan at ten. Then you got Taylor and 
Everybody else. Uh, Roy at seven. So Everybody yeah. else. Well, I, 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 I don't want to say. Poor Gabriel. Coca's, uh, Coca's at Coca's seven. Time Coca's yeah. at seven. Yeah. Where's Cody? I got to get Chris I didn't put my work email. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Yes. Right, Louis, just tell You're me what. You're supposed to use your metal email. Just tell me what Cody has. Just How so can they to, pull it from 5,600 right balance? Yeah. Nobody even told me, and I still use yeah, my I mean, work email. I've just been email. told by Louis that Cody did not submit. That's what I just got told. But that's all right. Well, we'll get him next time. Um, Man, saving congrats it for the to VMAs. you, David. That Seriously. was a hell of a Congrats call. to David That's Samson. a great poll. Thank hell you. Hell of a call. We're having a performance starting in the crowd. Dude, oh, this is Ryan Gosling's oh, performance. All right. I'm going to listen to this in my own headphones. Y'all okay. enjoy. All right. So, Ryan Gosling. He started in his seat. I mean, this is going to be a memorable moment. As you said, Ben, people are going to be talking about this no matter what tomorrow. This Good is where he, go, he goes. Mark back Ronson to, joining him on the stage. Yeah, shout out to Mark Ronson. This is a uh, this is like a throwback to his Disney days, I guess, in performing like this. He's a true performer. Gosling. Was he one of the little kid Disney yeah. people? Yeah. He's performing at the Oscars. This I is can't crazy. even <laughs> with a shirt on. For now. Oh no, it stays on. <laughs> I mean, he did wax. <laughs> he did. I think that's a laser. Yeah. Is this the last performance of original song? I hope so. For the night? Let me Because then they're going to give the Oscar now. They usually do it right after, and oftentimes it's the song they just played. That would be a big upset. Mm hmm. I don't think that's going to happen. That's an upset. Tonight, but. Unless I'm getting texts right now. Everyone's going, best sound, shocker. Like, I cannot believe best sound. I'm like, yep. When did you fill out your ballot? A couple days ago. I remember you were, yeah, you were right stressing when I, me to it, do when it. I went on lebitardaf.com. So I would say as soon as we started. Four or five days ago, No, maybe? as soon as we started the. The, uh, the, the brackets. The brackets. Like, it's oh, one thing to say is that how long He's it's being been joined on stage by the Kens from the film that are helping him out with this performance. That's All pretty right. cool. There were so many Kens. Which Kens are on stage? Mm -hmm. A main crew of Kens. Again, just like Mike said, even though you can appreciate the sound is one of interest, I'm still shocked. Oppenheimer is a juggernaut. It won its favor to win so many awards. Like, that's that, doesn't that award being handed out kind of excite you for the direction of this award show? Yeah, because absolutely. it's an inspired it's choice. Absolutely. It's definitely an inspired choice. Poignant, but not loud. Slash Does that mean is the now sound on the stage. branch oh, got Slash it right? Is Slash has now joined Ryan Gosling on stage. Oh, man. Does his neck get bigger? I mean, it happens, dog. <laughs> yeah, what does yeah. Slash have to Asia. do with this song? It's a an epic guitar solo that it's a moment that they're setting up, dude. Doesn't have. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> like for real? Like, nothing really, but it's just a cool visual to have Slash shredding with you. And just in case a guy who can't necessarily, you know, doesn't always sing, go out there and perform, and you have Slash yeah, back there. Cast back members from Barbie have joined in. Margot Robbie, Greta, they're all. That was definitely pre-planned. <laughs> <laughs> Was it pre-planned for Emma Stone to sing part of it? The Who's cameraman? he bringing to the stage? The cameraman is bringing him to the oh, stage. Oh, that is the camera Clever. person. You should have grabbed uh, Messi by the hand. <coughs> I still can't believe Chris Cody thinks that that's actually the dog's hand. Well, in fairness to Chris. I don't it was, think you know it isn't. It was, it was a quick cutaway. We weren't totally sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that's a hell of a performance by Ryan Gosling. He was awesome. He's a multi-talented guy. He's a song and dance man, right? Yeah. Old performer, school. Performer, entertainer. Yeah. That's, that's a, a great... standing ovation that Ryan Gosling is getting for a musical Listen, performance. Ben, ben predicted. He goes, this is the moment people will talk about tomorrow. How great was Ryan Gosling's song? In a room with your peers and in front of the whole world to get up there and do that when that's not what you usually do. That's, right. That's pretty remarkable, to be honest. We are down to two, three, six. Six left? Seven. No, six. You got to be under five to say down two. So we probably got another hour and a half or so, I'd imagine. No, I would say that this no, will one end. hour. It's 1030. Oh, I think it'll end before that. Okay, good. I, I like that. I was thinking I like where you're headed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I a lot of overlapping yeah. and uh, Is ABC showing you know, anything? You would have thought Paul Pierce joined the show. <laughs> so this is the question. Do you know if ABC is going right into the local news or are they doing a show? No, I think Post Abbott Oscars. Elementary. I saw something about Abbott Elementary having an episode right after. Then they're gonna. Then it's gonna so end. That's at 10. why they started an hour earlier for Abbott Elementary. It's not gonna end at ten. No, that ten, they're not gonna like cut the end of the no way. Oscars. Yeah, ten thirty. No, but they're not gonna. They're showing it. My point is, they're not gonna go straight to the local news because they're showing a post-Oscar 
right episode show. of Correct. Abbott Elementary. They're trying to give it that boost. And they've got to get it done by 11 Eastern. Correct. Right. One would think. You never this know. This will end. I'm going to give you an over-under right now. Yeah. Okay, I want to hear this. It started at 7 o'clock. 10 it, oh. Remember, it's a 7 o'clock start. So Abbott Elementary, they're shooting for a 10 o'clock start for Abbott Elementary and uh, live local news at 11. It'll be 10.30. Under. My over-under was going to be 10.08. Oh, over that. I'll, take, I'll split the difference. I'll take 10.14. Okay. All right. All right. I'll so they've got, they've got, what, 25 minutes Plus to fit in? In memoriam as <laughs> it well. Goes yeah, buddy, oh, we haven't done the in memoriam. We haven't done best Cody, actor in a leading role. 10 30. No actress, best director, director, no best actress, best picture. Man, I don't know about that. How about that. this? If it goes to 10 30, we cut the post game show. We don't do the 30 minutes. <laughs> no, we're that. Oh, no, you have ten? to do the post game. They're using it as a post game <laughs> oh, because okay. Stu's not here tomorrow. We'll all watch out in elementary together. We can go. 10 16. That's what I'm saying. 10 16. You're close with Ben then. Okay. We're definitely getting momentum. I need to get school. water. Yeah, go, go. You guys I'm go. Jeffrey Lyons. Ben's dad. Big guy's up. He's watching. <laughs> He's watching. <laughs> He's locked in. Oh, man. All right. Well, listen, it's been an impactful night so far. But, you know, it's very similar, Adnan, this experience to what we did for the Oscars for many years. Being backstage, watching the show, talking over it, mm-hmm. cracking jokes with the crew, hanging out. Yeah. And like Mike was saying, I think it's... It's an interesting thought process, this whole second screen experience, right? You've seen it so much with football and Manning Castle and the rest of it. This is what we did. Um, and you just get to just to dive in and kind of see the action as it unfolds. But so far it's been it's been a fun night. I think it's been surprising in some ways, especially poor things doing well. Biggest surprise is sound of the night. But I'm glad you mentioned Mad Max earlier in our pre-show and that year the George Miller film has swept all the technical categories early on and you thought maybe there's a a, a chance for best director or even mm-hmm. best picture. Mm-hmm. But it, it kind of ran out of steam throughout the night. I wonder if Poor Things has a similar fate in that it got some technical categories early right. but then might get overlooked for Emma Stone and best picture. Yeah, I mean, it, it, as David was saying earlier, we've won the great upsets of all time. I don't see it happening. I'm with you. But, yeah, probably even to win those awards. I think to win production design over Barbie, they got to feel pretty good about that because that was definitely a close race. Our friend Mike Golick Jr. put out a tweet that I Go would Joe. love to get your feedback on. He claims that Robert Downey Jr. casted as Tony Stark is the single greatest casting decision ever. Well, it, I hear Gojo's point because it literally changed his career. Changed and, Hollywood, too. Right. And picture anybody else in that role, that combination of smarts and charisma and sarcasm and smart alekiness that Robert Downey Jr. has. Amazing. And, and that really obviously set off the whole Marvel boom and superhero revival and the whole thing. So if Downey doesn't do Iron Man, maybe we don't get the MCU in, in the way we received it. Yeah. I was funny. When you were mentioning Mad Max, I wanted to look up who the costume designer was. Jenny Beaven. That, that, the costumes that we were ridiculous. We were running it off earlier. But yeah, thank you to Gojo for watching and listening. Appreciate the feedback. Any other questions coming in, Mike? Any thoughts people are having? Any just general AMA? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, really, most people just want to talk about how the Minnesota Wild decided <laughs> that overtime was an okay time to pull their goalie, well, risking the point that they had already guaranteed themselves right. through a little-known rule, 84-2. 80, and, eight points of a playoff spot, as you eight said. Points, uh, I've never seen anything like that, and this may revolutionize overtime hockey as we know it. How are the Rangers doing? Doing okay? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, they're in the mix for the President's Trophy. Mm-hmm. They're, they're Behind the Panthers. Teams, uh, trading blows there yeah. uh well your initial thoughts on the vladimir tarasenko acquisition knowing that he he bagged a brace yesterday oh playing on the top line though that's a little dangerous uh, that top line was doing pretty well for florida yeah tarasenko's enigmatic i look back with the blues from the seasons he put up he was unbelievable but he's not i've heard that he's not a he's known say, as a guy that's well not a guy. great it, we have him for a short time rental come in score goals like he's gonna love it here but he's not someone you necessarily want long term that's well said he's not particularly endearing among his teammates but he scores well, goals in the playoffs exactly well he knocked evan rodriguez off the first line they dropped him to the third line now Evan he also rodriguez knocked, is hurt now yeah he knocked yeah. Egg, eggblood out of the game yeah well it wasn't wasn't for hagey playing on the first line and then he got moved to the second rodriguez got actually yeah, rodriguez yeah. was a one line that they didn't touch and that shows you why i am this show's hockey expert yeah that's all right a little carter for hagey you talk. I like it. And now the Carl Pozo trade is uh, looking pretty genius right yeah, now. Yeah, good point. Pozo. Not sure what. To, oh, film score is this next category right now. So score. We all had Oppenheimer here. Yeah. 
which is so frenetic. The music in that film, it just the score you hear, you hear, you're, you're three hours it's it the there. entire time, mm -hmm. and then you go watch a film like Zone of Interest, even though it won for sound. The score, there's there's nothing. It's a very sparse film. Or and Anatomy of a Fall is it has very little score in it. So here's what I think would be amazing: John Williams. <laughs> Has, this is insane. He's nominated for Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. So he broke his own record of nominations for original score. He's 49th in the category, makes for a grand total of 54 Oscar nods. Wow. So there it is, uh, as we're seeing around the screen, Indiana Jones. I mean, he's won five for original song as well, the nominations. So it's, it's pretty insane if 92-year-old John Williams, Steven Spielberg's longtime composer, if he wins. I don't think so. It's going to be Ludwig Göransson. For Oppenheimer? If they want to hit that 10 o'clock start for Abbott Elementary, <laughs> these awards are going to start flying. Yeah. And it would appear that we might still have one more musical performance. Yeah, buddy, I'm telling you right now, I was shocked that Cody went 10 14. I go, we're going 10 How many renditions of the nominees do you think they have prepared? They have like one that's like a minute long. They have one that's like 30 seconds if they got to go quick. Don't like, forget, they're bringing out the previous winners now to present the won? acting category. Yeah, Chris, I don't think they have the different one. I think it's just like it's. I don't know. I just thought maybe like they have like two versions. If we're, if we're doing good on time, we play this one. And if we're struggling late, yeah. maybe Oppenheimer won. For that's score, that's right. Score. Ludwig Göransson, as uh, Christopher Nolan fans know, Hans Zimmer has scored a lot of his movies, but this time it was different with Ludwig Göransson. I'm being told that we have David Sampson standing by with our live studio audience oh, great. Okay. with his wireless mic. David, can you hear us? I hear you perfectly. Can you hear me? We can hear you, David. Can you set the scene? I would. We are right now at Metal Ark Studios at the Elser Hotel. We have all of these people who are coming on their not work day to set up for Matthew Coca, the producer of Nothing Personal. Jeremy just came from the Heat game. The What's worst up, Heat loss of the year. They lost tonight? They lost to the Wizards yeah. by two. That is a losing record with Terry Rozier. Was it Terry Rozier's fault? That's what Mike is asking. Was he Share dressed? You have like Share three the mic, seconds David. to Jeremy, Mike. Share the mic. There we go. That's what, the answer. Was, no, was, you said I had three. You had, you was said Terry had three Rozier seconds. dressed? Terry Terry Rozier played. He dressed. All right, he was good. Fault. Thank you, but, Jeremy. You know. We lost Dan, it appears. I've been looking for Dan and Valerie. Sad. Juju's here. You haven't been in the room. Now you're in the room. Juju, what's been the highlight of your night so far? Seeing you fresh as hell, brother. I love your shoes. The people can't see the shoes you got on right now, brother. You're looking good, brother. These hair size eights, quaffed, baby. Brother, hair perfectly quaffed. Uh-oh, somebody won. David, watch out. Will is right behind you. Billie Eilish has won for uh, best, best original, original song. song. I had that one for... too. Nice. Oh, As it all you. David, yeah. did you have Oppenheimer for best score? He did. I did. Oh, man, you so here's Titan. Metal Ark Security. Let's see if the camera can follow us. These are Metal Ark Security right here. They can't. By the way, you are off camera. Thank you so much for securing us. We appreciate that. <laughs> you all have to be here by tomorrow. There is a live show at 9 a.m. This reminds me of Billy. Everyone Bush but Stu will be here. People. Lucy, you appear to not want to be here. You're you're on the list. Uh, I will check the email. I believe you're. But Stu's on the list. Tomorrow. Lucy is off tomorrow. Not on the not on the list. Stu Stu you, though, is on the list as of right now with you as a TBD, Samson. I'm no longer a TBD. I'm in a sure thing. Thank you all for being here. We're gonna go back to the control room. I want to show everybody, Mike. Can I show everybody what Metal Art does behind the scenes? Is there a camera back there? Yeah, of course I you will. Assume. Yeah, yeah, we got a camera in the control room, David. I want to show what a great control room this is. They've been working here straight for six hours. I don't know if you can see what they're doing here, but you are looking live. Is Alex Steiner sending us an invoice for this? Yes, he is. <laughs> he certainly Look at is. Dan. Dan does everything around here, and Dan's doing the video back there Are now. you sending an invoice? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> We're trying to get interviews here. We're in, in trouble. It's not working. We are getting in trouble, Mike. Now I'm going to show you the penalty box. Is there a camera in here? Yeah, famously. Someone this shut, is where makeup has locking, been. Guys. This. Oh, God, am I shiny. God damn. Let me see if I can just... Billy Eilish is still talking. Okay. Back to you, Mike. All right, thank you, Black David. Stuff, David. T-shirt Billy Eilish. Two-time Oscar winner Billy Eilish.
Amazing to think about. Billy Eilish dominating right now. It was expected to win, and so it does win for What Was I Made For? Like you said, Ben, maybe not the best song, but impactful in the movie when it happens. Again, when that song is placed in what I think is the most important film of the year, yeah. it really moves you and I think added to the support it got to win an Oscar. Another tough loss for Diane Warren. The fire oh, inside from Flamin' Hot. Just another nomination, but can't. Yeah. Yeah, some, something tells me she'll be nominated <laughs> if again If only next there was year. an award mm-hmm. show where she would be recognized regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's hey, dad. Hey, there's a big guy. He's still watching. We appreciate it. So, uh, David, the only thing left that you and I split on is actress. And so now you got me rooting against Emma Stone, which is You, went, uh, you uh, went with Emma Stone, David, for Best Actress? I did. Wow, that's a... That's a that's I'm a rooting for you Really now, David. gutsy move. Uh, what categories while I was doing that? We miss, uh, You miss uh, Billie Eilish. Billie yeah, Billie Eilish. Oppenheimer won original had. score. And what I was made for won original song. Correct. Adnan, and I those, know. Everyone but Will. Go ahead, Mike. Do I know how much you talent? love Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes. If you could take Lily Gladstone or The Field, what are you taking? Jeez. Because I think if, if there is I an would upset s- left in this award show, it might be in that category. I know you're all about Sandra Hewler. I would still I take Lily Sandra. Gladstone. After, after Lily Gladstone won the saga where I feel good about Mike, I'd still take Lily versus the field. But to your point, I could see why it's a, a conversation piece. Emma Stone, the Academy loves her. It's a great performance in Poor Things. It'd be her second Oscar. But I, I think it's still going to be Lily. It's it was weird how we started out tonight and you guys were getting them all wrong. And now it seems like you're having a good night. Was it just like you, <laughs> missed, like, you missed like three out of six to start? It was a tough start, but yeah, I've now had I guess a nice seven. comeback. These office pools are won in the more technical awards. <laughs> yep. uh, David knows exactly what he's doing. Wait a I second. Think... Roy, you're still at seven? What did you pick on original yeah, Roy song? Roy came out of the uh, game. I thought for song. sure you... No, he went 0 for 3 to begin. Then he, he went got Godzilla. Four. I feel like Roy got Godzilla. Um, yeah. Original song was a song for my people from Killers of the Flower Moon. And, and then you're two out. behind. Where did you, you go wrong? Goalie, Where did you go wrong yeah, here? I need to be wild in this situation. Animated short film is one that me and David both with Letter to a Pig, Holocaust film. And Ben correctly went with the Beatles. War is over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. Animated feature as well, in addition to the show. Animated feature was a ben big got one for two him. we didn't get. Yeah, that the was fact a good one. that I've caught Ben now. We yeah. went Spider Man. Love of Spider Man totally screwed me. The boys love it. Ben, you thought you had me, right? I did. I did think I had me. And you, I still will you beat did. you because Lily Gladstone's going to win. So are nice. separate in one category did, only? Did yeah. Adnan just blame his kids for getting one? No, no, all I'm saying is we love Spider Man. I'm just going to, the kids are. Damn kids love that movie. Well, uh, outside of the experts, I'm getting that are support hosting. from everybody else saying that it also should have won. Uh, Jason was chiming in my ear, our director. Outside of the uh, the experts that are hosting this show, uh, Jessica and I are in a real rock fight for top of the non expert division, both tied at twelve apiece. Wow. Okay. You sure that Emma Stone can't win Best Actress? No, I th- think she's sure? a great chance. I really do. I'm rooting for her. I don't think she's going to do it, but I'm rooting for her. I think. Uh, look, Emma. She's won before. She produced Poor Things. First time we, oh, we've seen, uh, second time we've seen an actress uh, is potentially win for Best Actress in a film that they produce that's also nominated for Best Picture. Frances McDormand, of course, for Nomadland two I years ago. I love Nomadland. You've got yeah. that. No Wonderful that. film. I love David Strathair in that movie. He's awesome. Keep in mind, if you're only watching this and it's not a second screen experience, it's just a first screen experience for you, we are going to be potting up the sound for Best Actress, Best Actor, Best Excellent Director, writer, and Best Did we buy those rights? Excellent writer. Uh, you're allowed to do it, provided that you talk over the sound that's going on. Ben, to <laughs> gauge stop your, asking questions. I want to gauge your you just friendship. You pot it up. We talk just about do it. it. Your friendship with Emma Stone. She wins tonight. Yeah. You text her. Congrats. How? When does the response come? Tonight? Tomorrow? A couple days? I'll get a response in a couple days. Forty-eight hours. Yeah. But which is acceptable. I'm sure her yeah. phone would be blown up. But I like, did a set visit on Superbad, right? So like <laughs> that's how I know her from back then. We're not. We don't hang out and you know go get brunch. But I did see her at the Nick game when she came to see LeBron last year, and we had a nice catch up. I and thought I, you get residuals from House Bunny. And I do get residuals from House, the House Bunny. Bunny. Yes, I was. Uh, Good memory. In we that film Samson for about as long attention. as I've, we've been in the studio for like a second. You know? Yeah. Well, Co- Cody says the numbers are still climbing. Now that Mike Is told people they're not going to miss the major numbers, we're almost up to 6K. <laughs> Did out. I just get the first three? Get out of here. You won't even give me the get zip code of, of her cell number. Up. I can't stop. get Mike Schur's zip code either. Wait, no, Mike Schur, you can get his number. No. This, All-time great it, Brick Breaker player. He Remember will, Brick Breaker on BlackBerry? Yeah, he will not give me his cell number. It's the weirdest thing, actually. <laughs> Mike sure. Oh. What do you got? He just died. Is this a commercial for 
This is Navalny. Sure. Navalny. No, no, Mike sure did not die. Navalny is no, what we're talking about. Oh, sorry, I Alexa, Alexei Navalny. Me. That was a non sequitur. Uh, opposed Vladimir Putin. By the way, I'm being told that our numbers on uh, t- Twitter Live are more than, like it's what I'm saying. 5700 is not actually what it is. It's in more memoriam. Than that. Okay. In well, memoriam. Well, in memoriam. So we lead off with Navalny. That's actually a pretty big moment. I'd like to get a little bit more yeah. news on on that appearance. Absolutely, there. that documentary was amazing. Norman, G- oh Harry Belafonte, not last. Well, there you go. Norman Jewison, and great Canadian director, obviously in the Alan Heat of the Night, Arkin. the Hurricane, Alan Arkin. I love, love Alan Arkin. God Little Miss Sunshine, yeah. Oscar, Glenn Alan Gary, Glenn Ross, amazing. Belafonte's third. Wow. Bo Goldman, good writer. Harold. <laughs> I'm sad with the immemorium. Yeah, it's no, I just tough realize it how many people every year. I don't know who they're going to end with now, do you? Andre Brower. There's the one. Yeah. My guy. But That's they didn't the end with him. I know. But I love Andre Brower. Would have liked to have seen Roy from Glory. They didn't show Glory. Tom, Tom Wilkinson, Wilkinson yes. one of the Got great Michael actors. Clayton, he's Wilkinson, amazing. Yep. Shakespeare in Love. Yep. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> Pee Wee oh, died. Paul Rubens. Paul oh, wow. Rubens, yeah. Not only for Pee Wee Herman, but pretty in good. Glow. Limited, <laughs> limited Pee Wee Herman. Richard Roundtree. Oh, <laughs> Richard Roundtree. Oh my God. Ryan O'Neill. Yep, love yeah. Story. One of the all-time great. Folks, great. we have over twenty thousand people watching on Twitter right now. That's Farrah amazing. Fawcett. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, we everybody, appreciate you. for That's letting awesome. us be a part uh, of your Oscar that Sunday. That is practically cool. unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to look into this. <laughs> Amazing Thank song, you, by the way. And, Andrea Bocelli. <laughs> oh, Spike Lee's father. Yeah. Bill Lee, that's right. Jazz My biggest oh. fan, Mike uh, this, Ryan. The screen cap lives forever, though. Maybe Take a fan it, of our show is like doing a concert somewhere, and they're like, everyone pull out your phones right now. Yeah, that got us to the 20,000. <laughs> How about Bobby the Robertson? Fact that people are interested in movies. How about 100%. that? No, that's total viewers. Wait, 20,000 total viewers? Nah. Yeah, that's, to- that's total okay, viewers. Okay, but 15 on Twitter, 5 on YouTube. I'll take it. But this is going to live forever. Exactly. This it, is going to be on the Levitard right. YouTube right. channel. Right. If you're watching, if you caught it late, you say, I'm not sure. I should watch it Monday. Watch it Tuesday. Catch up. See all the great moments together. Does, we put a highlight pack. Who's going to be the final face of In Memoriam? Who have they oh, left man, out? They, I haven't seen 1. Matthew Perry. 1.75 speeded this, uh, <laughs> this In Memoriam. Yes, they are yeah. hurrying up. They're does getting Andre, on the producers and editors on the way. Does Andre Bocelli get the uh, uh, Stevie Wonder thing? Where people accuse him of not being blind? Oh, no, he's definitely blind. No, I think people know he's. Have yeah. we seen Matthew Perry yet? No. No. Matthew so Perry could be the last that, one. Is that the last one? The whole nine yards. And that's, the whole ten yards. He's a TV guy mostly, so that's pretty amazing. That's, uh, Fools rush in. I'm being told nice, that uh, that's Coach Kelly's son. Heck. That's Grace Coach Kelly's son. Matthew Perry. Perry. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. How do you think he got that? Matthew Perry. It's not going to be Oh, not last. He works hard. Who's left? John Bailey, great cinematographer, by the way. Richard Lewis. I love Richard Lewis. The best. And they showed exactly the movie they should show, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Mel Brooks and him together. Uh, can I you imagine who is possibly left to Who's finish? bigger than Richard Lewis? And Matthew Perry and Belafonte and Andre Brower. We're about to find out. Beautiful rendition gonna be, by Bocelli. We're going to say, Father oh, yeah, of course. Exactly. That happens every time you go, oh, that. Or we'll oh, say, oh, my Carl God. Carl Weathers died. could be it. Carl Weathers. There was Roy Spencer. There's Carl Weathers. There is. He's not the last one. Okay. Nope. Who are you freaking? Billy Freak and The Exorcist. Well deserved. I saw there's a oh. great document. Well, a solid documentary for well, Ken Uncut. Tina he's Tina crazy. Yeah. Yes. He's wild. It was Billy the Kid, they called him. Nothing can prepare you for how he willingly decides to start that documentary. Oh, and they just put up a whole bunch of names of the But who was the last one before they that? With Tina Turner. Turner. Tina Turner. Cormac Turner. McCarthy, one of my favorite writers. Oh yeah, no country for old men. Thought yep. Tina Turner. That's would an upset. be the final. That's an upset. Tina Turner, the last face, and then they just listed a whole bunch of names on the screen, and then they put in Immoral. Yeah. But it was a speeded up version. It was like an honorable repeat. mention. Got to hit people. that Abbott Elementary. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Got to hit that Abbott Elementary. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. you're dead. You're not worthy of a photo, <laughs> yeah. but we're going to slap you on there. That's the tier two right. of the Hollywood deaths. Now, of course, there's all the people who didn't even get on that list. <laughs> That's who we have to focus on. That yeah. means you've had a pretty shitty career. Right? Yeah. That's all of us. We're tier three deaths. That's terrible. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Ben's oh, dad. At least you were in the movie. <laughs> I, with the ring. I don't want to get morbid or anything, but no, it's just, sure. you have to think about where, what tier you're in. <laughs> that's, and that's, I think you know what? That's what I think about every fours. day when I wake up and I try to attack this thing called life. <laughs> <laughs> and I face all these challenges in my career. I go, what tier? Hopefully this gets me to tier one. 
David, do you think the Marlins would mention you? <laughs> Your best shot at tier one is some sort of accident. For Ben? Right. Well, that's terrible. Me too. Well, no, by no, the way. No, no, no. no my best shot at a tier well, four how about, is... How about producing some killer movies that win best picture and best documentary over the next three. 10, 15 years? Tier three that's is a, a producer. That change the course producer? of history and inspire yeah. the next this generation. This could be a good game. No. What so, tier yeah, are well, you? you know what? None yeah. of the wine scenes are going to be in that, so... <laughs> if Dan wins some Oscars, he could be looking at... Tier two, <laughs> tier, but yeah. he's going to need to have a good run. <laughs> Juju Juju Gotti was in an Academy Award winning film. Yeah, so he was in The Blind Side. Is he? That's still a tier five. I mean, as we said earlier, Mike, a, a pretty a bad Oscar winner. Yeah, I mean, you can tell him he's not going to be in the in memoriam. I'm not. <laughs> I think he makes it. I want to see. There's a commercial for a new Annette Benny movie with Jake Lacey and Sam Neill, Allison Brie. It's a new show. That interests me greatly. That'll be another thing I'll watch without Kara what, in no, the middle of the night. Right. No love for Nyad tonight, other than the nominations. That's good enough. Yeah. Although it's such a unique kind of style of filmmaking, a hybrid really of a documentary as well as a narrative piece. I thought that was really cool. I'd that like sounds to see fascinating, that style actually. A lot more, actually. Same directors as Free Solo, of course. And That's incredible. Yes. Yeah, I thought that was a really cool way to learn about this woman's life and her accomplishments. And that's kind of like the, crushed it. Isn't that the uh, oh, I want to see the mysteries approach? I'd love though. to see. It's basically Juju. Like, we're basically honoring them for their reenactments. There he is. They did amazing reenactments. Wow, do you see Juju in the Blind Side? <laughs> I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, Juju and the Blind Side. We'll call he it up a little He gets the bit. same residuals you get for House Bunny. <laughs> yeah, no, the, uh, Blind Side made a lot more money than House Bunny did. Mm-hmm. I think the real winner tonight was Dan's Popcorn. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Definitely a big hit. And, yeah. you, and we, I think we sold it right. Like, it kind of, at the beginning, the first bite's not great, but it, yeah. it grows on it's you. Subtle. And Lucy had a bad batch. Yeah, that happens. Sure. The right amount of salt, some smokiness to it, a little bit of lime. <laughs> it just tasted delicious. You got great pipes, Roy. I just the way you sold that oh, really? was. Say it again. Say it again. Like the way you were. The right amount of salt. Only four awards left. Jimmy Kimmel informs us. Only four Liberal awards line. left. <laughs> yeah. We will carry the audio delicious. for those. <laughs> oh, it's four, the four bigs. Just delicious. Actor, actress, love director, it, Roy. picture. Oh, thank you. They've got a punt on the. Let's bring out all five. No, they have. No, no. Of course, oh, they brought no. them all here. They've Good. flown them in. Best actor. You can't tell Dustin Hoffman. You know, Jean Desjardins to go all the way back to France. I feel like all those dudes don't even want. Like, oh, I don't have to talk now. Good. Nicholas Cage, Matthew McConaughey, Brendan Fraser. Ben Kingsley. Oh, I'm in on this, actually. Forrest Whitaker. Okay, which uh, of those five of them. are your personal? All Nick right, Cage. I'm making an executive yeah. decision. We are potting up Nicholas Cage's part. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank enough. you. He may lead. You all look so <laughs> hot. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. It's pretty good. Will McConaughey say, all right, all right, all right. We all have oh, Killian right. Murphy. I know, and I'll, I'll be Except thrilled Hannah, to be wrong. That's Paul Giamatti. But I'll be thrilled to be wrong. I want to be wrong. <laughs> I want to be so wrong. I want to be all want to be wrong in this. I want to be so wrong on this. Uh, Brendan Fraser, just one of the worst performances of the year. Killers of the Flower Moon. As the you know how much whale. I love it, even I will agree with you. No, no, no. He won for the whale last year, but he just yeah. like totally just overdid it. For you killers. dumb boy! <laughs> Damn, man. Oh, this is going to be 10 <laughs> Don't get emotional talking about the guy, man. Uh, he's going to hit 10.30 for All right, sure. Viewing yeah, I can believe you said 10 away. Viewing yeah. audience can now thinking? hear the main broadcast, so let's provide some color, though, so we don't get pink. Okay. Love Nick Cage. Family he called Joe. Daniel yeah, yeah great. David, David, awesome. David Gordon Green, I love. Great independent filmmaker. I like when you have one actor opposite real people who are acting. Mm-hmm. Tremendous. Do you think Nicholas Cage gets paid to be a presenter? Yeah, there has to be some union thing, right? Other than the bag, of swa- a, the swag bag. You're on a union yes, show. What are those swag bags like? What's the? They're worth that? like 200 grand or something. <laughs> great speech. Nick Cage, give a love to GMI. That was awesome. Well, he's assigned Giamatti. Well, what I'm not saying, say you suck. He also revealed that Giamatti was uh, blind in that eye hey, during the filming because of the contact man. that he had. Worked. Right, Giamatti Ooh. said there was one scene I have to drive, and he was I couldn't see. And they're like, "Well, can you get a little closer?" I'm like, "No, I only have one eye right now." People here thought that Bradley Cooper may bring his girlfriend to the Oscars, but it's always his mother. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. Always his mom. Always his mom. Just like the T Mobile. Always his mom. She's in a commercial with him. Yeah. Zach Graff and Donald Faison. God, he looks Let's be honest, this movie was just all right, all right, all right. Hey. 
Binky. Hello. <laughs> ben Kingsley may be one of the best actors of our lifetime. Sure. Incredible. Thank you, David. Ben. Speaking of the zone of interest, Jonathan Glazer directed Sexy Beast, one of my oh, favorite I Ben Kingsley Sexy performances. Beast. Sexy Beast. Is you do it. Timer. Timer. You do it. Yeah. Mr. Roundtree. No. No, 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 no. Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. yes. What was that movie with uh, Sigourney Weaver? Oh, um, Heartbreakers? No, no, no. no, no, no. Uh, Death and the Maiden? Good movie. Death Ray Liotta. Yeah. Death and the Maiden. Ray Liotta. <laughs> Death and the Maiden. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Wait, what are we doing? Oh, Heartbreakers? We can talking? hardly wait. Yeah, yeah, hardly yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah, yes. You're, yeah. But Chris Big is. fan. Is Trip McNeely? I was wondering to date one of our players because I wanted to meet her. Really? I tried to make Chris, that happen. I remember you said you had some friends, Sopranos rewatch. Ben Kingsley, great in The Sopranos. Season six comes up. Well, great yeah. in The Shield. Yeah. Ghost Dog. Ghost Dog. The Way of the Samurai. Jim Jarmusch. I thought that you were bold, brilliant. Bound for greatness. It's been exciting to watch you light up the screen over the years. With Last King of Scotland. Most recently with your uh, truly... Coleman got a better seat than Bobby De Niro. Yep. Civil rights leader, Bayard Russell. Best actor versus best supporting. Yeah. Coleman, That's how it goes. Yeah. A little higher. Actor, yeah. it's, it's, it's a bigger award. Mm -hmm. Angelic troublemaker. He's nearly buried in the history. I uh, actually have Coleman Domingo as a Thankfully, best actor. Justin this Zane would be Zane. amazing. You I mean, would talk with the, the uh, love for oh. Samson. If he got Coleman Domingo right... Well, I can't put Bob second row. I didn't. I didn't choose him. We all have Killian Murphy. Yeah, but I want Giamatti. I kind of want Coleman Domingo now. I love how <laughs> we're all in here rooting for the art. Yeah. Come, come on, Giamatti. Come on, let's go. Come on, Giamatti. Killian Murphy. Dang. Oh. He had it. That sucks, man. That sucks. That sucks. <laughs> it sucks to be right. What no, I don't, hold no, on. Come sucks. on. The man played Oppenheimer. It's that a sucks. Tremendous performance. A great career. I know you're rooting for a PG, great but okay. that's disappointing. What do you mean? Giamatti never been nominated for Best Actor. 56, this was his chance. First Irish actor to win the award. First time we've seen uh, a Best Actor winner for the same film that's going to win Best Picture since 2012 in mm -hmm. The Artist. What was the Shelter's movie with uh, Thomas Hayden Church? Sideways, of course. Sideways. I love it. He didn't get nominated. Was not nominated. No. Wow. 2004. I will not drink Merlot. Yeah. yeah he's Killed not a Merlot, Merlot Killed Merlot sales. Johnny Depp Finding Neverland was nominated ahead of Giamatti. A great Gracious. movie. That's in my top 100. <laughs> Finding Neverland's a great movie. I cry every time I watch <laughs> that. that stage it's lighting. A great movie. I gotta say, Nicolas Cage looked pretty good. Oh, he's awesome. better than he did on the red it's carpet. All about lighting. Yeah, his pants are above his belly button. No? Tentacle Oscar. No, that's uh, the thing that they wear. That's not the red pin that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. No. No, just a different pin, which seems everyone's to be the wearing lapel like pins now. And and no bow ties for a lot of the guys, right? Just going without a tie, just a disheveled look. It seems to be yeah the move tonight. But to Ben's point, all kidding aside, Murphy, incredible performance. Immersive, dark, haunted, gaunt. Old, young. Yeah. Right? He's in nearly every scene of the movie. It's it's honored to it's be nominated for Domingo and for Jeffrey Wright. At the end of the day, yeah. the win was being nominated. Yep. That's a big brings loss a lot for of Paul attention Giamatti. to those films. Brings a lot of eyeballs and has people talking about films that without those nominations might be tough to find an audience. Yep. I'm very disappointed for Giamatti. It's horrible. And now this the holdover is, best is, is gonna have a very bad bad stretch with this plagiarism right. Let's situation. Hey. For better or worse, we're all living in Oppenheimer's world. And Kelly Murphy opting for peace. I mean, that, she, they built a speeches. bomb. Right, he goes... We're, they built a bomb! Right, well, that's why he said we're looking for... Oh, yeah, the nice reaction shot of Giamatti, Bradley Cooper, applauding, supporting. I'd like to not go to commercial and do an award. 30th anniversary of Schindler's List winning. This is why Steven Spielberg is now here. This could so be is he giving out best Nolan's director? Best director. Yes. Wow, that's a cool moment, no yeah, matter absolutely. what. Spielberg and Nolan, here no we go. We have an would. updated score where Ben and I are still tied at 16, and no one is going to catch us. Juju at 8. on the screen anymore. Roy, Ro come on. Coca at 9. Rose is now tied with Adnan. Huh? I really want Rose about, when, when is Rose to. Rose is not going to Rose wouldn't work for Jester. Right? bullshit, man. Fortunate. <laughs> Main audience, you can hear this feed now. And Steven Spielberg is speaking. These five nominated directors have taken the entire world. So Marty passed Steven Spielberg this year for the most nominated. Correct. Ten nominations, best director. And at 81 becomes Oscar's oldest nominated director. 
John Houston was 79 when he was nominated in 1986 for Prissy's Honor. Nolan being overlooked for The Dark Knight when that film had eight nominations, seven in the technical categories. Obviously, Heath Ledger's performance. This He's only on night. screen for like 20-something minutes in that movie. See, that, they went through those nominees this is quick. Nolan. Yeah, this it is already 10.04. This was a no-brainer. Christopher, Christopher Nolan. Nolan. I'm telling you, they went through those nominees so quick. I'm telling oh, you, I think right. they have multiple ones. We're going to get to the bottom of this. You're right, Cody. Do you have a sped-up Oscars for major categories? Got one that's 20 seconds if they're running way behind, and they got one that's one like 45 well. seconds if they're good on time. Any perfect ballots left? At one point, it was three. I feel like that was an hour ago. That was before Zone of Interest and David's pull of the night. I'm happy for Christopher cool Nolan. Moment. It's yeah. still it's not his top five movie, but it's a great moment for him to win an wow. Oscar. Yep. He just makes art house films with a budget. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's amazing he can take that kind of biopic. He said when he pitched it to Killian Murphy, this would be like a 1990s movie, right? It's an overall stone film. People have made that comparison. It kind of feels like JFK, and that was one of his inspirations. A certifiable box office director in the in the mold of Steven Spielberg yeah. getting a crowning achievement Great point, from Mike. Steven Spielberg is a really cool moment right. and sets a table for a guy who's still in the prime of his career to get people in the theaters, which is ultimately what he's going for. You and he's very passionate about critically acclaimed and yet brings big box office. Just like ironically, Spielberg. Oppenheimer still is the big winner of the night if they win Best Picture. Now they get actor, director, picture. How many? How many is Oscars? And supporting actor. And supporting actor. Yeah. So it's hard. But again, to, it's, spreading the wealth, right? You saw yeah. poor things poor, win a couple. Poor things had a moment about yeah. two hours ago. Barbie had some so- had the song moment, and they spread the love a little. Is the Barbie? holdovers the only lo- big loser tonight? Right? No, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Actress. Supporting the big actress. loser is Killers of the Flower Moon. It's not doing anything. His movie is going to take the donut. No, same thing. Lily wins. Lily wins. Oh. That's your moment. Right. <laughs> that's it. If Lily loses Best Actress, you're done. Yeah. You're, that's Same it. thing happened yeah. to the Irishman. Correct. 0 for 10. Gangs of New York Gangs also of New York. 0 for 10. Yeah. An 0 for, which upset me. Yeah. You, yeah. I, I think we're going to go to commercial and then do Actress and Picture, and that's it. Respectful speech left? from Christopher Nolan? I believe there's only two left. Picture and Actress? Wait. So That's they really are cool. indeed going to commercial break, it would appear. Yeah. And we have two awards left. Just to be clear, Samson thought it would be done at 10.08. Ben said 10.14. I said 10.30. It's going to be between 10.14 and 10.30. I'm, I'm really <laughs> happy to see guess. Nolan win because for an entire generation of filmmakers, he's their guy, right? Yeah. A lot of kids out there grew up on these films. He's been making movies at a high level for a long time. Mm-hmm. I look at some of the directors that I loved growing up. Alfred Hitchcock never won an Oscar for yep. Best Director. Spike Lee never won an Oscar for Best Director. Correct. One for yeah. Black Clans, but for screenplay. And, right? and I believe was given an honorary. He was. Yeah, yep. Well? yeah. Yep. But in terms of winning for Best Director, which he should have for uh, it's a big do the right snow. thing, do the Malcolm right X. thing, and Malcolm X. Yeah. Um, and Alfred Hitchcock obviously nominated so many times the Master of Suspense. And I remember when he, I love the clip when he received his honorary Oscar. The Irving G. Thalberg. He just yeah. said yeah. thank you and walked off the stage because <laughs> he was so upset for having lost so many times over the years. But you, you can't have Christopher Nolan running around not being an Oscar winner. The question is, what will he choose next? So he makes movies not often, and when he does, they are powerful. It takes a while, and they it's event cinema. It's yeah. event cinema. So and I wonder how many because scripts. he's on the marquee, which is incredible. So imagine how many scripts he gets, and he just dismisses, and he does it with his wife, figuring out what to do, what not to do, following up. He's had great movies in the past. Not even in my top five is Oppenheimer, but now he's got to follow up a best picture, a best director. We're doing the post game now to get you out of here, Adnan. Are we? Okay, okay, okay. That's what so Chris this. is texting me. We're going to take Cinephone. I'm like, well, let's. No, they're playing let's this after. This. They, oh. they, we're not live anymore. Oh, shit. Okay, so we're going okay. under the assumption okay, that Oppenheimer wins. Okay. Stay with us. Okay, okay. So the fact is that he's getting all this recognition for Oppenheimer. Well, we are live on YouTube right now. That's what I thought, right? I, know, yeah. I was just... I mean, you just... Yeah. Stay with We're all so tired back here. I was right, just right, like, wait, yeah, what happened? Are we not live? I Chris is like, gotta, should I be doing something? Wait, wait, hold on. We'll stay with me, Mike. I'm still sober. Yeah. I just got to be sure. <laughs> like, I'm, just, yeah. okay. I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, if, you're, if you're Christopher Nolan, 
what do you do next? You t- do another period piece. You do another biopic. Do an entirely original. What was that uh, fake news story going out that he was uh, in negotiations for a, a Bond film um, that was since uh, denied? Always rumors of a Superman project or other DC work. Superman. For him. In addition to all the people at Metal Arc, there is Russ Gilbert from New Voodoo, helps out, built the website. He's been doing this for seven hours straight. Yeah. Well, we got to shout out hours. Angel, by the way, as well. Did a great job of the artwork. Fantastic. Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you Angel, so much, Angel, Angel Russ. Angel. This is our acceptance Terrific. speech that we're doing Yeah, we got to think, yeah. yeah. It, is, yep. it takes a lot. People us. think we just turn the microphones on and no. go. Yeah. And we're just the final sort of portal. There's Correct. so many things that go on behind the scenes. Well said, David. And it may not get enough attention, but it should. So shout out and and Julia and everybody at Metal Arc. Just thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. As you We're said, we're gonna have to do this again. I have a feeling. I don't. Th- you um, said a couple. Of, you, you I, said I, David's to tone has cho- changed on this ever since he started doing well with the picks. Great point. At the uh, beginning, he's like, I hate this. I'm not doing this again. Yeah, I can't hear. I want to watch the Oscars, close, Chris. Now all of a sudden he wins for sounding. Because you know what? This has been amazing. No, we just signed a five year deal. We're doing this again. They came yeah. in and changed it so I could hear. That was the big change. And now you want to do it again. Scoreboard. All right, lead actress. Here we go. This is the moment. So you, you and me here, David. Oh, you got me rooting on YouTube Benny. audience. Let's go, Benny. Get this whole experience. Here we go. I'm rooting for I, Emma Stone. I, I, you I'm are. Ro- What's wrong I'm with rooting you? for Emma Stone. <laughs> no, no, Lily Gladstone. I like Emma Stone. Mike's cheering for Sandra Hewler. Come on, Sandra. Is that Jessica Lange? Who are you cheering for? Jessica Lange. Uh, uh, Jessica. I went with Emma Stone. That is right. Jessica Lange. Oh, God. David, who do you want to win? I know you picked. I want Emma Stone. So you do it. So do I. She uh, was all the Lily. best actress of the year. No way. Lily Gladstone. Ooh, J-Law's there. It's an honor yeah. for us to present the award for actress in leading role. The amazing Sandra Hula is nominated Hula. for What a year, huh? Yeah. Congrats to her. How does that happen? Mm-hmm. It's She's tough. the only person in two of the ten. And at this stage in her career, too, because she's been doing it for a long time over in Europe. At 45 years old, I believe, to burst on the, the American scene with two uh, of the films of the year. She'll be in Fast and Furious 12. Oh, yeah. you got to get that check. And I still don't know if she did it. That's an anatomy of a fall call out. By the yeah. way, that's something that Nolan does often in his films, Anatomy of the Film. You trust your audience a lot to make yeah. their own conclusions, and that's part of the experience. And in some cases, maybe it isn't so important. It's all about the experience, and yeah. that is certainly one of them. But everyone has their own theory. I feel a little like Sally Field tonight. I like. What? The, they I like me. They really like me. They You're going like to do this me. <laughs> They really, really like me. David Sands might be the biggest going to do that to you? Yeah. I believe Sandra said in an interview that uh, the directive from the director was... Just play it like you're innocent. Yeah. Just play it like you're innocent. It's going to be the most believable uh, version of this character. Right. As opposed to if she Did had we done just it, spoil Anatomy of a Fall? No, yeah. I mean, no, because uh, it's Spoiler part alert. of the nominees there. That's an act three. No, she just said, and I still don't know if she did it. The whole story is, did she, didn't she? Lily, you are the soul of Killers of the Fall. Jennifer Lawrence was supposed to be the next Meryl Streep. That's, what I'm, that's why when I said it, and Ben goes, wait, why did you take Umbridge? Because I'm like, I remember everyone said it about Still might J-Law. be. Still might be. No. Still time. Uh, I think that no. there's been Resilient. correct. Not a lot of forward momentum after that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, momentum. <laughs> silver, silver linings playbook. American that's, hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. That, that, yeah, love it. But that's but already then, in the review mirror. I, yeah, people love a good comeback. Last five years haven't been a show. This is it. Come on, Lily. Let's go. I, I, I'm questioning my pick. I love that. I love that you're plagued by self doubt. Charlie's so just cool the that ambassador at the uh, Indian Wells Tennis Tournament up nice. in Palm Springs. Super Warren cool Beatty's that Annette Bening is uh, nominated. Yeah, Warren Beatty not with like Annette Bening there. What a love affair they have, the oh. two of them. Diane's From Bugsy. Diane so Hollywood, huh? Mm-hmm. Bugsy, great I film. Love this great film. film. I love Nyad. I'm, I'm glad it's getting some love here. Yeah. yeah, the thought on it was the performance is better than the movie. But I was with you. I thought it was a good old-fashioned film that and we watched your parents. the real footage, and it's a, it's a souped-up documentary with incredible reenactments from Burnett Benning is essentially what it is. And we were talking about the fact, you told me that print ad was like, vote for Annette Benning because it's for... Oh. They, leaned, the in. they and... leaned into the whole fact that she has never won an Oscar. She's done all these films. You should vote for her. You could get a career win yes, for Annette Bening. they went on a that career achievement marketing award. plan. Could you imagine? Annette Bening wins for Nyad. NGTH, baby. <laughs> Nigel <laughs> goes to have one for an active award. So. She should have won last year. Yeah, she's there yeah. with Marcus Mumford, her uh, husband, I believe. 
Carrie Mulligan of but Mumford and Sons. I love the fact Carrie Mulligan and potential Meryl Streep. That one I'll back you on. She's fantastic. An education? Come on. Never Let Me Go. You ever seen that film with Carrie Mulligan? Yeah, this is Ishiguro, they, the great There's a lot on the line right now for the, not just Best Actress, but also title of Next Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah, potentially on the line. From the Live from the Stained Carpet crew, this is going to determine our next Meryl Streep. If this Emma moment. Stone wins this. Because the next award, this is the last award that matters. Next award, we know it's Oppenheimer Best Picture. So here we go. All right. And the Oscar goes to. I'm nervous. Tension's building. You and me both. And the Oscar goes to Emma Stone. All right. That's Whoa. one for me. Goose egg. A goose egg for I'd killers. I'd like some sort of acknowledgement by anybody, if you wouldn't wow. mind. Wow. Uh, David Sampson, you're good at this, but Lily Gladstone does not win. Live a- reaction, Adnan. How do you feel? Emma Stone. Killers oh, he's getting out of here. Moon. He's out of here. Despondent. He's Just totally embarrassed at this award show. Take. Let's see. Take him out there. Let's see where he's going. He's walking out, sad. Yep, he's just walking out. Adnan's he's walking just out leaving. Out of the studio. Wow. He's going to the bathroom. Congratulations, David. That's a great call. All these nominees were deserving. Um, I'm a little surprised by this, but fully committed. Updated score. Eight for me. <laughs> ben seen this still. week. I'm a little upset now. I was having a great time for six and a half hours, and I'm very happy for Emma Stone, but I'm not happy for David Sampson. <laughs> There I am. Thanks, guys, for scrolling down on the uh, on the list. There, classic <laughs> start to a speech. Self deprecation, endearing. The next Meryl, Meryl Streep. The next Meryl Streep. You nailed it. Wow. Second Oscar. Come on, produce the film. Will you Four text things. her in front of us? Four things. Had to... Stop. Can you text her while we're Stop. watching? Stop. 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 Her phone or buzz. Stop. Really surprised by how well <laughs> Poor Things has performed this award show. That, uh, it's a great movie. Yeah, now it makes nice. you question picture, right? I, you, I guess. I, oh, are we questioning no. it? By the way, how can you vote for op, like how can you vote for Emma Stone as the best actor? She's poor things. The whole movie is her performance. So if you love Say her it, performance, ben. you think it's gonna happen? No, I don't. But I think there's <laughs> an it's opportunity to though. talk over the speech, so you know, you can do this again. But uh, I mean, there's precedent for that. Yeah. Uh, plenty. Did of anyone points. have Emma Stone in their bingo card when they saw Super Bad that she would be the next Meryl <laughs> Streep? It's unbelievable. Tristan. I did love her in that performance, but no, I did not see did that. Did you know it was Emma Stone when you were watching it? I do remember being on the set of House Bunny and the producer. Where you he- get residuals? Heather Perry, the producer. Look at me, Lou. It's context. Yeah. I made a point to say to her, you are going to be the biggest star on the planet. You're going to be a huge household name. I remember, and Emma sitting there being like, what are you talking about? No chance. That probably, oh, she thanked her. That probably has to be said on a lot of sets. She's right, though. I mean, every- Hell, this one. This yeah. is a big someone told Breckin Meyer the very same thing. <laughs> Breckin Meyer is one of my favorite movies. What's the movie where they go on a road trip with the guy who with the guy who used to be <laughs> on a road, 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 trip. Trip. Oh, road trip? What's the movie? I, they go on? I wanted to lay out a little bit more. Come on, the movie that they go on a road trip, guys. The the one where they're on a road trip. Yeah. Road trip. What's yeah. with her dress? What happens? Don't look at the back. It's like open or she something. She said that it happened during. Uh, the Ryan Gosling she performance. Said it oh, oh, Lily's despondent. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Marty's despondent. I feel oh, so bad. Bad man. I'm so sorry. Welcome back. Poor Lily. Uh, Lily's uh, gonna do all right. Can we get an updated right. leaderboard? That's what I do every year when the Knicks are eliminated. How I just many go for people? A long walk and oh, that's find every myself. year. Though. Can we exactly. ask Russ how many people are beating me right now? Out of the fifty-five hundred. This is more about this is more about just the goose egg though than Lily. Like, Correct. Overall, Chris knows. just nothing. There are two listeners now who have 21, but no perfect scores. No perfect scores. And I only so have 18. I so get... two people. That's a small raffle. Well, it's 10, 17 p.m. on the East Coast. They're, they're not going to – I mean, I don't know what time they're shooting for, but at this point you can lay out for 1030. But I doubt that they're going to do that with just one award left. Well, Jimmy's so, pulled out his phone now. So. Look at that leaderboard. It's clinched. Unbelievable, David. I will finish in first. It's not the Emma call, which was gutsy, but it was debate. The G- zone, of yeah, the zone of interest. Now Jimmy's reading tweets. Oh, no. Complaining about his monologue. Mean tweets, huh? Okay. Hey, Jimmy, we need 10 minutes to hit this uh, Abbott Elementary at 1030. Read some tweets. Hmm. He's can't, this is what we do on our show. He's copying us. <laughs> Don't hold it. <laughs> I 
I'm Jeffrey Lyons, Ben's dad. <laughs> that means you have to talk. Why is he laying out? It's not how is Abbott Elementary thirty minute show? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, Situation comedy. That's why. It's a comedy. It's a good show. Me and my wife just got I, into it. I wish I you had mentioned that. Acclaimed. Then I would have said ten thirty. I thought it was an hour show. It's no. Just, it's a really good oh, show. Okay. <laughs> Who is Chris Hemsworth with? He Ms. was just Mrs. Hemsworth. His, yeah, oh, is he his married? Wife. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the Fast and Furious franchise. He is filling now. See, wow. there you go. Trying to hit that ten thirty. No killers. People want to talk. What? Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, none of them got to talk tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Out of context, Who is, is this it? Francis Ford Coppola? Is this? Because they're celebrating the 50th anniversary of The Godfather 2. Al Pacino! Al Pacino. We were close. Oh, we said we Nicholson. Go. You're right. I thought it was going to be her and Fe him and Pfeiffer. I thought they were going to. Didn't they do something a long time ago? I there was this, this is incredible. This before 1030. This, this is, show ends before 1030. Cody, this single handedly picks me up. At least I got to see Pacino. All right. Let's no viewing G audience. No. You got to get to hear Al and we got all Al. This is awesome. What a great film. He's got to list 10 pictures. It's going to take a moment. With clips, I suspect. In order, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, to be. No, I'm not going to do it. No, 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 no. Sorry. Noted Shakespeare uh, guy looking for Richard. Great documentary, Al made. Uh, for the last <laughs> award <laughs> of the evening. He's a new and father. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, amazing. I'll vote him and his girlfriend. Irresponsible, split. man. No, him and his girlfriend split, unfortunately. Nora Alfala is her name. Uh, I think things going to work out for that kid. I don't know. Yeah. Why? He won't have a father when he's bar mitzvah. Yeah, but uh, money's so it won't matter picture. Yeah. Money doesn't replace. And oh, you want a bit? I like Pacino giving Is he going to read it? It's absolutely he's very reading fitting. It. you got to have a living legend. I just... And Maria, I see Oppenheimer. Oh, he's drunk? What's happening yes. right now? He's doing the nominees. Yes. No, he just announced the he winner. Just, he skipped it. He just skipped. He, did, he, didn't. he just botched it. Wow. Oh, wow. Pacino just botched it. Oh, he didn't Pacino just nominees. botched Best Picture. I believe he didn't read any of the nominees. He didn't. He didn't. Oh. Is that what just oh, happened? Oh, wow. Did what is they with the cast of Dick Tracy and the oh. Best Picture? Oh. Can we what? confirm that he didn't read any of the nominees? He, he no, he just didn't. opened it up. No, honestly, like Oppenheimer. You're supposed to say, and the nominees are, but you know what? No, it's, a, but it's Abbott Elementary. This we're going to speed this up. No, no, I'll go screw it. I'll just open it and tell you. Going for 1030. Look, I, I think what we're all unsure of is, did he just screw up, or did he just say, like, was that purposeful, or did he yeah, screw up there? No, purposeful. He's like, we're going rogue here. Everyone knows it's You're Oppenheimer. Inside, yeah, we can't we ask you. See. Yeah, I don't think You're we can ask you that. You're in the tank for Scorsese, no, guys. No, 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 I mean, they play close to Why do we need though. to say the nominees are? He just told me it was Oppenheimer. Ben, did he screw that up? I think he messed it up. Okay. I think he messed it up. And then when would they ever not do the I'm nominees? I'm sorry, if I'm nominated We're for Best to... Picture, I'd like to see it recognized when they give out the award. That was a little surprising. That was... And they would have hit the 1030 well, if they had he, If done he the read all the nominees, or if he did Hamlet like he wanted this to. Is he not should have done Hamlet. Related. This is not time related. This was a, a weird thing. He botched something weird. He had like there. five papers in his hand, too. He botched he, Christopher he botched Nolan. It. Christopher Nolan was really surprised when it happened, not because he won. He kind of expected that at that point. Man, if every, of how it went about. if every award tonight was like that, we'd have been out of here like 45 minutes. Could have gone, yeah. gone to the Heat game. Yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think ultimately they got this right in terms of what's best for business. Right. Oppenheimer critically acclaimed, got people, along with Barbie, because that was a formula that we might see replicated, two huge summer blockbusters coming out at the exact same weekend, and both of them delivering. Both of them ended up being nominated for Best Picture, uh, although if you were just tuning in to watch Al Pacino's <laughs> read the nominees, you might have not known that Barbie got nominated. Uh, Oppenheimer wins. It's what's best for business. 20 years since Lord of the Rings, Return of the King won for Best Picture. Since then, you've had a collection of smaller films, period pieces, uh, nothing on the size and scope of an Oppenheimer. I want to say, I want to do Al Pacino, if you don't mind. I'm not going to imitate Hell him. Yeah. I don't know if you can. But I'd like to say the nominees were for Best Picture. <laughs> Share with the class, <laughs> The please. nominees were The Holdovers. That's one. American Fiction. 
the movie that we want everyone to see that Roy's going to see. The yep. Zone. The of Zone of Interest. interest best Sound. Bobby. And do it as Pacino. <laughs> yeah, he, ro- he robbed us of Bobby. 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 That's pretty good. Did it keep going. Oppenheimer. <laughs> Past Lives. Anatomy of a Fall. Maestro. Poor Things. Maestro. Killers of the Flower Moon. I like it. And? Oppenheimer. The Oscar goes and to? And the Oscar goes to... Oppenheimer. But all we That's got was that. Uh, you, no, I that, lost it. Is that a German I Pacino? I, I like it. German Pacino. Wow. It's a big win for Oppenheimer. It's a big obviously. win for Hollywood. It's a big win for... How many total Oscars for Oppenheimer? For for Nolan, obviously. I'd like to get can... someone to do a count. I can't see straight at the moment. All right, fair but enough. I would like a count. It's somewhere online. Should have had that popcorn. <laughs> I should have had the popcorn. I had no food. But I think that... What are the takeaways from this show? Um, international cinema is is here in America to stay. We are mm-hmm. going to continue to honor and celebrate these films from around the world. Um, I think you, you're looking at uh, some performances. And Robert Downey Jr. winning for Oppenheimer, one of the most powerful guys in Hollywood and most important actors of the last 20 years. Um, some other takeaways adding in for the night besides your beloved Killers of the Flower Moon going Lucy, home empty-handed. Lucy uh, I'm winning counting for Best it. Costume. Uh, yeah. That was incredible. Emma Stone arriving as Roy the most powerful woman in Hollywood, right? Most powerful think, actress in Hollywood. I think the biggest takeaway from the entire night is Christopher Nolan as director and Emma Stone as actress. I think that overshadows da- Downey Jr. for me. He's, p- he's part of the Nolan success. Uh, and, and part John of Cena yeah. naked for me. Yeah. That was a weird one. Well, you saw him? Looks like six Oscars for Oppenheimer. By my count, I just kind of six Oscars. So we had said six and a half over under, maybe a little bit under. They spread spread the wealth a little bit. Let's welcome in some new audience that uh, might just be tuning in to us because they wanted the standard single screen experience. We're here to uh, wrap things up. We've been here since 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, no one managed to beat David Samson. The whole game was beat David Samson. I can't believe I did. Final leaderboard, live from the stained carpet. And uh, Ben came closest, but the Emma Stone, uh, the Emma Stone prediction, and uh, the zone of interest for best sound, wow. just two category winners. Bow down. You so, told me last night at dinner I would have lost because I bet against Emma Stone. Out of 5,600 ballots Come. filled out on lebitardaf.com, the total number of people who beat me, what would you think the number is? Out of how many out total ballots? Out of 5,600 ballots. Wait, wait, sorry. Phrase it again. 56. The number of people that beat you? Yeah. Out of 5,600 ballots that were filled out. Classic Jimmy Kimmel bit at the end, the dog peeing on Matt Damon's st- walk of fame. Love Matt star. Damon getting dissed again. It's a good end. It's always a good joke. Yeah, uh, 100 people beat you. I'd say 150. There were 5,600 ballots. <laughs> yeah, I'd say 150. 49. Whoa! What? Wow. Wait, Sam Top 50. Is 50, top That's 50 to 5,600. Pass it back, Dave. That's Hooray. it. Impressive. After so, the slow start, we had three yeah. As if people. the night could be any worse. Yeah, where'd Adnan finish? There yeah. are three winners. How do you so feel about this, Adnan? Do... How do you think, Mike? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you, fucking idiot? What do you think? How do you think I feel right Wait now? Wait till next year, yeah. Adnan. Yeah. Yeah, how do you think? Killers of the Five went 0 for 10. Giamatti lost, and Samson's top 50. You think I'm thrilled right now? Can we Been sitting here for out? six and a half hours. Was the difference killer? Did you make? How many killers did you predict to win? Uh, not many. Just Lily. Okay. Yeah. Can we call out tied with Rose? Three people. Rose, we crushed. Let me call them out. We have three people out of the 5,600 who went 22 for 23. That's impressive. That is wow. 22 to 23? So three people. I've no heard, perfect ballots. Really three people. So we're going to figure out which of the three is the winner. Maybe uh, all three. I'm which, sorry. You know what? I'm making an executive decision. All three people will be winners of the overall pool, and you will get Lebitard merchandise from lebitardaf.com. And then we're going to take all 49 who beat me. We're going to do a random number generator. And we will choose one of you to get a piece of memorabilia. Congratulations. So they get some merch. Okay. That's incredible. And some for merch is three, available. For the yeah. top three finishers, we only have one Dune popcorn bucket. So it mm. is hugely important that, I'll we, do it. that you go first. Yeah. <laughs> we David. all know why that's important. <sighs> who, I we know why Who goes important. first? Yeah. Because they're all going to do the popcorn holder? They're all going to yeah. yeah. Dune it. I'd prefer not to be a part of such STD behavior. Ugh, I mean, well, that's why you gotta be first. He'd rather not. It depends on which type it is. They all last forever. <laughs> Although, listen, do you know? A quick side baseball note. I don't know if you know this, but there are Z packs that trainers carry around to give to players and staff because Z packs take care of everything. Mm-hmm. So we hand out Z packs like Tic Tacs. You come in the training room, and players are on Z packs all the time. 
All right, now it's an Abbott Elementary watch along. <laughs> Sweet. So I'd like to conclude. Wow. We, let's do a post game for the people who Absolutely. are just joining us. Yep. A great night for Oppenheimer. They win six Academy Awards by my count, and obviously major awards. It's not just winning. When you win for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, you're winning for Best Original Score, you're winning for Best Cinematography. That's a great night for Christopher Nolan film that made almost a billion dollars. It was also a great night for Poor Things, as that was able to win for Production Design. It was able to win for Costume Design, able to win for Best Actress for Emma Stone. Um, adapted screenplay. I mean, those are major awards for poor things. So Oppenheimer wins, but it was not the juggernaut we've seen in the past. They spread the wealth as we've seen. Poor things a really strong night. I think that I'm disappointed for Barbie, and I'm disappointed for Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, because it's begin beginning to become a thing with Marty go taking the donut After on the Oscar Irishman, night. Yeah, and even Wolf of Wall Street didn't win as many. Wolf of Wall Street was five nominations, zero for five. Gangs he went zero for ten. Irishman he went zero for ten. So this is significant. Yeah. And so Killers, he was 0 for how many nominations did Killers have tonight? 10. So 0 for 10 again. They I mean, love nominating, and they don't, they don't, they don't win. Go ahead. But Adnan, Dan, it, he didn't have the best picture in any of those years. Like, I, I understand he's a, a legend of the game, right. arguably the greatest to ever do it. And if they handed these things out on reputation, he'd go home with it every year. But, but it doesn't feel right that a 10-time Oscar nominee has only won once. He's batting 100 in this category. That's just... That's tough to swallow. He, he didn't have a shot to win for Killers of the Flower Moon tonight, unfortunately. This is Nolan's year. Right. It's the culmination of a career. Marty's had an incredible career and is continuing to make movies, but Nolan needs to have an Oscar. He brought people to the box office for a 1940s movie about a nuclear physicist on a global level. Nolan, like, that that remarkable. They built a tremendous. bomb. It's the biggest story in our lifetime. Yeah, still, <laughs> What's a bigger story than the atom bomb? To sell that in 2023 in the summertime Probably is a Barbie. tough sell. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Women the original you know. screenplay. And, yeah. uh, and, and wow, congratulations <laughs> to Christopher Nolan. That is a, uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's a tremendous film and, and well-deserving of the award. We never had my top five, Nolan, if you want to throw it up there. I just want to mention it's, it's actually memorable now because one of the movies, which neither of you included, was does, no, no, that is true. It is Oppenheimer is my top five, but it also figures in significantly with what happened with the Oscars. One will see the five, you'll understand. Number five, number five is Dunkirk. But number four is Insomnia, which starred Al Pacino, who unfortunately had one of the worst moments of the night. But I think Insomnia is a great Nolan movie. Pacino, Robin Williams. Maybe that's playing what happened. A, Robin Williams playing heel. Hillary Swank, Academy Award winner. He needs a nap. I think it's a great movie. The Dark Knight, you guys have discussed. Memento, Ben mentioned us. Did David Oppenheimer, I do think, is one of his best films. And I think the, uh, the I range was able to come. Yeah, no I checked his IMDb, and it seems as though like a remake of Memento is in development. Yeah. How do you remake Memento? Well, this is just tell it chronological. It yeah. It's a chronological story this time. Shout out to Roy and Chris. Absolutely. And you guys Mike. are awesome. You guys have been in awesome. this chair awesome. for awesome. so many hours doing this. Everyone from Metal Arc. Entire crew. How about the people in the control room? Without quite. You guys been are coming in on a Sunday hours. for eight hours here. Amazing. You guys crushed it. Thank you so much. When Thank I think you of, all for welcoming me into your universe. Absolutely. My man, Ben Lyons. It's very strange seeing some of you in real life because I've watched you on screen for many years. So I felt a little starstruck. <laughs> and he almost fucked it up. little starstruck <laughs> on Oscar night. Mark that. You please. know? I'm Jeffrey Lyons. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We'll never yeah, forget uh, that. Thanks so thank you for having me. Jeffrey Lyons, Adnan, Ben, Josh Horowitz, and David. Mario. And Josh Mario's Horowitz got a bottle awesome. of tequila yeah, yeah. somewhere in Hollywood. Cuervo. Yeah, Cuervo. got yeah. some Cuervo from uh, Mario tonight. We can't thank you guys enough for doing this and coming appreciate up with you. the idea. It's the first of its kind that we've done this. Hopefully we do more stained carpets. I really appreciate your dedication to this. Uh, ben, you. especially, real trooper, putting together a run of show. Uh, was really hugely important to all this. Thank you to everybody that came in on an off day. And thank you to Al Pacino for really bringing that moment home. <laughs> yeah. Do we know for sure that he'll always be an icon? I just took my headphones off for what you guys were doing, put my headphones in for my computer, and just for the first time really digested it. And I'm still a little unsure. I'm if I had to bet though, I yeah. think he just had an old man moment. No, I, I think it's like, pretty clear. He's did supposed he listen to say at the beginning the nominees or not? Stop obviously, I've never people. said the nominees. Obviously, I'm gonna stick up for Al, but <laughs> obviously was, you're supposed to say and the nominees are they have a montage. He was Stop just, having old people present these. A awards. thousand percent that? he screwed it up. Yeah, he just screwed it up. Of course he did. If yeah. he meant to cut right to it, wouldn't there be some gravitas, especially for Al Pacino, for Al Pacino to American have a moment fiction. to be so subdued? Yeah. He's like he basically is like I'm gonna announce the winner for best picture. Bob. And it's in the 
Barney. Uh, it's in this envelope. Barney. I'm going to do it right now. Pass lives. Are you sure that they didn't have him not do it because they needed to get out the heart out I of hope that's right, but it's not the There's case. There's no way. Maybe you he got confused because that might confused. have been a scenario that was floated by him. If we're doing this on time, you just cut right to the winner and you Correct. don't do the nominees. But it was just odd. It's, it's, free, ad, of it's free ad time for those movies. American fiction needs another 10 seconds of ad the time. The way the now. music comes up is like you can tell it's a panic producer just hitting a button. Like I right. swear, you can hear the panic in the, in the production studio. Anatomy of a Fall. Bobby. Still the 40th anniversary of The Godfather, too. That's all that matters. They have to go with the most famous presenter for yeah. Best Picture. Yeah, back to your point, Roy, So you're like, stop famous. having old people, but it's Al Pacino, living a legend, man. Yeah. Oh, what no, do you mean? It's Al Pacino, standing ovation. Like, this guy's the best. Yeah, Next year, it should be like a nine year old. Yeah, that would be much better. Like the girl that sang the National Anthem a couple of weeks ago with the American flag dress. Oof. What uh, has I did been your reaction to the monologue? Just can you have it in yeah, a minute indif- or less? Indifference. Indifferent. I, I don't just think it was ordinary. horrible. But t- yeah, ordinary. He didn't take any shots. The only thing with Robert Downey Jr., the drug stuff, you said you wanted edgy. I was surprised he went in that what direction. What did he ex- exactly say? Do you remember? He, I he made hear. fun of the fact he had a drug problem for a long time. And Downey, I don't think, was thrilled. I didn't see that. Well, we'll look up. I, Downey Jr. Made... hit him with the keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. Keep like going. he made the joke. He's like, yeah, oh, who would have known that. after the drug? Problem, I didn't hear the, the joke, but I saw the. Yeah, Downey's kind of like, yeah, like he's it, not. It, it wasn't well received. So like much that. so that when they were filling for time, Jimmy Kimmel just read tweets reacting negative tweets yeah. towards his monologue, even though that's a, a running bit on his show mean where tweets, other yeah. celebrities read mean tweets. I mean, there was certainly something to it because not a lot of positivity surrounding the monologue. It's no. such a thankless job to host the show. Listen, to like I love Jimmy. Kimmel. I think he's fabulous in his job, but it's thankless. It's such a people are so critical in this day. Who even wants this job to host? I might as well go back to Billy Crystal. He was the best. Is it for so, me? Billy Crystal. Was it's the interesting. Best. I that, agree with you on that, David. I thought Billy Crystal was awesome. especially his opening. We would do all the different yeah. montages. Sorry, what just happened with Al Pacino? Like that almost is a moment now where the producers, if you're like producing that show, you're almost like people are going to be talking about that tomorrow. Like that's almost a good thing, even though it might have been a mistake. He just because what was going to be other than the actual awards. But to Ben's Maybe Ken. Point, it's nice to have those movies get mentioned. No, right? it stinks for the people in it that yeah. didn't get their movie read. But I'm just saying, this is something. It's it's a moment that we're going to talk about. Did we hear the name? Like, did hear the name of the film Past Lives like at all tonight? No, no. Been we nice didn't. Even, and we didn't talk about that. Have, at all. We didn't talk, that's a terrific movie. You well, and I both. I, I, I loved it. Mike, Mike really watched hard. it this morning. He didn't like it. it. Yeah, he did not like it. But that's their moment to get the applause. Like they hadn't heard their name. Worthy of applause, but did didn't like it. One of the mean tweets, even though it wasn't posted on X was from uh, former President Trump, and oh. Jimmy Kimmel took the opportunity to read that feedback and then yeah. have a joke at his expense. What was the tweet? It was pretty long. Oh, then pass. Yeah, way too long. No. <laughs> Tough yeah, has there for... ever been a worse host? You... I would have hosted not, better. Not better. better. All right, forget it. Awards uh, that you're particularly happy about, again, I can tell you how upset I am about Killers 0 for 10 and GMI losing, but I'm very happy for American Fiction winning for Adapted Screenplay. It's a terrific movie. Core Jefferson, I think, is a talent to watch moving forward, so I'm really happy for him. And I'm happy for Wes Anderson. He wasn't there, but the wonderful story of Henry Sugar, Rushmore, Royal Tenenbaums, two of my all-time favorites. I'm glad he's got an Academy Award. I, I'm giving him a demerit for not being there. I want, that's a category. It doesn't matter where, when you win an Oscar. It's got gravitas. you got to be there. Now, maybe he's sick. I don't want to say. Who knows? Who knows what's going on in his life? But, yeah, he, it's unfortunate. Let's pretend that nothing is going on and he yeah. just didn't want to be there as part of this category. Mm-hmm. Then that's disappointing. I think one of my takeaways is that Barbie, uh, Greta Gerwig's name was not been mentioned enough mm. because the talent, what she's done as a woman director, as a director of any sex. Well, it would have, been, it would have helped if she was nominated. You know, well, that, she was nominated I mean, for screenplay. Yes. And it did not win because it was the wrong category. Though. She sh- it, it, they're calling it the biggest snub of the Oscars was that Greta Gerwig was not nominated for d- you, Best Director. If you go right. through the directors, who do you, who do you take out? You know, it's one of those. I think th- people would have said the uh, Anatomy of Falls, Justine Trier, which was your favorite. People said Greta Gerwig should be uh, or Justine the Zone Trier. of Interest. Correct. That or was a big upset right. having Glazer. Obviously, Glazer doesn't, doesn't have movies. the size and scope of a Barbie, but that's maybe why there's a branch of the Academy that wanted to honor Support it them. because it made the stakes feel so high. It's an intimate courtroom drama of the yep. highest level. It takes a master director to really assemble that film and put it together. And she did a tremendous job. It's our favorite film of the year. Um, there's always going to be somebody who's left out. I do think Greta Gerwig, however, deserved an Oscar nomination. Barbie, the most important film of the year. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't get to see her too much uh, throughout the show. But she's a tremendous talent. Their first three films that she's directed are all nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, Lady Bird, Little Women, and Barbie. Come so that's on. pretty impressive to do. And uh, Lady again, Bird was outstanding. So basically, she's going down the road of Sofia Coppola. Then. 
Better. Well, yeah, better. Let's hope she's she takes trending a, let's better. Let's hope she takes a left I mean, she started as, you know, yeah. both of them started as an actress, and now and both of them are directors. But Samson was telling how much he disliked route. Priscilla. Never have three female directors in one year earned Best Picture nominations for their work until Justine Trier, Greta Gerwig, and Celine Song for Past Lives. So they have three women making Best Picture nominees. That's awfully rare and pretty special, so that's nice to see. Another award that I was happy to see about, and David called this right, and I'm glad he was right, The Last Repair Shop. Again, documentary short films. It's available on YouTube. Go check it out. It's 35 minutes long. It's heartfelt. It's beautiful. It's really well shot. Last Repair Shop is a great movie. I was proud that Ryan Gosling performed. That was Crush a big it. moment. I think Crush people it. will talk about that tomorrow. With Ronson and Slash, and yeah, that was mm-hmm. a big moment. Billie Eilish has her second Oscar. Yep. That's a lot. She's not. I don't know how old she is, but I bet you it's only got a three at most, maybe a two. Right, it's got Does a Billie two. Eilish have a two handle? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Does she really? Definitely. <laughs> There's a fire drill at Abbott, Abbott Elementary. <sighs> Good episode. And now here, Emma posted. Stone having won twice as a producer nominated. Meryl Streep, we anointed come her. On. I mean, now the world is your oyster. You can go do whatever you want to do. I'd be very curious to see what Emma decides to cook up next. She yeah. is the next Meryl Streep. It's there a great performance. We called it here, mm-hmm. and uh, it's sort of like saying that, you know, Jake Paul's an idiot. It's a big moment for the show, <laughs> and we believe that. <laughs> You will have Emma Stone become the most nominated female of our lifetime because she's not I feel, stopping. I, feel, I still, yeah, I still think Carrie Mulligan's in that mix, but but you're right. Emma Stone, two Oscars at 35 is pretty nuts. Yeah, there's no question. No, about it. no knocks against Meryl Streep's range, uh, very similar to Emma Stone's, but Emma Stone is an incredibly rangy performer, having been in mm-hmm. La La Land, which was a musical, having started in comedies and teen comedies, like a lot of. Uh, like, I wouldn't discount the super bad thing. A lot of great actors started in teen comedies and built out these incredible careers, but she can do it all as she's proven, as she's already proven, and I think she's going to age with grace. And there's something to that. It was a hot take early, and now with the the hardware to support it, David, you're you're on a heater. Can we show the outside room one more time for the people who've stuck here the entire yeah, I can't, show? They're no all the, sleeping. I was about to say, there's nobody <laughs> stuck <laughs> here. Oh. We, we, I can't. Let's clean that a little bit. There Lucy's are people still, still there. Yeah, that's I'm pretty sure amazing. He thinks the same. We have to Listen, go to work. Lucy, what happened to Lucy? She's there. We should have done a bit where they were all sleeping. She Fine. almost had a very bad day today when Iowa. She told me at halftime of the Iowa game she wasn't coming. All right, yeah. final thoughts. A lot thoughts of the here. plus ones are giving you a wrap. Hey, guys, so it. cut away from them. Yeah, final and thoughts. And then I want everyone there to act like you're sleeping, <laughs> and then we'll cut back to you guys and you act like you're sleeping. This yeah. is the point in the show when I start coming up with oh, creative that's ideas. Great. Yeah. Everyone yeah. passes. By the way, how good is this crew? Like sort sort of immediately following direction. Like, okay, yeah, all right. we'll do that. Coca's, Taylor, act like you're asleep. Coca did it. Yeah, I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Kara did it. Taylor and Lucy, act like you're asleep. Go to bed. I, I look. look. Yeah, look at there that. What go. a great yeah. bit. Uh, oh, let's man. screenshot that. Comedy. <laughs> That's it. And that is the end. I wanted to say ben, one other thing. Go ahead. On man. the final thoughts, Point we always blue. say, but what does the Oscars mean to you is the moments, best speech of the night, Dave and Joy Randolph. Teary-eyed, g with the weather, g crying reaction shot. That was my favorite speech of the night. You? Didn't hear any of them. <laughs> So we're going to have to figure that out. We're going to have to have a little bit of a bigger budget next year because of my sayonara suckles. I didn't hear one speech. Now, I know you have dreams of being on the red carpet for the Academy Awards next year, but I'm telling you, the stained carpet is where it's at. I, really? I really hope that I get to be back here in Miami next year. I'm not even kidding. Seriously, Ben Lyons crushed it. My, my man. man. Great, Great to see you. Back, we're back, Great baby. idea. We're back. Thank you all. Thank you. Great David, job. This is Mike. So much fun. More. Thank you, Thank team. you all. Everybody. You guys were awesome. Thank you so much for checking us out live from the stained carpet. Good luck filling in for Stu Gods tomorrow on the Dan Lovettard Show. We'll He's going to be here, actually. I just I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Ben's dad. <laughs>